Boom. All right. We did it. Well, we're you back. We went live. Hello. Well, thanks for Hi. watching. I'll see you all. Oh, wait. We start. Oh, that's something. I well, fucked it up. This is the end, starting. Mel. This is the beginning. Wait, beginning. Oh, wait a minute. So wait much a minute. to begin for. Oh. Mauler, you just, you just remember to hit record now? We've been going at this for oh. like seven hours. We covered yeah. 7,000 videos. It's such, oh, man. such content. All bad. Yeah, and there were so many None good memes. And, oh, oh, well. Now we gotta sit here like, for another five hours. Ugh. <sighs> well, yes. You know what? Why? I have some, something really, really strange to show you guys first. Real strange. Mm, very, very unusual. Um, oh, no. As you're aware, there are many platforms on this thing we call the internet. And uh, mm. us boomers, we're stuck on YouTube, and then by extension, mm -hmm. Twitch and Twitter and some others, maybe, but. There's some spooky ones out there that I don't think any of us five have ever even looked into. You, do you know of one called Tyke Toke? I think it's Japanese. <laughs> what? Tyke Toke sounds like the <laughs> Chinese off-brand version of a Chinese off-brand version. Oh or no! Something. I remember when it first started, and I was just like, "What a cringe platform!" People just like play music and do commentate or whatever. It's like, oh, it's like hyper popular now. Even well, isn't it the same thing as Vine back in the day? Yeah, it's just well, Vine V two, I guess. But like, it's also other stuff. I don't want to pretend to like. I seriously feel like maximum boomer on TikTok. I'm just like, I don't know how it works. I don't know really what it's for. I don't know why <laughs> people are there, but they're all young people who are on it. It's like Ugh. they name themselves after a shitty Kesha song. See, that's how you knew it was doomed to start with. Um, because hmm. YouTube usually gets insulted because it's like, wow, you named yourself after the, the creators, but you're not really about that, are you? That's usually what the line is. Twitter is just... that's probably a good name, actually. Google yeah. is a good name. You know how it goes. TikTok, though, Rags is you. a good name. Yes. Goop is the good name. Oh, Goop's a fantastic <laughs> name. So, someone DM'd me awesome this. Name, yeah. I don't know who this guy is. Dub Snapple Facts is the... The profile, so, because TikTok has an absolute garbage fucking, uh, oh my god, is that a URL? User that is base? the URL. Yes. Oh boy. That's an that actual URL. URL. Oh so, my god. what I need you to do is to load up the page, and then click the video, and then pause it as soon as you can, and try and get to the beginning, so that we can have some form of a fucking sync, because it's just absolute cringe, how, how everything works con? here. Uh, this, wait, do you know what, what I really hate? Video? Oh, you, this is the video. Do you know what I hate about <laughs> user interfaces when they have a binary mute system? Like, no slider. It's just like, oh, now you're in for a treat. And, and this is me thinking that they had, they had the modern upper hand, you know? TikTok's all fresh, new, and hip. Fucking mute it, or full volume. It's like, thanks. I can't, I know, I can't even I can't. play it. You can't scroll uh, either. You have to, like... Yeah. The way it works for me is it, that you hit refresh, and then, like, it just automatically plays the video, and you click it. Don't... It zooms in, and then you click it again, and it pauses. That's what I've learned. <laughs> it's like... Yeah. Wow. wow, what a terrible website. You should be ashamed of yourself. It's fucking horrible. Oh and I'm, I'm assuming fuck. even if someone was like, well, no, this isn't the app, I'd be like, I don't, they're still in control of the fucking browser version, so get with the times. I mean, yeah. This is the frame that I'm on. Oh, um, man. So every time I play. I, it hasn't even started yet for me. Dead. Oh, you can well, I have to refresh it. Yeah, so oh. if you guys can, okay. just try and get to as refresh. early in the in the video as you can by hitting refresh, playing it, and pausing it straight away if you can. Dude, yeah. I hate it. Wait, know, is everybody. there not a... There's not a slider bar on it? Nope. No, no, no. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> yeah, what a horrific yeah. platform. Yeah, well, yeah. like I said, YouTube seems to have the upper hand here, but... Uh, is everyone able... Because like, what we're going to do is try and yeah. sync at the, near the beginning of his video. Let him run. It's it's about a minute long, and then we'll respond mm. to it after because um, it's it is, a nightmare uh... to be able to sync pausing on this. All right. All right. This I guess this video is called YouTuber. I think our asshole part two. So English That's is clearly weird. not his first what? language. No. So, so we got to cut him a little bit of sleep. Yeah. And um, uh, I was I was sent this, and they said it's about you, and I was like, okay. Um, was, is everyone able? Once I hit it, say go to, to press play near the beginning. Yeah, sure. sure. Yeah. Let's take a look at uh, <laughs> All right, man excellent. Guy. Three, two, one, go. Don't like and think our assholes. Let's fucking go. Okay, uh, this is oh, Mahler. Is if you don't like the new Star Wars movies, that's fine. To each their own. However, this guy's just sad. He's just uh, sad. But, He's but, talked about The Last but. Jedi uh, for six hours and. Jesus a Christ. Lot more oh than my that, God. I like the movie, and I can't talk about it for six hours.
Jesus. Six hours. And they're all like fucking nitpicks. No, you're like not smart I haven't watched a full video, so they're all nitpicks. insufferable. Oh, However, I skimmed it. Just and one of his complaints is literally just him talking about Well, you know, um Luke says uh you know, no one's from nowhere. And then He's in the very next sentence too. he says Jack who's from nowhere. Like, the make up your mind, Luke. Is. Come on. What? Just just get a life. Jesus Christ! Wow. Fuck! Oh god. I thought this no, was gonna be fun. But just thinking what? about these assholes so. hurts me. You're an Fuck! Asshole, damn. This is part two of So that's it. Um <laughs> What the, what So I think you're oh, an asshole disaster. because you built your asshole thing on nothing? Yeah, how, I don't. You talk about my... how that doesn't like that. You talk about the the Jakku line. I think almost well, most of it revolves around how the tone doesn't make any sense. There's, there's so much wrong with this. To an attempt at comedy. There's so there's so much wrong with this. Okay, so first of all, his main argument is just long, which is like fantastic. So, yeah, secondly, like as a okay. as a represent like criticizing someone else's content when all you did was just you do a rant video on your on your phone when you sit down in your room, like excellent. Just dynamite. This is the then, height of content. This is the height of content. Then claims doesn't watch the video, but knows it's full of nitpicks, right? And so he does something That's slightly better idea. than most people. He gives an example. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I don't remember saying what he said I said. Uh, when I heard that, I was like, wait, the Jakku line where he says, um, uh, where, are you, like, where are you? She says, I'm from nowhere. And he says, nobody's from nowhere. And she says, Jakku? And then he goes, okay, that is pretty much nowhere. I remember having a, a like a 5 to 10 range feeling about that line. I was like, oh, you know, not bad. You know, but the, the weird thing when I heard it in the film was like, oh, that felt a little bit weird coming out of that Luke. Because this Luke seems so dour and depressed and hobo-ish that it's like it just seems so <laughs> strange that he'd say it. So I was like, well, this shouldn't be too hard to find, right? Like, it's just in the first TLJ video. Uh... One sec. Because he said that I said that it's a contradiction. Like, you shouldn't say that someone can, nobody's from nowhere, but also that Jakku's from nowhere. That doesn't make sense. And I was like, that sounds like just not something I would say. Yeah, it doesn't. Can I look at the, the comments? Oh, I have to log into TikTok to look at comments? Or are I don't these know. reply? Hello Is that the there. reply button? I, I guess I can't click that. Website. Oh, that's to share. YouTubers I don't like. Yeah, yeah I can't. The comments. It's just ass. The whole thing is Yeah, I ass. just want to I just want to yeah. look at comments. I don't want to make any. I don't want you to even be better. This garbage. Rags, if you go to a different tab and then return to it, it automatically stops assholes. playing. Oh my One god, th you're right. Oh fuck, the so Chinese are I just, awful. Cuz I just pulled up the uh I just pulled up the website. So in critics he hates Yeah, there's there's no bullshit and then you Fermento. <laughs> Then Fumento. He then hates you and Filmento. Damn. And wow. Yeah, then Fumento. And then CinemaSins. And then YouTubers I love. One of them is Mr. Sunday Movies. And the second one is Cosmonaut Variety Hour. Oh, oh fuck. no. How yeah. can you like Film How can you hate? How can you hate Filmento but like Cosmo? Is it? <laughs> I, it's a strange world it's, out there. Yeah, it's what, scary he, out there. He, uh, <laughs> Osmond actually focuses on nitpicks in shorter reviews when he's talking about why something is bad. Typically, yeah. Do um, you think he's just happy he noticed something? Is everyone in the watch together? Because uh, I'm going to show yeah, you that part no. that he just he just talked about. Let's see here. Um, is it, should it be playing already? Not yet. One moment. Okay. <laughs> <clears throat> Okay, here we go. So, yeah, like I said, his uh, coverage of this was that I thought it was a contradictive line and that I'm nitpicking the dialogue. Let's see what I said. A temple that's inside a tree and wants to know who she is. They then have a back and forth and Luke goes from this extremely gruff, no-nonsense, disheveled man to cracking a joke here and there, commenting on how nobody is from nowhere but Jakku is indeed pretty much nowhere. So now we are left to wonder if Luke is actually just being difficult since he clearly is able to engage in levity, or is this just an attempt to keep the script from feeling too dull? Ray then says she needs- That's it. Hmm. I'm, I'm simply You're saying- You're not actually- yeah. Seems a little bit out of character, considering what we've learned so far. Uh, for him to make a, a joke. Oddity. But it could be explained by the fact that they don't want the script to fall into a, like a dour, depressing position, so they throw a joke in here and there. 
literally nothing to do with the line being contradictive in terms of like points being made. Just that it seems out of character for him. Um, oh. yeah, I guess we just another totally inaccurate comment made by someone who didn't do their research and doesn't really care. Just but, fascinating. You know, I bet that phone video hmm. is really tough to make. I got five hours of coverage, and he went to one position, he concluded the entire thing is nitpicks. <laughs> and he didn't even there get it go. right. Like, fucking, and that concludes you're an brilliant. asshole. Like, how about you go fuck yourself? Well, yeah. I was gonna say, it's less concerning that he, he managed to misrepresent my stuff, it's more concerning that he's a huge fan of Cosmonaut. It's like, oh no. Well, you're doomed. Um, he hates you, and he hates Fomento, but he likes Cosmonaut. <laughs> what a bizarre... I find it... I just... Thing. I don't... That was just like a one-minute ramble that was worthless. I don't really <laughs> and it has like 12,000 views. I was like, how does TikTok even work? I don't know. I don't... Yeah, and it's, it's, it's weird, because it's like... You're there sort of screaming as well. <laughs> yeah. Know, it's like, you seem really upset. <laughs> He's doing the whole, fuck! Like, you didn't even watch the video, yelling. are you okay? Well, also, yelling fuck is a substitute you, for good content. When, whenever people do the whole get a life thing, it's like, you people, like, you gotta, what is wrong with you? Like, what does it actually matter to you what somebody else does with their time? And this is like, actually apply to you. you this is apply to all YouTubers, like, when YouTubers make several 10 minute videos over the course of a month as opposed to when we're taking a cup like what about a few like months or so or streams a day every day like all the time precisely it's Those time the spent the at the computer regardless um yeah like how i, I mean because of course it's like oh it's like oh it's six hours long it's like well how many hours do you spend at work every day it will spend like 40 hours working. Be like, yeah, he life. hates it. I can't even talk about it that much, and I like it. I'm like, wait, why is it that you liking something or hating something determines how long you talk about it? How long you talk about it. I imagine that you can't talk very long about any movie that you like, to be honest. I get well, that impression. I would just argue I can't talk for very long about anything I don't feel much for. It has to be like or hate, something like, that typically. you care about, yeah. Uh, passion, right? Well, and having reasons. Passion... Passion is subjective. Maybe he's just not as passionate about film as you are. It's, well, this is the fundamental, right? Like we talked about it before, but just uh, even one line from a from a movie can have you going for ages, depending on what the where the discussion goes. Never been one to be like, "Whoa, guys, we've gone over the time limit. Stop it!" <laughs> Don't you think we've talked about Mandalorian long enough? It's like. 20 hours now in total for the two seasons and it's like well we probably haven't covered everything but yeah, i guess no. so. <laughs> yeah we could always find more to talk about in fact i guarantee we could well um, what, what i notice is like people mainly have an issue with it when you're picking apart their sacred cow well well he said it's okay to um it's okay to like not like the last jedi or the sequels right and then he bitches about how you don't like him sort of well, i thought yeah. he was going to go on to Talking about Zack Snyder stuff because that was in one of the hashtags on that link. Oh, maybe, <clears throat> maybe it's brought on by that. Like maybe that's Wait, why. It is hashtag DCEU hashtag raw bat bat and bat hashtag film tick. Yeah, he has fat. He yeah, he has hashtag DCEU. Um, so, well, you know what? That's an easy segue. We're gonna talk a lot about the DCEU as time goes on. Yeah, and, it's uh, shit. It's really bad. Uh, uh, it's uh, horrific. The, mo the most recent one we watched was Aquaman, right? In the, uh, the lineup of movies? Yes. Mm -hmm. oh, we have watched yeah. Aquaman. We will we want Aquaman. to check out some takes on Aquaman. Now, here is a straw poll that the, the viewers at home will have access to when this comes out. You have a choice. High Top, Filmento, Just Right, Captain Midnight, Full Fat Videos, and Brown Table all have videos on Aquaman. Now, you simply check the ones that you'd be interested in seeing. I know that's tough for the cast here. Can... They're probably not going to tick any of them, <laughs> but... Oh, so we, we vote, <clears throat> we select all that apply? All, all the ones that you'd be like, yeah, I wouldn't mind seeing that. For example, I, I don't know that any of you want to watch another Filmento video, maybe. Maybe not. I, no, I, I, don't. I don't really know. <laughs> so what you would do in that case is tick all of them except his, and then what we'll do is release this to the good old EFAP chat, like right now, it... as this is premiering. Uh, in the future, <laughs> and then they'll be like, "Oh my God, I'm gonna choose," you know, full five videos have, and brown I table. I hate the rest. Yeah, it, it, honestly, it could be any selection of um, any number. Just it's just gonna be interesting to see who ends All up right. on top once it releases yeah. to the public. 
Um, so, are you actually going to put the straw poll in the description this time? Uh, have I not well, done that? It's in the description. So I think I think that this was um, this happened in one of the EFAP movies or uh, one of the pre-recorded EFAPs where you said there would be a uh, like a straw poll, and um, there wasn't there was never a straw poll in the description. It might have been EFAP one twenty four possibly. A what? So the book look thing? No, 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 no. It was something completely different. I don't know if this was EFAP 124 or if it was the Man of Steel EFAP movies. It it might have been the Man of Steel EFAP movies. Um, but I remember seeing a lot of comments like, Mahler, where's the straw poll link? <laughs> <laughs> I think the problem with that is that like, is the, there's probably going to be a better time to do a straw poll for the DCU once it's over. The arc is complete, as in as complete as it can get once we get through the last three. Oh, yeah. Um, um, see what the audience think. Well, I also want to amend something that I, uh, I I saw. Someone in the comments corrected a word that I used. Uh, I said implacable when I meant intangible regarding what the, the Martian Manhunter can do. Oh. Um, I, I used the completely wrong word. Saw a comment saying, apparently in the planet that Southpaw comes from, implacable means intangible. I was like, fuck, I used the wrong word. So, there we go. All right. Uh... Okay. That, I think, does it. Uh, we're ready to... <laughs> the thing is, there, there was a plan to watch um, a certain video today, but voting? like, I am really desperate to watch one ahead of it that's so much funnier. Like, because I, I tested it out a little bit. So, the reason I saw this one is because uh, Traj in... Um, it was either Traj or Thunderass, I can't quite remember. In Discord, where uh, they would posted it, and they were just they were taking some quotes out of it. And one of the quotes they had, I saw it and I was like, no. Did they say that? And then I played it. I was like, ooh. Um, this video is only 13 minutes, so perhaps we can get through it Hooray. relatively quick. Sure. Um, it <laughs> is the quintessential <laughs> video essay. It is so awesome, and I love that stuff like this gets made uh, for put this earnestly, I guess. Because it just reminds me of, like, our jobs will never be over. There's, there's always going to be more. So... First, I want to show you the thumbnail. And this is not a joke. This is <laughs> art. I mean, I agree. <laughs> it is, but... I agree with you... the technicality. Yeah. I yeah. feel like the sentiment I don't quite agree with. It's... But yeah, it's mm -hmm. art. Just like, funny to me. Generally speaking, when you're, when you're calling something art, it's not just being descriptive. Like, uh, like a movie it will always technically count well, as a piece of art. It's like this is seriously like amazing. Well, that, they, mean, they mean to say that it's it, it is a particularly high example. Yeah, Ra of, Rags is on point. Is he would argue example. this is art, and Civil War isn't. This is key. Oh, would he? Oh, has he? Has he? Well, I'm not gonna. I'm Civil not War? saying that's something he said. I'm saying that's what I would assume he would say. I think Civil War comes oh, up in yeah. this video. Um, because this oh is the thing. Zack Snyder's BVS is kind of a masterpiece. I don't know if you guys knew that. Um, I didn't know that. So That's just sneaked by me. You might even say it's... Um, yeah, this is the thing, it's so funny to us, because we do it the reverse way. So they would be like, it's a masterpiece, a masterwork, it has so many references to all these kinds of philosophical fundamentals. It is art. While we would be like, it is art, but it's really shit. <laughs> like, that's just, you know, we, we go the different direction yeah. with the conversation. Um, so yeah, like I said, it's got... So many trappings of, of classic video essay bullshit, so I'm very happy. It, it feels very 101 for EFAB to go through this one. Not mm. too long, and it is called A Modern Masterpiece. Why Batman vs. Superman is a true work of art. Hmm, true. True like, work exciting. of art. I way prefer checking out true works of art than those fake ones. I don't know about you guys. Yeah, fake art is shit. I hate the, fake like art. the banana on the wall, that's fake art. But this That's this, fake art. This is true art. So uh I have I have watered my jabs. I'm ready to go. Here we go. Piano music? Let's see. Oh we start with a we start with a quote oh, wait, oh, wait, that's too quick. Hold up. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Say. Just go back. Hold up. Okay. Oh, oh fuck. I kept <laughs> All right. Yeah, yeah, bring it back. All right. Okay. Here we go. It's then, difficult to find a movie that feels true to itself. Off, you feel the hand of Hollywood, the movie making by committee on everything. Right. Um, um Okay. <laughs> so some I mean there there are people out there who would discount often, anything with like a, a plus 100 million dollar budget like like in terms of being able to reach that level that is being referred to in this statement. 
Like, a movie won't be true to itself if it's got a bazillion different people funding it and pushing it to be different things. And I think the last thing that ever gets considered this level is fucking the most superhero mainstream, movies. highly funded superhero movies. They're usually not allowed in this team. Um, That's like sci-fi movies aren't allowed to yeah. win proper Meanwhile, Academy Awards. We on EFAB are We're much comedy. kinder than that. We're like, well, what is it? Let's have a look-see. What's in it? What did it do? I don't really care who made it or yeah, how it was made. I just want to know what it is. Because is the implication that a committee could never make something good? Which is dumb. That is, well, it <laughs> really is. Dumb. And or similarly, is, are you, is the implication that a person, a, no one can ever have a bad vision? Yeah, because, I mean, all you need to do is look at, like, the fan fiction people write to know that people who are just given whatever they, you know, who just do whatever they want, just because you have something to say doesn't mean that it's worthwhile. <laughs> just because you have a passion doesn't mean you're good at that thing. And what if, um, like, you know, this guy is saying this about BVS, and then Zack Snyder in 10 years comes out and says, you know what, I wasn't really involved at BVS. Like, I know... A lot of people love it, and they consider it like, oh, it's such a great movie, but it's just like, you know, I, I didn't, it didn't really have much of my input in it. And then loads of behind-the-scenes stuff mm -hmm. opens up, like, there's ten writers, there was three directors doing different scenes at once. And I'd just be like, man, your favorite director. movie was made by committee, how do you feel? <laughs> I guess the committee got it right. Yeah. So, um, but of yeah. course, this is very interesting to think about, because it's like, is the implication that, like, a, a piece of media needs a central guiding vision? Because, like, video games, for instance, are incredibly collaborative mm -hmm. as a process for development. Like, that, those are going through several people, but there are still some really good games that came out of that process. And there are some really bad games that one person <laughs> made that nobody told him what he could do. And I would argue uh, it's not that simple. feels true to itself. That's way too vague for me. I'd be like, can you, um, can you be yeah. more specific? And I guess, generally, I would probably prefer that a director have more of an influence over their film than less. Um, generally. Yeah. Generally, sure. It, gen it might be interesting. More interesting, it's more just I don't think you can write <coughs> it off because it was interfered with. And, like, and of course, it depends on the director, right? Like, when Edgar yeah. Wright was doing Ant-Man, I would have preferred it if they didn't interfere at all because I trust him as a director. But, like, Zack Snyder is a different story. Yeah, we, well, <laughs> we get so well. many dramatic ironies in terms of, like, oh, Wonder Woman 84? That was her own project. Oh, Prometheus? That Alien Covenant? Decision, That's yeah. just uh, Ridley getting his own shit done. And it's like, uh... Okay. And, and then... I mean, you know, Civil War, as we've been over before, is one of those movies that a producers, a, 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 people who are like pushed the writers to do particular things, they applied restrictions, one of them being Tony has to be in this story. And it's like, oh, but I think that made it way better. Uh, <laughs> so, your you know. restrictions, yeah. restrictions can be helpful. It's complicated uh, in terms of writing. Yeah, uh, it can be helpful or it can be destructive. Like, well, the good example that I think we talked about a lot Venom must be in Spider Man 3. Right. Like, if that, that's your requirement, and then you also decide that you also want to keep Sandman and Green Goblin pers as the director, it's like, oh, how much of that is your fault than then for the outcome? And, and then, so... you know, someone might be like, well, you should have gotten rid of, of us. Uh, no, you shouldn't have made him do Venom. It's like, well, you shouldn't have done Sandman. I don't know. Like, I'm paying <laughs> for the movie. <laughs> you know? Like, yeah, yeah that, whose fault it is is an explanation, not an excuse. Yes. So I feel like around, like for the past many years, the sentiment was the more control and the more the writer director role is respected, the more better, like better stories we'll get. But I think now it's like, mm -hmm. oh fuck it, I don't know, I don't know. It seems to be a bit of a perfect storm. You really need talent. You need to work really hard. And the one thing that will come back yep. to every time is make it make sense, please. Just make it make sense. Like you appeal to that fundamental, you're probably going to be steered in the right direction relatively. I swear, you won't end up with the chair in the room story. Uh, you won't. You, you can get some really interesting things happening when you make stuff make sense. Um, whether yeah. you're a committee, or a writer-director, or two people, or ten people, whatever. Just try and focus on making everything streamlined. Making sense. Running in cause and effect. Yeah. yeah. You know, you, you said this video is only 13 minutes. We'll probably get through it fairly quickly, and here we are three seconds in. Just, well, it was yeah. a quote. Well, <laughs> so you could dig for a while. Let's yeah, see how yeah, he's yeah, got yeah. visuals coming, Rags. It's gonna be so epic. <gasps> Check it out. I like textuals. Dun, 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 dun. 
it's kind of funny because for us, it's like a remember, remember, remember. And you're like, yeah. <laughs> I remember I do. all the scenes. Oh my goodness. I remember the bat dream. I oh, think it yes. was a dream. Oh, right. The bat time dream. Because it's not complicated enough. <laughs> it's like we need to confuse the audience more. I wish that he uh, included the shot of the Granny's Peach Tea in this. Oh, yeah. It's one of the, the greatest cinematic achievements. I like it too. Emblematic of the film. This is a jar of a kiss. Hmm. Alright. Part oh, oh. one, setting the scene. I wonder if the use of Times what of is Roman was deliberate. <laughs> it's a very high... It's a very high... Well, you font. know, Times New Roman is like the, the proper font, right? That's what you meant. Yeah. yeah. Isn't, isn't this um, the most glorious official. beginning to a video essay, though? What is what art? Is, what, is art? Oh, what is art? <laughs> it's like, oh, fuck, here we go. <laughs> because I could only imagine they bring this up to keep certain things out of this category, right? He's going to try and prop up BVS and throw other things down. It's like, oh, here we oh, go. Well, let's put it this way. I'm probably going to be really disappointed with his definition of art. Because <laughs> I, art is I don't even... Just... We Guarantee actually you. talked about this uh, we, we did about this recently. Thing. But, um, yeah. yeah um, however... Maybe it's best for this if we let him give his first. Oh, for sure, sure yeah. And I'm, just say what's wrong with it. Yeah. I'm yeah, because I'm I'm very is. like I'm not committed to anything with with the term art. I try to avoid using it just because it's uh it becomes very so uh, gatekeepy broad. for a lot of people. Mm. And I'm just like yeah. okay, I'm just, I'm just talking about this movie then. You guys do the the thing. Um, but yeah, like if we get to, I'm I'm assuming he's going to use the words genuine, true, actual stuff like that. <clears throat> just just le letting us sit here without yeah. His art. How should we, as a modern audience, approach the genre of film? Um, the How should filmmakers film. go about Hold creating more film? <laughs> the medium of film, not the genre. Medium. Yeah. It's not a genre. How should filmmakers create art? Ooh. Ooh, I'm wow. ready for that one. <laughs> I, I don't have the balls to answer that I'm excited. Question. I'm excited for this Dude, one, yeah. Don't you love this, right? Like, that one of the things that's often levied at uh, EFAP is the idea that it's, like, imposing a lot of restrictions on writers, but, like, I don't think any of us would say that there is a way that you should create art. I think we have found the fewest restrictions that can allow the most freedom while also being something that can be applied consistently. I don't know that any other system yeah. than the one we use has those attributes. Like, I if, think you that... hear us, if you hear us say it should make sense as a horrible limitation, <laughs> I, I don't know what to say, man. Like, I don't think that's a huge limitation to say that it should just make sense. I think that's a pretty decent uh, low bar. In a lot of the conversations that I have when people are, so I actually used the meth bear analogy with someone at work the other day. And um, he was like, well, but if you piss off the meth bear and force it to chase you back to the campsite, that's more interesting than you just simply turning around quietly and getting the gun and killing the meth bear. I'm like, okay, so you lack imagination. You can have it where you're trying to sneak away, you're trying to do the smart thing, and I don't know, because you're in a forest, you step on a on a branch, yep. creates a loud sound, and the bear's alerted to your location, and now there's a chase scene. Simple. You get your payoff of the meth bear chasing the guy as he hurries over to his campsite to grab his meth bear killing 50 caliber sniper rifle, um, and the guy is still acting as competently as he can. Hey, it's our fiction. Make it 5,000 5, caliber. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll do that caliber. too. Um, yeah, that, that's funny to me. Because if, if your story is just the guy gets a milkshake and comes home, I'd be like, you might want to spice that up a bit. Maybe add some tension. As I was like, well, it makes sense, doesn't it? Mr. EFAP, Mr. Objective, isn't it perfect as it is? I'd be like, all right. <laughs> like, chill out. <laughs> <laughs> There's someone out there who might enjoy the milkshake story. I just, I'm, I'm on board with. Th that's kind of the whole point of us talking about what the variables are, the multipliers. Because, yeah, you go, what if there's a dragon in that milkshake story? It's like, okay, this is going to get real complicated real fast. Like, where did the dragon come from? What does it have to do with this guy? What's it going to do? Is it going to kill him? Like, it's a what, myth what, dragon. You know, is this a fantasy world? It's like, okay, remove the dragon. All those variables are gone. Back down to just, he goes to the shop, picks up a milkshake. It's like, oh, that's much easier. But it's so much boring. Okay. Guy's a diabetic and his, uh, his blood sugar is running low and there's a ton of obstacles in the way of him getting his milkshake. And we become really invested in him getting his milkshake at the end of the day. That was the thing. Make, I think, any story interesting, because interesting is quite a, um, a, a, a trait that's, you know, you can appeal to it in so many different ways. 
Uh, anyway, what should film? Why? How should filmmakers create art? That's just yeah. Give it to us. I'm excited. Give. It's difficult to consider the genre of film a form of art when it's married to an industry that couldn't care less about the artists. Don't agree. Yeah, don't agree with, no. Yeah, couldn't care less. Like nah. Yeah, I, yeah, I don't agree with that at all. I think uh, maybe too. It's detrimental sometimes. I mean, yeah, we yeah. have Wonder Woman '84. I I don't think that, stuff. I don't think that in the 21st century there is any contention that filmmaking is a is an art form. I think that um, what's been going through the like that sort of growing pains recently has been video games. Um, that's more uh, contentious with some people. Like Roger Ebert believed that video games aren't yeah, art, but he was wrong. I, I know he was wrong. That's the idea. Is but yeah. like Roger Ebert would never say. He wouldn't be caught dead saying that um, filmmaking isn't art. No. Uh, like of any type, yeah. I, I I guess I'm more interested as well in the idea that like there's a problem of valuing the artist as is understood by the industry because a lot of the time you know you're just a producer sitting in your room and you're like, oh this uh, this Force Awakens film that made loads of money. Who's the guy who made that? It's like J.J. Abrams. It's like whoa, what an incredible artist. Let's get him more stuff, more money. And, and it'd be like, in a sense, they value the artist in that whatever pleases the crowd the most, which, by the way, is a metric for a, some people use for how good a piece of art is. It's how many people and how happy they were. And so it, like, we're going to have to get into so many definitions. But like, as far as I'm concerned, there's, um, there's a problem now in that it's like, cause I feel like there's more awareness of the writers and directors now than there was even 10 years ago for a lot of people. It's like mm. most people knew Tarantino, Spielberg, and, and and lots of other names, but now loads of names. We've we're hyper aware, and I think we've talked about it before. But whenever there's a new project, it's like, well, who's making it? Like, I don't really care yeah, like, like the project name or who's going to be in it. I'm like, who's writing it? And who's directing it? Yeah, like I would be excited for a sequel to Into the Spider Verse, but that's being written yeah. by the guy that did Wonder Woman eighty four. Well, yeah, so... like a good example of that, like Phil Lord and, and Christopher Miller, like whatever mm -hmm. they're working on is something I'm going to be interested in. Yeah, because yeah. the, the reverse James example Gunn. is, um, oh, you upwards. guys want to go see Lego Movie? Like, not really. It's like, well, it's made by those uh, creatives who are behind this, and you're like, oh, yeah, I guess, mm. yeah, okay. I wasn't interested uh, in the Jump Street movies until I found that Lord Miller were involved. Yeah. It's, uh... So I, it, I, I would argue uh, there is actually more of a focus on the artist in the film industry now, but it's getting a little bit corrupted in terms of a producer only sees dollars. Um, but then you also have the whole, like, you know what happened with, um... Su not Suicide it's called Fantastic Four, I, I guess, with uh, Ant-Man to a degree, and some other ones where they hire people who are known for making really good indie films that make loads of money or just successful movies where they're, they're the right director, they bring them on and then they crush their uh, freedoms. Like, you have to argue at some point, oh, well, they valued the artist in some way or shape or form there. They just thought that they had the better idea on what should be done. Because <clears throat> I find it they interesting, right? They can make right? our idea work. The, the idea that they don't, they don't value the artist when their whole goal is like, well, we want to find the best artist to make us the most money, you know? So technically speaking, they do value the, the getting the artist the the, the best. Yeah, um, I I'm not going to be too broad, but like you know, well, I'm sure there's a lot of uh... this guy thinks Snyder's a great artist. He's got given full freedom on now three major movies that cost over like 200 million each. Which That's are insane. All terrible. Well, um, and like, what reason do you think Warner Brothers had for hiring Joss Whedon after Zack Snyder stepped down? The Avengers and Age of Ultron, Precisely. Right? Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> well, especially The Avengers. Yeah. Um. Ba -ba -ba. So, yeah, I don't know. I don't, I don't agree fully. I think there's problems in how the artist relates to the industry and film and Hollywood and stuff, but the idea that they couldn't care less about them, nah, that's way too cynical for yeah. me. And I'm pretty cynical. There's a so. reason they don't pick up people off the street. Yeah. <clears throat> Constantly fed pieces of amusement and propaganda that has... We're fed pieces no, of amusement and propaganda. Used to promote or publicize a particular political cause or point like of view. I feel like basically a lot of art could be, if you're going to use that definition of prop, uh, especially of a biased and misleading nature, that's probably the most important attribute yeah. because like a You'd lot have of to... stories want to promote. He highlighted the wrong section of he that did. definition. Yeah. 
he'd have to prove this as well with, with whatever examples, because I might be willing to agree on some, but certainly I have a feeling not all. Mm. Um, also, the state of experience of finding something funny or enjoying. So he's saying like... A provision of enjoyment. Um, something that has, like, provides entertainment. You know, like Batman and Robin, he'd be like, that's not art, that's simply amusement. I'd be like, okay, gatekeeper, stop, stop. Please stop. Yeah. Yep. It no brings me to be... great merriment. And if someone and was like, merriment. yeah, but, yeah, but it's not art, right? I'd be like, oh, why do you... Of I... course it is. Why do I get the... bat the nipples that... are art. Fight me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it was why do I... Oh, speaking of which, uh, I think that um, it's quite likely that George Clooney's Batman is the only live-action Batman that hasn't killed anyone. <laughs> Are you uh, sure? I, mean, I, have, I need to watch Batman Robin so again. I can't remember if Michael, he killed anyone. Michael Keaton in the first movie drops a bomb that kills like a dozen people. Yeah, he kills yeah. the Joker. He kills at least two guys in Batman Returns. Like, grin sadistically before kicking him down the hole so he blows himself up. Yeah, no, I, uh, I, I, lights a dude on fire with the afterburner on the Batmobile. And then Val Kilmer kills Two-Face, basically. And then... Well, he kills uh, um, someone else in that movie at a different point. Because I, I had that argument on Twitter with uh, someone. They were like, he didn't kill Two-Face because Two-Face fell off for his own clumsiness. <laughs> it's like, like, okay. What but, was um, Batman's plan then when he threw all those coins? Uh, they said the plan... Unironically, they said the plan was to throw the coins and to make him drop all of the coins, thus not being able to flip the coin, thus he can't shoot anyone. Okay, so then why didn't he try to save Two Face while he was falling to his death? Do what well, yeah, Batman did. Well, yeah, anybody who's acting in good faith watching that scene, Batman was happy to let him die. He was like, yeah, fuck mm -hmm. you, you're dead. Um, but someone already highlighted that he kills someone else at one point in that movie, like thug wise. Also, Two Face mm -hmm. shoots people without flipping the coin in that movie, so. Bullshit. Also, Two Face flips the coin repeatedly until he gets the desire. No, he like, uses the bullets that, that have a 50% chance of igniting. <laughs> Two, yeah, Two Face is full of shit. That movie, he keeps flipping until he gets the the outcome he wants. It's not. Yeah. He, like, has, it's... he has other people load his magazines half and half with blanks and real bullets. <laughs> <laughs> he, I, one I, of his lackeys, but he says, "Don't tell me, don't tell me." I just want to highlight if people want to use adaptation arguments regarding Batman killing. I mean, <laughs> well, we should all aim for Batman and Robin's excellence. I would say. Again, it is, it the, is an it's the most enjoyable Batman movie I've ever seen. I love it. It's too good. I want them to bring back Arnius as Mr. Freeze in something. He deserves it. Uh, I was, I was, uh, uh, I was going to say this earlier and, and got cut off. But why do I get the feeling that this video is going to assert that everyone that's uh, criticizing this movie for being too like uh, needlessly grim dark? They're just too stupid to understand the really deep themes and substance of Batman v Superman. Um, I think you can yeah, guarantee he's going to talk about themes. I'm, I'm getting I'm getting Batman v Superman fans. When it yeah, I'm getting major pretentious vibes from this one. Well, it's so great because we've done the Twin Perfect thing. You guys, I'm referring to chat, have seen what happens when they are faced with the idea that their themes are shat on by their own content. They don't know what to do. It's cognitive dissonance. They explode. It's, yeah, they it's, don't realize it's crazy. that there's a difference between executing it well and not. Even though that, that concept's like in their brain, they've not addressed it. They're just like, well, no, BVS did it right. It's like, oh, but what about this? It's like, uh, excluding that. Excluding that. <laughs> Beautiful or true, how can we call a film good? Oh. Zack Snyder's Justice League is what? just over the horizon, and I could not be more excited. Oh, unfortunately. <laughs> it's nice to see people. Oh, sorry. Oh, what? 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 Where, where well, it's because the pause button is so <laughs> yeah, fucking. Yeah. yeah. I told you. No, I, 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 I believe and agree. The only problem that ever comes up is if we don't know where we were. But we do know where we were. Batman face. And Not yeah, even a minute in. Uh, a lot of people are very excited for this Snyder Cut. We are to a degree. I know our fans are. <laughs> I'm not. <laughs> Listen, I said to a degree. It could be 0 0.00001% excitement. Um, I'm excited to get it over with. Yeah, I mean, I'm just super curious. Like, through the roof curious. I don't know what's going to happen. Um, as for, you know, we now know why this video was made. Uh, he's a big fan of BVS and Snyder's stuff, and he just wants to, I don't know, give it a fair shake, I guess. Let's have a look-see. It's nice to see people all over the world united over this, and it has certainly <clears throat> been my pleasure. 
United? Uh, united? No. Okay. I think um, that we have a very different definition of what united means. If by united you mean horrifically shattered opinion-wise, I agree, we're united. I was going to say, I, I thought that everyone accepted this. It's not a united at all. It's that there's a significant amount of people supporting it and then people deriding it for being like embarrassing and stupid. I mean, me... just the Joker Jesus image alone, the reaction to that, like you see all the people mocking that uh, well, that promotional image. I assume my timeline's biased, but uh, I've seen more mocking than like, oh my god, so exciting. I've seen exciting posts, but I've mainly seen mocking posts. I mean, like, okay, so Cosmonaut's got this huge fan base, and he mentioned like this movie's gonna make him rich. Like he's expecting to shit on it. And right. He's right. Uh, well, I mean, we're expecting to show on it, but I've never, that's never been a component of like, wow, you're so unfair. It's like, well, no, if it's good. Like, I'll always refer back to the Batwoman episode where they had a good scene and we were all blown away by the good scene because yeah. we we're all waiting. We have to absorb Wonder what Woman 1984. Yeah, yeah, we had the same thing. Um, mm -hmm. I, like, like, Snyder Cut could be good. I just have no reason to expect that whatsoever. In fact, I'm hoping for the opposite at this point, because I get a lot of amusement from Zack Snyder films. They're very funny. So, there, um, there you go. You just, you just admitted to being biased and wanting the movie to be bad. Well, I'm hoping for a good experience. I can get that from it either being hilariously stupid or from being well-written. I just hope it's funny bad. Yeah, but, you know. Because it ain't going to be good. I just want its badness to be funny. Well, look at this. This looks cool. You got, he's, look at his eyes, Rags. Isn't that scary? That's pretty... Nah. Yeah. That is spooky. Oh, you know. You have the capital O opinions eyes. <laughs> if only... Oh yeah, he's not here. He couldn't make it, I'm afraid. Um, but uh, he'll be back for the inevitable next thing that we do in this arc, whatever it be. He'll be back. To play a small rat. In preparation for the film, I thought it would be a good idea to talk about its predecessor. Personally, one of my favorite movies of all time. Oof. Oh boy, Oof. that's Batman damning Superman, indictment of yourself. Of justice. Oh. Damning indictment of yourself. Oh. It's such a strange feeling though, right? Because like, we're in an environment where it's just like BVS is a clown movie, but there are people out there who are like, this is one of the greatest pieces of art ever made. You're like, oh my god. God. Batman v Superman is a beautiful and unique experience. For modern... <laughs> it really, this really reminds beautiful? me of like the arc Ugh. that the prequels went through, where um, they came out and uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but there were a number of people that were critical of them even as they were coming out. Oh, for sure. Um, yeah. Especially like OT fans. Of course, like when people first saw the Phantom Menace, they were hyped. They they had never th thought they'd seen a bad Star Wars movie be before. Then Attack of the Clones came out. People were critical. Revenge of the Sith came out, and like, you know, that was well-liked enough, but everyone acknowledged that they weren't as good as the original trilogy. And then the Plinkett videos came out, and everyone agreed, yeah, they were really, really shit. And then there's been this kind of redemption arc they've been going through because of the sequel trilogy. And like, you know, maybe we were too hard on the prequels. No. And <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I mean, oh. yeah, there's worse. There's worse I than the Oh my god. Uh, 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 mosquitoes. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think that's definitely an element of white big ass mosquitoes, mosquitoes over there. <laughs> is that a mosquito? that like? Oh, yeah, a mosquito. Yeah, there's a wash, wow, uh, wash mosquito. Yeah. What I was, all I was going to say was that I think that there is an element of like <laughs> counterculture that is informing this because I, I, so, so, yeah. I, I, I don't like to achieve why people do it but i have an additional suggestion to that one uh Fringy. i think we talked about it before but the concept of like a room full of all the people talking about this movie reduced down to 100 and then over time the people who don't like it exit that room because they want to talk about other shit mm. the people who love it stay in that room forever they're like no this is one of the greatest things ever it's so fucking good. and over time that ratio of people who were talking about how bad it was and people who were talking about how good it was changes over to favor the good and i think the same happened with the prequels because most people have moved away then we are one of many different types of people who come into that room like, yeah, let's check it out. We're like, oh, this is horrible. And all the people in the room are like, hey, no, no, you know. <laughs> oh, uh, not. Yeah, and then we, we encourage some of the people who left years ago to come back in the room and be like, no, it is, though. It is horrible. Like, come on. <laughs> and yeah, uh, right now, Snyder movies are going through this re-examination. And you know what they like to do. 
Like, you know, people have been too harsh, they didn't understand it, and here we go, I'm gonna break it down in ten minutes, why it's the greatest piece of art in the history of the world. And he's like, okay. Yeah. <laughs> well, we'll Mahler, be like... I don't know if this is... No, go ahead. I was just gonna say, we'll have an exhaustive, like, 20-hour sequence for both Man of Steel and BVS, going through every single problem, and then we talk to a creator that's considered one of the top in terms of defending or explaining the Zack Snyder movies, and he fumbles to even explain, like, what writing should be at all. And how death of the author is a stupid concept. <laughs> it's like, this is, this is next level. Yes or no? Yes or no? Did you guys watch Lemmy? Well, I wish we did. I guess no, that conversation may have gone better. No. Yeah. But um, YouTube is now going to start deducting U.S. taxes from creators yeah, who do not that, live though. in the U.S. Yeah. Hmm. Is that... Yeah, you just need to submit your tax info on AdSense and then they won't take the money. Most countries have uh, tax treaties with the United States, so with those tax treaties, you can either reduce or just outright zero out any tax that the U.S. takes, and then just pay tax where you are. Okay. Yeah. So it's pretty pretty straightforward. I'm seeing people on Twitter. They're like, they take, you know, like, oh, taking my money. Like, why should I pay tax in the U.S.? It's like it's not that you should. It's a U.S. based company, so they have tax obligations in the United States. Like, it's not that complicated. It doesn't matter if you live in, in, like, I don't know, Argentina or something. Oh, well, whatever. <laughs> Total side, side note. For modern audiences, and was certainly ahead of its time. Oh, by the way, he called it beautiful. It's not. It's one of the ugliest films I've ever fucking seen. It's <laughs> well, like okay. Man of Steel. It makes me sick when I watch it. So what's interesting to me is that, uh, saying, describing a movie as beautiful and unique, I'd be like, oh, you could be talking about all movies. I'm, uh, I'll just wait, because the qualifier is that you thought it was beautiful and you found it to be unique. Like, yep. Each meconium is beautiful and unique. There. <sighs> Let's just hope he says something more specific. That's Time. It. So, why does it get so much hate? Because oh, it's shit, mate. You're in luck. We've got loads of coverage on why you, it's so yeah. shit. <laughs> oh, yeah. We we have no lives, you see. Uh, so <laughs> we talk extensively about why these movies are horrifically bad. I wish these movies were made by a committee. Happily. Yeah. Main reason would be absolutely incompetent. Like, this is an umbrella tube. Like, so much mechanically falls the fuck apart, and I don't care what he's referencing philosophically. I couldn't care any fucking less. It doesn't matter to uh, me. Pretentious bites off more than it can chew. Um, it assumes that it's smarter than it really is. You have a plot that's run on um, a character crafting this impossibly ridiculous plan that can only work if everyone's an idiot. And luckily for him, everyone is an idiot. Mm -hmm. um, you have main characters, uh, like... Neither of the main characters, Batman and Superman, are likable in this. Um, they're not, they're like, not properly motivated to end up yeah. in their payoffs either, uh, unfortunately. But again, and, like it, it's got references to things, and so I'm just curious if we mm -hmm. could take any bad movie he hates and, and just apply some, uh, well, anything, right? Like just, take I'm, just any I'm just summing up. I'm just summing up why it gets so much hate. There's well, a lot of reasons to hate this movie. The thing is, everything you said doesn't address like the great, deep, the philosophical lens that this film is, is forcing its viewers to see the world through, and so he's probably going to assume you've missed the point. Mm, of course, we always oh, miss yeah. the point. I mean, it was, it, was, it was said to us in person. It's like, don't you understand? That's I not know. the point of the scene. And you're like, oh. Uh, All right. Mm -hmm. In order to understand why this film seems to be universally hated, I believe that a close examination of the context in which it exists is in order. I'm sure people. the context, yeah, <laughs> the context will definitely turn this into a quality film. Mm -hmm. The year is 2016. Marvel movies are at the peak of their popularity. When some uh, mm, is no, that the peak, sure of the peak of their popularity? I don't think so. No, peak no, is Endgame. I guess yeah, yeah, they were at money. their peak in that on that day, you know. It's, yeah, but <laughs> it only got higher off of that. Yeah, Endgame was definitely the peak for now. Someone spoke yeah. of superhero movies. Images of Iron Man, Captain America, and Thor were in everyone's hearts and minds. Sure, The Dark Knight was considered to be a good film, but also a relatively safe one. Man what? of Steel. Safe? Uh, no, safe. Uh, no. Uh, the Dark safe. Knight was pretty groundbreaking in how mature it was for uh, a superhero I'm... film. I don't like the word safe. I need to know specifically what he's referring to. Because a lot of people like to refer to it as like a gamble, so you don't know that the audience will receive the thing well, depending on what you do. 
And then a lot of people use that as an excuse for films that do shit. They're like, oh yeah, it wasn't a safe film, it, it went places, you know, it took risks. And you're like, ah, oh, don't use the took risks excuse, please. <laughs> the Dark Knight is often attributed to the trend of superhero films getting darker yes. and more mature, quote unquote. Was um when did the Watchmen come out? Two thousand nine. But after, oh, you're talking about, about the 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 book, right? The comic book? No, no, no. The the film, because that's another one you could argue added to that, right? From Zach. Yeah, but it's an adaptation of a very mature comic book. True. Um, but it being viable is what would be encouraging people to be like, oh, we can do this. Or I suppose, because even... The Killing Joke came out before The Dark Knight did, and, I mean, yeah. that was uh, attributed to comics becoming more more mature and gritty. Um, yeah, I don't know. I don't like the whole safe comic. Like, if someone said, like, yeah, of course, you know, X movie in the MCU did well, it's safe. You're like, well, what does that mean? Formulaic? Um, I, I remember when, like, when Rachel got killed in that movie, and I was, at first, I was like, holy shit, they really went there. Yeah, yeah. They killed off Batman's love interest. Uh, you know what's funny? Uh, I would, I, I think, uh, Rags, you initially said this about WandaVision's last episode, or at least as it went on, it became more of a, um, like, the Marvel sludge. Yeah, it became um, Marvel sludge. The funny thing about that, I guess, now, is that that might be what is considered safe when, like, everyone hates yeah. it. Everyone's like, boo, we don't like the Marvel sludge right now, like, give us something better. <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. what I'm saying sludge. is, like, safe is a very... <laughs> concept that keeps changing right i i wouldn't say that everyone hates wandavision i mean there's a lot of people that liked that horrible fucking finale which i think is the worst um, thing that the mcu has made sure but like the ire i've seen for that episode outweighs most of what marvel usually gets um in releases at least on social media like i don't i'm sure the general audiences loved it you know maybe they still do love the marvel sludge that when the first few episodes were coming out, people were complaining it's boring, and then Those they, people they were promising are evil. <laughs> yeah, they literally they were they were literally promising, don't worry, like later on there's going to be more of that standard Marvel action that you come mm. to expect from us. I'm like, oh no. And that's the thing, they didn't do that in response to people complaining because it was already done. It's just the sad fact of like, yeah, they break out of their shell briefly, and then it's like, go back in. I want the sludge. Give me. Oh yeah, I know. Like, like it's obviously not reacting to the people complaining. It's yeah. just that the fact that um, they know that what people want is the Marvel sludge. And so, if if we agree that that's what safe is, um, I would say that Ant Man and the Wasp type movies apply. I don't think Civil War does. Um, but the thing is, like everyone's going to be different on that. I suppose. Like, what counts as Marvel sludge? Because a, a, a requirement for me is usually that it is pretty much substanceless. Just like it's just bullshit just to allow your, st your typical payoffs to happen be they action or a character going you know what i've learned something today it's that you shouldn't be mean mm. but everyone has a different uh category for what safe is so i suppose we'll find out what his is deal had been released and was widely considered to be a failure despite loyal fans of superman and the overall dc universe vouching for it Despite I don't loyal care. fans vouching for it. That's interesting. Well, That's... like, so kind of by definition, yeah. I mean, if you're a loyal fan, you will vouch for it. Loyal fans no, of anything will vouch yeah. for it. Um, so that doesn't mean anything. And I'm just, if you really like Man of Steel and you think it's good, I just, I, I have issues with your ability to assess quality in media. Yeah. Uh, so, I, yeah, your opinion doesn't mean that much to me. Steel, in many ways, was a prelude to the controversy that awaited its infamous sequel. At this point in time, there was a formula for these action films, and Marvel Studios had perfected it. Well... Oh god, now I look foolish. I, mean, I don't know about... Yeah, I know, right? Uh, it happens all the time. But, um, but yeah, I, I, I ain't gonna say that the Marvel films had... Uh, the Marvel films had perfected it. No, um, no. I pretty, yeah, pretty scatter no. shot. This like I guess is just... that was when Iron Man three and four two came out. Yeah, this, this 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 I guess is where we're at with this conversation part two. So this Marvel sludge we're talking about, Thor two and Iron Man three are not the same Marvel sludge for me. Thor two is totally what I would consider Marvel sludge, but Iron Man three is a fucking annoying, terrible movie made by somebody who had their own vision on screen. It's like uh -huh. a Ryan Johnson type of deal. It's almost like oh well. 
it's still Marvel Sludge, though. I should be like, I don't know. I, I don't know that I consider it that way. I don't consider it like a bland sequence that gets you to all of the payoffs that are in a, an MCU movie on average. It does a lot of weird things, and it does them really poorly. Um, the, this whole formula thing. Like, I don't even understand that anyone could agree with this from like a more in-depth look, because Iron Man 1's beloved. Iron Man 2 shat on quite a bit. Um, Thor is liked. Captain America's really liked. And then I I Incredible Hulk, like, nobody likes, to the point they might even forget it. It's like, this seems like a completely different a lot set of... people forget of, that, yeah. You know, you know what I mean? Like, like, oh, formula. Like, I don't know, it's all over the place, isn't it? This is why, like, the conversation gets weird about this, but I can, you can see where he's going. The, the, the Zack Snyder's gonna be against that formula, and that's why audiences are having trouble with this. Audiences are so used to this sludge. <laughs> <laughs> was approval to the, the con- sludge controversy that awaited its infamous sequel. At this point in time, there was a formula for these action films, and Marvel Studios had perfected it. Nope. Write a mediocre, safe story. Ooh. Ooh. The Avengers Ooh, is not mediocre. Yeah, the <laughs> Iron Man's the... not mediocre. I need some, I need some um, definitions. <laughs> I would yeah. say the Avengers is the least mediocre out of uh, the first phase. The thing is, people look back on it and they might say that compared to maybe like the more complex. I need to know what they mean by mediocre. Do they mean simple? Do they mean retreaded? Do they mean low stakes? What are we saying? I don't know what mediocre means. Imagine in this context, standing on your hill that you are dying on about BVS being great and calling something else mediocre. Well, yeah. This is the thing, I think there are contexts that we might be able to agree certain elements or something about uh, Avengers is mediocre. N a lot of people like to go for the lighting, which I, I don't uh, take issue necessarily with, it's a little flat, sure, but uh, the, the idea that you prop up BVS, like, alright, so now I'm confused, mm -hmm. I just need to know what the scale is, but sure, mediocre, and they said safe as well. Is there something wrong with doing safe stories, is it not artistic to do that? And what is a safe what story? What if a safe story is what an artist wants to do? What if that vision is just a safe vision? Well, it's it's not not every um, idea has to is, be groundbreaking is, and risky. Is Wally not safe? What is uh what is the original Star Wars if it's not safe? I don't know. This is the thing I'm confused because if he was here, I'd like, be like, so what, how do you define a safe piece of artwork? Like Farm Boy saves the princess and blows up the the big yeah. bad space station. Like that's a really safe crowd-pleasing story. There's a reason why and it's, everyone fell in love with it. Yeah, it's a cornerstone of media, like that movie. <clears throat> so to be like, oh, I don't know well. if I'd call Star Wars safe when it came out. Well, see, that's the thing. If, is this something that evolves over time? In which case, you have to look at Avengers in relation to everything that came out around it? I don't I'd know. Say Probably, because when my parents talk about when Star Wars first came out, it was, they, they've never seen anything like it before. It blew them away. It was surreal. So, well, like, I'm talking about the story Yeah, if we itself, strictly talk about the story, writing but... beats, I think it would have to qualify as safe in terms of it's a very standard I guess. storytelling. It's a very arch, like, archetypical um, fairy tale. It's just set I in guess. space. But, like, that's kind of where I'm going with this. I don't see why safe is... If that's what safe is, why is safe bad? Is the Mona Lisa safe? <laughs> like, I don't know. <laughs> I mean, it's pretty secure at the Louvre, so I'd mm. say it's safe. It, to me, it comes across as pretentious. You're like, look at you with your safe art. What does that mean? <laughs> what, are you, what are you suggesting? I don't look into the edgy stuff enough? Because if he's saying Zack is edgy, you know what? I'm not going to disagree on that one. Shell out dollars to make the movie, gear up for the next one. Marvel stayed. That's what Batman, Batman v Superman was. Uh, that was. Per this is what the DCEU is doing too. <laughs> well, you. This is why the context is so strange to me. It's like, you, you do get, like, the DCU, they spend hundreds of millions to make hundreds of millions. That's what it is. If you want me to admit that like, about the MCU, it's like, well, the DCU totally counts for that, too. Mm -hmm. Um, Like, Age of Ultron did this, TASM 2 did this, um, BVS did this. Well, if they were like, wait, you don't think Civil War was made to make loads of money? I'd be like, well, of course. I, I don't see why that the would stop it from having a good story, though. Yeah. yeah. I don't know why you're bringing all this shit up. Like, oh, look at the soulless buddy projects. Marvel, with your safe stories. To make the movie, gear up for the next one. 
Marvel stayed at least five steps ahead from the movie it was working on. You say it was five steps ahead, it just- it Five just, steps ahead? It was the most normal start ever. We want to make a team of heroes, we give them each a movie, and then mm -hmm. we make the team movie. Yeah, it, it Five steps like, ahead. It seemed like- yeah, like it just seems like an idea that makes sense to me. <laughs> well, I, I think it's always too that. risky with that. If well, you would... he probably meant in the fact that like they started a lot earlier, so they had a lot more time to do this rather than so DC makes their first movie after Marvel's already done their first big team up movie. The funny thing about so that, I think, want, like, rush it. is the Avengers came out in 2012, right? Um, yes. We're at 2021 now. We could have had the Thanos equivalent Endgame movie for the DCU at this point. Uh, yeah. Had they done it all reasonably instead of fucking around, like you get uh, two. Yeah, would have had better. Go ahead. Like, so, doing on 2013, even, your Batman and Superman movies can come out. Next year, the next two, Wonder Woman, Aquaman, something like that. Then their team-up movie the year after, then all of their sequel movies in the following few years. And then, uh, you know, you, you can cram it to a point where it would it would probably function. And Batman and Superman should sell themselves. As long as you've got people writing good stories, you'll be fine. Uh, I think also, they, the, they didn't the, have to play catch-up, is what I was saying. Yeah, because... Time-wise, it also would be perfect for them now to put out their biggest movie while Marvel is like, I don't know, resting, I guess, uh, yeah. re reassessing their things. Like, oh, look, now these, it's DC's turn. Now we can I do our finish of, for all the things. That's probably part of the point of doing Snyder Cut now, because it's, uh, it's something they don't have to release in cinemas anyway. They can get a lot of testing on it, and there's no Marvel properties to really compete with it necessarily. If you count well, which is funny, <laughs> Falcon and Winter Soldier, I think, comes out the day after. Yeah, there you go. Um, so, yeah. I promise their characters are still shit, so... Mm. Well, absolutely. Well, just... uh, their writing is so <laughs> bad, that's what just never carries them. And, and I just think it's it's amusing, because like, the general audiences... Like, this is the thing, if you ask the average person, I'm not even sure they know... Like, if you went, oh my god, I can't wait for the Martian Manhunter movie, and then they're like, oh, is that... like? Is he teaming up with Iron Man at any point? And you're like, <laughs> no. And you're like, oh, why is that? Like, most people just... I would argue that the MCU isn't even their their um their enemy. Back in 2012, it should have been the we can ride off of their success, because we'll be marketing in very let, similar ways. Let me level with you. Like, honestly, I wouldn't be surprised if a lot of people thought Aquaman was Marvel. Yeah. Like, that wouldn't surprise me if a lot of people thought yeah. it was a Marvel movie. <clears throat> I could see people it. thinking that. Talk about making money. Imagine they were successful, they had their own version of Avengers a few years after the, the actual Avengers, and then they strike a deal with the two companies to have a crossover multiverse fight between the, like, yeah, holy shit. <laughs> yeah. Think of the dollars, you silly company. <laughs> I want to see Batman fight <laughs> Spider-Man. Yeah. And the movie Vanilla, Cut and Dry, and safe. Up until Captain America's Civil War, there hadn't deviation from this formula. But oh, even that's interesting. I mean, were to say think... that Civil War was the first deviation from the formula. I don't know that that's what he's implying. I think he's implying including Civil War. Oh, oh including Civil and War. And that it was after Civil War that you got like Thor Ragnarok or something. You sure? Let, yeah, well, let's see. Let's see what he says. Yeah, we could. Right, yeah, let's roll it back. It's working on, and the movies were all very vanilla, cut and dry, and safe. Up until Captain America's Civil War, there hadn't been much deviation until, from this. Up until yeah, Captain America's Civil War. I don't know. So, but remember, he's Civil been using War was language first... incorrectly anyway. So, like, I'm well, not. I I'm still going to think we take his. We need to play more of what he says, is what I'm trying to say. Like, past what he says here. I want to see what he says about Civil War. Okay. Yeah, we could see but even Civil War played it safe oh, with its okay. story. Even Civil War, all right. No, well, then he said it played it. Safe. I was about to say, yeah, he just <laughs> fuck's sake. So he went from it was it was formulaic until Civil War, but even that was formulaic. It's like, oh. yeah, yeah. I uh, I don't know what argument to argue against. I was gonna say, I'm what so the fuck do we make of that? And, lost. and too many people talk about the Marvel formula without talking about the Marvel formula. You know, the, the, everyone likes like, to label it? it. It's like, what do you mean when you say that? Because I know for a fact that you don't think Iron Man is as good as Ant-Man, so what is this formula that you're talking about? You mean the other way around? You don't think Ant-Man is as good as Iron Man? No, either way works. Oh, uh, yeah, alright. Not allowing characters to suffer any of the consequences that the marketing suggested they would. Oh, don't get me wrong, I'm not here to condemn- <sighs> Okay, uh, Rhodey's crippled. Um, well wait, needs- 
Half I, of our Avengers are criminals. The funny thing is, I partially agree, but it's not Civil War's fault. It's, uh, no, it's the, other the other movies that came off. Civil War gave you a I whole mean, yeah, new we just world looked... to build on. Um, yeah, I mean, look what just happened with WandaVision. Like, it's not Infinity War's that, fault I guess. that, and that then, and what happened was single one blew it. Yeah. Yeah. It's not Infinity War's you fault had that it all and you blew it. <laughs> it's not <laughs> Infinity War's fault that it, basically everything that happened in that movie is being undone. Like, what's next? Heimdall's going to get resurrected, right? Hopefully, you know, Robo Heimdall. <laughs> Because <laughs> like, it's a movie, hey, um, yeah, yeah. Because like the most you get is when Tony is like, "We lost because of your fuck up in Civil War," and for a moment in Endgame, you're yeah. like, oh! "But then it gets dropped yeah. after they have a chat quick," and it's like, oh, oh, "Okay, all right." That was like the best scene in that whole movie. There's a timeline of the MCU that I want a movie for, and I don't think we're ever gonna get it. Where there's a team of Avengers run by Cap, who are all vigilantes, and there's a team of official ones that are endorsed by the yeah, government. Secret Avengers, basically. That would have been really cool. Really yeah, cool. I wish they'd all made a movie for it, and you could have a threat that they all have to deal with, and, and you know, you have the horrible choices of, like, do we work with Cap when... You know, just all these different questions that can come up. Infinity War, just tickled with it, played with it a little bit, but uh, we skipped over yeah. that timeline for the most part. That's not Civil War's fault. Civil War set you up and gave you all the consequences. I hate when people say there's no consequences. The fucking Avengers have been split in half. Half of them will be arrested if they're seen again. How is that not <laughs> consequence? I think that it'd be kind of neat if they brought back Chris Evans as Cap for a movie in between Civil War and Infinity yeah. War. Go ahead and do it. I'll, I'll watch that movie. I know well, Cap someone, the, I someone think... might say like Black Widow, but um, I don't know that nah. anybody is in Black Widow except for Black Widow, so... I think Tony, apparently Robert Downey Jr. is going to have a cameo in it. Mm. Yeah, I know. That's oh like boy, I'm worried. I'm so worried. I'm worried Just... <laughs> Even when you're dead, you could still be assassinated. <laughs> Never forget it. And yeah, um, a, con a major consequence was supposed to be the, the friendship between Cap and I, and I was supposed to be severed. Not to never be recovered, but I mean, what they did with it was shit. Uh, made of what could have been done. And then, um, yeah, like all these countries making it very clear to the superheroes of the world that we're not going to fucking tolerate this reckless defense anymore. Mm-hmm. It's a major movie for the MCU. It's just not its fault that nobody built on it. And you could say, like, well, it's the same makers, isn't it? It's like, I don't care. <laughs> Ridley Scott made matter. Alien and Prometheus. Shut up. I mean, I guess that sort of... It, it kind of bolsters his point that the MCU likes to play it safe and that they uh, radically alter the status quo at the ending of uh, Civil War and then just kind of ignore it in later movies as much as they can, at least. Well, if he had said that, I would have agreed, but he said the Civil War played it safe. Precisely. So, hmm. yeah. In any of these movies, but I think it has gotten to the point where people are mistaking escapism for genuinely good filmmaking. Oh. Oh, um, oh, escapism oh, can be genuinely good filmmaking. Yeah. Escapism is neutral to quality. It's also yeah. so easy to get. Like, it can be applied to fuck a lot of fucking everything. There's like, even hobbies, you can just escape for them. And, you know, confusing escapism for good filmmaking. Boo. I, I don't. Why can't we just reflect we this back on him? Into that? Does he think that Lord of the Rings is not uh, good filmmaking? Well, you might argue well, that it is both great escapism and good filmmaking. Again, I'm just saying, why can't we reflect this back on him with BVS? Like, you're mistaking your escapism in BVS for good filmmaking. Uh, Raiders of the Lost Ark is, is escapism. Um, Minecraft e. is escapism. Uh, funny you mentioned. Uh, uh, the, the, I saw recently YMS apparently gave relatively low ratings to the original Indiana Jones trilogy and his fans were very upset. <laughs> low ratings? He gave, like, I think, because it's an action film? I think he gave them like a 4, 5, and 6, or 4, 6, and 5. Uh, the three Indiana Jones films. I think I, mean, I, 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 I should rewatch them, but I only remember enjoying them immensely. I, I just remember there's loads to compliment about the execution in those films, but yeah, the writing might not be as good as I remember. I don't know. Um, but I do know that I don't really mind him doing that. But he, uh, he put out a tweet yeah. pretty <laughs> furious with his fans for ripping into him for a, a long time. They had to delete a bunch of posts on his subreddit because everyone was very upset with him. <laughs> It's funny to me, right? Because, like, these are the people who get fucking pissed at us for saying that there's, like, a way to objectively do anything, but at the same time, they're like, hey, your subjective thing is wrong. <laughs> like, <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> oh, well. I hope he's all right.
amusement for art. <laughs> amusement for art? <laughs> what? But, like... <laughs> those are almost two things that... Sorry, like, what, do you, what does he think of Charlie Chaplin or uh, Buster Keaton? Or Indiana Jones. I mean, that's meant to be a fun action adventure story, but like Raiders of the Lost Ark. Is anything incredible. you can come up with. This is the problem. He's the arbiter. So he would, if you said like, what about Star Wars? He goes, that's art and amusement. Okay. What about, um, you know, and then name a film he doesn't like. He goes, oh, that's amusement, not art. <sighs> that's just amusement. Yeah, this is always going to be the qualifier. <gasps> so. But they're all art. If it's a movie, <laughs> it tell counts me. as a work of art. I know that it's not like. You know, high um, God, high art, I guess, as Ugh. some people say. It's not, you know, I just top shelf stuff. But I think people need to lose their um, their iron grip on the word art. It's okay for things to be considered art, even if they're shit, guys. It's all right. It's gonna be fine. Yeah. Let them have the that room title. Is art. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Enter Batman v Superman. <laughs> Please no. Yes, the door. Just, Leaf. How pretentious is this Bat video? Yeah. <laughs> Enter Batman v Superman. This is the one that's going to shake it all up. This is the one that's going to show everyone what real art is. This is our savior. This is our Jesus. It's thematically appropriate. <laughs> oh, no. Enter Batman versus Superman. Oh, my God. Change Get the ready. landscape Prepare forever. Prepare your anus. The world was never the same. The world is changing. On its opening day, audiences went to watch the quote-unquote superhero movie with high hope. <laughs> it is a superhero movie. It is a superhero movie. What is a superhero movie? Superhero, movie? <laughs> superhero oh, movie. You guys all know why he said that. It has the words because you know it's not why. because it's not a dumb superhero movie like all those other mediocre you, ones. This to me is like someone being like, you know, fucking KFC it is so fucking good. They, the <laughs> people on the opening day of KFC, they opened up their fast food and discovered that it was like gourmet It quality. was actually, yeah. Like, dude, okay, that, it, that needs to be gedelbed. It's a superhero movie. You don't need to... Uh, <laughs> I've already got so many Goodell quotes already. <laughs> Not fair. It's rare that like we're already this far in. Um, God, I'm struggling here. This is like really... <laughs> Now, you you started this being like, there's a quote in this that's so funny and we have to hear it. Was that it? Uh, I can't remember which one it was now. <laughs> <laughs> I've been laughing too much at all of them. So, the, the, this, this video wouldn't be anywhere near as funny if it were a parody. Like, I love that someone made this on purpose. Like, it's it's just wonderful. It's like The Room. Which is pretty cool, right, as a meta commentary considering the topic of this video? Mm -hmm. Oops. Something was wrong. <laughs> Something didn't feel Something right. Wasn't. Something felt. Yeah, the movie sucked. It was a broken. shitty movie. <laughs> Something felt broken. Was it the Boring. story? You could say that. You could say uh, one or two things, I maybe. That, that yes. hasn't really changed since it came out. <laughs> is oh. he, is, uh, are you okay, Fringy? <laughs> Fringy right? That sounded like a fake bro. cop, Fringy. Did, yeah. Fringy, you sound oh. broken. <laughs> I'm laughing so much that, like, is I'm, it, just, I'm dying gonna, here. Is he gonna end up saying something like, this is not a superhero movie, but something else? I don't know yeah. how, but I think it's, this is where Maybe it's going. Say, it's I'm gonna say he's, this is art. Yeah, this isn't a superhero <laughs> movie. This is art. And it's meant to challenge you or something. Oh. Right, like that way. Change yeah. my attention span. It's gonna change the way you <laughs> Bullshit. think about superhero movies. And if you don't get it, you missed the point. People are afraid of the things they can't understand. Yeah, Feeling they love saying danger that. Danger present. What? Danger of breaking a well-known... Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> no, it's not about oh. breaking... If you want to... <laughs> how do you explain Thor Ragnarok, then, sir? How, like, do, you, how do you explain The Dark Knight? That came yeah, out in 2008. Like, you can't simultaneously say, like, oh, people love it if you break the formula. They can do real well. Except this time, they didn't like it because it broke the formula. Like... <laughs> it sounds like you need to do a little more digging at this point. What's funny to me is that I've never viewed them this way. All of the films in the MCU and the DCU. Like, oh, do they follow the formula? Like, it doesn't really come up. I'm really just really digging into their stories. Which, and also, like, this movie, Batman v Superman, the last hour just completely deteriorates into, yeah. like, just action Boss. nonstop.
Also, um, regarding formulas, uh, doesn't that kind of depend on how many movies try to like basically tell the same kind of story, the same yes. story beats and everything? Which... Like, because uh, Iron Man isn't accused of being formulaic because it was kind of like the first MCU movie to do the like what we now are familiar with, like and consider the MCU formula. Mm-hmm. Like Black Panther and um, Doctor Strange and Iron Man are all very similar in plot beats, but Iron Man doesn't get the criticism that Doctor Strange and Black Panther received for that because it was like a trailblazer. It was groundbreaking in that sense. Sure. At the same time, so if you have a voice in the back of my head that's like, could that be because also they're shit though? Like, well, hmm. it's like if you have multiple movies that are trying to be like Batman v, v Superman, which thank God we don't, <laughs> that would be a formula. Well, I don't even, I don't even think that there's, they've made it clear that there, there's this some kind of significant formula break. You know, do you know what I mean? Like when yeah. you watch Batman v Superman, it's not like I'm thinking, "Hey, where's my you know?" And then formula. It's not number. bad because of the formula. Yeah, it's. This fo- Stop <laughs> focusing so much on the formula. Stop that. Yeah, Stop also, doing yeah, that. You you are misleading yourself. Why would he, why would he stop when he can categorize everyone who didn't like it as people who love formulaic sludge? Like, that would be awesome, right? Because that makes your movie look way better. Take my sludge well, alone. Oftentimes, formulas are, uh, are followed because it was like they were successful. They were like, they, they were successful with like the audience and the box office mm-hmm. and, and with critics sometimes. It's like, there's a reason well, why uh, there's storytelling conventions. Hence the confusion of, like, he surely agrees Ragnarok breaks this formula, so why was it successful if it broke the formula? Maybe the formula isn't the defining factor. <laughs> Who knows? There was a feeling of danger present. <laughs> danger of breaking <laughs> a well-known danger. formula. Poetry, symbolism, darker tones and themes. <laughs> Poetry, 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 symbol. The red capes are coming. Are that's that's poetry. Red capes are coming. <laughs> Wouldn't you feel a little embarrassed if your movie didn't do very well and many people didn't like it, and then you saw the one guy defending it hardcore, being like, "It's poetry. You don't understand it." I feel like you'd be it's, like, "There's oh. symbolism in there." I would almost want to be like, "Okay, well, okay." Like, I mean, I tried to put some of that stuff in there, but like, you know, it's fine that people don't like it, dude. You don't need to be like, <laughs> "It's poetry." You don't understand. Yeah, I was like, "Calm down." If I wanted poetry, I'd risky a poem. Story, yeah. story beats and a somber mood. A Batman that kills. Oh, I was, a oh, Superman no. that dies. Oh, but that's oh, no. not new. But that's not new. <laughs> that's yeah, not new I mean, at all. I love it. None of I those love things the are word new. showing up on screen. Dies. Yeah. <laughs> the ended yeah. Superman with the word dies over his face. <laughs> yeah, this is, this is about just as... said damaged. It's, it's about as subtle as a Zack Snyder movie. <laughs> oh, yes. Um, oh, so, like it's amusing because, uh, as recently mentioned, um, almost like foreshadowing, uh, Batman's been killing on screen for a while. It's just the, the yeah. manner in which he does it, I think, is what viewers got upset by. Um, for example, if he's like punch and kapowing a villain and then uh, like a henchman tries to stop him and he punches him and he goes whoa and falls off like a banister and you're like oh shit, did he just, is he dead? Oh, and the, the movie's moved on you know? It's just like oh god, I hope that I don't know if that guy lived through that. <laughs> oh well. Yeah, I don't know. This film oh, was well. like, Moving look on. at this car we're gonna fill it with a hundred bullets and then blow it up. <laughs> it's like, oh my god. <laughs> yeah, they are very dead. We want to make sure that you as the audience understand, they are very dead. There's a difference I'm between punching. Batman, like, punching a, do- like a dude so hard that his... That is what? ...issue with prison overpopulation. Um, yeah, and, and what's interesting as well, because I was thinking about it a bit more, he's shown to have, um gun disabling technology. I didn't want to describe it as like anything more specific because I don't know if it's like fictional or whatever. Yeah. You know, he attaches stuff to people's guns and they just stop working. It, they look like yeah, magnetized miniature bombs. Yeah, so that to me says, oh, you have ways of taking people down non-lethally? Oh no. <laughs> you just choose <laughs> not to. And we never get to explore that with Superman outside, uh, Batman outside of him saying like, People don't stay good, Alfred, and, and criminals keep rising back up. They're like weeds. It's like, oh, these lines are so shit. <laughs> no, they're not. It's odd. Shut up. All right. It's symbolic of how symbolic criminals are like weeds. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, you're not paying attention. Superman dies.
symbolic, a world but not really. It's actually <laughs> a world that hates. hates. <laughs> wow, a world that hates. God. Groundbreaking. <laughs> oh, god. Again, is the pretension not off the fucking charts in this video? Like, you know what else had a world that had hate in it? Fucking Citizen Kane. I like. I also love that his, years ago. I also love that his profile picture is a of. black and white photo of himself uh, aiming a camera. It's oh, like the most yeah, standard, yeah, yeah. standard pseudo uh, wannabe filmmaker Fuck. profile picture shot. Well, it's, it's, the, it's the one where you know that they they posed for it, and, but if someone were to take a photo of them while working, I feel like they'd look at the camera and go, "Oh, <laughs> you caught me." <laughs> I'm just doing my job. You know? <laughs> oh, I was just I was just working on my Batman vs Superman video. <laughs> I didn't see that. My goodness, this is so <laughs> candid. <laughs> it's always the cameras. The formula had been broken. Oh, oh. Was a darker film to be expected? Of course it was. This is DC, after all. But this was too far. <laughs> oh no! So you goddamn right, too it was far. too far. <laughs> I mean, it was just bad. People don't care if it has a dark tone. Remember, The Dark Knight came out in 2008. The Dark Knight had a dark tone and everybody and loved it. Don't forget Logan. Yeah. People fucking adore Logan, and Logan right? And yeah. it's, it's pretty dark, that movie. Logan is Zack Snyder. The dark than, our, than this movie. Lo That's Logan sure. says oh, that um, before the events of Logan, the Professor X killed a bunch of X-Men by accident. A bunch of the X-Men, yeah. Oh. And let's not forget that Batman Begins came out, you know, a few years before The Dark Knight, and people loved it. They were like, thank God, Batman's dark and grim and serious again. This is better than Batman and Robin. Yeah, it's like, you're confused. Yeah. You think something that is just so untrue. ...quickly became one of the most hated directors of all time. What? I, I, well, I, <laughs> he, he's more of a clown to me. I don't hate him. <laughs> Like, I kind of, there is a bit of a, like, a love in terms of, like, I adore seeing how you, you decide to do things in your writing. Tell it's stories, so crazy yeah. and funny. Um, I don't know, is there a director you guys hate? No. Um, hate? Uh, Hate's a strong word, you know? Yeah. Hate is no, a strong word for a director. There's many I dislike. Like. Yeah. But yeah. hate? No, I think hate is... Mm. Uh, Roman Polanski. Oh, I, I hate Roman Polanski. Obviously excluding I guess stuff like that. from their work, not like... From their work? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Not yeah. from what they've done. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's the thing, is if, if they're just making... Well, okay, so, like, would child pornographers count? I just... Hey. <laughs> Hey, no, that's what? art. What? That's art. We're just talking about like you know Look, like, I, when a director makes a shitty movie. No, the, like, the answer is like I'm probably that's never the... going to hate a director for their uh, their film because that's quite a thing. Yeah, see, to hate just because for. I made a movie you didn't like. And so uh, the scale has to alter, and thus he must be referring to Zack Snyder is made fun of more than most directors. I'd be like, you're goddamn right, he is. Yeah, he deserves the ridicule. It's what memory. happens when you make stupid cloud movies. Right, it's just... <laughs> also, he needs to shave his neck. <clears throat> he does need to shave his neck. Yeah. The DC Extended Universe died when Warner Jay Brothers saw what was... No. <laughs> no. Fallout, Warner Brothers shake up executive... Of course they did! Nah. They saw the I movie! It only took two. It only took two months before they were like, "Oh shit!" Wait, it's also, <laughs> it's what also worth pointing create? out. May 17, 2016, this article was written before the Ultimate Edition was even shown, and the theatrical cut was even worse than the That's Ultimate Edition. From what I understand, yeah. And uh, you have to take into account, again, this comes back to the whole artist thing, Warner Brothers are looking at the money and then the critical reception. They don't know what art is. <laughs> They're just like, oh god, people hate this. <laughs> ah, we need to get rid of it. They make rash decisions all the fucking time. Look at, uh, well, you know what's funny? Look at the DCEU. Look at Suicide Squad. Look at Justice League. Look like, at this entire thing. And look at Zack Snyder's Justice League as well, potentially. Yep. Tom and Jerry. What's <laughs> <laughs> happening? Abandoned ship. And that breaks my heart. <laughs> well, I, I, I can okay. really tell <laughs> by the way you delivered that. I can't right. take it. <laughs> and that... Breaks my heart. <laughs> this is so like, just video essay like standard. Oh. That, 
That delivery was flatter heart. than Amber Heard's delivery in Aquaman. That's because his heart's broken. It's like uh, his heart's broken. Uh, high top. We said Far From Home yeah. broke him. Oh, so I'm sad. Sick of people. His like his boy. heart is what that took from him. <laughs> Your, no, his soul. That's yeah. <laughs> that's what I was referencing. Yeah. I was just saying heart. <laughs> my just God, soul, man. my soul from me. Killed that from heart. me, Superman. My soul <laughs> is broken. You're a monster, Snyder. <laughs> broken, I'm gonna my stop soul. you. Evap has to stop Snyder before he makes even more movies. <laughs> <It's> like, no. <laughs> Snyder Dwarf, more, enough! More, more. Enough! Man, that's quite an epic video, okay. isn't it? No, oh, it's very epic. His soundtrack is very... He knows exactly what he's going for. He's However, definitely style over substance. I am going to say I'm quite happy that this section has come up, part two of Misunderstanding, because I was going to say there's lots of things that he's fucked up on so far, so I'm assuming he's about to correct them all. <laughs> this Excellent. is his correction section, definitely. Thank you. He's about to say, like, so all no, of that I is like bullshit. It. That would be so funny. <laughs> <laughs> right, you, Psych! <laughs> using a lot of the soundtrack, bro. I don't know, I'm just saying. Yeah, yeah man. Yeah. Da -da. It doesn't it's... take us that long. How come you gave us that long to read though that, and you gave us two seconds to read the Zack <laughs> Snyder quote? Yeah. yeah, what the fuck? Also, I'm gonna have to upload what this a couple doing? times at this point. There's no way I'm not getting hit for the soundtrack. Uh... You're gonna make me not like it. Stop. Yeah, stop. Batman v Superman is a modern masterpiece of film. Oh my god. <laughs> oh, oh no, no, it's it really bad. Hey, you oh, can't be surprised. The name of the video is a modern masterpiece. Not, yeah, not but Parasite. It help. I actually not didn't Parasite, notice that. Not the Lighthouse. Cold. Not <laughs> the really... Revenant. Oh. God. Not only is this an absolutely it, gorgeous work. But it delivers to its a listeners a message work. that shouldn't be forgotten. Like, it delivers a message. A, a work. That oh, what is he going to say the message is? Should we guess? Um, because I haven't seen this far People anymore. People hate so. what they don't understand. <laughs> I don't know. That could be um, it. What? Yeah. That could be it, actually. <clears throat> um, ooh, if I was going to, uh, if I was going to guess what he's going to say the message of the film is. Huh. <laughs> shouldn't Superman be like, should he be able to pull that with like the traction that he has? I oh, you mean like he should not. slip? Wouldn't he just slide across the yeah, slipping over? Yeah, he, his his feet would just go through the ice whenever he tries to push forwards. The ice isn't strong enough to. That's very true. Pull he should him, be right? flying as he pulls it. I guess. Yeah, you'd oh. think. He should. Yeah. What if um, what if he's flying? What if he's actually just sort of using his flying abilities to uh, slightly defy gravity so that he doesn't break the ice? Right. He just wants it to look dramatic as he mm. walks forward with the he's ship. Still, he's still making some indents in that land, but yeah. Just a little bit, yeah. He can, he's, uh, yeah, half an inch of uh, foot indent. And remember, it's all breaking in the back there, ship. so it's not too... Like... And it's on its side as well. So he's yeah. like dragging that thing. Yeah. The hull isn't even, yeah, on the ice. I hope they're okay. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I <laughs> that so ship... too. Do you think that ship would be heavier than the building that he lifts easily with in, the, in uh, Justice, Justice League? League. Oh, um, that ship is definitely lighter. I w yeah, I wouldn't uh, want to guess. To be. I, I don't know. How far back does the ship go? Yeah, that's another mm. good point. Yeah. But I mean, what, if I it was like a 100-year-old ship, why is he... Car what? I, like, why is he okay. Because it belongs in a museum. Yeah. I like the fact that he's gonna use the shot of the Batmobile absolutely Crossing fucking over head. some dude. Yeah, yeah that's well, well. No, he said before this is a film where Batman kills, and that means something. I don't know what, but it means something. All right. Yeah. I reiterate, it's listeners. It's quite fascinating to listen to the criticisms of this film. As poor of a reputation as it has, the majority of the film's critiques are a result of misunderstanding. Oh, no, no, no. of course uh, they are. Oh, uh, you don't? Yeah, Remember, we, we, don't like what we don't understand. Clear them up. Exhibit A. People don't understand that it's not a flaw that Superman drags his enemies into space and boops them away. Example of how this is true, a nuke stops him, so he shouldn't have. And we bring the guy on and say, why didn't he try, try again? And it's like, it doesn't matter, that's not the point. You can't do uh, this, uh, alright? You have to own the position of, 
Mechanically, it might be nonsense, but that's fine because it's making a point. If that was your video in total, I'd be like, well, at least you can stick to that position, I guess. But you can't say, yeah. no, you're wrong on these mechanics, you don't understand them. And then have nothing when people ask you simple questions. It's fucking annoying. And most of the critiques are exactly in line with the film's message. Uh -huh. Batman shouldn't be killing. That's the point. No, that's the point. <laughs> what? We got it. I, I, I don't what? I never I said that Batman shouldn't kill. No, yeah. I don't even think that's say. that's not even something I hear often. Well, so he's saying people are like, boo, the film's bad because Batman's killing people, and his counter is that's the point. So we have to unravel a lot there in terms of like, is it a flaw <laughs> for us that he's killing people in the movie? It's like not necessarily. It's gonna be dependent on the individual kills and <clears throat> his choices he has and then his characterization. It's gonna be annoying if he uh, <clears throat> if he's letting characters like the Joker and Harley and Quinn Luthor. and Lex Luthor, live yeah. when when they were directly responsible for um for Robin's death. Um, that's a bit weird if he has no issue with killing mooks. So yeah, because our list of issues of the film, Batman killing people, I don't even know if it's on the list. It's it would have to be more specific than that. Yeah. Superman to be more hopeful and confident. Correct. Why isn't he? What? No. <laughs> um, because it's because Zack Snyder has a really weird vision of what this character is. He doesn't isn't. behave as though he's lived a full life on Earth, loving parents he's in a society that's bizarrely that takes care crafted of him in some way. Yeah. Instead, he's depressed all the time, and it's really frustrating. Mm -hmm. Depending on how the next bit of his commentary starts, I'm going to be very uh i'm gonna i'm gonna find his music choice here very questionable let's let's see what he says i'm not going to go through every single critique and explain exactly why it's wrong because i truly believe that the film you're, needs why you're making a video it's just yeah. damn away. i was kind of looking forwards to that just, well it's actually in, uh, i'm deciding to convince every single one of you that he is missing ascending but i'm not going to explain everything because why would which is i weird because that's kind of my strategy with mando is like i'm gonna explain everything <laughs> same for me and the boys let me tell you all of the arguments for why this yeah. is shit. um yeah i assume it's more so to make a uh, a video under a certain amount of time but what i was going to say was that it's interesting that i can't even write that down for goodell because it's been written down three times already from other videos we've covered I'm not going to go through oh, yeah. all of the reasons. You're like, right, okay. Why would yeah, you, right? Well, if you want to convince someone of an argument, you wouldn't go through all the reasoning. You just use a just couple. Just a trope. Yeah, yeah it's, a, it's just downright a trope, a trope at, this point. at this point, yeah. Correct. Why isn't he? I'm not going to go through every single critique and explain exactly why it's wrong, because I truly believe that the film needs no help in defending itself. Clearly you don't believe that you made this video. Yeah. He's gonna he's gonna but... let the movie speak for itself. You yeah, don't this believe movie that. needs help oh, defending Lord. itself. Absolutely. Like Stephen Hawking needs help up the staircase. Like this is a really this film like, needs all the help it could get. If someone said to me, like, why are you making the boys video? Surely it's self evident how bad it is. Like, it's not. A lot of people don't really watch this is it just, that way. This is just uh educate yourself. I mean, anybody who watches a film... I mean, the film doesn't need any defense. Any, anybody who watches a film twice is probably going to have much like more accurate things to say about it than the person who watched it once, just categorically. And so going from <clears> there, <throat> yeah. you can imagine... <sighs> what a stupid thing. Whatever. <laughs> Move on. They have to have done this excellently. No, such as... no! Oh, no! 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 <laughs> How did you know? You fool! Oh no! Oh no! Well, Who hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Colin he's, Sanders, he's showing you. He, he's showing two videos that we didn't cover. Maybe no, 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 no. There's better. a third one right there. Why you're wrong about that? <laughs> when Lex <laughs> Luthor's plan explained. But that's, yeah, it's, it's out of focus. Lex it's Luthor's plan. No, it's also, not out of wait. focus. You were reading it. Also, I mean, but it's like not also the I've seen the other two why videos. Why you're wrong here, about Batman v Superman? Lex Luthor's plan explained. I was gonna say we've seen the other two videos, and I showed you guys a good portion of the the uh, Batman's motive explained one. I think they're very the, yeah, all three of them sorry. are awful. Uh, they were all yeah contenders for what we were gonna cover. And remember, the author we said I wouldn't be surprised. I I'm literally just joking. <laughs> the author said that like it's it's 
it's st he doesn't care if the details are correct. It's the overall point that matters. It's just like, oh it's no. It's hilarious how that just kind of ruins that entire video. I don't Why know, would like, you ruin your whole video like that? I've said it before, and I'm still convinced he's probably a nice dude, and you might enjoy his videos, but like, I don't know how I could stay subscribed to a creator that said, like, it doesn't matter if what I said was true. I'm just trying to appeal to a point. It's like, what? Or, or when he admitted that he was clickbaiting. Or yeah. that wasn't a good idea either. No. Yeah, that wasn't great. If this is the if this video is supposed to be the go to that's being propped up for why these films are actually not bad, this film's in some fucking trouble. Yeah. This twin perfect text. I would highly recommend checking out their video. Deserves, <laughs> Deserves, <more respect. laughs> Deserves more respect. Deserves more respect. Deserves respect. Oh no. Christ. Videos. If you want an official. See, this is what's happening. All this left is the people who love the movie. So they're just making all the newest even all videos. These, even all these, the thumbnails for the movie are just fucking depressing and try hard. Oh, yeah. And edgy. Special report. But I'm not here to explain why back. Yeah, remember when he left his calling card? Of course. For <laughs> it's really dumb. <laughs> yeah, it's fine. Batman v Superman isn't a bad movie. I'm here to explain why I believe Batman v Superman. So I really think that this uh, this is a very overbearing, fast-paced music that does not fit at all with his um, commentary. Well, when you have combined with, I, th I think the movie is. Uh, <laughs> I think it's pretty good. What's yeah, up, dickheads? Like, We're talking about <laughs> like, this. This music fits more if you're actually like listing off. Like, if I were to critique this this movie, if I were to make a like a video critiquing this movie. I would be using this type of music in the background as I'm listing through a number of reasons with any given plot element, like why Lex Luthor's plan makes no sense. And and you yeah, know what I mean? It's like a high pace. You you want you want things getting delivered yeah, or quick. When you're talking about a fight scene, yeah, or you're getting. He's angry, trying to maybe? be more con. Yeah, he's trying to be more contemplative and pretentious, and this just this <laughs> this track just doesn't fit with it. Oh yeah, I think he's just thrown it on. It's like yeah, it's good enough. It's a good it's good soundtrack. So it's fine. But I'm not this here to explain why Batman v Superman isn't a bad. Like I can barely hear what he's saying. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> good. Like, <laughs> good. <laughs> Smart move. Just... Bad move. Uh, I'm here to explain why I believe Batman v Superman is a good film. All right. And you're oh, gonna yeah. right. it's well, go. So... Yeah. So for the people at home, right. he's just told you his his goal here is to explain why it's a good movie. How much do you think we have left? No, we got about sixty percent of the movie left. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Like, damn, dude, you better you better hurry. Oh, the way that he is uh, so hey, dramatically there, drawing dude. drawing out these uh, chapter title reveals, it, like this just comes across as baby's first video essay to me. Well, he's padding kind of, it, yeah. right? Like on purpose. He wants it to. He certainly wants it to be mm -hmm. above ten minutes. I think I think the video essay golden, which is weird because he had that quote flash by so fast right off the bat. A lot of the, like the really. I'm just gonna chalk that up to he's not good at making videos. A lot of the main shitty video essay people, like the the golden area is between ten and twenty minutes. It seems like that's what you want to do. That's what you'd think you want to do if you watch them and want to emulate them. When like <clears throat> the EFAP's logic is, it's as long as it has to be. That's, that's just yeah. that's it. It's gonna be as long. Uh, wow, well, I forgot the words. Just forget <laughs> I said anything. <laughs> as long as you re you require to explain your points. <laughs> Zack Snyder is often referred to as a visionary director. Oh, he's so subtle. What does that mean? It... <laughs> what does that mean? <laughs> I agree. Visionary <laughs> director. What does that mean? Good question. It's often referred to as a vision-impaired director. It means someone who shows great imagination and vision. Thanks to the help right, of his director so of photography. Director has a vision. Thanks. Thanks in part to his director of photography. Okay. Larry Fong. Right. Zack Snyder crafted a unique and visually stunning image for this film. The phrase, every frame of painting, is an appropriate one every to describe the look. Yay. <laughs> Yay! We did it. You see this this moment where this is falling in slow-mo? You could take a screenshot and it would be a painting. That means it's a good film. I mean, you, but you can take a screenshot of everything and make it a painting. Shut up! I, <laughs> you can't just take items around the house like soup cans and paint them and become famous. No, that would be no, silly. that would that would be dumb. Yeah, no one would ever buy Wait that a shit. Minute. Look to dumb justice. 
Just look at these frames. <laughs> What? Just look at what? There's just two guys standing. Look, what would you look at all of the frames? Just look at what? Why? All right, why, um, why would you choose this one? So yeah, like it. Look, if if this was supposed to be a particular frame that I'd want to put in a frame in my house, right? I'd be like, hey, you two guys back there, could you could you move? You're in the shot. You guys are in the shot. Could you duck down a little bit? Yeah, and keep moving to the left. All right, you're good. We'll let you know right, when we're done. Cool. Cheers. I think they're can't way believe better. some of the sound guys got in the uh, yeah. Can't believe they got in the shot. What about a shot in this film than this one? How yeah. about how about how about the Dark Knight Returns homage shot? That's a cool shot. Just uh, why this one, man? <laughs> I don't. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, why this one? Look at these frames. The film speaks for itself. You keep saying that, but then you keep talking the about how you need to make a video the... explaining it. No, I I think I get it. So Don't you have the shot, bland shot, dryness yeah. of the shot matches the bland dryness of Lois's character. She is um, part of the scene. She is part of the environment. They melt the together. Scene. They mesh. Part of the, yeah. yeah. Of course, we've got we've got the rebar crucifix in the background. Yeah. As also, well. they're sad and it's cloudy, which is very clever. Oh. Let's see it. Oh look, there's Let's... a little parting in the cloud as well. Oh. Isn't that oh. neat? That's, I've never seen that in any movie ever. Wow. Look, Vision. even the rubble is like a little cross. The visionary. Cinematography oh isn't only about the look. For anyone who's seen a Michael Bay film, it's obvious that a film's look means nothing if it. <laughs> um. It, well, he owes a lot of his success means to the way the film looks. It means nothing if it means nothing. That's what he said. Wow. Oh, Thank oh, you. I, I that really say that? I just want to play that. I'm play that again. All right. Are you yes. sure? It isn't only about the look. For anyone who's seen a Michael Bay film, it's obvious that a film's look means nothing if it, well, means nothing. That's a <laughs> oh my God. Good job. I mean, he must be aware of that. that is... So why the fuck did he say it? <laughs> like, what? Yeah, I, I'm, I'm sure. I guess he, he's like, if there's no real meaning or symbolism behind the cinematography, then it's worthless. Dude, I can't. It doesn't mean I can't. anything. I can't believe this video. Like, there's so much about it that's I blame, terrible. I blame all of the other video essays that are popular for this video. That's why this one was made. Uh, yeah. he, <laughs> he thought this was a good idea. Why do I get the feeling that this guy watches Brown Table a lot? I'm sure he hates people like that, us. That sounds oh, a yeah. lot like something that Brown Table would say. Yeah. You should. It's quite a way. task for the director and the DP to craft a meaningful painting for every single frame in a film. You. <sighs> Fuck you, the room has a meaningful frame in every single part of the movie, okay? Yeah. Put them all in a museum. I, I totally believe that, absolutely. Tommy Wiseau absolutely had a reason for everything he, he put in that movie. It's so funny because he just treats it as though we all understand. It's like, well, we all agree, right? BVS is just beautifully shot, every single frame's a painting. You're like, um, do you want to get into why? Or how for any of that? Or are we just gonna say that it's true? I would love some qualification, Mahler. Uh, Wake me when we get some. <laughs> Ideally, there should be a story told through each one. Ugh. Ideally. It goes unnoticed just how much detail and passion Snyder puts into every single one of his shots. His every single one? Um, right. Every one? Every single one? Yep. I mean, I, I won't deny that he... Uh, there's passion, but... You know who else had passion? Hitler. Hitler. <laughs> there, we did it. We did it, everyone. We fucking did it. Hey, I, I just want to highlight something really funny I found in his description for this video. Um, Zack Snyder's Justice League is among us. Doesn't he mean upon us? No, I think he was very deliberate with his bad choices. It's among us. What the fuck? It's it's just like no 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 no. I think what he's doing here is just like how Superman is supposed to be one of us and among us. So too is the Justice League. It is among us. <laughs> wow. Superman sus. Well, well. Wow. So, I, unironically, yes. Incredible. Uh, yeah, it's, it's phenomenal, really. Um, but he's kind of spent the last minute and a half saying the same thing. The shots are really good because they're really good because they're so really fucking good. This they're just so good. Essay, they're so meaningful. Mahler. Yeah. How much detail and passion Snyder puts into every single one of his shots. All right. His movies are full of symbolism, <sighs> references to classical pieces of art and literature, and theological and <sighs> okay. philosophical images. That theological and philosophical imagery plus references to the comic books. That means it's good. 
Geological provide... imagery is not, and like that's not uncommon in, in cinema. What, what about people Look, who choose not to do that? The background. What about people who don't want Look, to do Superman that? Superman made a T pose like Jesus. He's like Jesus. Just for instance, right? You have two directors. One of them wants to film a scene. One of them goes, you know what? I want to make a reference to this comic book, this particular, uh, you know, pain, and uh, I also want to have a biblical reference. The other one's like, I'm just going to create shots that I think are meaningful in relation to the story as it stands, and I'm going to try and, you know, tell, tell, blah, blah, blah. It's like, which one of those two should be valued more? And I'm not saying there's an easy answer to this. I'm just suggesting that, like, why is it that because someone took a shot from a comic book, that's better than someone who made a shot on their own merit. They, they just wanted to make the shot. I would love explanations and qualifications for these things. It's something that these videos are oh, severely lacking it. in. Can speak for itself, all right? Best you can say yeah, is can more faithful. Try educate yourself. Yeah, yeah. Best can you can say like provide more examples of, like examples of, of uh, literary references that these uh, shots what are the have literary references yeah precisely i would love is, to unless or he's counting like that? does he count comic books as literature i wonder what? if he said literary because it makes you sound smarter to be like see it references books like i read <laughs> books you know it's, it's that kind of thing the chad literary you know? versus the virgin book <laughs> yeah, oh, here's the thing. i don't really read <laughs> books but i understand them which i think is a bit well, more important i think that than there just are knowing to reference them there are definitely some people who i'm not now, this might not be the case with him. I might be reading too much into it, but there are a lot of people who attach an extreme amount of value to, like, I read. Like, I am a reader. You just watch movies. I read the books. You know, it's kind of like the whole the movie's always worse than the book kind of crowd. Yeah. Um, but when you say literary, it's like, oh, boy, now you're really amping it up. <laughs> like, <laughs> literary. To the story he is telling. One example is a rather obvious one. Lex Luthor's painting of oh. Milton's Paradise Lost. Wow, it's so subtle. No, please. <laughs> so subtle. Not only is this a neat reference, but the story of Paradise Lost. It's not Lost, a reference. Well, no. How, at what point does it stop being a reference when they they're so explicit about it? Um, if I like in a movie say "You shall not pass," the you coming to my house and opening the door, and I go, "Ha, you shall not pass." Someone goes, "Wow, that's a neat reference." And you're just like, okay. Yeah, I know that by re by by pointing it out and recognizing it, you know, it, it's it loses its, you know, to me, that's what charm. we need to avoid celebrating because you end up with Mandalorian. Yeah. <laughs> hey, See, I'm referencing Thrawn. Luke Skywalker by having him show up as a character <laughs> and doing him? things. Broad. It's remember, a reference. Remember Luke Skywalker's green lightsaber, guys? I no. bet you do. It's like saying th mirror. this painting is a reference to the painting. This is the thing. I, uh, and if someone um, was like, well, then what are you supposed yeah. to do? I should be like, well, I assume that the reason to put um, uh, third party references is that by looking into them, they will give you an extra understanding of what the story you're conducting is, which might be the way he'll qualify this. I don't know. But uh, it's going to be impossible for something that's good to be able to help you understand something that's as shit as BBS. Like, I'm assuming this painting. Is a hell of a lot more of a high quality in in its uh, in its uh, craft than BVS is as a movie. But who knows? Mirrors Lex Luthor himself. Another more obscure. Wait, that was it? He said it mirrors oh, Lex oh, Luthor himself, and then he just moved on. Really? We have oh. only thirteen minutes. We have no. To Not no, only you is this a neat reference. But the story of Paradise Lost perfectly mirrors the story of Lex Luthor himself. How? That's well, let's how? Just, so how? Let's, so let, let's, let's assume that's true. Let's assume that Milton's Paradise Lost and Lex Luthor's character are mirrors of each other. First off, incredible indictment of Milton. We'll <laughs> skip that. Secondly, so that just means that Snyder copied a book. What? I am gonna buy Paradise Lost and read it at some point. Um, but uh i am very curious to see how true this is you know the whole let um, me let me just read the synopsis of paradise, so paradise lost, lost from what i've read is basically an epic poem that is about the god the story of the garden of eden like it, that's basically the story it's about yeah, it's the temptation of adam and eve by the fallen angel satan and their expulsion from the garden i of guess eden. that his yeah. logic would be that like lex luther is adam slash eve and that he was tempted by uh, I, I don't know, like, 
But he wasn't what? doing it for personal reasons, was no, he? No, he wasn't doing I mean, it for personal gain, seemingly. Originally, uh, at the beginning, he was like, he, you would you would assume at the beginning, this is why Lex Luthor is such a fucking mess of a character that it's yeah. kind of tough. Because he's kind of, he's he's all over the place, and he's very confusing, and he's contradictory. Um, but yeah, I I do not at all believe that, maybe that was the intention, which I can believe because this is a Zack Snyder <clears throat> film. However... No fucking way. Uh, um, no. so, you know, like the whole Plato's Republic thing from with Man of Steel, and it's like, mm. yeah, but you see, we're doing yeah. the whole freedom of choice versus roles assigned to you, and so that makes it better. And you're like, wait, what do you mean? It's like, well, it's referencing Plato's Republic. You're like, okay, okay. That's like, what? Why do you put so much fucking weight on this? Like, he executed Plato's Republic horrifically in uh, Man of Steel. Why Why is it just good enough that he referenced it? It should, yeah. It's, um... Should, like, is that is that the implication that, like, by the very fact that he even knows what Plato's Republic is and thought to reference it is better than Civil War not referencing anything in particular <laughs> and just, like, telling its own story? Yeah, because it's not as smart. Yeah, it should focus on it should focus on telling its own story, and if it happens to mirror uh, certain elements from a more classical story, then it's like, all right, that's neat, but that doesn't explain why the story that we're looking at here, that is BVS, um, actually stands well on its own. Yeah, I think for me, if I I felt they had executed it really well in Man of Steel, if I was to do a video analyzing it. And there was a scene that on a bookshelf the camera pans by, there's a Plato's Republic book on there. I'd probably be like, hey, they even reference it because it's relevant in terms of well, inspiration as the story. But uh, Man of Steel puts it in his fucking hand when he's a kid. It's like, oh, oh. Well, I mean, uh, so there's clever. a good example in, our, in, in Buffy, uh, one oh, no. of the books that, um, that, that is being read by Angel. I can't remember what the book is called. What was, do, you, do you remember what it was called? Um... Oh, it was. It's like the it's Jean Paul Sartre is the guy who wrote. It's it's just like his um, ideas on uh, is it well, absurdism theology, and the response right? to it. I I forget. I'd have to go yeah. into it more. But yeah, Angel does a lot of reading in that. But again, he's um <clears throat> like over three hundred years old and he yeah. like has a lot to contemplate about his position in the world. He's not yes. a high school, like less than high schooler, getting beaten up because he's reading Plato's. Re it's so cringy. Yeah. Um, I was, I was about, to, I was about to say something. What was I about to say? Fuck it. Yeah, like there's, there's ways to do about this in real that are really interesting. Like, um, uh, Oh Brother, sure. Where Art Thou, is uh, a retelling of the Odyssey, kind of, but it takes place in like the twenties, and a lot of people wouldn't even know it if it didn't say like based on Homer's The Odyssey. Mm. Um. So I'd like to rewatch that sometime, but there are, there are so much better ways to do this than see, look, our character is holding the book explicitly here so that you can hey, see look, it. There is a painting on the wall that has angels and demons fighting each other. And I'm going to turn it upside down. Oh, this is the parademons, they're coming from the sky. Devils yeah. come from the sky like Superman, the devil, except wait, no, he's not the parademons of them. And dark side. All I could think I about is how it could have been done and better. Yep. Yeah. It's a shame because it could be really yeah. great. If you would execute. Yeah, that it well. idea. Yeah, like the you see the, the paintings in the awesome. background. Like, yeah, the the paintings in the background when we first see it, it's not referenced. At the end, the place is trashed for whatever reason, and it's fallen on upside down or something like that in the background. But if, when you're so blatant about pointing it out and everything like that, it just loses its. Yeah, it's like when you it's like when you're um, when you're in school in your literary classes and you notice things before the teacher tells you about them and you're like, oh, see, I see. yeah, I'll be paying attention. All right, I'll be doing my readings. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It was uh, Lanozzi, I think is how it's pronounced. Um, the book. Philosophical existentialism. Is what yeah, these um, some good books. I was saying before that there is pretentiousness sometimes when it comes to people reading, but like there are some great I books just, that everybody should be reading. I just think it's about the motivation to place it in, and it really needs to not yeah. be I'm smart because I read this. It needs to be this thing influenced me, and I'd like to just have a reference. And it was reference. An important work that is relevant to the story that I'm trying to tell. Yeah. That'd be nice. Because like, again, I, I think, we're giving points just for it being referenced. We're not giving points for how well it was executed. It is, yeah. I, uh, just having a reference to a book isn't enough. 
Well, this goes to the core that this is why this guy likes Twin Perfect. It doesn't matter what the execution was. The idea. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's new. That's cool. There's like the, the idea was there. So that's good enough. Polar opposite that's of what enough. we do here. <laughs> like, mm -hmm. like they're confused by the way we look at media. We're like, what do you mean the execution matters? I can't just have a good idea and a theme and that's just it takes care of itself. At that point, why have the scenes? Just why, fucking send me an email with your yeah, message. Yeah, exactly. Send an email that's just here's my thoughts on X, <laughs> and then just you you'd think like how how does this not translate? You're like check out my flying car, and it's just on the floor. You're like this doesn't fly. You're like, yeah, I know, but the flying car, cool idea. <laughs> what do you mean, think about the idea. Car. Fuck. Another more. Pure example is when Batman is holding the spear to Superman's chest, which seems to be a reference to Saint Michael vanquishing. Oh no! <laughs> what? Okay. Someone spearing somebody. It's like he gets points. You're like why? Why does he get points? <sighs> Satan by Raphael. At this point, Bruce has deluded. People have referenced how it's when I forget the specific names of it, but when doesn't Jesus get stabbed with something to see if he's alive? He gets or dead? stabbed by a, with a spear. Yeah. yeah. And both blood and water spurts out. Yeah. And, yeah, and so you can, like, whatever. I don't care. Like, someone else was stabbed with a spear at some point that could be referenced here. You're like, fine. And you're like, yeah, but there's lots of other Jesus imagery. And I'm like, why are we giving points for this? I don't understand. Giving points for Jesus imagery of all things. That's the easiest, most common one. Him like himself how he references that all he these is, things, in but fact, the story killing an still stays the same. Yeah. Like, what is better? The story's still shit. This doesn't help this well, it's, movie. I'd say it's telling that they avoid the nuts and bolts when they talk about Batman vs Superman. It's like, they don't actually talk about Batman vs Superman. They talk about everything around it. You're like, okay. You, yeah. You know, what this video is telling me is that what it takes to be a modern masterpiece isn't to actually stand on your own, just make references to a bunch of literary oh, yeah. uh, and art, like, art pieces. Fucking hell. Vanquishing Satan by Raphael. At this point, Bruce has deluded himself into believing that he is, in fact, killing an entity of pure evil. <laughs> and he's a moron in the movie to think that. Pure evil. They did not justify that. I wish they did. Making him the savior of the world. What about this frame of Lex Luthor as a reference to this painting of Napoleon, oh. the Conqueror? The death of Superman uh, mirroring two He's standing out looking at stuff? Look, cross. You see, he's like it's a joke. Is... Like, look at the cross. It's a fucking joke. <laughs> <laughs> I, this is like, this is, doesn't doesn't address the point. This is something you'd expect a fourteen-year-old to do. Why is this good? Yeah, you're just referencing it. They did a thing that looks like a painting. It's like, oh, because <laughs> okay. it's art. So, yeah, like so. Think painting, death of Christ. Young Bruce ascending into the sea of bats, mirroring paradise from Dante's paradise. <laughs> oh my paradise. god! Just a sentence. Oh my god. Uh, okay. Oh my god. Bruce ascending, ascending into the sea of bats. bats. This means then... nothing. Stop. It's like a painting, so <laughs> it's stop. good. Tell me why. I don't fucking care that the scene looks like a painting that 96% of the people who watch this film haven't even seen. Haven't even seen before. And then they're gonna go around and tell all their buddies about all these paintings. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, if one of you got into a call <laughs> to tell me BVS is good and you showed me all these comparisons, I'd just be like, okay, but what about the film, though? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Could you imagine that conversation? It's like that, man, I'm just South Park episodes, that guy who ties up Cartman and just shows him pictures of going to, like, Disneyland. <laughs> He's like, here's a picture of, um, Paradise Lost in Mirror. <laughs> like, do you see? Do you see? Do you see? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> if I... If I... If I want to look at these paintings, I'll look at the paintings. I'm not going to see a shitty fucking movie that has the brief references is, to these paintings in a couple shots. It, it almost, like, he's almost devaluing the paintings, because, like, these paintings are really great, and they probably have, like, a lot of really good, like, there's some meaning behind it, and, and, um, and there was a purpose and intent. Um, and then Zack Snyder saw the paintings and was like, oh, I could, like, do this and just have it be in the movie. So, show I like. Remain nameless. Um, they have a character who does a major betrayal to one of the main characters, and over the course of a long time, tries Star Wars. to yes, totally tries to get back into the good graces of the main selection of people, despite oh, that betrayal. Yes. And at one point, he's given a gift by someone, 
he opens it up and he's a little confused. He's like, it's Dante's Divine Comedy. Why? And she's like, you know, um, the layers of hell, like the, the closer you get to the main circle, the, the worse the sin is. And he's just like, yeah. And she's like, who's in the center head of the three mouths in the final circle of hell or something? And it's Judas. Brutus. Oh, so oh the, Judas, yeah. And, and, and it's like, that's it's left higher. on its own. And they stare at each other, and the point obviously is, like, people, the worst sinner is the one who, like, backstabs. Um, which is relevant mm. to his journey in the story. You don't even need to read it! It's like, the, it's just a neat in-universe thing, and it's also um, well, think, relevant yeah. to the literature that both of them would be aware of. And I'm just like, oh, you're actually that, using it. That's an interesting thing to think about, is like, should a reference be something that somebody can appreciate if they don't know what the reference is? I think if you're going to do it like the way I... that they have to look into it, then it needs to be that the story functions without knowing that information. Uh, yeah, I think that'd probably be an important part. And I mean, I would appeal to the idea that, like, references that are about critical things in your story, like the fundamental point of the story, should be understandable by people who don't know the reference. You can't expect everybody to have read Dante's Divine Comedies or Paradise Lost or all of these things. Well, yeah, I, I think that's a question I'd like to ask him as well. If I agreed with him on all of this, like, what's this going to mean for people who've never been exposed to any of this? Yeah. Like, it doesn't, you have to concede it doesn't stand on its own. I mean, he has to, yeah. Like, Assuming how would anybody, is... how would any normal film goer, like, reasonably know that this bat ascending, like, most people are going to look at it and be like, what the hell, why is he flying? Not, <laughs> ah, I see, this is a reference to the classical antiquity, you know, like, <laughs> or like, uh, um... Yeah, most people are going to be going, what the fuck? Yeah, why is he flying? It also, <laughs> because, <laughs> like, really skin deep as well, like, it matches the image. That's it. Not well, necessarily the meaning. Because everything, everything that they've shown up to this point has uh, we can take to be like literal, and this is clearly metaphorical. Yeah. So it's a very weird switch that uh, kind of catches you off guard. Yeah. It's like, oh, is this a I dream? Could... Okay. I guess so. Go on and on and on. You haven't said anything yet. Yeah. You just go on and on. This other reference. <laughs> this reference. Like, okay, but cool. these classical Are references going to tell us now where the movie is that... good? <laughs> Maybe, if we... I'm, I'm waiting. Running You're running out of time, buddy. You've yeah. got to hurry up. And on and on. But these classical references aren't the only thing that makes this cinematography... Thank fuck they're not the only thing. Jesus. ...perfectly beautiful. The composition of the frame and camera movements are given just as much detail. Take the it scene where Lex Luthor meets Superman. It goes down and slightly to the Superman. left. It oh, goes Superman. up as Superman goes up. Like, yeah, these seem standard to me. Wait, he's about to explain That'll be his argument here, that the camera perspective shifts from him looking up to him looking down. It's not that. Right, Probably, yeah. yeah. Okay. Go, hey, why the do you have scene the begins. flashback FM YouTube channel? Why do you... That's where we got the clip from. I, <laughs> like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Superman flying high above a sitting Lex yeah. as the camera shows us both perspectives. One looking up at God Most High. And one looking down. Yeah, it's Superman's thing. not God. It's really annoying. I get it. Like, a, I, I get it. Thing. I get what yeah. they're trying to say. On it's feeble really man. obvious, and it's uh, shitty. You it know, seems like I some of the most like simplest shit to be. The godlike character yeah, is high. You're like, okay. Wow. I remember in school, like, I, I can't remember what class it was, but like, I, I, I distinctly remember, like, where we just got a sheet of paper that just showed all of like the most common camera positions for um, for like, and then what it conveys. And, like, one of the the first ones that they show is, when you look up, it makes the character look bigger and, like, more prominent and more powerful. And when you look down, they look smaller and feebler. Like, it's really not that complicated. Whoa. It's just as and the camera rise to challenge God. God meets him on his level as the camera oh, slowly... The scene ends with isn't... Superman on his knees going... Yeah. yeah. Slowly descends to Earth. And when Lex reveals his hand... God is he slowly descends to earth <laughs> at the top of the skyscraper. <laughs> Brilliant. Now kneel Superman before man, and, and the camera I follows as we gaze upwards at the... I like how he doesn't even touch his hair, yeah. like, not to mess it up or something. <laughs> well, so we're going to do another take, all right? <laughs> Lex Luthor is master of the hover hand. Yes. Yes. Yeah. I, you I know what? That. Yeah, I could believe it. Now powerful That's man. That's symbolic. 
the roles have been reversed. Whoa. Yeah, we wow. know. Talk so let's talk about the actual film, though. I, I get it. <laughs> Finally. Yeah, no. You want to talk about the stuff that's in the film? You, you want to know how all of this is enabled? Because Clark can tell when Lois gets pushed off a building, but he has no idea what's going on with his mom for nope. some reason. Talk about this all along, but for the sake of time, I'll conclude the section with a quote by oh, Gordon no. Lewis, the cinematographer oh, no. for the Godfather films. A cinematographer is a visual psychiatrist, moving an audience, making them think the way you want them to think, painting pictures in the dark. Okay. I want everyone that defended The Last Jedi on the basis of its cin cinematography over the writing to realize this video is exactly what they sound like to us. Yes. <clears throat> I appreciate cinematography. Like, it's a nice I, quote. I, I'm it's looking, a nice quote. Um, yeah. Look, I'm looking to talk about the writing. If you could do that, that'd be great. We are we are eight minutes thirty into a oh, thirteen and a half minute video, and we uh, haven't talked about the writing yet. Not, we haven't talked about any of the writing. You're right. Any of the characters, any of the narrative at all. A score. It's all just been, uh, no, look, the score is really oh. good. Yes, the score the is score really is good. good. Sure. A lot yeah, of bad okay. movies have great music. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah. Score... Wonder Woman's got a great theme. Her character's a ditzy loser. Aquaman has a nifty soundtrack. Yeah. Um... The prequels are full of great music. Oh, prequels, yeah. Mwah! Bravissimo. Uh... <laughs> I mean, a score, like a great score can't really do much to salvage a movie. Are you Naboo? Movie. Like, a... Naboo, is that what, <laughs> what Italian is? It's very similar to Naboo-ish. Oh wait, uh, where did they shoot Naboo? Was it in Italy? Oh, you might- oh my god, no. Oh Rose god, Frank. this could be the cleverest <laughs> thing. Oh, Seville! Oh, no, Spain, fuck. Ah, uh, damn, damn it. Hey, look, that's- that's like- oh. that's the Mediterranean, alright? That's close. That's close. Ish. They're- they're brownish. Ooh. <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> they're that Mediterranean area. <clears throat> Their yeah. their culture is sort of, I mean, man. Oh wait, how many Spanish and Italian people we gotta piss off by saying that they're very oh. similar to each they're other? They're very similar. People one has pizza, rags? one oh, has no. tacos. A taco one has lasagna. Spain, the other has Mexico. <laughs> That's <laughs> Mexico. No. Then how come the Mexicans speak Spanish? Checkmate. <laughs> they speak Mexican. They speak Mexican. <laughs> I'm a language. Could I know you this. Imagine, like these, these, because a lot of these places speak Spanish. But imagine if it was Uruguayan, like that was the language of the Europeans. No, Uruguayan. of the Uruguay. <laughs> Not with to it. be confused Uruguay. with Paraguay. Uruguay. Paraguay. <laughs> Is it Guay or Guay? So anyway, wait, what was happening? I, wait, wait, wait. I don't want to oh. be culturally insensitive, so I want to make sure Paraguay, I get it right. I think. Uh, Uruguay and Paraguay. I hope I've got that right. Um, hmm. It, okay, para... Yes, uh, let let the, me double check. The mystery of our time. <laughs> How do you put Well, we gotta talk out? about something interesting. Mm. Um, yeah, I mean, we got nothing here. <laughs> uh, pronounce... Paraguay pronounce... Uh, it's Guay. It is Guay. Okay, Paraguay. Paraguay. Yep. Yeah. Paraguay. There we go. Oh. See, I didn't want to get that wrong. What? Now I know. When I go to Paraguay, I can be like, hey guys, are you impressed by how I pronounce your world? And then they're confused <laughs> because none of it is and in then they Spanish. Say, uh, <laughs> okay. Guys. What does Taco? K mean? I think it means what, right? Wait, what's well, happening? Q-U-E? Like Bear-centric thriller cocaine right? bear for Universal. The film is based on true events from 1985 when a 175-pound bear accidentally consumed over several pounds of cocaine. <laughs> um, Jesus. You know, now that we're cocaine thinking about movies bear? about bears, there should be a movie made about... Have you guys... There was a, pol a bear that was part of the Polish army. Um, yes who did like tricks and stuff for the military and of course in your head you're like please tell me that bear was on the front lines <laughs> but, like, <laughs> that it was going to war what was the name of that bear hold on i think count dacula made a video on it was, we need uh, more bear biopics Wo wotek voitek voitek is it voitek that's the name of the bear voitek the bear yeah w-o-j-t-e-k voitek yeah, there it is. What 
Yeah. <laughs> we yeah. Need, we need to call boy tech. Make it like Joker. Well, no, not like Joker. Make it like, um, I don't know, something. I just want it to exist. If we get Cocaine Bear, we should get a story about Wojak. <laughs> I like the Wojak. idea that the... her career is crashing and burning. What? Was <laughs> direct no. and she, she's being forced to direct the Cocaine Bear movie. <laughs> Well, at least, <laughs> well, at least the bear's high. I mean, is that is that like a step down, or like is that good or bad? You know what I mean? I'm assuming like, it's that... a step down. I don't know because at one point, I, I'm sure she had wider ideals than that, but I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong. Well, she I doesn't. Mean, you did, see she that did picture? Charlie's Angels, right? She did that one. Was she? Did she direct oh, that? I think so. Yeah, she did. She did direct it. Oh, yeah. so maybe there is a little bit of justice in the universe. Well, it's just because um. It it uh it did not make money. <laughs> that movie didn't yeah. make its money back. But but she also I, I did like it existed. Perfect, right, and those movies made like hundreds of millions of dollars. When you when you see a picture of her like that, your first thought isn't cocaine bear. <laughs> well, at first I'm like, I, as soon as I saw the picture and saw Co Elizabeth Banks cocaine bear, I was like, is she gonna play cocaine bear? Is that like is that <laughs> is that like just put her in a giant costume to play the bear? No, I don't... no, we need. There's only one person that can go in a bear costume for a movie, and that's Nicolas Cage. Yeah, have Nicolas Cage play Cocaine Bear. He's, to he, is, he is contractually <laughs> obligated to punch women in his bear costume. <laughs> <laughs> cocaine Bear. <laughs> imagine, imagine going to the theater. Can I get one for Cocaine Bear, please? <laughs> I'm gonna say it loud when I go to the theater. One for Cocaine Bear, please. Yeah, I I just love the timing of this announcement. This is incredible. And that um, when you know like how some movies have special promos for like the different popcorn instead of like a popcorn box, it's like meant to look like a cocaine bag. I wonder how you okay, make yeah. that work. What, like from the what, outside, have it be a bunch of like you know, it just looks like white powder, and then no, there's no, no. Actual you you uh you you dump a bunch of uh of gummy bears into a bag of powdered sugar. Yeah, that might be the way to do it. It's like mixing, you know, it's a combo. You're mixing mm -hmm, the mm -hmm. flavors of cocaine and gummy <laughs> bear, and of course it fits because he's a cocaine bear. So yeah, you know, it works <laughs> with all the when you think about it. So, Look, I'm uh, excited for Cocaine Bear, all right? I'm very excited for Cocaine <laughs> okay. Bear. Mm -mm. EFAT movies, Cocaine Bear has to happen. Uh, I mean, let's not go that far. It might actually be a great movie. Just like an unironic movie. Hey, we did Lord of the Rings. Oh, yeah, that's true. Yeah, yeah. And mm. um, what other unironic great movies do we have we done on EFAT? Batman and Robin. Batman and Robin? Yeah, yeah th there is that. Yeah. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> <laughs> so, part four, a score that matters. Uh, I believe it is time to discover the truth of this argument. Is it gonna have a quote from John Williams at the end of this one? <laughs> the score matters. I love Batman. It's no mystery that a film's sound is half of the experience. So why should the <laughs> okay, filmmakers select scores at random or write music that doesn't work well with the scene it's put in? You huh? mean like you did in this video, I guess? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Zimmer it is kind of funny, yeah. Hulkenberg, also known as Junkie XL, do an absolutely fantastic <laughs> job at composing scores for this film and its characters. Right as the film kicks off, the score proves to be just as important as what is seen on screen. Okay. In the opening sequence of the yeah, film, in which the Waynes are killed, there is a voiceover of Bruce Wayne introducing the theme of fallenness. Just about fallenness. 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 Okay. The state of fall, Cause... the state of being fallen, I guess. <laughs> fall. Because what falls is fallen. <laughs> that doesn't sound clunky at all. All right. About everything falls in this scene. Bruce's pearls. everything falls in this scene. Everything <laughs> falls. The pearls are falling. So oh let me let me explain to you something called gravity. Fuck it, hell. You know what? You know what doesn't casing, fall? The, the, the criminal. He doesn't fall. No, that's right. Maybe that's on no, theme. He, the his, crime his rises. Soul, his soul falls further and further oh, okay. into the depths of hell. You see, you see, young Bruce. He falls through the the well. The the the, 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 the his parents fall too. <laughs> All right. Um. There's a bit of it. Oh. Uh. This might be interesting. It's total like non sequitur though. Some Bethes the Bethesda acquisition has like gone through, so it's done. 
and Microsoft has already said that some new games are just going to be exclusive to PC and Xbox. So, uh, of course, yeah. surprising no one, or at least it should. Well, surprising no one, but it's like, man, imagine, imagine like if Elder Scrolls Six or something is Xbox exclusive. Like Sony mm. could legit be in a lot of trouble if, if that happens. Cocaine bear. Movie right. for the generations. Mm -hmm. but, yeah. Moving on. Martha's Pearl. The leaves at their funeral. Even <sighs> these sparks are falling. Oh, stop. <laughs> even no. the sparks. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh like... no. Oh no. He's gonna be like the music. See, it's all going down, like in notes. The notes are descending. Now take a look at the score. It falls one note at a time, plunging no, itself wait, straight. Wait. Wait. Hold on. Sorry. Straight it down. Falls one note. Same, no. Same hold, a bit. hold on. Sorry. It falls. <laughs> Some of them are going up, though, as you can see, as well. Yeah. The riff, like, music is a little more complicated than just it falls down. Uh, and of course, this is just one instrument. Like, which instrument is this? Oh, oh, man. Now he's going to annoy me because this is music. <laughs> it falls. So, like, not all of it does. There, because that's not. Oh, oh, man! Stop it! What instrument is this? You cut that out. Show me the whole score. Show me the sheet music for all of the instruments, so that I can see if they're all falling. Uh, I would just skip ahead to. Uh, yeah, the score's good. So, can we talk about the film? Now? Yeah, the score is really good. But... <laughs> yeah, I like to listen to the score for this movie sometimes, but that doesn't mean that I'll watch the movies and listen just... to the score. I... We're avoiding the the elephant that is filled in the room like we can barely sit in the room the elephant is so big he's like let's talk about i don't know nothing you're like all right i guess we don't have to talk about the elephant <laughs> okay um this fallen into until mm -hmm. yeah. the bats raise him up to the light and guess what else raises <gasps> shut up what what tell me oh, the tell me i gotta right? know Dude. Tell me, but wait. Well, I guess this is now frustrating me because, like, I mean, f first question I have is what key signature? Like, is this a minor or a major? Because if it's minor, then it's good. Uh, there's more to talk about than what he's talking about. Like, if he actually this wanted is... to talk about what music means and and what influence it has on how well, you feel about of... what you're seeing, this yeah. is the key of bat minor. The key of bat minor, yeah. Yeah, B because minor, there's bat bats minor. and Bruce is a minor. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> While Bruce's light motif is an endless freefall, Batman's light motif lifts him from those depths. Oh, oh that's inconsistent because okay. Batman's a bad guy. Yeah, yeah, Batman's a bad guy. Yeah. Yeah. Um. Uh, okay. I guess it's good then. I'm just waiting for him to that? fucking talk about the right and police. All of yeah, these elements work together to set up just how far Bruce has fallen, and the beautiful lie believe, that Batman this has so created for him. Ridiculous. But listen to the it music, was, it was, it's ominous! Yeah, it's very- it-, it this is like a... You would this expect not, to see this in a film where someone gets power who is evil. Well, I think- I think a good example is you can- Like Thanos cause, or cause something. it's funny, he's gonna shit on, like, Avengers and stuff, but, like, some of these- some of these films have really good scores. Um, and it's, uh, you know, like every time, uh, just thinking like Civil War, cause Civil War's an easy one to default to, like Captain America's theme is very sort of archetypical, sort of hopeful, heroic type of theme as well. Uh, but then like the actual theme for the movie is a lot more dour. Um, Winter Soldier's score is really good. Oh, yeah, well, I uh... guess I don't want to, I, I don't know. Like if, if we want to talk about music, I don't want it to just be like, oh, it's good or bad, or it rises or it falls. You know, it's like, can we please, like, if you've got to talk about this, can we please go into more detail <laughs> instead um, of just this reductive, simplistic take? The interesting thing is he's just highlighted as well. It's like this sequence is Bruce telling us with the um, narration that this was the part mm -hmm. in his life where he was like, I can become Batman and things will get better, but it didn't. And then he the starts whole, killing people. Yeah. The whole beautiful lie thing. Um, so it's just like, to me, I'm just like, couldn't you just apply anything you want? Like, I, I, I don't know about this with uh, when you get really interpretive with what the music definitely <laughs> means or can mean. Well, I, just, it's, I don't think it's, there's many films yeah. that you can't do this with. 
it's kind of hard because when it comes to like statements on music, the very broad one is if something is in a major, then it's probably going to make you happy. And if it's in a minor, it's going to make you sad. That's like the broad feeling that like music evokes. And then you can maybe yeah. go into more from there, but it's real. Oh, what was that? Yeah, right? go to go to YouTube and listen to the Godfather theme mm. in the major key. Listen to listen Take to Me in Home the minor, yeah. in the minor key. And if you change the uh, line sleeps tonight in the minor well, key, totally changes the entire yeah. feeling of the song if you change yeah. it from major to minor. Yeah, very it's, obvious. It's really, it's very really clear. interesting how how much of a difference that change makes. And I mean, a good example is, and a much more appropriate example, in Far From Home, <gasps> Mysterio's theme when he's a hero is really triumphant and like very standard almost like just standard like oh i'm a hero kind of music but then when he becomes a villain it just shifts a little bit and it takes on a much more sinister tone it's really good like that's really and of course a good example vulture from the avengers is the avengers theme inverted it's fucking awesome it's way better than just like hey look it goes down the (laughs) the discussion on both of those don't end there like you go into why that's meaningful yeah with this, well, it's that's like what I was about to say, Batman yeah. fell yeah. and then he rose, but he still didn't fully rise because he's killing people. I mean, that's the that's kind of the uh, frustrating thing. The music is awesome in this film. It's really good. It's really really good. But like, yeah, what it what it means in the film itself, like it's the film doesn't support like any of it at all. It's like yeah, Hans Zimmer is doing all the heavy lifting here at Junkie XL. It's like, it's like going to a restaurant and like. The appetizer is really good, but then the main course is just awful. And you're like, well, yeah. at least the, you know, at least the, you know, the, what, the fried mushrooms were good. Hmm. <laughs> Again, I... Hey, look, they have the best paintings on the I don't have anything bad to say about the, the score. I'm just waiting to talk about yeah. the writing, please. With just one gorgeous piece by Tom Holkenborg, we feel the intensity and brokenness of Bruce's state in this <laughs> film. If this doesn't convince you <laughs> that Zack Snyder is a talented filmmaker, but that's not I don't know what will. No, he's not, not Zack Snyder. The... Yeah, that that's not the... he doesn't make the music. The person made a great uh, soundtrack. They get the credit for that, even, not Zack Snyder. He even named the people. It's like, those people did really good jobs. Zach yeah, they, did a really they must good feel job. really upset that you gave Zack Snyder all the credit. <laughs> <laughs> They're like, I, I, like, I mean, but I, I guess his logic would be Zack Snyder was probably in the room, and it's like, but I imagine that when it comes to music, like Zack Snyder is a filmmaker. That doesn't necessarily, you know what I mean? Like, it's almost like what direction he gives for the music would probably have a lot more to do with just Hans Zimmer's interpretation of that rather than the fact that he said it, if that even happened. The thing, what would convince me is if you can, the the bare bones, everything that he had to input which vastly like how much is defined in this film by the writing even the soundtrack it's gonna have to mold itself according to the events of the film so mm-hmm. the yes. writing like you can't write and shoot a film around the score the score comes after the score the film. Comes i suppose after the film. you might yeah, be able to do that but fuck me that would be annoying wouldn't it Mm-hmm. I imagine so. Yeah. Yeah. The person gets to see the 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 uh, the, the director. Sorry. The, well, uh, uh, it's possible with yeah, like a jukebox the, musical. The, that's uh, who's the person who makes the music. The the composer. Composer. Yeah. The composer sees the movie and sees how fucking horrific it is, and he scrambles <laughs> to make this, and he, he pieces together. He's like, I've got to try and do the best thing that I possibly can for this movie that I know is going to be horrible. I got to work extra hard to make it work. Um, yeah. Uh, I mean, a jukebox music, a jukebox musical that's uh, kind of like centered around songs that are already written, and you're just uh, having characters basically sing old popular songs. You could do that, but well, yeah, in terms musicals of, are a whole different thing. Yeah. Yeah, even action scenes that are built around the song as the baseline, I could understand that. But writing a story, so like it's not impossible. It's just like they don't do it that way. <laughs> it's just not. It's not how right. they do it. It's not like with Kingsman and the church scene. What does it all mean? Does it all mean? <laughs> uh... <laughs> yeah, explain. This is 
This is where it all yeah, comes together. This is, this is what is this film about? Film. Good question. He has not talked about the characters. He's not talked about the writing or the narrative. Or he the mentioned knowledge. Batman fell. And Superman oh, kills. Yeah, Batman no, Batman fall. dies. What? Whatever. <laughs> Why is this story being told? And oh. what do we have to learn from it? These questions seem to me to be completely lost to the modern audiences. Lost are the days where we analyze works of art. No, Sir no, oh, no, 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 no. You this haven't analyzed this at all. You said the painting is a reference to the fucking painting. This is projection. Oh You're not analyzing. God. We are. We're desperately looking at the components to try and construct this thing and like figure out what it is. But you're like, God, they don't even analyze. They don't even just accept that it's good because it references thing. Like, what? Because it references Paradise Lost. <laughs> that makes it, it good. It must be good because it references a thing, and we're sitting here desperate for you to talk about the stuff, the yeah, actual substance of what's in, in film, it. Yeah. Fucking shit, not audiences. Like, this is like where... <laughs> this is like, you go to a restaurant, which is where I base most of my analogies today, apparently. <laughs> and he's talking about he's talking about how well the menu looks. The text of the menu, right? Yeah. How kind, and how, how the, the menu was. is new and sleek, and how the the colors work on the menu, and and all that sort of thing. And then we get the food, and the food is horrifically bad. It's crap, and we're like, oh, this food is terrible. And he's like, but the, the menu, menu is nice. Look at the, the, the way it was framed. The, the, the yeah. ideas of the food. The yeah, what a great idea. idea. The yeah. Idea of the food. Did you not read the description <laughs> on the menu? The idea. Ideas of the food was so good. And baked into the description is you will like it. Like, oh, sweet. <laughs> why, why are you guys talking about how the food was cooked and executed? I like to talk more about the ideas, the points of the food. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, I mean, again, 0% death of the chef. All right. It's they, just... they have a little, like, <laughs> potato cross, and, like, it references Jesus. <laughs> He's like, enjoy the meal, you fuck. <laughs> little fish finger man attached to the potato cross. <laughs> <laughs> the gravy coming out of its wound. Searching for the true peace, as well as finding ourselves embedded within it. Now we are finding ourselves embedded within it. balancing, for fuck's sake. Yeah, yeah man. That too. I don't, not, it's not like, it's not that I want to hear you, but it's more useful to hear you. So, um, talking about the idea that you can, like, get a lot of introspection from media that you really like, you can think about what was happening in them and what it taught you or what it made you realize about yourself. Absolutely. I love that so much that it only means something to me if there are also existing things that I find shit and repulsive because of how much they oppose what I consider to be my values or my um, personal perspective on things. Hence the disgust that comes with Wonder Woman 84 and seeing the scene where they're like, lol rape? It's like, whoa! And if he was like, well, no, you need to find what you feel from that scene. Just like, shut the fuck up. Like, it's, okay, well then you need to find what you feel from all the scenes in Avengers. Yeah. Yeah. What Again, if I feel like it's shit? No film this doesn't apply to. They're all perfectly content with checking a tomato meter and latching onto the popular opinion. Okay, so I don't fucking care about those people. We went through the movie, we've looked into many defenses of the movie, we spent hours talking about all the arguments for why it's shit. We didn't just look at a tomato meter, mate. Alright? Yeah, I believe 100% in death of the tomato meter. <laughs> Fuck the tomato meter. <laughs> yeah. There is something else going on. Oh no. I mentioned before me the greatest action Lord, movies today so offer to us a certain amount of escapism. Watching Jesus the fun God. and amusing Thor Ragnarok is so much easier than facing the grim reality. Oh fuck off. <gasps> the grim reality? <laughs> the grim reality? Fuck off. Oh, the grim reality? The grim the grim reality that many people watch Jesse Eisenberg's performances <laughs> like Luther. I'm like, yeah, this is alright. That's the, the grim, grim reality. reality. Hey, look, let me tell you, the grim reality of Civil War is that no matter, you know, the world will push back against you, even if you have the best of intentions, even yep. if you're trying the best, and even if they owe you a lot, the world will push back against you, and you have grim to dude. fall in line or not be a or part Or the grim of reality of the fact that you can't save everyone. You try to save yeah. as many people as you can, and you still can't save everyone. How about your entire home world is destroyed? But what you need to take from that is your home is the people that were there, not the land the itself. People, yeah. Asgard was never wasn't a place. Never was. It's a people. It's a great little message. For, like uh, Ragnarok even has stuff something in Ragnarok. In there. Sorry? Yeah, of course, Ragnarok's got some good stuff. Yeah. And and Guardians too, the whole idea that like family is kind of what you make it. It's not, you know, Yondu. He's he's his dad, not like his actual dad. Because that's more meaningful. 
Like it's the people. I, I like how that message kind of like flies in the face of Man of Steel. <laughs> well, it does, doesn't it? I mean, because because like Superman seems to just cast aside his real parents as soon as he finds out about his uh his actual which he has uh, zero parents. connection to. Yeah, which he and again that's kind and of they're all point. dicks. Well, I mean, that's the whole point Guardians raises, right? Like, Ego. Like, first of all, Ego's a piece of shit. Like, for starters, he's an evil person. But also, like, this relationship shouldn't mean as much to you as the one you had with the person who was actually there for you. Like, so that's a good message. I just, yeah. The idea is, like, BVS is just too grim for people. They just need it's amusement. It's too real. <laughs> it's too real. Too real. The fun yeah, and amusing need... Thor Ragnarok is so much easier than facing the grim reality of the world we currently live in. Boo. But what is the art? World we no. Live in? <laughs> no. 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 Oh. Um, it's like there's so many the movies world's... he choose from, and he goes for the the, the one that yeah. has the heavy emphasis on comedy. Yeah, that's not even fair. <laughs> Ragnarok is probably the the most comedy of most. all of the MCU. Yeah. yeah. And it yeah, came soon fair. after Civil War, one of the most like dramatic and grounded, and they're both hyper popular. How do you explain yourself? Oh, he never does. <laughs> he doesn't explain. <laughs> He doesn't. Uh, we don't do that. We don't do the <coughs> AE word do here. here. We don't. We don't talk about that. Thing that leads one to question the truths they think no, they know. Art is, just art is something that, that asks questions expression. instead of giving answers. Yeah, that's just. It's just whoa, whoa. Can can you can express lies just as much as you can express art truth. Art can ask questions and give answers. What the Fuck hell? Yeah. <laughs> art asks the question, doesn't give the answer. Bullshit. Some art, yeah, like art can do both. It just depends on the execution. Well, whether or not it's good depends on the execution. It can do both. They can do whatever they want in terms of, like, the message. Well, yeah. Okay. I think it's yeah, rare like the, the, uh... that they pose a question without at least being able to interpret an answer that's from the content Ooh. itself. Yeah, of course. I think that's very what, rare. Why am I there? Why am I there if not for uh, something that I can work with? Because what he's referring to, to me, is the whole deconstruction movement, where, where they want to make stuff that's just, I want to destroy this, and I'm going to do it by asking some very simple questions, also by. It's like, whoa, you didn't, you haven't done anything productive there. For example, just like any institution or any con uh, concluded thought, being the, the fucking interlocutor that's like, you know what, though? Why? Okay, bye. It's, it's like, what? <laughs> if that's all you're going to do, fuck off. It's not very helpful, is it? Like, I just, I guess I land on the opposite side, if any, of most of the time you're going to want to provide something. Something to at least think about, not simply the question of, why is it impressive to just go, why? <laughs> I think, right. I think that's the interesting thing is, because somebody could easily be like, well, wait, what do you mean? Like, if I'm, if I leave, if I give you a question, don't answer it, that means, I, it, you know, whereas it's like, well, generally what a piece of media will do is give you a few potential answers to that question, but not yeah. tell you which one is correct. Well, like Civil War does. Yeah, it'll right? give you something to think about and mull over and but it really gives you, yeah. something and when it juicy says, to chew give you on. something to think about. There's material to think about. That's the important part. Civil so War, well, two answers are story. remain principled and absolutely go your own way, or give an inch of yourself away in exchange for a potentially better world than if you stuck to your principles sort of thing. It's a, it's a super interesting conversation to have, and the film doesn't say either team is correct. In fact, you could argue that by the time we get to Endgame, it says that Cap should have, uh, should have stayed with Tony. Mm. Um, but that's only as a result of, of a third party attacking them sort of thing. It's a complicated yeah. thing. It's really fun to talk about, and p people to this day are like, it's so dumb that anyone thinks insert character here is correct. There are still mm. people, yeah, who are like, obviously Cap was right, and people who are like, obviously Tony was right. It's almost like it's a really good movie. And then, the, 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 what he's talking <laughs> about reminds Mediocre, me... Mediocre, you mean? Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah, you got Um, What he's talking about reminds me of the Family Guy meme, where they, they, they make fun of, like, uh, Peter, I, do you remember, yeah. as a philosopher, and he's... Is it, like, dinner's ready? And he just goes, why? <laughs> <laughs> That's it. It's like, okay. Yeah, I remember that. Um... Good job, you asked the question. Something that shakes us. Makes us see things it's from a so different perspective. Loud. 
something yeah, that yeah, it is. art is something that shakes us and makes us see things from a different perspective. Okay, the room did that. Oh, yeah, I was these trembling. Are, these are I was really quivering. bad definitions of art. Art is just any creative expression. I don't well, want to say that. Uh, well, I was about to say that like, his definition's more broad than possibly anybody's. A fucking, like, a toenail I could look out the floor and be, sh like, shaken by it. I'm like, ew. <laughs> it's like, well, yeah. that's some effective art right I'm there. Literally yep. shaking. Ooh. Hide the world from us. It shows us the best and what worst parts of us. It shows the best and worst of us. Okay. And worse. Sometimes it shows the best, sometimes it shows the worst, and sometimes it shows mundane. What if it I can crochet a blindfold? Is. Now he's just naming, hate... he's naming stuff. Yeah. He's not like saying what, how this film. Because we're about to. We're hitting the end of this soon. <laughs> yeah, this. Man, this is. Terrible. This is a disaster. And ourselves. We place ourselves into every work of art we see. No. Batman v Superman is a story about imper- Do you think I place myself in Teletubbies? I don't. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe yes, you should. Do. Don't lie. And if you yeah, want to go, well, matters. Teletubbies isn't art, I'll be like, shut the fuck up, Teletubbies is art. Of course it's art, there's a baby in the sun. <laughs> it's art. It's, <laughs> it is Could you imagine if somebody said Teletubbies isn't art? There's a lot of artistry that goes into Teletubbies. I mean, Ooh. making those suits, god damn, that's Tinky a lot Winky of... is art. Yes. As is Poe, is Ho. And Dipsy. <laughs> self forgiveness sacrifice, and purpose. <sighs> like Bruce, we have all failed. What? <laughs> we what? have all failed? Fuck you. <laughs> you have I'm failed. I'm amazing. Yeah, this video is a failure. This should have been your thumbnail for your YouTube We lose sight channel. of ourselves yeah. every single day. Yet there's redemption on the horizon. God. You For know any me, of these words it's mean. So loud. Yeah, the music's overbearing <laughs> as hell right now. What an what an what an absolutely empty ass video. Dude, yep. I can't believe this is like peak video essay. Nothing yeah. has been said. Well, Meanwhile, is... anytime he does say something, it just is really, really restrictive and wrong. This would be one of those videos where if someone was like, What's EFAP like? It's like watch this video. And if you can't think think of anything wrong with it, like th this is what EFAP will be. It's just discovering everything because nothing about this fucking works from any production standpoint, be it script, sound, commentary, points, any of it. It's all garbage. But I kind of like that it, it it exists. Like I said, it's um evidence that our work is far from over on the internet. You know, mm -hmm. <laughs> it'll never be done. <laughs> no. Our work will be done, though. It always will be. <laughs> when we're all on our deathbeds, we will all say, "Here we go. We did it." <laughs> I am the devil. The work is slightly done. done. It always will be. Like Clark, we are all searching for a place in the world, oh. constantly doubting our worth and desperately seeking uh, answers of our I own. I am not those things. <laughs> Stop. Well, I'm not I'm constantly sorry that you're so well worth. adjusted, Rags. Wow, Rags. <laughs> Can't associate with the shit. Oh, yeah, character. I need to be a. You gotta be a fucking depressed ass video essayist. This fucking comment on this video, too, by the way. The fact that people are still discussing this movie tells you everything you need to know. Who is still talking about Civil War? Oh, Doctor Strange. Oh, Ant Man. <laughs> not Ant Man, but like. Okay, so. Yeah, everything. First of all. People are still talking about it. Does that mean TLJ is just phenomenal? Like one of the greatest pieces of wig People in are still talking about the Holocaust. Yeah, they, this is an interesting argument. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why people bring this up. Like, they ain't letting that shit go. People are still talking about it. It must be good. It's, it's incredible. It was, me it was good because it was memorable. People are still talking about the prequels. People are still talking about Godzilla. What else have we shat on? <laughs> People are still talking about all kinds of- Mando. Aquaman. Think of the fucking coverage for Mando. Uh, Must boy. be good. Must be great. It's really easy to write this movie off as being too highbrow, or trying too hard no, to be- It's definitely. too highbrow. No. Mm. It is- it, it wants to be highbrow, but the brows are very low. The, the brow was yes. low, but it went very high up its own ass. That's like the qualifier, yeah, that's I guess. True. Yeah. This this film will go down in the annals of history. Yes. The annals <laughs> of history was. Like but when someone actually takes the time to look at what's been done with this film, the beauty is hard to ignore. Oh, we did. The beauty is no, hard to ignore. It's... 
beauty wow. is hard to find. <laughs> yeah, honestly, yeah. Ugh. Zack Snyder created a film, a work of art, oh. for us to see ourselves in, and we burned it to the ground. Oh, we <laughs> it. it's, our it's our fault. It's our fault. We betrayed oh, him. God. Oh my God, he wanted to give us something Fuck. to see ourselves in. So wait, he's saying simultaneously it's like really dark and gritty and it shouldn't be that way, but that's the point. And also it's something for us to see ourselves in. And then we burnt it to the ground. That's... We couldn't take it. We couldn't deal with seeing ourselves in yeah. this light. Oh my god, it's so funny. Maybe if we burned it to the ground, it was because it's shit. This is the thing, the only response to this is, maybe it was really badly written though. What about that? Yeah, why didn't he talk about the writing? The thing that, it's terrible in it. <sighs> it must be awkward, I guess. This one. Videos like this need to be recognized more. Movies like this need to be understood. They, are, they aren't made to take you out of the real world. They are made to think about what's actually in the real world. Oh, yeah. Remember that flying guy outside that's <laughs> picking up fighting, rockets? Yeah. Fighting the cave troll <laughs> from Moria? <laughs> what the fuck? Is, what is wrong with people? Just no, stop it. it's about redemption. It's about failure. It's about It's about self. family. Yes, and that's what's so powerful yeah. about it. Yeah, man. I love that. Again, I can't believe- imagine being a person who believes that Batman v Superman is, is like one of the greatest films ever made. Just... You end up making videos like this. Yeah. <laughs> and you look back in a How few years like, oh my god, this fucking video. <laughs> Jesus. How embarrassing. A little complicated at times, yes. Is no. it difficult to watch our favorite no. childhood heroes in such a somber state? Absolutely. No. Does it merit more than one watch through? It well, certainly I'm not a does. Child. Like when I see when I see Superman, because I am an adult, I can differentiate different versions of Superman in media that other people create. I'm not like, that's my Superman. That Superman belongs to me. And it hurts. My Fifi's for Superman. <laughs> Hashtag but the Fifi's for good Superman. things. If you watch a film without using your brain once, <laughs> you've essentially just ridden a roller coaster. And I don't mean to step on Martin Scorsese's toes. If if you watch a film without using your brain, it's essentially so I can't turn my brain off. Well, that's the ongoing discussion, um, isn't it? This yeah. this movie can only benefit from you turning your brain off as you watch it. Yes. I love yeah. that he's about to quote Martin Scorsese. Do you think Martin Scorsese thinks Batman v Superman is a work of art? Is anything but like garbage? Yeah. Do you think he actually likes this film? Like, if you had a conversation with him, do you think you'd be happy with what he tells you? Also, it kind of goes to show the the dare I say toxicity of defining shit as not art or not cinema. All it is yeah. is angry people trying to big up one thing well, and shit on something else. As uh, there was Taika Waititi, he's like, it, it's the Marvel Cinematic Universe. It's cinema, like <laughs> you know, like I don't know what I meant to say. It is it's no, cinema, not cinema. Wrong. It is cinema that but you art, view in a cinema, and it's cinematic. I just don't understand. It's the Marvel art is Cinematic not, Universe. By every cinema. meaningful definition, it is. it is that, but by the definition of, yeah, but it's superheroes. Yeah, which is, you gotta work on that. And then like, well, who says that. what about all the yeah. ones that are considered fantastic works of art, like, like, yeah. like Dark Knight and Logan and others, and it's like, oh, those, uh, mm, those are different. Like, okay. Alright. And I don't mean to step on Martin Scorsese's toes here, but art is not an amusement park. And make no mistake, film it can is be. art. It, it can be, yeah. Um, make no yeah, mistake, why can't it be? Art. Why would any, who in the world has ever said otherwise about film is um, art? I think that uh, amusement parks are underrated. I think that there is an art to making an amusement park, well, sure making a really is. well-crafted about, one. It's funny, man, that's very reductive, yeah. How about moving through a haunted house, for example? The amount of work that someone would have put in to give you a specific experience based on how they understand those particular experiences to be executed. Imagine, like, like every every roller coaster that's, like, really well made and, and well crafted and everything. Like, all the, uh, the work that had to go into designing a roller coaster that will be thrilling and smooth yeah. and you'll want to go on again as soon as you get off. Like, you know what? Don't knock on amusement parks. This came up in an older yeah, event, I think, but like, great. 
You could I could picture someone being in a car and being like, well, cars aren't art. They're like a functional thing that you use for. And it's like, oh, tell that to the person that designed this thing, please. That designed it, who spent their life. Like, and also, trying... I mean, that that would be a funny thing for someone to say about a car when there is very clearly in basically every car the goal of making it kind of have a face. Well, and almost oh yeah, giving like it an, like an aesthetic that will look yeah, pleasing. Yeah, look it's the, well, I would I mean, argue it's the balance between it. utility and beauty. They like they want to make it. It oh, needs absolutely. to do what it has to do, but also they want to make it look fucking well, awesome. I guess it'd be funny, right? Because it'd be like, well, obviously, like a Lambo is a piece of art, but not like a Honda uh, Civic or a Honda. And it's like, nah, mm. come on, it's all art. It all is or none of it is. You got to pick one. Too protective of that word. So, yeah. you bet. No, art is for B BVS, not for cars. <laughs> like, all right. All right. <laughs> a, a fucking table can be a work of art. Absolutely. Of course it can. Carpentry. Can can absolutely. Work, uh, yeah, carpentry is a, yeah. Anything that is somebody's, like, the, what they do in life can be art. Like, there's probably even an art to cleaning the floor in a certain way, you know? There's, like, there is an art... There's an art to stocking produce and hand stacking fruit on top of each other to look yep. like aesthetically pleasing to look yep. at. Yeah, we're, we're fruit trying to, yeah, fruit arrangement. Yeah, we're we're trying to get to like extreme examples, but none of these shock me. I'm just mm. like, yep. Yeah, yeah, if I no. if I shot on the yeah. floor and sculpted a face into it, I'm like, so that's art now, by the way. <laughs> like, <A> lot, yeah. <laughs> Nobody wants their fruit to look like a zookeeper's bucket. Exactly. All right. Yeah, film is art. A video, a video essay by Carl like <laughs> Sanders. What a load of crap. <laughs> Disclaimer, I do not own the- that's always been a worthless thing to put into your videos, it doesn't I do anything. The clips all they don't give a long. shit, mate. Nope. I don't know why you said that. All you've said is this video belongs to Disney and Warner Brothers. Why would you say that? I don't all know copyright. Uh, I don't know about you. Mm -hmm. True, this is fair use. This is a review. This so is like, absolutely fair use. I don't know about. The, I don't know if the music. It doesn't matter would... who owns the copyright. That's the whole point of fair use. I don't, I don't know matter. if the music would count for that, but the visuals certainly. Uh, no, I think music. I think you. Music I think would. music does count because it's it's music from the film, especially. He's like, also yeah. specifically talking about the music. Uh, well, I don't. I, I don't, don't, think don't know, you know about that. Need to... He uses it as a backing uh, track. I, I don't know if that's covered by copyright because he's not transforming I... it. He's just using it for his benefit. You have um, to replacement uh, for the This is I, uh, don't be surprised. Quality. I'm saying this applies to basically. I don't. I'm pretty sure all of us have done this. Uh, everyone on YouTube does this. The copyright is still not. They're not sure about this one. Um, uh, visuals, about, I think, like, are a clear cut track. thing. But putting a backing track behind you talking when it's you're like, well, well, yeah, but it's the music from the film. It's like, uh, -huh. that's not really. I guess when that's, I was, I when would, you, uh, in fairness, when you're talking about the score, Rags is right about that. But he, he only does that for what, like a small portion of this video. Well, even if he's even if he's not specifically talking about the score and he's using the score to amplify a message that he's giving, that is transformative and it's I, I would, I, yeah, so that's I, rocky ground right there. Well, I think it depends on what like if you're using the music from the film, I feel like there's more of an argument than like if you're using i.e. Sonic Mania music in like every video when that you talk person. about any film you want, <laughs> you know? Like if you're I, Sonic Mania while talking about just like, I don't know, one division, it's like I don't well, like, just free, imagine you made an album you. and someone was like, I'm using it for backing because I'm creating a review of some game and I'm just going to use all of your music. I'm not even going to credit oh, yeah, you or but, whatever. But I, but I would never make that claim for... I'm, I'm saying that it's like when you're using the music from the media that you're reviewing, I think that there's more of a justification for that. Um, I think if you're talking about like, the music, fair enough. I don't know otherwise, though. In the, by the way, if I was talking like a review of Batman vs Superman and... Um, I played the entire video f film from start to finish in my video while I was just rambling on about my feelings, and you could still hear the film as well. I'd be like, "That's not enough. Like, you need to." That's not only is that really lazy, but that's like I I would be concerned that a uh, copyright's not being held up at that point. Uh, well, yeah, but like when you're using Star Wars music in like your TFA videos, do you feel like that's? Uh, you, well, yeah, the, like the reason. Like, yeah, that, that's that's what I'm highlighting is that we all do it, and I'm not sure that it's. Uh, it's it is fair use. Um, oh well, I I guess because when it comes, it to just the gets way past content ID. Yeah, if you what like it does play do is, at a lower volume. Yeah, yeah. 
Oh, well, I guess because I've always, because part of the reason why I don't use like music and just anything where I don't have a specific subject matter is because of that very reason. Like it, it's irrelevant. So it wouldn't be, it wouldn't in my mind be considered like the right context to use it. Um, um, like I in the crash video, I'm using crash music. Like of course, well, I'm sure, use but crash I wouldn't put anything crash. over you for like if you used a random Bloodborne track when you're talking about something spooky in a in a, the crash game because it doesn't have any spooky tracks or whatever. Uh, I'm fine I guess, with it. I guess it depends, um, right? Like it, yeah. To create, I get you. what I'm highlighting right now is like that I'm interested in the whole topic. I don't know what would be considered transformative enough, but right now I don't think that is actually enough legally. I think that they can get you, and that's why music is really hard to. For example, this EFAB is probably not going to be able to. Uh, uh, will, will be alright if it can stay up. I don't think it'll be stricken down, but there's so much of Hans Zinner's music in this right now that I don't mm -hmm. think it's going to be able to survive copyright. What you mean, like if if like it was like, all right, we're going to court, like. Oh, to, if to, I, like, I I I think I would lose if they took me to court. I, not that I would fight it. I'd just be like, oh, I'll I'll re-upload it. I'll take it out. All right, it's chill. Yeah, <laughs> you yeah, don't yeah. need to take me to yeah. court. I um. guess I guess um because the problem is when it comes to like the state of copyright now, it's kind of it's tough because um a lot of people are doing things that aren't yeah. right legally as the law stands, and like you and then you of course you can make the argument that like even even devoid of the law, like using somebody's music to make your video, um, and then and it's totally unrelated and you haven't transformed it in any way. It's all very like, um that probably it's all very eyeballed yeah. as well, right? Like if I'm if I want to make a review of, of the Batman of this movie and I play all of his scenes all in a row at the beginning of my f video and then I commentate for another two hours after it. Yeah. I imagine a courtroom might be like, I don't know. I don't know. I imagine mm. that they probably, I think, yeah, I think the whole idea is, is what you've made a substitute for, yeah. well, maybe that's, maybe that, but that, that makes it complicated, right? Because if you were using music that's totally unrelated, it's like, but I'm talking over all of it. This isn't a substitute for listening to the yeah, song. Yeah, I'm not like, sure if the argument yeah. works. Um, well, I don't know if, I don't know if it does either. Um, I wouldn't say that it does, right? Like, like, like if you, I don't know. The reason yeah. I choose the tracks that I have in my videos is to evoke a feeling rather than being like oh this music is good i want people to like my video for the music that is good that yeah, i didn't yeah. make but but that's i mean i don't think that's i imagine that's not relevant at all whether oh i don't know, know if like it's considered transformative or not I, I don't well i don't think the intention matters it's just whether or not it actually is i guess i find it interesting because um one of the conversations people have is like on twitch a lot of people just play music that yeah. you know they just mm -hmm. have music on a spotify playlist it's like and then for most of it, they're not saying anything. Yep. And it's like, man, that's yeah, that, really yeah. like. Uh... It gets a lot more complicated with stuff like that because it's just like, that, <laughs> isn't that just repurposing the music for your benefit? It's like, what if you are a streamer yeah. who just plays well, all the most popular songs and doesn't do fuck all on the stream? And of course, there's a way to get around it, which is to either use royalty free music or mm. buy the license for the music. Just buy the license and then you can use it commercially in any context you want. Yeah. Like um, there's a, a there's a decent music. list of very talented uh artists who l allow you to use their music and it's not copywritten. Yeah, I mean, there's there's musicians uh, all over the internet all, now. All, yeah, but all work is copyrighted, whether or not they do anything with it. Any as soon well, as you've made something, they, it's copyrighted. It, they don't claim it. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, they don't claim it, but it is copy. Everything is copyrighted. Everything in existence that's creative is copyrighted. Just as soon as it's made, then it's copyright. That's just how the system works. What if you're a Martian? You made it on Mars? What about that? Um, <gasps> oh, it would still be copyright, yeah. Like, if, if you were in, if you were on Mars, on a Mars mission and you drew a stick figure, that's still copyrighted. It was made by a person. Oh, I'm, I'm, it's good that they haven't specified that it has to be from Earth. I'm, I'm proud of them. That means when, when the aliens uh, show yeah, us was... their superhero stories, we can't just copy and paste them <laughs> into Hollywood. That'll also be protected. We won't be able to steal it. That's right. Damn. Um, for real though, when it, if you're like a, if you want to make content on the internet, you should think about these things like copyright and stuff like that. Yeah, because it's unfortunate because um, you can do a lot of clever things when you're editing stuff like that. Like, like, uh, say for example, Ray has a cameo in a new Star Wars movie, and you're reviewing that scene, and when she shows up, you can play her like theme. What was it called? The light motif. Um, in I, among I your know. soundtrack, because you're like, how cool is that? While I'm talking about her and she arrives, I push her theme into the background of what I'm saying. That that takes a level of talent, but in a courtroom they might be like, no, you're just stealing the music. You're like, right, yeah, okay, well. 
Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Kind of one of the reasons why I bought software to make music is just specifically so that I can do that eventually and just have the music so that it's like totally. Mm-hmm. And I think, especially as the law begins to change and starts to catch up with the internet, like I imagine that more and more there's going to be issues in terms of oh, um, for sure, in yeah. terms of the way that things are operating. But it's pretty crazy because like, like all game soundtracks won't get you in trouble, right? Or at least most. You can just use um, them all. Yeah. But I think it's just fundamentally that, like, video game industry seems to be more caught up with... I, I think there is a recognition that, um... Because, i.e., streaming video games, there is a question to be said about how transformative that is. Yeah. Like, um... It, well, like, especially if you just play the whole thing and don't say anything. Long plays, right? This is, like, an industry for that. Yeah. Which I'm assuming... Um, I don't know where all of you lie on that. I think I know Rags, you're not happy with them, right? Uh, with long plays? Yeah, the idea you... Oh, people play just, games with like, no... No commentary. Um, with no just, commentary whatsoever? Yeah. No, oh. I'm not a fan of that. That's weird. I don't... <laughs> yeah, well, I'm there's not... people out there who love long plays because they don't want someone's commentary. They just want... So, like, you know, Bioshock? Like, yeah. people like to absorb that game as an experience that they're... Almost like they're playing it. The question yeah, is, like... That's... Man, the problem is that's buy borderline. It, you know? like, exactly, yeah. exactly. Yeah, especially that games point. that are narratively focused. Yeah, they should mm-hmm. be playing it. But I guess, I don't know, there's this weird group of people who are like, you know what, either they can't afford it, or they're like, I don't want to play it, I just want to see but it. But of course, yeah, that's the thing is like, um, you know, it, when it comes to video games and streams, there just seems to be a recognition that a lot of the time it's advantageous if somebody sees a game that, you know, like, if, if you see somebody streaming <clears> a game, uh even though that streamer is benefiting greatly from using that video game it's like well if we get a sale from that or like two sales or 10 sales or 100 sales that's worth it i mean pewdiepie when he plays a game that can sometimes just make the success of that product yeah i'll be right Um, so like at that point as opposed to film i guess that's the thing is like video games have the advantage of yeah you can watch it but like video games are meant to be played um whereas if it's a film and it's just uploaded on YouTube or something. It's like, oh, well, you just got the movie. Mm-hmm. Mm. Yeah, I mean, yeah. And they're still figuring it out. That's still an element of the Wild West of the internet that's still to uh, be yeah, destroyed, yeah. I imagine. Nah, uh, give it time. <laughs> and, and also, yeah, Frag said it before, but um, just saying I don't own the clips, that's not going to save you. Or like, yeah, you know, it's right, a... go to Warner Brothers, that won't save that's why... you. I brought it up. I was. I just find it a funny meme. This used to be something they do back when people started to upload clips, yeah. and the idea like, that someone's oh, still Lord. doing it, it's like, oh my goodness, it's, it's not going to help you in court. Like, oh, <laughs> I don't oh, know why right, anybody Lord. would assume you owed the fucking clips. Yes, rights do belong to Warner Brothers, including the right to stop you from making this. Yep. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks for acknowledging that you recognize that. Hey guys, thanks so much for watching. This was my first attempt at making a video essay, so let me know what you think. Oh, I believe it. I feel Mm. bad now. (laughs) Did you not realize that? (laughs) What do you mean? uh, This is EFAB. We've covered things like this that are like the hundredth video from people. Oh, well, I just looked up his YouTube channel. Yeah, he hasn't made a video essay before. Well, um, a good first attempt in terms of like, he managed to put everything together, you know? Mm. But I mean, this is the quintessential video essay formula. Yep, this is what gets churned out when you watch all of the usual suspects. Also, please check out some of my other projects oh, no. and support me by liking, subscribing, and sharing. Oh, all right, that's it. Yeah, I guess yeah. so. That's not the thumbnail. Oh, this is art. (laughs) Alrighty. But yeah, one down. What do you mean one down? Well, yeah, there's one. (laughs) There was the one that was supposed to cover today. Oh fuck! Yeah, we haven't even gotten to the one that we were supposed (laughs) to cover. Jesus. (laughs) This one's thumbnail is a picture of Batman and Superman. It says "misunderstood." How long is it? Long enough that you're probably not going to be able to see the whole thing, but that's fine. Oh, Jesus. I was so, I was like, oh, nice. I can go to bed timely. This is going to be great. <laughs> it's got the meme text. Misunderstood. <laughs> <laughs>
Why um, do you punish me so abruptly? Because I love you, really. Uh, but yeah, uh, mm. as soon as Rags comes back, we'll um, we'll boot her up. It's uh, the context for this one. I should probably wait until he's back to say that too. Um, I don't know. What do we talk about? Batman vs Superman's not very good. Yeah. yeah. Was that was that <laughs> yep. doubt? <laughs> uh, we've covered what two? Is it was that the second video we've covered defending it? It was right because Man of Steel. Yeah. Yeah, we've covered two for yes. that, two for this. I think for um, Aquaman, Shazam, whatever else, we'll only be doing the one EFAP, not a double, <clears throat> because mm -hmm. fuck me, we can't you know we can't we can't keep having this happening. All right, it's ridiculous. Mm -hmm. Boo 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 boo. Are we even gonna do an EFAP on Suicide Squad? Is there anything that can be done on Suicide Squad? I don't know. No, we'll have to see. Because the thing is, I think. It's gonna be bad time uh, of Suicide Squad because we're gonna be busy. That's gonna be Zack Snyder's Snyder cut coming out then. And the thing is, we're probably gonna it probably won't be long before people release videos that are essay like that are like Zack Snyder's Snyder cut tisms are an incredible masterpiece that people don't understand. I imagine. Mm -hmm. Oh I fuck! I just realized we'll have to cover videos like that. Yep. Great. I mean, the caliber so far has been through the. Imagine Twin Perfect makes one. I wonder how he'll do it this time <laughs> around, knowing everything that he said to us. Knowing that we're out there watching <laughs> him. Working in the internet. <laughs> Coming to get oh, you. Heck. All right, Rags. We're on to the All right. number two. Um, All right, so, number two. <clears throat> How appropriate. Cosmonaut released a video <laughs> that was called Ugh. BVS Sucks, or Does It Suck, whatever. Um, it's just, I think it's like an hour long, and it's a breakdown of things that are bad in BVS. Whatever, that's fine. I have not, I don't think I've seen it. Maybe I have. I don't know. Either way, we, we've never shit. covered it. Um, and yeah, I wouldn't have a huge amount of hope that he managed to dismantle the movie very well. But somebody took issue with his video and made a response. So we're in a position where we are going to look at someone defending BVS from Cosmonaut Variety Hour. Now that's uh, hmm. that's unusual, what might you say? Might, I might bet not they'll both saying. be shit. So um, I mean, yeah, I'm curious how this will go formatting-wise. Uh, I posted the thumbnail there, Rags. Do you appreciate it? The, uh, misunderstood? I think it makes it's the so point subtle. clear. Yeah, so, here goes. Do you like that it's in the meme font? Isn't that just interesting? You bet it is. Straight from adtext.com. The <laughs> yeah. favorite of mine. I think, <laughs> I think that Batman should have misunderstood written on his cowl yeah. in that font. You managed to have sad. That should be his wife's name. Oh. But then she'd be understood. No, she'd be Mrs. Understood. Ah. Well, you need to put an AD next to the S on, on Superman to sum up the character to make sure we don't miss the point. Uh. Here we go. I'm gonna give Batman v Superman Dawn of Justice a out of 10. That's actually a really good score for it. Um, no. Yeah. <laughs> Can we give it a I'm not sure I'd go to two. Yeah, I, I think I it's was, too low. I think yeah. three is probably where I'd go. Too low. Um, That's, I mean, it's close enough. Yeah, this is a tough one mm. to call. I, I wouldn't blame anybody for giving it a two. That's <laughs> fine. Yeah, that's the Sonic music. Wow, that was the worst piece of crap I've ever seen. I'm fixing the pics, I'm start shit. I'm so we, 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 we were talking about uh, balancing. All right. Uh, that was all right. Good. Balancing For music selections. Audio. What, it, what are they? What, it, what are they? Are is. Piece of shit. So we have like we have what's called the triple threat. We have <laughs> yeah. the bad audio quality. We have the bad text quality, and we have the bad music selection. The oh, triple we have oh, videos and the clips, and we have really the Family Guy reference. <laughs> Yeah, and a family. Well, yeah. All right, we're in for a ride. <laughs> Targets, Sid Irv and Jack, we didn't beat him to death. <laughs> we did it by the name of Cosmop Variety Hour, or as I'm going to be calling him, Marcus. <laughs> made a video for his worst superhero movies of okay. all time series, where he covered Batman vs Superman. And I had no intention to make a response or even watch the video. It's not because I oh. couldn't stand to hear someone bash my lord and savior Zack Snyder. Uh, oh my no, actually- I already like this video better than the last one. Yeah, this one's more well, punchy so far. Funnier, yeah. It's, Pacing it's, is yeah. better. <laughs> See, I don't mind- In a certain sense. 
hearing opposing oh, opinions. I, I think it can be interesting to see why the person feels the way they do and how they came to that conclusion. Oh boy, and maybe show me things from a different perspective that I haven't considered. Yeah. But the reason yeah. why I wasn't interested in viewing this video in particular is because I saw his tweets and his intentions were clear. The Snyder Cut is coming out and getting attention, so why not make a video about his controversial predecessor? And I don't knock him for capitalizing on it. I respect the hustle. But I also knew that uh, he didn't yeah, really quite the capitalist. God damn. These guys I love are how people always say that. I respect the hustle. It's like, what do you, what? I don't. You yeah, respect weird to me. saying transparently is. on the internet that we're gonna, I'm gonna do this to make money. God. Uh, like it. But remember, bash capitalism. I mean, <laughs> yeah, I thought calls. Oh, well, fucking whatever. As if I'm gonna pretend to understand any of this. Based on what he said in previous videos. When Batman starts shooting people and killing them, then I get the idea that maybe someone doesn't understand the point of The Dark Knight Returns. And with that, I'm going to talk about yeah, how Zack really Snyder... Yeah, that's really yeah. a bad point. Yeah, that's a really bad point. Well, the, it's a broken it's the, point. Yeah. Um, is whether or not someone understands The Dark Knight Returns up for debate when someone's made an adaptation that may or may not reference The Dark Knight Returns, at least in portion or fully. Yeah. This is what I mean about the whole faithfulness The Dark Knight Returns thing. is totally different. Yeah. Totally different Batman. And this is the thing, in the context of, I'm like, I'm gonna make an adaptation of it, and then I do everything different, and you're like, wait, that's not like that, and I go, yes it is. You'd be like, oh, <laughs> yes, I think, I think you fucked up. I think you missed, so, but, but like, yeah, I'm assuming Zach was doing his own thing. But, uh, yeah. yeah. I imagine he was. I mean, clearly, I think he was, he was, I think that's people's problem, <laughs> is that he's doing his own thing. I don't understand the Batman or Superman. Man of Steel and Batman v Superman are a mess yeah, because Zack music. Snyder has no idea yeah. how these characters work. So I knew where he stood, and I knew why he was making the video, so I didn't feel the need to give it any of my attention. However, I've been getting comments and messages non-stop since its release asking me for my opinion and to reply to it. So I finally gave it a watch, and honestly, it's worse than I thought it was going to be. Yeah. Oh boy, this is exciting because I don't know what's going to happen. To do, what like, this gentleman needs to do is he needs to slow down when he speaks. I also recommend enunciating more. He is clearly more. slurring constantly. Yeah, and if, don't Relax. panic if, if you like, if you read out a sentence and you're like, oh no, was that good or not? Oh no, I guess I'll go on to the next one. I was like, do it again. It's alright. Just do it again. You could do, redo it. I have redone lines. As many times as you want. And um, Just... let's say for example there's four of them and then I check them in the timeline I end up going with number two. Like that can happen. Totally fine. Just select, mm. Yeah. Select that sentence in Audacity and hit Control K and start over. You're kind of Or if you're like me, record it all and then take three or four takes of each line and then still have some that are shit and then you have to go back over all of your fucking audio yeah. again <laughs> to find all the ones fine. that you need to re-record. Um, so happen. prediction: Cosmonauts' arguments that involve adaptation bullshit is going to be stuff that we push back on. This guy's probably going to push back on them as they are accurate to the comics, while we'll be like, yeah. it doesn't matter. But doesn't when matter. Cosmo Care. talks about plot holes and this guy tries to counter them, that's when we're probably going to be on his side of the Cosmo, court. Yeah. yeah, yeah, maybe. So this is going to be a very interesting... I'm going to be Superman uniting yeah. us. Yeah, well, <laughs> it's almost like a three-faction oh. three war, you know? Wait a minute. Mm. Tex, this is the guy that uh, the previous dude recommended. Oh, is yeah, it? it was Tex. Yeah, you're right. Oh. oh my goodness gracious. Wait, that Here means you've are. covered we the trifecta. It, We've done all three. Yeah, we got... It's a tr it's like a triangle. Beautiful, you had really. Twin Perfect recommended the last guy we covered. No, the no. last guy we covered recommended these Twin two. Perfect, yeah. who recommended Tex. We've covered all these people today. I think that's uh, just coincidental. Well, and like I said, we're not doing BVS after this, alright? This is it. <laughs> I'm done with BVS. Mm. We're gonna move on. Fuck that movie. Yes. I genuinely feel that he didn't pay attention to the movie, because he All has right. a misunderstanding of character motives and numerous scenes throughout. And before anyone asks, he did watch the Ultimate Edition. I don't feel it necessary to cover everything he mentions because a lot of his criticism are things that have been said over and over again since the film's release. Things that have been yeah, addressed, be explained, and debunked already. So I'm not going to go into extreme detail on those topics yeah. instead. Have they, though? Things that have been have debunked they, already. I wish you could give me a quick fire list on those ones. Yeah, Instead, I will bring them up again at the end and give some advice to Marcus. For now, let's get into the video and start addressing the issues I have with it. All right. The theme of today is irony. Marcus sets that up right in the beginning when he claims Sander doesn't understand Watchmen, Superman, and Batman. But then Marcus will go Slow on to not understand down. several parts of the movie. Let's take the guy who doesn't understand Watchmen and give him the rights to make Batman and Superman movies. I'm sure he'll do a great job. I don't. So, um, someone could have said, yeah, sure, let's give Mike Flanagan the option to adapt The Turn of the Screw when he did such a shit job of adapting uh, The Haunting of Hill House. I'd be like, um... Yeah, 
<laughs> like, I'm, yeah, I'm going for it. For it. <laughs> what you made was really good. I don't care if it's a bad adaptation of something else. Because the argument that often comes up is, well, wait, if it's literally unrecognizably different, then why even adapt it in the first place? It's like, so that argument doesn't actually address whether or not the content's good. You're just asking an, an, a, a question of curiosity. The answer is, fine. the IP gives them access to the funding or the audience to give it a chance. You might be like, well, that's not very um, honest, is it? You'd be like, I mean, you can take a moral issue with it. That doesn't really change if the story's good or not. Yeah, it's that's, that's all I got. Own. That's where the conversation ends. I think Zack Snyder likes Superman, so I think he made these movies to make the kind of Superman that he would want. So instead, you get these movies with a bad <laughs> Superman, and then eventually, a you bad get Superman. a bad. It's not even. Yeah, it's a not a very person. appropriate editing of the clips there. Um, because uh, him in the skulls. Superman doesn't like the skulls. It's so weird. Yeah, <laughs> yeah the, he's upset. By yeah, all the I would. Skulls. I would use a the clip of. Upset um, I would use a clip of Superman uh, sending Zod straight into the gas yeah. station. Yeah, that would be a great clip. Yeah. Batman, and all across these three movies, these characters never improve in any way. The biggest problem with these movies never is that improve? he doesn't understand. Um. Um. Improve. I guess Batman's a lot more lighthearted in Justice Batman League. Improves in yeah, between Justice League and BVS, he's sort of like, oh, I gotta use super powered people to help protect the world from bad super powered things. I guess, so, yeah. You know? There's something I there. guess that's sort of an improvement. <laughs> yeah, that's something. Batman you know? uh, Wonder Superman... Woman is I was just gonna say super Superman uh, goes from being super dour and depressed to saying, I'm a big fan of justice. You know what? Yeah, that's, that's great. Fine. Yeah, that's better. <laughs> that's... Hey, Wonder Woman technically improves in the timeline. Yes, true. She goes from Wonder Woman to Wonder Woman 84 to Justice League, Batman vs. Superman. <laughs> so that's that's an improvement. There you go. So Small there you go. Small increments, but yeah. something. Yeah. Stand these some... characters. Oh, also, did anyone else notice that he said three movies? And all across these three movies. So he's including 2017's Justice League? Marcus, you're, you're a sophisticated, sophisticated guy. guy. You like superhero movies. That's most of what you talk about. I'm more than certain that you are well aware about the situation of 2017's Justice League and the extensive reshoots that happened from Josh Whedon and Warner Brothers. Oh, that it doesn't count because it was movie. It's, it's not off. Josh Whedon, it's Josh. Joss Whedon. Um, okay, it's so the this movie is, though. It's it doesn't fucking question. matter. Well, I was going to say, in canon, that is the timeline, unless they decide to change it, whatever. But are they Zack Snyder's creation in Justice League, or are they Joss Whedon's, or are they both of theirs? I feel like listed it's both, as the right? director it has to be for... both. I suppose all we have to go right. on is the fact that he's never seen the movie, and everyone who likes his work has said that it's not his work, and that he shouldn't look at it because they butchered well, it. Well, I guess or, we'll find we... out when we watch uh, his movie how much of it are, is his. Are yeah, we about to I don't have believe this, those the... people, though. Are we about yeah. to have the ship of Theseus discussion? Um, the, well, the, I mean, I don't know if we'd, ha we'd have to go that deep down. If Zack is about to provide his version, I think the answer is already clear, right? Which is like, well, this one's Joss Whedon's, and jo fucking, he's got me saying it now. Joss Whedon, and uh, Zack's will be J the Snyder Cut. Because interestingly, I don't think Zack Snyder Cut is gonna have him say I'm a big fan of justice. I don't think he's gonna say that. Probably his movie. not, but yeah. And I don't think Batman is gonna be cracking as many jokes. Um, because Josh... Because that would be fun. brain's fucked. Joss would probably have wanted to lift the spirits, especially when dealing with a character like Superman. You can understand the through line there. Um, so I... I'm willing to accept that if you wanted to judge whether or not Zack has a good idea of these characters that you judge... Uh, the extended BVS and Man of Steel, and you don't judge from Justice League necessarily. I I, I do kind of think that's kind of fair. I get it. Yeah. Sure. Especially with the Snyder I, I don't Cut coming care out soon. To really put a big. Yeah, I, guess I, I don't. I don't. Big, yeah, I, I don't have an out. investment big enough to really care either way. Um, yeah. As yeah. long, I just want to know what you're doing beforehand. Stick to it. Yeah. The actual version of Justice League wasn't Snyder's movie. I figured someone who talks about the genre as much as you do would know that. So we only got two movies from Snyder with these characters. We're going to come back to his statement again about Snyder not understanding these characters later, but for now, let's just move on. I also think it's funny that he gives Marvel a backhanded compliment. You can make a movie that has a boring-ass story, but if you make the main character relatable and interesting, it will no, still make money. Okay. It will still make money? What? 
That I. This is why Cosmo but that's not about sucks, quality. man. He sucks. Cosmo <laughs> sucks so much. So he just <laughs> said that like the MCU is successful because it has good characters, even if it has shitty plots. But, like it'll make money because of that. It's like motherfucker. Man of Steel still made shit You're of the money. You're showing this guy. Yeah, and Black Panther's. It's not of all of all the characters to choose for this. Why him? Because he thought the Black Panther's plot was shit, but T'Challa was good. I guess. And the Black okay. Panther made money. Black Panther made a shit ton of money, right? Yeah, I think it is. Yep. Most two billion. Uh, no, it hell. didn't make two billion dollars. It made less. It made a lot less than two billion dollars. Are you it sure? Was, yes, it made Wasn't like it, one point. Was it Captain it, Marvel it was, that made two was, billion? No, no, no standalone superhero film has ever made two billion dollars. Uh, so, Spider-Man Part right. One did. No, it, no, it didn't. It made no. Why are you guys <laughs> I, mixing up I'm one billion sure it... with two? You no, you are wrong. Okay, okay, okay. Right, so sorry, you box, guys are wrong. Box office, <laughs> yeah, you're right. wrong box for office, asking uh, questions. For Black Panther is one point three. No, uh, not less so. You. <laughs> oh, and yeah, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Yeah, Far From Home. I'm sorry. I'm retarded. Um, yeah, so Far From Home made one point one thirty two. Yeah. Black Panther. So the thing with Black Panther was that domestically it was more successful than Infinity War. Internationally, it wasn't though. Like, and so therefore, like, total box office gross was like mm. a lot lower than Infinity War. Infinity War mm. was like two billion, but I think one point five billion of that was like overseas, whereas Black Panther half of it was US. So I think Black Panther is the second um, most successful MCU film in the United States. Well, to close it, like none of us actually give a shit about that anyway. Like, like you know, like yeah. did it make money? We, we at EFAP are like, huh? <laughs> like, not, I don't care if it yeah. made money. Yeah, it um, doesn't have anything to do with the quality, as we all know. And if any one of us was to suggest, well, yeah, but it tells you one thing. You go what? You know, it tells you that even with a boring plot, as long as you have a good character, you can make money. Like what? No. What? What no. about Transformers? What are the great characters in the Transformers the series? It's not well characterized in Black Panther. John He's... Wick two and three. He was more uh. well characterized in Civil War. That's way better in Civil War. Sure. Yeah. <clears throat> Um, yeah, I just I just feel like that's way too restricted. Like like why does a movie make money? It's like there could be fucking shit tons of reasons. It's not It, it just like it's got have, we all if know. it has a bad plot it has to have a good character you agree, right? It's like well, no, it could have just amazing CGI or whatever I don't know we all kinds of reasons yeah. it could be an IP What, could what be are all franchise. the great characters in Avatar for, for instance? <sighs> Oh, I think you nailed it with Transformers, right? Like, we don't need to go further than that. Yeah. It's, it's like oh, that's a boring plot, but they have great characters like Sab Witwicky. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, sh shit point from Cosmonaut. Let's see how this goes. Watch it. Marvel has been doing this for years now. Most of these movies are not very ambitious as far as story is concerned. They are. Um, I don't. I don't know what it means to be ambitious with stories. Just like the last video. Tell me what you mean. <laughs> Never know what any of these people mean. They are simply carried by their charismatic characters. You say it like it's a good thing. That sounds pretty boring. Is it not ambitious this, to have your story carried by charismatic characters? Um, he's well. So this is the thing. If you said as a defender of the MCU that it's good they have good characters because of how shit their plots are, I'd be like, that's a weird defense you just made. Yeah, it's good. Their their plots are shit, but the characters are not necessarily good. Just charismatic. Yeah, that, that was another <laughs> weird thing about the characterization there, of the argument, mm. I mean. Um, I wouldn't use this defense. Funnily enough, on screen, right? So, which of these would you say overall plot is thumbs up in order? It would probably be like, good, bad, mm. bad, bad, good, good, bad, bad. <laughs> bad. <laughs> <laughs> good. <laughs> uh, bad, bad, good, bad. Good, from what I remember. I was, I was, Guardians doesn't, 2 doesn't have a huge amount of plot in it. Much of a plot, yeah. so it's kind of, yeah. So. Homecoming, good. Ragnarok's probably bad, plot-wise. I can't quite remember if yeah. everything holds up in that regard. Black Panther's yeah, bad. Shaky. Infinity bad. War is Infinity shaky. Infinity War is mixed. Good. Yeah. yeah huh? Ant-Man was bad, Infinity Captain Marvel's bad. I'd put it on the good side. I, I feel like know. Infinity War has enough issues that it could be that mixed. I really like Infinity Infinity War, but I, yeah, I, yeah. I like yeah. Infinity War, War, but it's I plot. can't even remember what the Ant-Man and Wasp plot was. Nobody does. Oh. Quantum. I know <laughs> I saw that movie. I know I did, but I just cannot remember what the plot <laughs> was. And of um, course, Captain Marvel is horseshit. So, if 
we if someone asked me like what do you think makes the ones that are good that you describe as a bad plot i probably would argue it's the characters but the, just the way that marcus said it makes it sound really <laughs> really bad as a just, yeah <laughs> yeah he, he'll do that half the mcu movies are stand out i mean captain marvel iron man 2 and 3 doctor strange Thor: the dark world far from home ant-man both of far them from really home. underwhelming and far from home well wait what did he oh. say about that selection that they're really Skippable. unforgettable. Uh, they're really forgettable and can be skipped. How do you skip Far From Home? How do you skip a lot of those? A lot of, like, Doctor Strange, you... There's nothing after it. Well, I guess now I don't we think, don't... I don't think Doctor Strange is good plot-wise, but I, I, I would definitely know, recommend that, people see it. Skippable. I mean, yeah, I would, yeah, you, yeah you kind I of, would encourage people to... Yeah. I'd say it's worth seeing for uh, Infinity War to get context for... Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. absolutely. Mm -hmm. It plays interesting character. Weird. Good yeah. journey. Yep. Maybe if we Likeable. just we just push on through to more like a discussion that's a little less on shaky weird ground where we're desperate for definitions. Yeah, it's I would like... love to talk about that today. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and forgettable movies, even if the leads are charismatic, as you put it. So before he gets into BVS, he spends 15 minutes talking about Man of Steel and what he doesn't like about it, like the way it's shot, the section on Krypton, Superman's suit, the alien tech, the amount of action and destruction, and Superman killing Zod. So basically most of it. I was originally going to skip over this part because I wanted yeah. to get to BVS, since that's what's in the title. But it turns Fuck. out he misunderstands and misrepresents several things in Man of Steel as well. So oh, right, oh boy, all right, all right. he gets right. to defend Man of Steel too. All right. is, I oh was not boy. expecting this. It's so weird, it's like a boxing fight. Here. With these we two, but we are also in the ring, just off center. Like, yeah, we're gonna punch <laughs> one of you guys. We're gonna end up punching one of you. We're just the judges. Yeah, yeah. we're the Go judges rest, about to send in the the judge bots. Oof, this is exciting. <laughs> this feels unprecedented on EFAP. I have no idea who we're gonna be attacking or defending in this video. <laughs> no we're, boy, we're we get to cards. just decide as we go. Because this is the thing, if you no said... No one is safe. No one is free from sin. It's like, who's more likely for you guys to disagree with? Someone who defends the shit out of Man of Steel and BVS? We're all like, oh, all Cosmodor. We're like, oh, fuck. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I figure we might as well just too. If you just want to watch the BBS part, go and skip ahead to the timestamp here. Oh no, we're, we're in it. Oh my god, it's like half the filth. It's half oh the video. Oh my god. <laughs> You're bringing us back to Man of Steel. How what happened? Oh, oh. Did you, oh. you learn how to make videos on a farm? Oh on my god. Farm. <laughs> like yeah, I already mentioned, he said never, he wasn't a fan of the way it shot the Sorry, I missed that. Oh. Not too. Right. If you just want to watch the BBS part, go and skip ahead to the timestamp here. <laughs> I wish. No, I don't want to lose out on 10 Like I already mentioned, he said he isn't a fan this. of the way it's shot, the suit, or the alien tech. Which is fine, that's just his preference. But he also seems to think that the movie is too long. And he doesn't like the intro section on Krypton. Oh, and also, the movie itself is kind of boring. Because it's too long. Yeah, whatever. A lot of it's too long. But, like, it's <sighs> subjective. Too oh. long in what sense? Yeah, you know, like, I, I need some... Everyone agrees that a movie sucks. You can't just make the right argument. Like, we, you can't... Exactly, we did this, uh, I remember, I think it was either the end of the Man of Steel coverage or the beginning of the BBS one in the movies thing. I was like, either we're going to be appealing to too many slow-mo shots or bloated scenes that are unnecessary. And those two elements would be where I would be like, oh, it's too, it's longer than it need be. That is going to be the conclusion. But not because it's boring. It's long and it's boring. It's boring because it's Because it's long. That's his, it's yeah, like, that's wow. his argument. It's boring because yeah, it's long. This, so Man of Steel is definitely shorter than Lord of the Rings. Does Cosmonaut think that Lord of the Rings is boring? Yeah, you need to do... Mm. <laughs> needs to do better than this, yeah. The opening scene is a good example of things being too long for no reason. I don't need to see Superman's dad flying around on a dinosaur and doing karate. I know well, the What do you say need? <laughs> right. Like, so, you yeah. know, I don't need that. Probably I'm fine with seeing things I don't it. need. Well, like, if I I'm fine with it... getting backstory, if it's serviced well and it's done well and it's not too long and it serves a purpose and it establishes something I need to know, like, there's a lot of... A lot of potential reasons why. Yeah, if, if you describe this scene in a broad sense, like, do you want to see in the prologue, the scene where uh, Superman's father, when he was a baby, broke away from not only the council's orders, but the coup that took place and fought his way to get the ship that his son was in to launch um, to save him from the planet's doom? I'd be like, that sounds like it could be a really good prologue. Yeah, I'd like, fuck it, let me see it, mm. let's go. And then you watch it and you're like, oh, <laughs> there's lots of things I have questions about now. Yeah, you're like, okay, all right, yeah. Oh, the planet's gonna better. blow up. Let's just speed it up. The movie is also two and a half hours long, and if you look at the plot, it's kind of hard to understand just where speed they're it up. this time up. 
because it's not a complicated story. I just want to touch on this because I don't think Man of Steel is much longer than any other movie in the genre. Most comic book movies always seem to stick between the two. It's not a good counter, neither was a good argument to begin with. Mm -hmm. yeah, that yeah, makes me yeah. sad. You both that, get yeah. minus. This is this is what the whole video up. is going to be, isn't it? Just two people making <laughs> He feels he feels this way, but I feel he's wrong. Uh, yeah, but. <laughs> Movie's too long, and that's why it's boring. That's a bad argument. Yeah, but all movies are this long in this genre. God damn it! <laughs> <laughs> so wait, so are they all bad, or is it okay that they're all that way? I don't. What 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 is the statement you're making? I'm so confused. I like that he had a little section for what was subjective, if you will, where he was like, "Oh, he doesn't like the alien design, doesn't like blah blah blah." He's like, "Oh, we're gonna throw all that out." It's like, why did you throw this one out? He thought it was too long. Yeah. I guess that's just his preference. It's like, yeah, until he makes an argument about what could be cut, just ignore this. Two and two and a half arc. So Man of Steel being two hours and 28 minutes isn't anything out of the ordinary. And I can't really think of many scenes that they could have taken out to make it shorter. Uh, and now go. the Krypton intro. I think it's interesting that he doesn't like it. Because it is actually a more comic accurate version of Superman's homeworld. The ice cover no Krypton cares. that most people are aware of was created for the Richard Donner movie. I just yeah, but okay, I'll tell you why he probably cares. It's because Cosmonaut in the past has argued that if you're accurate to the comics, that's like a plus. It's good. Yeah. Yeah. So he probably Except also when it's not when it's oh, yeah, man, it, when it's uh, the Mandarin. Yeah. Then it's not. <laughs> also, yeah, I can think of this comic book argument least... thing. It's always a tism. Always. I can, always. I can also at least. I can also think of at least one scene that we can cut from the movie to make it shorter and improve the characters immensely. The scene where Pa Kent is talking to Clark <laughs> at the truck. That scene just cut it out <laughs> completely. Yep. Cut to them in the farm, in in the barn. That's all you got to do. The. Uh... Yeah, it'll improve the film and it makes it shorter, so why not? And how he complains how unlike the comics this version of Superman is, but then complains about a comic accurate section. Also, this intro serves multiple purposes. One, it shows us Superman's homeworld and his father since not many movies have spent that much time on them. We get a glimpse at their politics and the world he comes from. Two, it introduces... Um, the so I don't the care if not really others... shitty. It's really bad. Glimpse at politics and the world that he comes from. I, I mean, I'm not... I'm not in the position to argue that it's a uh, like like a useless scene in terms of adding anything to the story. It's it's what it adds to the story that I take issue with. There's lots of things in this scene that are really yeah. stupid. We've been over them in our Man of Steel coverage. I have no issues with it conceptually as an mm -hmm. idea. I'm fine with this amount of backstory to explain things. It's what's being explained. And I like it would be no point in us rehashing all of it. It was in one of the Man of Steel EFAPs, so. Go back to that one if you're interested, folks. Yeah. Brings up a specific... Like and subscribe. Don't yeah. forget to smash that bell Don't forget for to notifications. Hit the notification bell, all right, guys. Dude, yeah, lame, buy our shit. Right, shadow like Oh wait, no, it's right. Blinkist, Blinkist, all right. Blinkist. <laughs> <laughs> Watch a movie uh, for you. Paradise uh, Lost. It, you know, when I was researching this video, I needed to learn about Paradise Lost. So instead of reading it, I went to Blinkist and read a summary of it. You make fun of it, but that's what they do. Well, wow, Blinkist is non-fiction, so I guess they're safe uh, from okay. Paradise. Oh, oh, wait, is that offense? Oh, wait, no, hold on. <laughs> All right, don't worry about it. The main antagonist, it's... as well as his relationship with Jor-El. In 3, it shows us a key item for the plot later on. But if you don't like this section, that's fine. Uh... I just think it's interesting that he doesn't. He then goes... Oh, okay. 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 Oh, right. Glad yeah, we went over it if you don't care. So, yeah. Now, God. Now to, to bring up everyone for just wasting a fucking time. <laughs> Holy shit. Yeah. Well, like this video needed to be any longer than it already is. <sighs> to uh, to hmm. don't to b b bump that up there, Mel. If I was a fan of Cosmonaut and I was watching this video, I'd be like, you didn't debunk anything in there. You just said that. You didn't you, say you anything. Just, yeah. Uh, you just said you didn't like that. He didn't like it, but you don't actually care, so it's okay. Which is funny, we're okay. moving through this video way no, faster right. because there's no arguments being made yet. <laughs> They're all really Hooray. bad. Yay. Then goes on to mention that the last third of this movie is nothing but action. The last third of this movie is just blind mass destruction. Yeah, it's, and I understand when people He's say they get, they get overloaded kind of, yeah. with, with just the non-stop destruction and explosions and just like, yeah, I can yeah, understand. Your, your brain can't really handle it all. There's I think you, really you lose the sense of like scale pretty quick. You're just like, what even matters Absolutely. anymore? Um, this came up when we discussed uh, Mission Impossible with Ren, how slowing down every now and then will actually help the pacing. Absolutely. When it's just constantly, when it's just constant action, like, we need a breather, and we don't really get that in this. <laughs> yeah, I'll tell you um... what the breather is, when they show the graveyard of Metropolis. It's like, it's fine. <laughs> You're like, oh my god. <laughs>
He yeah, saved stories us. do need to slow down. I feel like I remember this distinctly. It's, like yeah, Uncharted, you gotta breathe. 2, Uncharted 2 has really great pacing after the massive train sequence that goes on for like an hour and it's just nonstop like uh, action ramping up. Mm -hmm. You have a m really long time to just sort of ease up. Like there's an hour of just really calm ex exploration, exploring these locations and puzzles and stuff before the action ramps up again. Well, Uncharted it's 3, it's just fucking action all the time. <laughs> well, it, it, to, to bolster your Uncharted 2 points, it's interesting because uh, after the train wreck, um, there's a bit of like... Okay, this is kind of intense, but it's not yeah, as combat, fast yeah. paced as as the uh, the train sequence itself is. And yeah. then finally, it slows down completely when you're in the village. Yeah, no, it's 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 really so, we need time to slow down. Like Batman v Superman is another example of just as soon as the third act starts, it doesn't stop. Um, um I think I think the, the simplest way to translate this to somebody is the lows define the highs and vice versa. We need well, I mean, them to recognize them. And I think it's also worthwhile to note that, like, a sh you can have something that is really, like, 24 is probably a good example. That's a show that kind of is meant to, like, never let up. But it does. Like, there are well, times when things slow down. People reference Hardcore Henry as, like, see, that's not nonstop. It's like, well, actually, there are several scenes in Hardcore not really. Henry where he yeah, talks that's... to yeah. people for a bit. Yeah. So, even Hardcore Henry isn't nonstop. Anyway, man, that's funny. They, 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 they even do that in wrestling. Like when there's like a long ass pay per view, it's like four hours long. There's like there's like um, matches with no stakes or whatever, so people can go take a pick. Imagine you're the guy. This is my time to shine. It's like, all right, this is a low stakes match. Nobody gives a shit. Uh, yeah. Mad Max Fury Road has plenty of scenes that slow yep. down and let the characters interact with each other. Die Hard. You know, where John McClane is stuck in this in this tower that's taken over by terrorists. He, you know, there's plenty of, of scenes that slow down and let us get to know these characters better and and process what's what's happening. In this, it's quite um quite a ride, but um I would still categorize it as like I'm not shitting on it as like it's broken because it's action for too long i'm just saying i understand when people say that they struggle to register everything anymore after about you know half an hour of buildings blowing up yeah it it's Island. just kind of it's overload it's basically a 60 minute long dragon ball fight and it's not like this movie even has the cool action directing that snyder is known for it's literally just characters slamming into each other for an entire hour. After a while, you just become desensitized to it. My eyes just glaze over as it keeps going, and it keeps yeah. drawing out. And so the way you counter this, if you were able, is you, you start trying to find how the, the fight changes, how there's lots of... In, so if someone described like the yeah, Final Fight Civil War... new locations, new places, new moves, new Yeah, you, that's how you counter it. I'm curious how he's going to counter this, because I don't think there's much you can do to counter this position. It's pretty strong. It's like... Congratulations, I, yeah. Cosmo. This is this is a great bit of criticism from Cosmonaut. It's <laughs> you not did it, but right. I mean, like, well, it's, <laughs> you have to understand. I'm, I'm, it's I'm grading scale, on a curve. Yeah, it's scaling for Cosmo. This is great. Good job, buddy. <laughs> I'm a Cosmo I curve. Less and less. <laughs> And I always thought this was kind of a weird criticism, considering that most of the movies in the genre are mostly made up of action. Really well. Oh, stop it. Stop. No, stop. It. No, 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 no. That's we were this first. close to greatness. <laughs> <laughs> Anyone could go first, that's fine. There's nothing okay, to say. Um, there is <laughs> a... <laughs> okay, so I'm, I'm just trying to think. Uh, in Iron Man, the film this opens, is what there's... Well, Sorry, no, what? you don't need to do... Uh, oh, I'm assuming yeah. Rags is saying it's whataboutism from um, this guy. You don't need to do... what oh. He's missed the argument. So if I told you... I can't stand this constant because there's, there's two forms of criticism. The action's too samey and it goes on for too long. His response is action like this is in other stuff. Like so, first of all, that wasn't what I said was wrong, and secondly, it doesn't matter if it's in other stuff. That's not relevant. No, I thought that he yeah. said that like uh, superhero films are mainly made up of action it's scenes like this. Well, yeah, yeah, that's what he says. The, what about, about it? That, that would genre, be yeah, yeah, like it wouldn't. It, for all we know, Cosmo is, hates all fucking superhero which isn't movies. Really hitting the point? Yeah, it's not really uh, interesting. It's um, what but he should like I said, the defense so, yeah. of this would have been no, it's not actually simplistic battles. It's it's uh, and I mean, I'm trying to think of what you could argue. Like, 
there's a it is mainly they just hit each other and they they fly away right that's I all think, that happens yeah well the problem is like when it's zod and once that starts yeah it is mostly just that even with the other ones other. though they they punch he lasers one of them once for a few seconds that's different ah <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah i guess but okay, so... Yeah, like, you could... Like, I could try and make a defense of this. Like, see, well, they I go to this it's... new place now. Look, now that now they've had this interaction, now they're fighting let's, different people, now the stakes a, are different. Let's do it for a good movie, Civil War, the final fight. It's like, all right, so why is this fight working so well? Constantly, what you... I mean, the, the main thing is that the character stuff is on point, but the big thing is that all of these heroes are leveraging their unique abilities to try and disable each other. And, like... Cap is Cap is trying to basically interfere with Tony, you know, killing uh, Bucky. Bucky's just trying to run away, and Iron Man is trying to incapacitate uh, Cap and kill Bucky. And so that's reflected in like all of the moves that they keep using. And then the balance shifts each time somebody lands a hit, or like um, and then just disabling slowly each of Iron Man's util uh things so that he can't kill him as efficiently. Yeah, like there's lot working there and and just and 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 i mean a good example is he is so angry tony is so angry that he tries to shoot a missile into fucking bucky's face like with his head right next to him yeah i think you could read a lot from how angry he is just by that whereas in this movie it's like i don't know you're both hitting each other you're both just punching well, each other a lot that um with if I was directing this movie, I'd be like, we need to be creative and find ways of making this fight more entertaining than simply, I throw you through building, you throw me through building. Ferocious. I think that'd be the big thing. Let's well, you can have them... More like a pointed animal. Have them actually, f like, when they land hits, it can be, it doesn't have to be you fly away, it could be that you tank it and you look actually, like, hurt, you try and do counters and block. I mean, he's a yeah. soldier. Like, Zod should be able to do loads of shit instead of just punch. punch. Instead of just punch. Oh, punch. Yeah, like, uh, the the warehouse scene in BVS, you know, it yeah. starts with yeah, Batman like blowing one. a hole through the floor. He jumps up, he disables all the guns. He ju he drops down. He <laughs> grabs a dude's gun. He forces <laughs> him to shoot at his buddies, causing everyone to duck down. He so he's accounting for anyone else that might still be up. He's doing all these different moves. He slams one dude's head over it, like like on a crate as he vaults over it, and then throws that crate at someone with his grapnel gun. It's like, it. there's a point where he's fighting four dudes at a time that have surrounded him, which uh, you rarely see in Batman movies, where they account for multiple combatants trying to take him on at once, and he mm -hmm. manages to take them all out. It's like, there's a lot of really cool little moments in this one fight scene. It's constantly shifting what is Batman dealing with right now, and how is he dealing with it? I think the big Whereas... thing is account for their vulnerabilities. What is it that mm -hmm. they like? The fact that Batman can be shot and killed means that, like, yeah, yeah. he does need to get rid of the guns. And so, and and like, someone's probably shouting at us well, for that uh, reason. They're like, "Why are you comparing a Superman fight with a Batman fight?" And it's like, the vulnerability for Superman. I think the first one that should come to everyone's minds is he cares about civilians. And so the fight so, can yeah, be yeah leverage that yeah the fight yeah, can be him trying to protect have to be them. Internal yeah, he can he can spend the fight yeah, with goes, Zod doing yeah. different things to really just fuck the people of Earth up, and Superman keeps stopping him, countering him until he decides I have to and kill taking him. Taking it in the process, yeah. But they don't do that. They just have them punch each other through fucking buildings over and over again until they yeah, land it's somewhere. Very and he's exciting. Like, I'm going to shoot the laser. Shoot the whoop. Shoot the whoop. Yeah, Dawn of Justice. Enough. Yeah. Oddly enough, uh, Batman's punches in the warehouse uh, fight feel a lot more meaningful than Superman's punches against Zod in their fight. True. They do. They do. Because, yeah. because again, the sound mixing and just the way that uh, the people that he's punching are reacting to getting punches, like that looks like that fucking hurts. Well, yeah. Because like, when when it's just people super people getting punched into buildings it's like i don't even understand how this <laughs> registers for you whereas when it's a person getting punched in the face and it's, it's like, like oh, getting thrown into a that. bubble bath you're like is that is that even hit? <laughs> i don't know yeah, 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 man still does oh, yeah I'll, I'll draw it back so yeah what, what happened here was cosmonaut said too no variety in the fight went on for too long and his first counter was well that's in other superhero movies other superhero movies are it keeps yep. drawing out and i care less and less i always thought this was kind of a weird criticism considering that most of the movies in the genre are mostly made up of action really what man of steel mm -hmm. does differently is that it saves most of the action for the second half of the movie on the top what a weird argument. saves it 
What a um, weird that argument. That is a bizarre argument. Not the one I'd make, but uh, hey, you're the one who's trying to defend. I don't even know Batman how to like Superman. Hey, at least it saves its action for the late portion. It's like, isn't that kind of just bolstering what uh, Cosmo said? Like Cosmo yeah, wants it don't paced you spread well. Spread that out for good pacing. Yep. Yeah, instead of half of the movie has no action, and then half of the movie is just all action. We had counter, but all yeah, right. Yeah, it's exhausting. Very stilted. I, I had well, a headache about... when we were finished with watching this movie. I think most people do, <laughs> even if they don't admit it. <laughs> action. Let's talk about the level of destruction in the film. So, Marcus, what do you think? And the destruction in this oh, film no. is borderline apocalyptic. This is the yes. fucking end yeah. of the world. And not, don't mm -hmm. forget who causes a lot He's of it. He's completely right. Don't forget who causes yes, a lot of yeah. it. I say that's a key yeah. detail when talking about how much this breaks your scale too. Uh, but yeah, yeah you've got the um, Metropolis extinction is of an entire race. Yeah, um, and the threatened extinction of humans. And then if you consider Iron Man's big payoff is like a highway. Um, Iron Man 2's is like this dome with his loads of drones getting blown up. It's like it, you could argue it's a jump up. And then Avengers is obviously defending New York City as much as buildings get. Um, hit by certain things at certain points. Everyone's doing everything they can to prevent the damage from happening. And of course, it's a huge scale movie, but then you bump it up as you go along in scale. I don't... I don't this one is just... Um, I honestly think the part right of the problem is the lack of recognition for the damage. Because yes. yeah. everyone's very upset in Avengers. Uh, the reasons Avengers. that make Civil War so good. That too, yeah. Um, like, again, a key thing that I think a lot of movies tend to... Like, when you have Cap running into a room to kill a bunch of, uh, you know, Chitari when they have a couple of humans, you know, huddled into a corner. Meanwhile, someone's bringing down the mothership or flying a nuke into the mother. You're like, oh, we get to have the personal, specific fighting, yes. the caring about the people involved, while also dealing with the big threat. Oh, Man of Steel God forbid that character relevant stuff. God how about, forbid. How about in Spider-Man Homecoming when he fights those uh, those bank robbers and they blow up Mr. What Del Mar's Del Mar. place? Del, yeah, something like that. Yeah, yeah, and then he uh, it's immediately just one realizes, restaurant. oh shit, I, I got I got to go in there and make sure that everyone's okay. Yeah, it's, uh, yeah, it, it makes and it's just worry. it's just one restaurant of a guy that we met basically one time. It's it's um, like it's, yeah. it's not just the destruction; it is that it's categoryless destruction. It's like is this. Are yeah. we, what's happening? Is everyone dying? Like, what, why does the film not even... I feel more for one sandwich shop than I do for six buildings well, I mean, collapsing because my brain is just mush at that point. You need people. <laughs> you need to show the people. That's an well, because so, someone's going to be like, wait, are you forgetting? Lawrence Fishburne trying to rescue that girl from the rubble? <laughs> like, um, <laughs> I don't know what that I was. I do, and that was a very personal thing with only three people involved. It's a shame they shat on him, but, you know... If that only, was argue, you could argue that's more impactful. If only we had scenes where Superman was seeing people that were trapped that's in the rubble I mean. and was having to save was... them while fighting Zod. That could be really investing and, and remember, it, engaging. You know, it's the the girl Zod who was, was constantly rescued, trying to kill people, and Superman that, was constantly trying to stop him. Yeah, and that girl is the one who said he saved us. So like, it doesn't really capture what we're talking about at all. Those people saved themselves. At luckily, despite Superman's recklessness. Despite Superman, yep. <sighs> well, she says he saved us in relation to him destroying the the ship that's terraforming the Earth. But yes, I mean, well, this is the thing. That's what I miss about these this stupid universe. Is there was a conversation there. We never got to have it though. Mm -hmm. Civil War has that conversation though. This is good. Yeah, when when it comes to stuff Fucking like this, shell. it's it's often the intimacy that makes it memorable and important to us, not the sheer scale of it. Yeah. Which is why when your mom dies, it's a really impactful thing and it's well, life changing. I mean, but when there's a mudslide in Namibia that kills a village, you don't give a shit. I mean, isn't this isn't it the quote like uh, when one person dies, it's a tragedy. When like a hundred thousand people die, it's a statistic. Mm -hmm. Stalin. And um, well, a lot of things. When what would have numbers pushed... get that big, it becomes really hard for us to even sort of compare. You know, like it becomes hard for us to even understand those numbers. Well, it, it's uh, it's part of a criticism of Civil War, which I think is actually you flip it around is actually um, the point of praise. People are like, why is it that Tony is more invested in the Accords after someone tells him someone they liked died in in the situation? Like, well. Because personal. when you're a yeah. superhero doing all these kinds of things, like, yeah, people are probably dying, and you can get numbers at the end of the day and be like, damn, that sucks. But when someone, a crying mother, comes up to you and tells you about her son, 
who was doing humanitarian work and died because of your recklessness. That's probably going to hit you a little harder. It could do, it could not do, but it's what makes it very personal. And he was already... You get a face, a name, and some information about the well. person that died. Yeah. And then you know that that one could be representative of a lot more than just that one. Be a lot of people you just did like, that to. Like, damn, if there's 5,000 people who've died on, on my watch as we're fighting, and this is just one person, mm -hmm, what, yeah. what about all those other people? What are, what are their stories? Yeah, so, I don't know, I feel like we've really bolstered Cosmonaut's side right now. <laughs> but mm -hmm. we'll have to see how this guy does. Superman is going through Metropolis without any regard for civilians. Yes! Yes! Yep. Yes! Yes! Yeah, yes! Basically. Yes! Wow, he's... he's... <laughs> he's, 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 getting he's getting the basic... He's, he's, he's getting, he's, he's getting he's, basic uh, information correct. I was gonna say, the reason yeah, South Pole's orgasming is because that's probably the most valid point Cosmonaut's made. Yes. <laughs> I'm 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 proud of him. Okay, I'm proud, <laughs> I'm of, him proud too, of him. Yeah. He's finally Jeez. doing it. There's actually a really easy answer to why there's so much destruction because there would be. Wait, so wait. No, oh that, no! But that okay. wasn't the criticism. You are you are putting the cart before the horse, and that's not even a defense of what he. Said. Oh yeah, that that wasn't. What he said, he, he said it's about Superman not caring mm. about it. Whether or not there would be destruction when two super beings punch each other through a city is not the question. That's interesting. We can ask why they're punching in the city, but well, that's a different question. Maybe he'll go on sort to of... explain. It is an adjacent super power question. Our godlike beings fighting each other would cause a lot of destruction. If you look at the anime and movies or cartoons where Superman. No, he's Stop using the that. same clip! <laughs> it's uh -oh. the same out of context clip of him fighting Shazam! No, mm -hmm. no, 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 no. This is this okay. This is an empty city made by Lex Luthor, and this fight's being orchestrated to make Superman look bad. That is the point is of it this. Luthor scene. or Luthor? I think I think both of them are valid, but I say Luthor. Yeah, Luthor okay. for me. Yeah, Luthor, Lex Luthor, whatever. The, the the whole point is this is a completely different context than what we have in in Man of Steel. Well, and they take it out of context just to defend Man of Steel. Yeah. If, but the, let's pretend for a second that this reference is Superman throwing Shazam through a bunch of buildings to fight him. I would have the same issue. Mm -hmm. I'd be like, why are you yeah, tossing him through a bunch of buildings, Superman? So this doesn't address sure? it for me. And if you want to be like, well, it's accurate to the comics, I'd be like, shut the fuck up and answer my question. <laughs> it's the same thing as this other bad thing. All right, I win. Moving on. <laughs> Superman fights, it almost always ends up destroying multiple buildings and parts of the city. So when that's shown in- By the way, oh. you have to be more specific than this. If Superman grabs somebody and tosses them into a building versus being tossed into a building himself, those two things I have different commentary for, right? So showing me clips of like, oh, see, the battle is getting a little out of control and Superman can't actually do anything to stop it is different from Superman having the ability to toss them up into space and choosing not to. Also, I just want well, to I highlight, according to the person that told me about the context of this thing, no civilians were even hurt during this fight. And we know for a fact that people had to have been hurt during the Man of Steel well, fight. Well, I guess, I oh, guess yeah. the important piece of information is, do these guys know that this is a simulation or something? Yeah. But, but, like, do they? Okay. Uh, well, oh, uh, no, I, 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 don't, I don't know the answer to that question. I, oh, well, what I mean is, if Batman, if Superman and Shazam don't know that this is a fake city, then they're culpable, even if they didn't kill anyone. That's the thing, I don't yeah. know the context, ultimately, but, yeah. I, but it doesn't matter? Because it's a fucking... It doesn't matter, yeah. it's from the comic, yeah. Live action. Also, most of the damage caused in the movie isn't even Superman's fault. But Marcus thinks it is... <laughs> most? Imagine uh, saying that. Most so of it here's isn't the even thing. his fault. I didn't kill most of the people who died. Mm -hmm. That's called an admission of guilt. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's like, oh, she so killed some. Thanks like, for letting us know. I take issue with that, with you ending lives. I didn't end all of them. Okay. <laughs> Thank God. You didn't ask my I mean, question. <laughs> I mean, sup I mean, Hitler didn't kill all the Jews. Yeah, he left a few alive here and there. It is, and he sees Superman as more of a war criminal. This makes it even weirder in future movies when the characters yeah. in this world see I mean, Superman. This is the this is what the movie should have been about. Because kind of yes, you look at all the footage everyone would have, and then you have him in court, and you're like, what the fuck were you doing? Why did you do all of this? You killed so many people. Superman would be like, I saved your planet, and you'd be like, at what cost, Superman? 
what cost? Well, have, I mean, it's funny. Save them. Like, you could have saved it better. Like, exactly. That's what exactly. <laughs> Which is what <laughs> Civil War's about. about. <laughs> yeah, but you could have saved the world better. It's like, oh, well, I saved it. It's like, you did, but, like, did you need to crush all these people? <laughs> yeah, they don't really... Hmm. Could you imagine using this logic in the real world? Like, you blow up a building that you believe there are a bunch of insurgents in. It's like, dude, there were a this was like a hospital, too. There were a bunch of, like, innocent people in there. It's like, yeah, but I killed the insurgents. Yeah, but there were some guilty ones, too. Yeah, <laughs> like, yes, you did. But also a bunch of people who weren't insurgents. Like, what were you doing? It's like, hey, like... look, I stopped a terrorist attack. It's like, insurgency. You know the whole controversy of drone strikes? It's like, well, I mean, that's the controversy of this is why we have rules on war. You can't just do whatever you want because you're set, you know, fighting for the, the right side or like trying to, you know, save the world. Like, f you know, repelling like Nazi. You try Germany to keep this with... civilized. Yeah. Well, yeah, it's just In like Germany. Yes, that is our goal, but we can't do that by like blowing up innocent people, you know? Because as far as the first thing he does when he is publicly revealed is destroy the fucking city. He destroys the local yeah. 7 Eleven, yeah. the local Sears, and. Yeah, and yeah. so um, to bolster him again, the shot he showed was Superman, like, pushing Zod down into that, uh, wherever it was, like, train station place. 7 Eleven. State. No, no, not that place, the other one, where he breaks his neck. Oh, oh. He, he pushed Zod down into that place. Um, yes. There are several moments like that. I think the most damning, and a lot of people don't like to count this one, but you have to, is when he lasered the ship, and the ship crashed through all of those different buildings. Through, like, that is on Superman. Buildings. Yeah. Yeah. Like you <laughs> understand gravity, right? You know that if you destroy a ship, it it it, it comes keeps down. Moving and it goes imagine down. The, it doesn't just stop. Imagine Zod said, "If you destroy this ship." You destroy Krypton and a whole bunch of buildings about your planet. And by Metropolis, the way. <laughs> fucking hell! Whose side Man, are you on? You I just don't psycho? think this is a good plan. I, should never I think I think my favorite part of Batman v Superman is that it makes it makes Phil Mentor because Phil Mentor says it's three mostly empty buildings, but what you see in Batman v Superman is it goes through like a good seven or eight buildings. I think that was Twin about, Perfect who okay. said that, by the way. How about the fact that Superman's got super hearing, and uh, as Zod is lasering the the Wayne Enterprises place, uh, a couple floors above them is Bruce Wayne's employee Jack, mm -hmm. who is praying because he knows he's about to die, and the fact that Superman apparently doesn't hear him, doesn't save him. That's because Superman knows he's the real god. Let me tell you what the reasoning <laughs> will be from Twin Perfect and Tex and whoever the other guy was. It was Superman's oh, first boy. day on the job, all right? Yeah, mm -hmm. he's not he's not perfect. Do you want everyone to be perfect, Southport? Is that what you're saying? I, I like the idea of this whole it's my first day thing. Could you like oh, imagine we've if you counted it with Twin Perfect Live? I know we have. I know we I know, but it's just it, it just amuses me a lot. It's my first day. Could you imagine if you're like at McDonald's? It's like, all right, so what you do is you flip the burgers, all right? You just wait until it's there and then and then you flip it and then they just grab a bowl of grease and pour it all over the grill <laughs> and set it on fire it's like you know like as the whole mcdonald's burnt down it's first like day. it's my first better. day get me, what's me funny some is slack. Jeez, i work at mcdonald's cut me some slack yeah that's not yeah. quite that's not because you're making me think about it now it's like that's not even how you categorize like if someone who's a veteran worker makes a mistake they go oh i can't I have no excuse it's not my first day it's like well no you just made an it was an accident Everyone has accidents. Yeah. yeah. Like, you don't go, oh, accidents it's my happen. first day, so it's chill. Like, that usually only happens for stuff you just don't know how it works. Superman knows how humans work. He knows that... Superman they... knows how life works. He yeah, knows like, it's such also... a shit excuse. Superman yeah. may... It may be his first day wearing the Superman costume, or being called Superman, or whatever, but this is not his first day on Earth using his powers yep. to save people. We see him do it multiple times earlier in the film. He does it with the, the school bus full of children that his dad says maybe he should have let drown. He yeah. does it on the oil drilling platform with the guys that are about to burn to death and saves their lives. He's been a hero for a while. And yeah. the local IHOP. And that kind of domestic terrorism would never be forgiven. Uh, probably right, yeah. He would, be, in the real mm. world, they would be like, what the fuck was... If they uh, had enough evidence. Yeah, they and... wouldn't... It's. Yeah, it's not domestic terrorism, but it's uh, I'd say it's gross negligence. Yeah, they yeah, I think it's it'd be something like that. Yeah, 
I'm yeah, sure no. He is responsible for smashing Zod through a 7-Eleven and a factory, I'll give you that. But that was Superman losing his temper because his mother was threatened. It doesn't matter. It doesn't, it doesn't do. matter if he lost does... his temper. It doesn't fucking matter if he lost hey. his temper. Also, I killed my loose. wife because I got so fucking fed up with her bullshit. He's like, alright, <laughs> innocent then. He leaves his mother with two other yep. Kryptonians. This falls apart in many ways. Because he's angry. Uh, it's the ultimate cure-all for any problem. He was just angry. Rags point. Fox was South ambitious Paul's or whatever. Point. And another point on top, this is not the only instances. There are several more, most importantly being the ship one, I think. There's three people... Really... There's, there's three people threatening my family member. What am I going to do? I'm going to grab one of them and I'm going to like carry him far, far away and leave the other two people with my family member. <laughs> Great. I got, well, got 16 I can't believe for this. If the argument is he's acting irrationally because she's threatened, then I guess... He's right, but that doesn't help anything, you know? Is is he concerned about his mother's safety? Is that yeah, the idea? That's an explanation, not a justification. Yeah. Well, if he's the concerned thing... for his mother's safety, then he should just, I don't know, not fucking carry him far away from where she is, leaving him, leaving her with two other hostile aliens? And I, I don't know, man. Like, if a guy's got a gun to my mom's head and I just spray an assault rifle all over the room and kill a bunch of children, you'd be like, well, I was angry. <laughs> it's like, that doesn't really explain it. It's weird. Mm -mm. I, I don't think you realize why that doesn't explain it. You just think that you can do yeah, anything. Like, no, but really, angry. what was the real reason? <laughs> I, I wanted to protect my mom. You're like, yeah, but dude, that wasn't really... <laughs> it's, it's my first time shooting a gun. Look at all the blood. What's crazy about that this does not follow, yeah. is um, I think it would be a way better scene if, let's say, this isn't Zod. Zod is somewhere else. He takes the one that's threatening his mum and just, like, shouts at them while he fires them all the way up into orbit and just shoots them out and they can't fly, so they're just fucked. And he's, like, furious, but he doesn't save them. He just lets them die. We'd be like, first of all, excellent use of not getting any other civilians in trouble. Secondly, is that the correct way to deal with someone like this? Should you give them... The punishment that is floating through space until they just die from whatever co you know what i mean we'd have a lot more to talk about that's a lot more interesting and you could argue he did it because he was really angry is this something superman would do mm, i don't know instead we got this where he drags zod through a whole bunch of civilian areas because he's upset at the, the potential of a human life being taken it's like good job you think you can threaten my mother Ugh. Ooh, bad film thing to do but that was also kind of the point more on that later but the rest of the, the small bill fight is him trying to fight off two equally powerful and better trained kryptonians well and sorry mate as twin they perfect conceded powerful? they shouldn't be but they are um as twin perfect conceded to us there is at least one instance in this fight where he has the chance to move the fight away and he just doesn't um we would argue there's a lot more than one but uh, yeah even people who defend this film would say that clark was not making the best choices in uh, in this fight and it's really just him getting his ass handed to him for most of the fight. How is that his fault? He didn't throw himself through that bank. He didn't take down the helicopter or jet. But he, did, but he did throw them into uh, the train yard. He didn't. Mm -hmm. Yeah. He also, where was he during all of these things happening when he could have clearly prevented it because it shows him stopping one of them from jumping yep. on the jet? Where was he? He just disappears so, from the film for a while. Also did kind of a shitty job with uh, saving the people that were in the jet and the helicopter. He saves the one guy that fell, that falls out of the helicopter. That mm -hmm. guy, like, dies immediately afterwards, basically. Mm-hmm. Let's move on to Metropolis. That was destroyed by the world engine while Superman was on the other side of the planet. That was his choice. Yeah, it was his choice. He didn't go for the Superman, or for the Metropolis one. He went for the one over the Indian Ocean where there are no people. Yep. It's like a lot yeah, of You only have to disable Malin. one to stop it, and he chose to go to the one that wasn't the highly populated city. You know what? There was and no scary snake thing that defended the Metropolis one from the ship. And in, so, you can conclude useful. that Superman would have been able to go straight through it, swoom, and then go straight to the second one. Who punched it? Yeah, yeah even even if um, he went to the Metropolis one first and disabled that one, and the world engine was still going, he can. Uh, he's super fast, yep. he can fly, he can make his way around the Earth in no time. So, uh, yeah, this is also his fault. Thank you for reminding me, video defending <laughs> Superman. Like, like, hooray. You know, you know the slogan, with great power comes great responsibility? Well, Superman's got, like, the greatest power ever. So he's got some pretty, like, his responsibility is going to be heavier than, say, Captain America's, who probably can't do anything in this situation. 
But he would yeah, try. Damn he's it. not bulletproof. He's not. Cap, Cap can certainly fight off against Chitauri warriors and whatnot, but I don't think he stands a chance against Kryptonians. Nope. So. He doesn't show up to Metropolis until after Zod's followers are all sucked through the Phantom Zone. Thank you for showing the clip where he mm. fucking downs the ship and crashes through all those buildings. You did it. <laughs> you did it. You helped your you helped your video movie. And then Superman. the final battle starts. All of this damage is from the world engine when Superman wasn't. By the way, Superman also helped orchestrate a plan to create a black hole over Metropolis. That Hooray! Can't be lucky, understated. Lucky it worked perfectly well. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> even around. And then from here, they destroy a few more buildings, a parking garage, a satellite, before finally crash landing. A Most of the damage buildings. is... Just yeah, a few more It's buildings. just like the Twin Perfect video. They're very casual about the discussion. It's like, well, incidents of damage. Sure. Several, I guess. Maybe. Mm. The city wasn't caused by Superman, because he wasn't even around for it. Now yeah. about Superman being... Why isn't he? We've Why? Yeah. already been Why over how he? fucking wrong he is. We could just move on. He's seen yeah. as a hero in future films. Even weirder in future movies when the characters in this world see Superman as a hero. Mm -hmm. I can yeah understand. I can see how some would. Still I can see be, how yeah. some wouldn't. This is the failing of the movie: is that we're kind of left confused on Superman's position in the world, and they show us lots of things to support essentially both. Like you got these people worshiping him, and then you got Batman like shitting on him constantly. And then you got the people protesting him. So you kind of just like what what is what is the current thought on Superman? And you have the media questions like. Should we have a Superman? Should Superman be building a... Can I just have two people talk about Man of Steel in-universe? Like, what happened in it? Please. We're only including BBS because Justice League does not count. In this movie, he's seen more as an okay. ally because he's the only one who stands a chance against Zod and his followers. And that's only after the military starts shooting at him. Before then, they also consider him a threat. And even at the end, they're still uncertain. Well, of course they are. The motherfucker destroyed Metropolis. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, the dude is, like, unstoppable, and he's clearly okay with not minimizing damage. We know you won't one day act against America's interests. Great quality. Up in Kansas, General. I hate that fucking <laughs> How do I know dialogue. that you're telling the truth? Yeah, but it doesn't even matter. Like, has anyone in America yeah. ever gone against American interests? Like, nope. That's impossible. No, so there's never if, been a I Timothy McVeigh. I wonder if McVay. anybody has ever been charged with treason. Nope. Yeah. What the fuck response is that? About as American as it gets. From Kansas. Oh, we don't really get the also that scene ends with him saying, I'm gonna do shit the way I wanna do it. It's like, oh. Yeah, you can't control me. So don't the, even try to watch me, basically. So the answer is yes, I may very well act against America's interests, because I'm gonna do what I wanna do. Like, okay. Good to know. That is not reassurance. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> really concerning, if anything. To see how people feel about him until the next movie. And the biggest plot point for BBS is that most of the people don't see him as a hero and reject him, including uh, it's not clear. most people. Not even clear. Uh, yeah, we don't know. We see some protesters, but it seems like the whole point of BBS is that, or sorry, uh, like uh, Justice League, is that people are really like bummed out and upset when Superman's dead. Don't like, even like the whole point BBS is hope has died. Well. Yeah, BBS shows like, well at the very end. <laughs> and don't even yeah, bring hope up is um, dead because of Superman. The world's greatest detective being unable to in any way piece together that Superbad is a good person because he's a fucking idiot. Also, the well, the the checks as well pushing him over the edge. Oh, good Ryan. Including Bruce Wayne. It's only after he sacrifices himself to kill Doomsday that people actually accept him. He mentions that he hates that Superman killed Zod, and this really again well is something I never understood that. why people hated. And to top it off, it ends with Superman murdering Zod, which is just he didn't murder Zod. So very wrong. I've already. Yeah, I don't think this. Wow, Cosmo, yeah. that's oh wow. Yeah. Murder, if, it's it's ooh, killing. It is very very, but we, our argument is like, why didn't you fucking do this sooner? And <laughs> Cosmo's like, oh, this is murder. Um, tell you, man, this. Ugh. So here's the problem. Uh, so wait, 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 wait. Didn't Cosmo not say that um, it was framed as a bad thing when Anakin Skywalker executes Count Dooku as You're if that, right, was a, but that was a bad thing for the movie remember, to do? Remember, he's arguing mm -hmm. from a faithful standpoint, not from a moral one. Yeah, it's, it's, it's nice he how says like, murder. It's so, he calls yeah, it he murder. does say murder. <laughs> well, I didn't say he was right. I just said that's what he's going to say. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, the, the interesting thing here, right, is. To the person that says Superman should never kill, I'd be like, we can have that conversation, but we can't have it here because this Superman has already killed many people. Like I, so now yes. the argument has to be 
he would never kill the last Kryptonian, this Superman. I'd be like, I don't know, he killed a bunch of unborn Kryptonians. I don't think, like, I don't think he's Yeah, he basically him. condemned the race to not even be able to exist. That's uh, pretty He literally cool. says Krypton had its chance. Yep. Yeah, so, all we're yeah. left with is, uh, would, would, couldn't he have done something else? It's like, I mean, maybe, but get the job done, right? Like, this guy's fucking crazy. <laughs> I don't know, like, <laughs> even the idea, because some people say he could have choked him out. It's like, possible? Yeah, I, I don't I don't know the biology, and I don't know if it was something he definitely could have done, but uh, I don't see myself being against this choice. If I was in his brain, and he suggests, should I break this guy's neck? I'd probably be like, uh, yeah, I guess so. He's about to kill more people, and you've already destroyed Yeah, I mean, at what point... So. Yeah, this guy's super strong, you might not be able to beat him later on, and he has clearly stated his intentions for wanton destruction and murder. I think it's a good idea to kill him. And so, yeah, I, I, would, I have questions for both of these people, I guess, but with Cosmo, I'd be like, you took issue with this, but not with all of the other murdering he'd been doing, or killing he'd been doing? Interesting. Mm. Clowned on this before, so I'm not gonna repeat myself too much. If you're strong enough to snap his fucking neck and leave a shockwave afterwards, then why don't you just aim his face somewhere else? <laughs> you didn't even try! After this... Yeah, I mean... True. Yeah, that's actually... So it's <laughs> weird, because Cosmonaut's making good points, then he makes a bad point, and then he goes right back um, into making good points. This is such a roller coaster. <laughs> I mean, it, well, like, it, I don't, you, you I don't think it's that good of a point, but it's fine. You, I'd say it's half of a point, because to what end, right? If you move his face away, and he just tries to move yeah. it back, you know? It um, is an extremely <laughs> destructive, <laughs> volatile weapon that you're just putting in a different direction it is, now. It like, is, there just comes to a point where you just gotta fucking end the threat. you imagine that scene of just those two on the ground fighting and he's like, Stop it, let me look at him. No, I just... <laughs> <laughs> also brings into question. just want to see the beautiful baby well, child. While, while the retarded family just stands there <laughs> and they're not sure what to do. I'm yeah. dying here, which is not slapping at Superman's face. <laughs> Stop it! Let me go. I want to look at the people. <laughs> All right, let's see the counters. Oh. As he goes on to who Superman is as a character, but I want to talk about the Zod neck break a little bit more. How else could he have finished the fight? And yes, he probably could have turned his head away from the family, but they have been fighting and no progress has been made. And Zod made it clear that he will kill as many humans. Yeah, as I mean, my issue isn't even like I go further than yeah, that. Why that's... didn't he? Why did he take yeah. so long to kill him? Yeah, that's yeah, that's our issue. <laughs> Maybe we're, like, you we're, gotta, we're this super... odd guy. You've got to kill him. We're black pilled on this He's topic. You know, we go way further than anyone goes. We're like, Zod pilled. You took too long to kill him. Yeah, how about that? My Just question is like, like, okay, I'm so how how do you uh, how does heat vision affect Kryptonians? So if um, Superman were to try to, because uh, I mean, this is going to have the same effect as uh, breaking Zod's neck. Just using your heat vision on his head. Um, and instantaneously killing him and that doesn't work it's like oh wait so heat vision doesn't work on kryptonians and what if i just like put my hand over his eyes well you say mm -hmm. we already know that yeah. the heat vision didn't even work on the non-superpowered kryptonians remember no it didn't it didn't work in their it army did. Yeah. well like wait yeah, it, it, it worked in that it annoyed what did them it do? It... but it didn't like it didn't pierce I'd their say armor it's even inconclusive yeah. sure i'll give you that um because it, it wasn't... might do something but we don't quite know yet it it'd isn't worth, pleasant it'd be worth testing me what if you um pulled their Definitely. eyelids down <laughs> <laughs> that's the thing is like i think that it would be worth like testing out in this scenario where you've got zod in a headlock and you you've managed to stall him from lasering some people to death it's like could this work could, could i do this and then you like you try it and it doesn't work it's like okay i that, that won't work so i can i guess safely uh laser myself i suppose but then if it does work it's like whoa this is really powerful like said, why I'm, didn't i do this this whole time <laughs> i'm on team zod pill he should have killed him faster it took too long yeah <laughs> yep I will oh, by, by the way, this would be my evidence, him saying I'm going to kill everybody. Yeah. This is also a criticism yeah, of Zod's this character. Is definitely He's a fucking a part crazy of it, yeah. person. This is him explicitly stating his intentions, and you know, he has the power to carry it out, and he outright tries to do it. You've got to fight. Remember the defense of this? Well, Zod is a soldier. <laughs> so he needs to fight. That's what they do, they just kill. <laughs> All from by one. This is an opportunity to put it into it. Also, this isn't something he did happily like in the Richard Donner Superman. He begs Zod to stop, kills him, then he lets out a cry and sobs afterwards. Yeah, it's really weird because 
he cares more for Zod than he did for the embryos. But anyway, what do uh, I know? The people that Zod yeah. killed. All the people yeah. of Earth. Died. The sound of wailing and death he, all around him. He cares more about Zod than anyone he killed. <laughs> it's, it's really strange. <laughs> it's the one person you should probably there be okay with. Words. This isn't that he wanted to do, but it shows that he's willing to make a hard decision to save others. Oh, this good. Oh, it's really tough. Yeah, it's really hard to say. I'm glad he's willing to... I'm glad he's willing to WandaVision this shit and make a big sacrifice for everybody. Thanks, I'm Superman. so glad. Thrilled to hear it. What, also, a, what a superhero. What a, what a hard decision to kill someone that's in the process of trying to kill other people. That's yeah. such a hard decision to make. Hard call believe... when you've got a guy that's like maliciously trying to kill innocent people. He gets worse the more you detail it. It's like, what's his motivation? He just wants to kill people. Oh. Yeah, just to just to spite Cal L. Okay. Like then the Richard Donner Superman, he begs Zod to stop, kills him, then he lets out a cry and sobs afterwards. This isn't something that he wanted to do, but it shows that he's willing to make a hard decision to save others. This is also Magnanimous. Superman siding with humanity by taking out the only other member of his race. He's letting no. him low bar. <laughs> no siding with humanity. With humanity. It, how nice of him to side no. with this, this, is, this is what I mean. It's like someone punches you in the face and says, like, I did this because I'm your friend. You're like, I don't, I don't follow. Like, you're like, oh, well, you know. You can you be my enemy instead, please? <laughs> if, this, if this was friendship, it was, I don't know. Yeah, who needs enemies? Fucking, if Ross from Civil War was in this universe, the, imagine the fucking montage he could make. <laughs> it's like... Yeah. When he sends them down to show the collateral damage. So I hear there's this me. super person guy. What's going on? What What's the story with this dude? You know how oh, boy, you hear screaming you and then Cap says turn it off because Wanda's getting really uncomfortable. Um, the equivalent would be screaming and the Superman is just smiling while looking at the screen. It's like, I saved the world. I did all of it really well. I chose that guy. <laughs> <laughs> and Ross is like, oh, yeah. I don't think the point is coming through. <laughs> no, like at... At best, Superman's like, okay, that's enough. And Ross is like, no, there's more. There's a lot more. We're not even 10% of the way through the Yeah, tape. he's like, look at the video file, Superman. This is 10 hours. I've already got, like, this is the first three seconds. <laughs> we, we got yeah, I had to use send transfer for this one. <laughs> <laughs> His race died and kind could survive. Next, he says the best Superman stories are the ones that explore his humanity. <laughs> the best Superman yeah, stories probably. focus on his humanity because that's the so. key. I mean, it, it, to me, it would just be like, it's probably... Very character driven, and they're going yeah. to turn out to be the very. Yeah. I'd say it's subjective, but yeah. I think you could make some pretty compelling arguments for it. To making us like him. He was raised on Earth, he was raised by humans, and his full life of experiences up to this point is that of a human on Earth. You don't even need the comics yeah. to make these arguments, I completely agree. No. It's we, totally we, we made this argument in the Man of Steel EFAP movies. Yeah. He's. Correct. Yep. One, one to one with us. Earth. He's a human first. A human that just so happens to also be an alien. And this is something that I have never seen written well in a Superman movie. This is interesting to me. Interesting. Um, never? Ever? Yeah, I was going to say ever. Did he watch the original? I don't know. I yeah, don't know I was about to say the original does a pretty good job. Superman's a really good guy. He really wants to defend people and he's... Uh, hmm. Maybe he's referring to something specific, like test, I don't know, I don't know, that was a weird, I need him to qualify it, but I doubt he will in this video, you know? To me, because this whole movie is about Clark Kent finding himself. People go into this movie assuming that Superman is going to have all these traits right off the bat. That isn't this Superman yet. This is a journey right off the to bat. the no, He's like 30. No, 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 I hate this argument. The, he's going to become that Superman. You, he doesn't value human life is what you're saying, and he's going to learn to. That's fucking crazy. Generally, if you don't learn to value human life by your 30s, you're a really fucked up, horrible person. But it's not even true. We know that he does. That's, it's a contradiction we're highlighting in the film. This man is not, like, shown to be the... Um, I'm trying to think of what is, like a, what is, like, a superhero character who just doesn't care about people? Uh... <laughs> it's hard to find a reference, um... isn't it? Who doesn't care about people? I mean, uh, is, I suppose... I um, Deadpool? An interesting... Even he cares about him in a utility Deadpool sense, cares that's about the thing. Well, I was gonna say, definitely cares about an people. interesting one, not necessarily one-to-one, -one, is, um... You guys remember... I think it's in the... I can't remember if it's in the comic or not. Well, I haven't read it, so I wouldn't know, but, um, Dr. Manhattan... He, um... They ask him why... Yeah, he seems very apathetic. Yeah, like, the whole point is he's humanity. evolved so far past that he, he's doing it because he knows that's what he should do, rather than that's how he feels. 
like he doesn't actually feel for the human beings and they ask him why did he like explode a lot of the enemies in different scenarios instead of just taking their guns away or doing whatever else and when he's faced with that question he doesn't even know the answer because he's just like i don't know i stopped them he doesn't he doesn't like the idea of blowing up their guns versus blowing up them there's not really much of a difference and by the way someone's probably pissed at me for misrepresenting dr manhattan it's not the point it's to represent an idea which is not in this film the man of steel clark he very much values human life to the point where his dad is like whoa your identity bro but then that doesn't sink in at all because he does the thing with the oil tanker um and then so in the film he's shown he cares about people to the point where he will uh, fuck up his own life according to his dad, right? He cares about him a lot, but then in the in the last act, it's kind of like, wait, wait, Clark, look, wait, what did you look over there? Look at all those it's screaming true, people. What have you done? And he's like, huh? No, I don't. La no. la la la. Mm -hmm. Don't know what you're highlighting. I'm, I'm confused. So saying, well, he's going to become super bad. It's like that's a worthless fucking argument. Ben the version of Superman that people are more familiar with. This whole movie is a learning experience for him, and it's actually a more <laughs> human version Dude, of that. learning about your history and the costume you're gonna wear and your relationship to the American government as you save people's lives is not the same as you let people die. It's like, yeah, but he's going to learn to not do that. <laughs> it's like, what are you talking about? How goody. It's not even that he let them die, like, knowingly, and that he was upset about it and that in future he'll try better. In this film, he doesn't even seem to acknowledge it. I'm not even sure he knows. This is yeah, shit yeah, it's that bizarrely like, just not mentioned. This is shit that any twenty-year-old that uh, reads a Superman comic would think. Like they would ask themselves what they would do if they had Superman's powers. Like at, at this point, we've got Superman who's in his thirties now. He should already know what he would be doing in these situations, given that he's actually been in situations where people's lives are in peril, and he uses his powers to save them. Again, it's just like he's he's already been a hero for so long. Yeah. This, this to me feels like a very sneaky deviation. You're like, why is it that he puts so many human beings in danger? It's like, well, because he hasn't become the Superman you know yet. It's like, no, I'm not even talking about the Superman Jesus I Jesus Christ, what is he now? Oh, yeah. Point, yeah. <laughs> Version of Clark. He knows he's different and knows the nothing damnation about on his, his parents, past. Too. He feels lost with his place in the world and has been seeking answers. This doesn't explain his reckless nature toward human lives. Stop. You're not doing anything for your argument right now. But the whole movie, he shows us that he isn't infallible. From little things like taking some clothes from someone's car. That is not the same. <laughs> no. <laughs> I, I feel like we have to. Now we could talk about scale for a little bit. Fucking hell. Okay, so Captain Marvel stealing a guy's bike for uh, offering her a ride versus Superman needs clothes and he steals clothes off of a, cl a clothesline. Guys, how expensive do, do these clothes look compared to a motorcycle? I just. Like. I just, I'm baffled, like, really? that you would reference this. There's nothing, whether or not you're willing to steal an article of clothing has nothing to do with whether or not you're willing to let people die and not care about it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, these are, these are on two completely different, like, planes of impact and importance. Well, you see, Rags, it comes under the umbrella of, he's not infallible. What? Thing, yeah. <laughs> it's an interesting umbrella you've got there. Thing, thing done car instead of asking for them or destroying this douchebag's truck Both do scene oh, that, yeah that, that's a, that's a terrible scene yeah that's a really big issue you know there may be an argument to be like you have, you have to understand clock is a sociopath in this film okay <laughs> like there's lots of evidence for this like oh my like, god this... yeah i think it'd be easier to make that case than the case that he really cares this scene belongs in The Boys. This is something that the yeah. Homelander would totally do. Um, this is not Superman, though. It's not even the fucking Clark Kent that we see in this movie, who seems concerned initially about <laughs> saving the people on the oil rig. He has the flashback showing like his, mm -hmm. uh, his inclination to save those kids in the bus that maybe he should have let them drown. It's just like, man... This is uh this seems a bit out of character with the Clark Kent that we see in the past and in like one of the first scenes in the movie. It means that Marcus isn't a fan. This simple scene of Clark washing up on shore after saving people in the beginning of the movie. He doesn't have any clothes and he just sees some clothes lying around. Clark finds the unattended clothing outside, he takes them and he continues on his way. But what if we take the opportunity to have a cute character moment that's specific to Superman? 
I personally don't think Clark Kent would steal clothes, even if he really needed them. I agree. I mean, I my. I think I've I was seen the... this video from him before. I know what he says after this. Maybe let it play. Say. There's, well, let it play. Okay. I, I can see him awkwardly it. going up to the door and asking for the clothes. This would be a cute chance to have some fun dialogue showing that Clark is nice almost to a fault. It no, is... no, you said fun. We don't do that here. Um, uh, also, I am fine I, with I either. Agree. I think yeah. that someone is capable of doing either. I don't think that... Yeah. Like, the idea that it's like, I'm too good to steal socks and a t-shirt. Like, I mean... No, I guess I guess the logic is that at least it gives you something that you can do... You can um, do something with Could that. you not counter something... by saying, that is not this Clark, though? This Clark's weird. Uh, I, well, <laughs> well I that's sort of the, the point of the that, discussion in the yeah, first place. I think, I think that's the point he's trying to make, is like, we'll do it differently. Well, the, like, uh, I mean, Cosmo I think it would have benefited to... the film greatly for his Listen. character and for just the tone. To um, make him endearing? Yeah. <laughs> I, uh, the Our funny thing to me is what? that, like, if Cosmo <laughs> said this to me, I'd just be like, oh, well, yeah, but we're going to have to change all the scenes, right? With with Clark? Because he's fucking, he's not really, <laughs> in all of them, he's like a, a dour little piece of shit. And, 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 but I, I think I understand the sentiment then, that, like, if we did that sort of approach with him throughout all of these scenes, and that those scenes, as much as they're, um, plot relevant in terms of, like, oh, how does he get the clothes? But we can also show character through them. It's like, yeah, I agree with that. Um, and that's film efficiency. But the funny thing is, as he stands mm. in this movie, do you think he would do the one or the other, and do you think it's more valuable to do oh, the other? I think he'd steal it. <laughs> in this movie, I feel like yeah. he could do that. Yeah. I think he could do either, and if we can do either, we may yeah. as well choose the one that actually makes him look like a better person. <laughs> I think that's probably worth it. Well, yeah, it just it services his character. It's it's a good for tonality and what's come before and gets us to let him know him. You could even and, I mean he could be he could even like start to do it and then stop like maybe he sighs yeah, is like, and then yes. looks at the door and then and, goes up. And then he put yeah. he even goes back and puts them up. And, and then, then he goes back to the door. And you can have it something. be funny, like Marvel, where he the door opens and it's an old lady and she's like, Oh my god and he's like, Hello ma'am. Or <laughs> Or I don't know, like hmm. he leaves a note or something, or I don't know, come up with yeah. something. Yeah, well, it's like yeah, sorry, now, I needed these. Or I'd say now we're in the format of just yeah, I, I like it. Like we could make everything. So I would much like better, a different right? movie. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, <laughs> so basically, yeah, a different movie would be great. Uh, also, give me just a second. I need to get a drink mm -hmm. here. Um, what a I I would say the scene happens early on enough that you're. Uh, it's just kind of establishing what this version of Clark is like, and he is uh, a lot less moral than Christopher Reeve's Superman would be. Um, yes. I don't think it's necessarily a bad thing to show that this is what he does, uh, but I, I, of course, would prefer, yeah, you know what? Make this version of Clark a little bit more endearing. Why yeah, not? That's, that's kind of where I was at. I was like, I think you could do both of them, but I definitely prefer because it could be a reference or something. You'd be like, remember when he did the thing with the clothes of asking for permission and stuff? It's like, that's clear that they're trying to get across to you that this character isn't just a fucking crazy man. But at the same time, like, stealing the clothes themselves is like, it, it just seems a lot a lot less consequential than <laughs> many does, of the other yeah. things that he does in this movie. Well, to, to, to go for mass uh killing like genocide to hey he's not infallible right he steals clothes like what the fuck? i mean like if i'm washing my clothes and i'm i'm drying them out on a clothesline outside and someone steals them because they need my clothes like well shit i'm gonna have to buy some new clothes that's inconvenient but and, it's not like they stole my car and that's the thing if i knew that the person was like super raggedy and just washed up and they took my t-shirt and socks or something, I'd probably, I, I'd probably be like, hmm, well, <laughs> I hope they're yeah, bored, you know what? I guess. Include a couple shots of the old lady in the house. She sees this, you know, guy walking up to her clothesline, and she's like, hmm? And, but, like, you know, she sees that she, that, that, that he steals her clothes, like, her clothes off the clothesline, and she's like, ah, oh, whatever. You do, well, there's just Anything so like many that. different fucking ways you could execute it. Um, I was just thinking, just in meta for a second, like, the, the people who defend these films, they think the people who attack them are, like, idiots who didn't understand it and made shitty points. That's all I have to say about these videos that we've seen. They're, like, really <laughs> shitty counterpoints. 
And so you just you just like, do, is this all it is? Is there just two sides that ignore each other forever? Would this be applicable to any other sections of argument that happen on the internet? One. I saw someone um, commenting on the Twin Perfect debate saying like this for them after all the other ones has proven that like discussing media with people who disagree with you is almost pointless. It's like, damn. Yikes. Well, Hello Greta would agree with you. Um, for me, like, like we've just had so many instances where it hasn't been pointless though, so I'm like, I'm not really worried about that. If you have yeah. someone who just can't, uh, can't address like two different conflicting pieces of information, they refuse to. It's less so like, damn, conversation has failed us. It's more so that person has uh, some stuff to do, some thinking to do. Maybe they'll come back one day. Because we're all conduits for information, being mm. from these different media. We can only express what we saw and how we collate all of that information, and so we can fail or succeed at different points. And you know, if you're in an aggressive call with a bunch of people you disagree with, maybe you're just not encouraged to concede on anything. But maybe he Yeah, will I mean, I like having... A decent amount of time. You know, like a Sorry. seed has been planted. I wonder if maybe over time someone like Twin Perfect might be like, you know, movies aren't quite as good as I thought. Yeah, I mean, I like having conversations with people about this sort of stuff. Sometimes they're disingenuous, sometimes they're not. I find out which ones are disingenuous, I'm like, all right, I'm going to spend less time with you. I'm going to spend more time with someone yeah. that can uh, engage in a discussion with me in good faith. You know, we've, we've had plenty of instances of people's minds being changed on movies. Uh... No, that doesn't happen. Didn't uh, did what does Ren's reviews think of Mission Impossible Fallout these days? Um, been a while since I've spoken to him. Uh, I don't think he like loves the movie or anything, but he at oh, least conceded right. that it's not badly written. Oh, there you go. And perfect. We timing. haven't gotten there yet. Let us let us continue with how it's okay that he did mass killings because he took a shit. <laughs> the movie was introduced to Clark Kent, we see him attempt to stand up to a guy who's harassing a waitress. Clark attempt then to. gets bullied by the man and gets so embarrassed that he goes outside and does this to his truck when nobody is it's looking. It's not about embarrassment. This... No, no, no. It's He didn't do it because he was embarrassed. He did it because he's spiteful, more so. Yeah, he wanted to get back at the guy, and so he did it in a way that would destroy his livelihood. I don't know that I care about the category of it. It's just, to me, it's like vengeance. <laughs> it's like, what the fuck well, is yeah, this? Yeah, it is, yeah. Well, There's a lot of stuff, it's... like, if I was in his position, I sure as hell wouldn't have done that. It's incredibly petty, especially given the craftsmanship that would be involved in getting the I don't truck think, looking like this. I think like this goes past petty. Yeah. I think, this, I think this is past pettiness. It's yeah, because this would take this would take some time well, to do, right? It's, so it's like yeah, it's almost he would methodical. have to make sure no one saw him. He'd have to He's go just get like these beams. slowly driving the 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 logs through the truck, making yeah. as little noise as possible, so that and he'd no have to one lift it up and. Uh, like, I'm actually starting uh, to wonder how is... he would have done this. Because well, I, I not remember impossible, when we were watching some like Fenians. I'm like, how did how did no one notice him doing this? Oh, well, that that comes in a sec. First of all, let's figure out how. Like, so maybe he takes some logs off, lifts the truck up by flying. He doesn't know how to fly yet. Um, he um like lifts the truck up and then stabs a log through from the bottom. It's a weird one, and no matter how he does it, it's he can gonna like make a shit ton of noise. He can like jump up pretty high, right? Yeah, so maybe I. It's just. I think when we were watching this live and we we did our EFAP um, movies for it, we were e explaining some of the things that would have been much better for the film if he would yes. have done instead. Um, not difficult to come up with some things in that regard. It's uh. uh mm -hmm. it, and here's the thing. This is, this is where you could show. So you have the clothes thing. Let's have a Superman who's. He's a good guy, but he's not great. No, he's a good guy. He'll he'll steal clothes. He'll you know do little things. Maybe he'll you know if someone drops a twenty dollar bill, it's like hey maybe I just take that twenty for myself. You know since they don't notice little things. But the big stuff like when he's going to this route, he's like eh, that's a bit too far. Like you you see he's got a line. You know he's not a saint, but he's got a line that you can explore during this 
fucking 17 hour opening for this film. You got plenty of time, clearly. For as much, I, I guess that's the thing too. For how much time they put into this aspect of the movie. Worrying. Are you saying that they you'd spend... expect to get a really super well developed uh, character after all this time you spend with him? But it's just, it's just a mess. This is pretty fucking sinister. Clark Kent doesn't <laughs> yeah. exact revenge on Stokes. I like the word sinister, actually, yeah. It's very... You look sinister at it, you're like... Sinister is a good my, way to describe God. it, yeah. What, is, what are the implications of this, yeah? In pain yeah, ways you, like this. Yeah. If you thought this was a dick move, that's because it was. Again... No, no, no goes, you've... I mean, no. it's a dick, it goes a it's a dick move dick plus. Dick move. Yeah. Yeah. This is dick move double this, plus. Yeah, right. this is dick move plus, isn't um, it? Like, dick, yeah. dick move... Dick move is tripping a person that's about to walk past you. Or spitting in his uh, yeah. coffee. Yeah. Above that. I like the idea that if you put a bomb under someone's car and blow it up, it's like, yeah, dick move. <laughs> oh, okay, dick move. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Auschwitz, to... bit of a dick move. Yeah, yeah, he's not addressed the important part, which is like, you understand the mechanics of this? Like, he went out... This was after the, the confrontation was over. He went out there and he meticulously he stabbed. He was so angry. Yeah. Yeah. No <laughs> it... one else noticed. None of that. Because... Mm. But what we would want to see is something like he clenches his fist after this guy does what he does, and then the fist releases, and then he turns around and walks away. And maybe he smiles. Yeah. yeah, maybe he smiles, pats him on the shoulder. So, uh, we know that he wanted... Gen maybe gently pushes him back onto his seat. Mm -hmm. Nice thing about... hurt him. Uh, rip the driver door out of the, the truck, and then rip the steering wheel out. Nah, I wouldn't do that. Yeah, yeah, steering, I, don't yeah, I wouldn't. That's still <laughs> too far. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's he's, not as far as what he did to the guy's truck. I mean, it's it's better. Mm. Again, but there's, there's, but there's a key like, element here, yeah. and I think um, Cap went over it with when he was talking about like the keying of the car. If he just walked outside and punctured his four tires, for, like let's just say he has a car, um, I would still be like, oh, that's, I don't know, it doesn't feel right. Like, in terms of a response, it, it feels much more appropriate to have um, had a good line of dialogue almost... to respond with, or to... Yeah. Show, like you know, the guy pushes him and he falls back. He's not clever. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's... like Superman. It's not like he's a dweeb or a loser who's getting back in the way that he can. You know, where you're like, ah, hey, the little guy, he got back at him in that way. He can't face him head on in strength, but he could, you know, be guileful and clever, and he could do underhanded stuff behind the other guy's back to get back at him. You know, but Superman is Superman. It he's feels just, he's, weird. He's yeah, uh, I don't know it's how just, better to explain it, but I would prefer to see him just, be the bigger man. It's just a dude yeah. that's sexually harassing a waitress. Like, just drag him out of the restaurant. Which, yeah, you could do that. Which you could do easily without even hurting him. Effortlessly. Yeah, without you hurting him. Grab that, um... Yeah, grab him by his shirt and just... You could, that's the thing. That could be the comedy part of it, where it's so effortless for Clark to do this, and the guy is struggling, and he can't. Like he, everyone's kind of like, "What the fuck? This dude is strong as shit," and Clark is just gently taking him outside and just letting go once he's out the door. And, and if Zach is desperate to see this man suffer, it's like, what if you have him as like a, "I'm such a fucking strong dude, and you're such a pathetic dude." He goes to headbutt him or something, and then he knocks himself yeah. out and falls over. That and would so be good, way, yeah. Self-inflicted, yeah. Culpable. Yeah, dude, it's so yeah. easy. It's so it's easy. So easy. <laughs> so I often say writing is tough. Not all of it, maybe. Do, do <laughs> maybe, a little maybe not every part. Cut, cut to a little reaction shot from Clark where he just uh, kind of like, yeah, that just happened. <laughs> yeah. Or maybe and if you want to make him smarmy, guy, such a good guy that he picks the guy up and puts him back in his seat. Oh, yeah, 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 I think that would be cute. God, it's not hard. It's not hard to just write a nice guy, Superman. It's easy to write yeah. likable people because we know what kind of people we like. Yeah, <laughs> just write somebody you'd like to hang like out it's with. It's sort of just self-explanatory. Like, how do I make someone likable? Well, what would you like them to do? Because <laughs> like, what, what, the... what we're doing right now is like like a boardroom for writing scenes and stuff. You just have Zach is with us. He's like... I like your ideas, guys. I do, I do. What if we have it so that he just leaves but the room and everyone's like, oh, you know, he's, he's not going to do anything about it? Okay. But later we reveal he's impaled his truck onto several logs. 
are you just gonna work? <laughs> like, Zach, are you high? Well, we, we would all be like, <laughs> what's the punchline? <laughs> what's happening yeah, here? I'm Why is the punchline? <laughs> what? You mean for the real? Punch he's like, is, yeah. The punchline is that he's Jesus. Ah, that all makes sense. Oh. And, and if he was like, well, it's to show that he's flawed, I'd be like, dude, we can find ways of making him flawed. Making flawed. him flawed that don't involve <laughs> He can be flawed without being villainous. Yes. I like I the idea just... of just, you're not flawed until you're like a borderline criminal. <laughs> well, actually, Gosh. no, this is criminal. Well, with this guy, <laughs> yeah. I mean, with Zach and with like, all the other DCEU stuff, I mean, with a lot of writing these days... There, like I said, there's this super skewed sense of morality that for is whatever going reason with we're okay with our heroes doing obviously villainous things for I, whatever reason. I think like stealing the the clothes that's enough to show that he's flawed without him being villainous. Per yeah, se. that's okay. Like I'm cool with that, but puncturing someone's car because they're a dick, like it's and it's not even stealing the clothes; it's how he steals the clothes. Does he do it like, "Oh, thank God, I found some clothes for me to wear," or you know, he looks at the clothes, looks at the house, yeah, no, he does like, it. Eh, you can see on his how face. He doesn't yeah. Sinister. Clark Kent doesn't exact revenge on people in petty ways like this. If you thought well, this, this was a dick Clark move, does. that's because it yeah, was. That's an Again, this isn't the perfect thing. Superman who makes all the right choices all the time. This Superman makes mistakes. Oh, I hate that. Case, We're not asking sold... for perfection. Stop. I hate it when people do this. They go to As the if that was a mistake. Like, it was, that... a mis it was a simple mistake that he punched that is, um, his car. That is a fallacy, right? I can't remember if it has a name, but just where you try and defend it from, like, an appeal to just the absurd position of the opponent. Oh, uh, reductio ad, ad absurdum, yeah. I think so, yeah. Stop it. That's that, not yeah, that's reducing said. that. That's reducing an argument to a um, like an extreme, like an an absurd aspect of what it would be. Where I would say this is, yeah, it's like you take the, you take a complete opposite extreme to try and make yours look better. Yeah. Well, it's like a straw man, basically. It's like, oh, you you, you don't want um, Superman to uh, impale this of. guy's truck with logs? So you just expect him to be, you know, pure and innocent all the time? <laughs> That's really it's, it's kind of, yeah, it's like adjacent to a straw man. Or it's, like, it's almost like a type of straw man. Mm -hmm. I don't it's know in the, the straw it, family. Uh, yeah, we can call portion, it the Superman argument. Because the best faith interpretation of what they just said is, oh, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to imply that I want him to be perfect. Not at all. In fact, and then you clarify, and then they're stuck, because they can no longer misrepresent the opposition. Yeah, also, so like the idea that, that, that... Later on, he loses his temper his when his mother is... Oh, go ahead. To, uh, I, his counter to, I don't want Superman to just impale this dude's truck full of logs, <laughs> is, oh, so you expect him to be perfect? Like... You could, <laughs> hey, I don't want my protagonist in this video game that I'm going to be stuck playing for 10 hours. I don't want to be introduced to them torturing someone and killing them right in front of their family members. Oh, so you just, you just expect them to be perfect then? <laughs> it's not really no? listening, just... is it? It's just like doing whatever they want with your argument instead of addressing it properly. It's like, yeah, you were, just, you were just waiting for your chance to talk, weren't you? Yeah. <laughs> Again, this isn't the perfect Superman who makes all the right choices all the time. This Superman know. makes mistakes. In this case, he stole some clothes from the mistake. I would also be curious at what point... Like, like that's what not does a he mistake. Have to, what does he have to do for you to say, Oh, you know what? This is actually over the line. This is not something I can just call a mistake. I, yeah. I actually would like to see a version of this movie where it, this really was a mistake. Like, Superman's sort of like a super-powered Mr. Bean. And everywhere that he goes, he just causes calamities. <laughs> <laughs> it's At least just Mr. Like Bean had like a good heart. Accident. Yeah, Mr. Bean had a good heart. <laughs> yeah, but like he still ends up with like trucks yeah. being in, in, you like, know, impaled a lot by of Mr. Bean's hilarity <laughs> was him doing things and not knowing it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> truck. Later on, his temper when his mother is threatened and crashes through a factory and gas station. This is all part of the learning experience. Oh, no. No, you didn't. No. Oh, no. <laughs> so, <laughs> what you've just suggested so is... So I've never, I've never crashed through a building personally. Yeah, what he suggested never, is I don't that have that experience. Superman was unaware that if you crash someone through an IHOP, there may be people in it. Like, no, he, he knew this. This is something he knew. He like, better know what buildings are. And you're like, oh, okay, well, my argument I mean, is that he's just being a tad irrational right now because he's angry and he has to learn from that. It's like, oh, well, your argument doesn't... That's not something you... Like, next time he's angry, he could do this again, is what you're saying. Yeah, the best thing that you could say is he wasn't thinking because he was angry, but that is not a justification. That's an It also makes him fucking horrible. 
like yeah, all of these, it's like, all oh, these you instances. can't control your anger. That's kind of part of being an adult is having control. It's also, over your like, emotions. Fucking how do we categorize villains? Like, you've got to be really careful here. Like, no, it's fine that Superman killed all these people. He was angry. Like, what the fuck, dude? Mm. What do you, what do you think? What do you think Zod is doing at the end? He's angry, so he wants to kill a bunch of innocent people. Superman is. He's doing it out of spite. <laughs> Superman's angry about his mom, so he's gonna kill a bunch of people. It's fine. It's a mistake. Your Honor, my client was angry. Yeah. The laziest thing that you can my, do is compare my, Superman to Jesus. My pleads I said the laziest shit that you can do with this character is compare him I know, like, to I don't know if Jesus. I categorize it as lazy. As, um, because, because you'd have to appeal to what he's trying to achieve, and he's done it in a lazy way. To me, it's Laziness just cringe, mainly. Laziness is not mainly. doing anything. But cringe, yeah. I'd say uninspired. Uninspired, yeah. Yeah. So um, isn't being uninspired is sort of lazy? lazy. Kind yeah. of. It's um, settling for something that like isn't intellectually created. lazy. Oh, well, then I don't know if it's uninspired because I just don't think he was capable of doing anything much yeah. more uh, interesting than that. I don't think there's a meaningful that. difference between it's uninspired and lazy, though. Because um, I don't know if I wanted to make like a stacked house of cards, someone could be like, "Wow, you're not really the first person to do that." I'd be like, "Yeah, well, it was really hard." <laughs> <laughs> And I was really proud well, of doing I it. Well, I guess it's because... I guess one of those involves, like, some level of effort in actually doing. Well, I, yeah. Yeah, I don't just, know. Yeah, I don't know. I, I, wouldn't, um, I wouldn't compare uh, Second simple. House of Cards to... The Zack Snyder yeah, production. This. Yeah. Well, you could... Like, I'd say of... one is more... Like, it's about dexterity and... I guess I'm trying to think how to phrase it. Like, if it, it's... Like building a house of cards alone, which is difficult. Very like you have to be very careful. A lot of care a combo has to then go into it. Of something that is is very easy to do, and something that everybody's already just like signed off on. Like in terms of just ugh, or signed out of actually. And just oh yeah, you. I guess it's about the amount of passion you have for something. Like if you don't even care, then. It, it, like, if someone is doing something they don't care about, but they have to do it, or they're just doing it idly out of boredom or something, you don't expect them to really put a lot of effort into it. But if you're the director of a film, and you have all this time and gajillions of dollars and all the help in the world, you sort of, ex like, it should be on the next level. Um, yeah, like I said, I'm not sure how I categorize it. I have caught... I don't even know that I would um, put it in my analysis for issues I take with the film. It's just something we all see, you know? He's comparing Superman to Jeebus. And, and it's, it's, like, yes, it's grown-worthy. It. So, yeah. I think I, it's because of how overt it is. He has such little faith in the audience to see what he's trying to go for, maybe? Yeah. Maybe yes. that's Like, yeah. he doesn't have a lot of... He doesn't seem to have a lot of... Uh, he ironically both <laughs> seems to both have a lot of confidence in his product but not a lot of confidence in people to pick up the message? Or it's is the funny. overtness of it part of the style? Funny you say that, with the previous video being like, you know what, I'm not going to yeah, defend this movie, it speaks for itself. <laughs> I'm so... <laughs> in, what a world. And that's all Zack Snyder does. Do you get it, guys? What does this remind you? Um, all Zack Snyder does, like, I'm not defending Zack Snyder when I say, no, he does lots of other things, too. He does, yeah, <laughs> like, he does other things, unfortunately. There's not even, there's too many uh, Superman Jesus references, but there's not that many of them. Yeah, it's just the ones we get are not what like you would this. call subtle. <laughs> yeah. yeah, like this, and the stained glass, and the imagery from below, it's like, it's In very... the T-pose. Uh, yeah, Did his model want? is still loading compared... for the movie. Oh, appeal to the comics, cool. ...to Jesus throughout his whole existence. Because he's always been portrayed as a powerful, godlike being. Well, so this is where the effort point comes in, doesn't it? Yeah. And a this beacon is where of hope the creativity and talent comes in. Mm -hmm. ...appeals to strive towards. And in many comics throughout his existence, he's been compared to Jesus no, or presented like Jesus, as like a better. messiah figure. This is nothing new to the character. And Man of Steel is literally just two doesn't scenes matter. where the symbolism doesn't is matter. blatantly obvious. And that's all Zack Snyder does. Come on, son. Next, we're going to talk about his parents, mainly oh, Jonathan weird. Kent. Marcus feels that he was mishandled in this movie. And yeah. in this movie, his dad is... Um, that's an understatement. <laughs> like, but, right. Yeah, he, you could say mishandled. Yeah. That's one way of Cos saying Cosmonaut would have to do something really, really stupid for us to be against him on this point. But if he argues it by the reason hey, why... Hey, if anyone can find a way. 
if if he says the reason that Jonathan Kent is bad in this film is that he's not like the comics, if that's the argument he makes, I'm gonna be very uh, upset. Is so but fucking I will not obsessed be surprised. with Clark hiding his identity that he dies for it. No, yeah. stop, no. my stop. invincible son. Do not save my life. Okay. Um, I am that's, okay no, with that. That's no, that's not. Oh, okay he, he kind of fucked it up. Well, it's not all that he said so far. Uh. Yeah, but it's also not the whole picture of why reason. that's all stupid. Um, can it be strained out that Jonathan Kent is stupid to say, "Don't save me. You need to protect your identity." It's not stupid. I think because um, the criticism I has to be say... categorized differently because that is his character, and that's what we're criticizing rather than yeah, that's what he values. What he actually that, thinks his, for some his, reason. He... Yeah, that that is a he's acting earnestly on a very strange belief that he has that isn't justified by the writing. Well, definitely not where I would have gone for my uh, Kent assassination clip, but uh, it 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 helps. Um, well, it's so something. If, it's, if we, it makes him a bizarre character. Or a refresh on ignoring the comics, I would just be like, this guy is telling his son that he shouldn't be saving people's lives with the immense power he has because maybe somebody might start looking into things and things could go bad, which is fucking insane. And it, like it's, we, we always like to, to appeal to how good the advice Uncle Ben gives, but it's not just because like that was, oh, it's particularly well written. It's just like, no, it's just really fucking solid it's shit. It's good advice. Yeah. Like it this transcends like, the, the, the material. It's just good life, real life advice. Like, imagine someone telling you, you shouldn't necessarily act for someone else's benefit if it might cost you something. Like, what, what do you, what, how do I even extrapolate this into life? Versus, if you have the power to help people, you should. Yeah, sometimes it's good to sacrifice a bit if, you know, it can help other people. It makes it, I mean, that would create a better world if we all were kind of willing to do that. Don't be too selfish. Yeah, be so willing you, to help people, even at some personal loss sometimes. And so you might be thinking, mm -hmm. well, wait, should you just help people all the time constantly? And, you know, like, I would say the Spider-Man stories try to deal with the more specifics of the statement. Meanwhile, with, with Jonathan, you're like, wait, should you, I don't know, for instance, let a bunch of kids drown just to protect your identity? And he says, maybe. Like, he says maybe when that's an obvious <laughs> like you save the kids like this is the softball this is one of those hypotheticals you so get like, and you're like oh yeah like like a lead up question so I would argue he's a horrible person and then if someone was like what do you think of him as an adaptation I'd be like are you fucking kidding me as an adaptation <laughs> I, don't, I don't even want to begin a core value of Jonathan and Martha Kent is that they encourage Clark to use his powers to help people but in this movie, Jonathan Kent tells Clark that he should have let children die as opposed to revealing his powers. What was I supposed to do? Just let them die? Maybe. What the fuck? So Jonathan Kent is determined to get this one correct. Yep. Ding. Good you did point. it. You, you got, managed to do it. You're you got a cosmos. Clark's ability is a secret because he knows how people... The park. I'm sorry. Yeah, so this guy's defending this, so this is an automatic loss. What the fuck? Oh, yeah. So Jonathan Kent is determined to keep Clark's abilities a secret because he knows how people would react if they knew the truth. And he didn't want him to face... What do you mean? No, what do you he mean believes... By that? What do you mean? He believes but... a certain thing. What even though? Like, I don't understand this at all. I don't even know if we've unpacked this before, but like, if I could just sit down with Jonathan, what do you think is going to happen? And he says, you know what? Well, they're going to gonna kidnap you. And they're going to stab you with scalpels. They're going to rip you apart and see how you tick. Like, oh, well, I mean, I'm probably still going to save people. Can I mention? Can they even that... do that? I don't even think they can. <laughs> like, yes. I don't even think they could. That's the thing. Like his super resilience, it sort of gives him a position where he's not like in danger from anyone even being able to hurt him on this planet. Because people like can to I say bad guys have to come from the outside the planet. To people like to say Jonathan's hurt. right. Like they like to say about BVS. See, Jonathan was right because the world hates Superman in that movie. That's what the fuck not are you a talking good about. Excuse to let people die. Exactly. Anyway. It's like, what do you, what do you think you're saying? Jonathan was right. Let the people, people drown. Don't like, yeah, basically, only do the right thing if it earns you the approval of others, which is not a good moral. It's like it's, it's surprising how much in opposition it is to Spider-Man. 
Spider-Man is hated by the Daily Bugle, and it's like, well, you should probably stop. Spider-Man <laughs> constantly has repercussions because of trying to help people, but he keeps doing it, because that's what heroes because do. Because with great power comes great response. Fucking absurd. Jonathan Kent's a horrible person, I'm sorry. He's a piece of shit, I'm glad he's dead. <laughs> <laughs> so, I don't know like I... that far, but... Can I, well, no, like, can imagine I... if he would have kept going on to yep. influence Superman. Maybe we avoided mm, horrific mm, cataclysm yeah, because mm, he died mm, when he did. Perhaps. Like, can the I... whole reason that Superman's generally portrayed as a really good person is because he had really good parents who taught him good values. And if there was a can TV... Can I just mention that... Just, just to add on to what Rag said, if there was a TV and he's watching it with Clark when he was, like, the age we see him in the film, and it shows Zod's invasion or whatever, and he's just like, no, son, no. The government will take care of it. <laughs> you don't, don't reveal your identity. Well, Can yeah, what, mention, would, what would he say then? I don't know. Go ahead, Can I just thought. mention that uh, with Wonder Woman 1984 out now, and we've seen how people react to Wonder Woman going around and saving people, that this scene's completely fucked. And this yeah. scene definitely takes place after 1984. True. Of course it does. Jonathan Kent should have to yeah. rationalize that when he was, what, fucking... Was it around this? Like it was like ten years. How long ago would it have been? This. Well, so if if Superman Jonathan Kent was born in nineteen eighty, if he's thirty three years old in twenty thirteen, which I think we can reasonably assume was when that happened. This is like he looks like he's ten, maybe twelve, thirteen, maybe thirteen. So like, yeah, this is the mid nineties. So it's been about ten years since Wonder Woman projected a, a person bunch of flu out into yeah, yeah, a person who's bulletproof, super strong, and beloved by everybody. It's like hmm, and I'm gonna. <laughs> I'm gonna be fair. I'm gonna be fair to Zack Snyder here. Wonder Woman 1984 yeah, wasn't wasn't in his call. mind. Yeah. But but Funny. at the same time, it just goes to show how the DC oh, is Woman so poorly is plotted out. Wonder Woman 1984 is definitely in canon with uh, Man yeah. of Steel, at least according yeah, to Patty Jenkins, the yeah. best director the thing. ever. You, when you're going through it in chronological order like we are right now, with all the context that we have, is like, man, this scene makes no it's fucking sense whatsoever. This universe has just hit you're, the fucking restart button already. You're just MCU yeah. fanboys. You failed. Time to try again. Yes, MCU fanboys who, for the last three or four streams, have spent like several hours shitting on One Division. <laughs> we also, when we, when we yeah. went through that paddle of MCU movies, yeah, how many did I say were bad rather than good? Uh, plot wise, it was it's more than half. More than when it half. Comes to yeah. Plot, it's oh, there was there was that one dude that was like, "Well, yeah, of course, I think you guys are MCU fanboys." I think you showed like, "Okay, everything that's got a red line through it is a four out of ten or lower." <laughs> <laughs> that's most of the MCU. <laughs> it's annoying because we shit on the MCU quite a bit. The MCU just it we know it can hit those really it has, it, peaks, it has yeah. peaks yeah it has them it has the potential to get there maybe not anymore nah, but it has done yeah. it I'm pretty sure my most is it my most popular video is is either Captain Marvel or Tross so yeah either my second or first most popular video is shitting on a Marvel bit of film so I don't know I guess the problem is like Captain Marvel has certain political baggage unfortunately it doesn't count so like <laughs> so, wow it's just that's usually that's usually why i'd like to just default to iron man 3 because it's it's like well, this is a politically yeah. uncontroversial terrible movie well yes but it's the, just the, bad it's like mando it's just bad the worthwhile thing bad. to say though is that i don't mention any of that in my video it's no, all I, about I the know plot that. i know but it doesn't matter because people will be like oh of course you don't like captain marvel it's like what, what do you, you think you happened with your black I panther know? video yeah Black Panther's you stupid. Wow, are. you hate black people. Wow, you hate black people. Captain Marvel, wow, and women too. Ugh. Does he have a shot on a film they, that they has a white protagonist? Mm. Never. Mm. Mm. Also, the cancer was ready, people. Which, by the way, turns out he's right in PBS. Uh, there you the... go. No, he he's right. not. Holy fucking shit. There's some protesters outside of the Capitol, but when he dies, he gets a fucking state-sponsored funeral, and the whole world is plunged into hopelessness. Yeah. Let us dispel uh. this fucking insanity that Jonathan Kent was right. No, he wasn't. He was never right, and he never will he be. He wasn't. He's a fucking, fucking Never guy. tell your kids this. Never tell anybody this. Never give them the idea at this impressionable age from someone that they respect. That Fuck they no. should let a busload of children die. <laughs> Why to do we have to your say this? Identity. Yeah, Jonathan Kent had his chance. Why is this something we have to say on EFAP? What the fuck happened? What was wrong with the world? If this is like the litmus mm. test for are you a bad person? You failed. <laughs> you, 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 you fucked lost. up. 
Clark's ability is a secret because he knows how people would react if they knew the truth. And he didn't want to realize no, what you're saying, by the way, how people would react, thing. not specifically they would kill you, they would kill your family, how people, they would be annoyed at you. I don't fucking care if they're annoyed at me for saving a bus full of children. The fuck? I don't, even, no. I don't even know what informs this this belief of his. I'm pretty that sure that if someone, if someone sees you save a bus full of children, you're like, holy shit, thank you. What a hero. This uh, guy out awesome. here, he didn't he want recognition strength. for it. So yeah, he's, yeah, he's being very selfless. He He's, you know, putting himself in harm's way. Maybe that's what I'm I think. I'm glad or... he's on my team. I, yes. I want yeah. to keep encouraging him to keep using his powers to save people. Yes, yes, I wouldn't yes. be like, fuck this guy, I hate kids. I wish those kids had fucking drowned. Fuck them kids. <laughs> I, I wish his dad would have told him to let those kids drown. I just don't get it. Just don't get it. You're so desperate to defend this shitty movie. It's we haven't even gotten to BVS zone. yet. Oh my god, you're right. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't want him to face yeah, the consequences I, until he was ready. Which, by the way, turns out he's right in he BBS right. with nope. how the world reacts to his existence. That's why he, he didn't want him. He should have said, son, no matter what happens, no matter what the world says about you, your mother and I, we've got your back. We're here for you. Yes. We're going to be by your side the yes. whole way. You have friends and family who are here to care about you. And that's what's important. Fuck that. What happened to good values? Strangers <laughs> might not like you. Oh, him to save him in front of those people. He wants Clark oh, to no. show himself to the world when he's good and ready. Now it's for letting the kid. When he's good and ready, he's the one who's telling him it to stop doing. He was already doing the it. The point of, if you're a father and you have a son, well, if you if you're a father <laughs> and you have a son, right? One of your responsibilities is to prepare your kid for the world. That's one of your jobs as a parent. That's not something like, oh, you know, maybe. You could like take a proactive role in preparing this super powered kid of yours to, you know, deal with this sort of thing. Maybe you would see it not only as a responsibility to your kid, but as a responsibility to the world that he's gonna grow up in, knowing his power that you you, know, you are very influential over this character. And you should use that for good. He also just said that he's he's telling him he needs to do it when he's good and ready. It's like he's already doing it. He believes he's ready to save people's lives, even at the cost of his identity. It's like, no, you're just there heckling him when he saves children's lives. What a fucking <laughs> great person you are. Kids is drowned. He doesn't say yes, he says maybe, because he doesn't know the answer. He doesn't want Clark to face- No, that's the, the problem! Answer. You should that's know the answer. Problem. If you don't know the answer- <laughs> Wasn't that- Like, if I ask stuff? someone, if I- if I ask- if someone asks me, is two plus two four, and I say maybe, <laughs> like, I've already messed up. Because the answer is yes. And if I don't know the answer, that's pretty damning. Again, Twin Perfect used this defense in his video, didn't he? Everyone does. It's that the Jonathan Kent was right, and Jonathan Kent was simply saying, be careful, Clark. But they never go further, and they never really explain what they you mean by any of this. You could say be careful and also yes, save the children. It's fucking insane. This is, look, Zack Snyder it's fucked like, up. He fucked up big time when he made this happen. I would have been like, you know what, if you really are concerned about your identity, I don't know, like, keep a mask with you, I guess, but just save the children. Save the ch yeah, that's a, a plus, yeah. that one right there. That's a good one. Save the kids. People like Pete's mother, who's old enough and ready because he knows he's going to change everything when people realize what he can do. He, he fucking want... cares. Change he fucking everything. gives a shit. Jesus. If you know he's going to change everything, then you have a responsibility to you know give him not shitty advice like this. You don't change everything? Letting bus full of children die on the regular. <laughs> like that's probably going to change. change. That would change a lot. of. If each one of those kids has two parents on average, then fuck me. Yep. That also, would change a changing. lot of lives. Hmm. I, I actually have a question. So, um, Clark was on that bus when it fell into the river. And so... If he let those kids die, and, and he, he was, was the only, the only survivor, yeah, really? huh? It's oh, that would be rough interesting. to live with, wouldn't it? It'd be like, how'd you escape? It's like survivor's I, I, guilt. I oh yeah, you're oh. right. Not survivor's oh. guilt for a kid you've like got, that. You got oh, survivor's man. guilt. You've that got that would fuck with someone's head. The maybe. parents will you've resent got, that how kid did as you, well. He didn't save got, anyone. How did you get out of the bus and no one else did? Yep. It would he be like, whatever you anyone, did to how escape, did how come you couldn't take anyone with Not you? Not a scratch. He wouldn't have a scratch on him. It, yeah, he would literally be like David Dunn in Unbreakable. Yeah. And it would be very weird. People would raise a lot of eyebrows about it. Hmm. This film doesn't think for five seconds I think you're a retard, Jonathan Kent. Yes, agreed.
He doesn't want him to go through that until he's old enough. And more importantly, when Clark chooses to do it. A big theme throughout the whole he movie. He did choose to do it. Encourage him to do it sooner. Encourage him to do it way sooner, as but soon as he can. he also did choose to save those children. <laughs> he also was going to save his dad, but his dad was like, No, son, do not do that. Nah, you're not ready. At what point will you be ready? Oh, he's like an it's... adult at that point. People always refer to that scene as Jonathan expressing that Clark is like, it's, it's too early for you to make your choice, you know? And it's like, that's such a strange thing. That's my choice. Yeah, it's, it's, surely it's his choice whether or not he's going to say, ugh. Terrible, terrible, terrible. Movie is freedom of On Krypton, every Kryptonian is bred for a purpose, and they have no freedom of choice. Superman's parents thought that, that was something special. That doesn't follow, but whatever. That's not even, yeah, the fact that Zod has so many different ways of doing the things that he wants to do and reasoning, I don't actually, but, you know when Krypton would ter be terraformed, all of humanity is wiped out, whatever, Kryptonians are starting back up, what does Zod do? Does he just keep punching things? He has to actually just conform to society that doesn't have war sometimes. This whole idea that he never gets to do anything that he wants to, he's got no free will in the sense of the describing it, it's so fucking juvenile. It is juvenile, yeah. I get So soldiers, 99.999% of their lives, they're not, like, in combat situations shooting at people and getting shot at, you know? Mm. They're, 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 hurry, they're hurrying up and waiting, you know? Sitting around, doing stuff, training... Stuff, no, living, life. Kill people. Mm. Special okay. that Krypton has lost. So when the world was ending, they sent away their only son with the DNA of every Kryptonian so that he can forge his own destiny. And then on Earth, Jonathan Kent well, wants I to mean, keep secret. <laughs> We've been over this so many times. The whole forge your own destiny, make your own choice. And then he ends up fucking mm. obliterating Kryptonians forever. His dad's probably like, oh. <laughs> His, the hologram dad was like, oh, fuck. Jesus Christ, well, that's he's, not what I meant. Oh, I should have been more specific. He's going to be in Justice League, apparently. <laughs> Russell Crowe. Uh, he's he's going to, well, this wow. is Snyder Cut, sorry. I wonder if anyone's going to tell him. once they Because he got deleted, remember, from the ship? So if they up, he's like, oh, what happened, son? And he's like, oh. Uh, we won. Ah, we won. <laughs> yeah, we did it. We did it. We won. We won <laughs> the battle. You did it. Hooray. We saved Did you I gotta go now. our worlds like I told did you, you to, not son? Our worlds? <laughs> Have you picked out a beautiful Kryptonian bride yet to restart <laughs> our species? <laughs> how's, how's, how's the whole bridge between people going? Oh, I'm, uh, going I'm well? gay. Yeah. It's just this fucking, like, oh, gagging, what? mewling yeah. corpse of a baby on the floor, and he's like, oh, fuck, uh, let's kick that under the table. That's not one of the Kryptonians. Let's go celebrate in the embryo chamber, as is customary oh. on Krypton. <laughs> Look, Dad, oh, I, I that's need actually a, sad. I made my own choice, and he's like, what the fuck, Clark? You weren't supposed to make your own fucking choice. You were supposed to You are supposed to make my choice in a different voice. <laughs> oh. Until he's ready, he's going to expose himself to the world. It's all about what Clark wants. Yeah. And that's going to do it for the bulk of his main criticisms. He also oh. isn't a fan of Lois Lane, but I enjoy her, but I understand yeah. most of his points there. How? I do like. How? I would love to hear why you enjoy I don't her. Understand I would, I'm legitimately curious. There. Dude, that was a weird sentence. He was like, she. Has, he complains about her, I like her, but I agree with her points. But he had but several times. Let me just play that again. It was a weird one. Uh -huh. Roller coaster of a and sentence. Kryptonian, uh -huh. so that he can forge his own destiny. And then on Earth, Jonathan Kent wants to keep Clark secret until he's ready and chooses when to expose uh -huh. himself to the world. It's all about what Clark wants. And that's going to do it for the bulk of his main criticisms. He also isn't a fan of parenting. Lois Lane, but I enjoy her, but I understand most of his points there. I you know I mean? But I enjoy him, but I understand <laughs> most of his points, yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, I mean, okay. that's not necessarily contradictory. Mm -hmm. It's just a strange sentence. I do like seeing her using her reporter skills to track down Superman and find out who he is. I think it's yeah, reporter skills um, by looking randomly in a direction. It's no, like, oh, look, who's this no, no, guy? No. Her journalist senses no, no. were tingling. No, no, no. no. I, oh. you, you guys are getting confused because he used the wrong visual. What he's referring to is tracking him uh -oh. down when she does. Remember, in the she finds his family and she finds Ginger Kid. That is actually journalism compared to. I looked to take a photo of a fucking iceberg or whatever the hell they're looking at, a glacier, and, and then yeah. you happen to snap him walking toward it. Like, that shit's not journalism. But he yeah, used the visual from the scene. You... Yeah, th that just confused you, because it was. It doesn't yeah, match what he obviously. said. And, yeah, uh, good job, I guess. But also, it what? just highlights how the world's greatest detective should have found out exactly who <laughs> Superman was uh, if fucking Lois yeah. Lane could do it. That's gonna do it for the bulk of his main criticisms. He also isn't a fan Batman of Lois Lane, busy. but I enjoy-
He was. Enjoy her, but I understand most of his points there. I do like seeing her using her reporter skills to track down Superman and find out who he is. I think it's a bonus that we have a Lois Lane that's actually smarter than previous versions. Let's Ooh. No, Lois Lane from the original was a very interesting, well fleshed out character who had flaws and bonuses and strengths and ambitions. And oh, she was like a real person. It was so nice. Hey, Zack Snyder's Lois Lane drowned herself, okay? I'll be that smart. <laughs> Hey. Gonna do for the man section. Now it's rubble. time to talk about Batman vs Superman. Sweet. Yay, we did it. So he starts off this section talking about this film's version of Batman. I'm gonna be. A I just wanted to say, we're never gonna get rid of Man of Steel. It's gonna haunt us forever. That <laughs> movie. the specter of that film is gonna haunt us. I just like that we've got the fat movies there forever. That's that's a permanent yeah, stain I'm on glad. that movie. I would direct anybody who thinks Man of Steel is good to that video. It's it's compact. It's entertaining. Filled with arguments. Mm -hmm. Go nuts. Very well edited. Yeah, there's yeah. a lot of good stuff now, about it. Now that we actually yeah. got to BVS, I'm gonna leave because it's 2 a.m. and I need to oh, work. <laughs> Very well, so, Metal. Been I fun. unfortunately yeah. have to leave you guys now. Catch you All around, right. Uh, yeah. All right. I'll, I'll see some of you tomorrow. Yes. Sure. Bye. We'll see you later. Yeah. Catch you later, guys. Bye. 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 Yeah, Man of Steel is like going to be our mortal blade wound. It's just Man it's of never going to leave. My I'm, life from me. I'm hoping it goes away after this one, but I think it will come back. Yeah. Uh, weeks later. But for now, I want to cover things that he gets wrong or just doesn't understand. Right. Also, I'm not going to be addressing most of his nitpicks like these. Wait, so you're telling me this guy only just now realized that evacuating is a good idea? That's, That's a, not a nitpick. Not, not a nitpick at all. Um. Well, I mean, if we want to talk about its overall impact, I mean, it's super impactful to him. Yeah, I was going to say, this is hard to categorize um, for me, because it's valid, which is a, a category of nitpick, but how significant is it? Yeah, if, if we're talking about to him, it's incredibly significant. It leads to his death. To the overall plot, he's just one of tens of thousands. So, mm -hmm. I mean... Eh. Well, it definitely, Either way, it ain't looking good. I, I would argue... It definitely impacts... You might be able to call Go this ahead. a nitpick, but I don't think it represents this the scope of this criticism Spirit. properly. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's 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 technically a nitpick, I guess, but it's not in spirit a nitpick. Considering that uh, Bruce Wayne is partially motivated by uh, the loss of his employees, and his employees aren't leaving the building when they obviously should during this mm -hmm. catastrophe in Metropolis. Yeah. yeah, this is not a nitpick. Yeah, I think that that's actually. A Fair enough argument. Um, um, Bruce could have been maybe, motivated I, regardless of the people in the building, though. Uh, yeah, even if this guy had uh, survived, I think the loss of everybody else would have... Or the destruction of the building, maybe. It's like the, the little girl that he, team, he, he meets up with. She didn't well, work for him, you know? I'm sorry, then, if that's the case, then why even show Wayne Enterprises employees dying in the first place? Well, why not I guess just have because Bruce if you're gonna... reacting to, to Metropolis getting destroyed? Without Wayne Enterprises just, being there, I guess it's just extra connection it, it just for him. Binds him further to. Then it. yeah, so well then the extra connection is retarded then because they aren't leaving the building. Yeah, so it's not the epic. extra connection is stupid. Well, yeah, but I agree <laughs> yeah. with you. The extra connection yeah. is stupid. The extra. Right, so yeah. I guess it's That's, the idea that I, it, like the extra connection can be lost and it's not super consequential. Yeah, that's what I would argue. Well, if Batman argue. said I only cared because all of my employees died, I'd be like, that's weird. That'd be weird. I'd be like, yeah, that would be that very would be, weird. Yes, yes, yes. First off, that would be something that I would expect from Zack Snyder to do. Thank <laughs> God we yeah. didn't see it. Um, but yeah, but the, yeah uh, I think it's just more icing on a cake that didn't yeah, necessarily the, I, need it. The idea is they want there to be an extra connection. The execution, however kind of overrides what the point of the scene was. All right. Yeah, cool. I, I, I yeah. get you. Bro, if I see an alien ship destroying the city two blocks away, my ass is already out the building. Are you a terrorist, Jenny? I am very glad that Cosmonaut Variety Hour is at least smart enough to put those like little mm, pieces of information together right and out. just... Yeah. Oh, yeah. Isn't it? It's so interesting. Well, this is the best Cosmonaut video we've seen. <laughs> So it's not bad. Yeah, I'm I'm glad though because like even with him, you wonder about oh, is he gonna fuck this up? Luckily, mm. he's doing pretty good. <laughs> you just but it's just doing pretty good. Like you, this is Batman, really bad, but do you know why? Yeah. Batman v Superman, a movie so retarded that not even Cosmonaut can fuck up criticizing it.
Uh, what, an, what, what a damning indictment of the that movie. Question. Anyway, let's not worry about that. Let's instead look at one of the That many... is an odd question Wait, to ask someone if you're a journalist. It is. Um, you really would say well, someone, you know, some would consider you a terrorist, but what would you, you know? Yeah, that would, would be the way to phrase it. What would you it. say and to those people? What would you, you know? If, well, it's that's shitty that. dialogue, basically. Yeah, and, uh, well, I would go further. Yeah. I would say that it's really fucking stupid that Lois Lane, experienced journalist, would phrase a question that way. That was really dumb. Um, however, not yeah. very consequential. Nitpick. Sure, I'm fine with that. Yeah. She's dumb, the but we knew that. Moving on. <laughs> Funny scenes of the movie. Why is he crawling on the ceiling like Spider Man? These are just that. Um, that's not even. I mean, like it's really silly. And uh, my criticism is, why the fuck didn't he get out of there sooner? Like he hung around for ages. He went. Yeah, he hung around to spook um, the guy for some reason. My, my biggest criticism is optic. this is a this is a scene that belongs in a Batman Year One, uh, Batman's First Night kind of yeah. movie. Yeah. Not, yeah, hey, not this is a Gotham PD that's sided with Batman, that the whole movie is basically establishing, hey, well, the cops work with Batman, basically, yes, but Batman's um, here to spook this cop around, and this cop gets spooked by him and tries shooting him. It is said in the scene uh, that the, the more experienced cop is like, what the fuck, and then he's like, oh shit, I didn't realize that was him. Apparently it's a rookie cop who's brand new, and... But the thing is, I don't think that makes Batman's choices make sense in that scene. He Why should surely he be... Did Batman know yeah. that? Well, yeah, because Batman should be standing over the dude, and then he looks over at the police, and maybe even walks toward them to, like, talk to them. And then you have the rookie cop go, freeze! And then Batman's like, whoa. Yeah. And then maybe uses his grapple or does something as a result. Yeah, maybe he's, like, just confused. secured his weapon really quick, and then yeah. when he was calm, give it back to him. Something like that. But um, this is a world where the Gotham uh. police are very pro-Batman. To the point where they don't talk to journalists about Batman or his antics because they're like, no, Batman's Yeah, cool. I could see how police would be very pro Batman. Absolutely. Fuck it. I'm actually I'm actually gonna cite The Dark Knight Rises in a positive way for a second here, as a point of contrast against this terrible Man. movie. When when Batman returns uh to rescue the hostages taken from the Gotham Stock Exchange and one of the most retarded heists in film history. Um, in terms of what the goal is and how they execute it. Um, there's a couple of cops that we see that are reacting to Batman returning, basically. One of them shoots at Batman and damages this device that he uses to... It's like some sort of EMP gun or something. Um, but we get a good idea of like that cop being inexperienced and um, it, like also Batman's suspected to have killed... Uh, Har like murdered Harvey Dent because you know that was the story af after the events of after the events of the Dark Knight. So I think that that makes more sense than what we get in BVS. We have more context for that for understanding why the cop shoots at Batman, why the other cop is like, no, 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 don't do that. Well, yeah, and and just to, to seal it, Batman would have. Uh... He had the jump on the guy. He would have just stopped him from firing the gun, maybe pushed him mm -hmm. over and left, not quickly, hurriedly crawling across the wall to get up the chimney and hope he doesn't fucking shoot him or whatever. It's, like, it's so fucking strange. Yeah. Very weird. Very weird. Nitpicks are real weight and don't affect anything in the grand scheme of things. It could be entertaining and fun to find and make fun of these little things, but I don't see most of them really causing an issue. Right in the beginning, we get a taste of his misunderstanding of scenes. All right. Also, can I just say, what the fuck is this scene for? We don't even know these people. Okay, so yes. it's implied that someone is trying to frame Superman and make him look more violent than he is. So you mm -hmm. ask what this scene is for and who these people are, and then a few seconds later, you say it's to frame Superman. No, 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 no. So he's asking who the CIA people are, which they are the CIA, and, what they're doing and the people framing they Superman work for Lex. They're different people. This sequence was created to frame Superman, these people are coming in after that's happened. They don't work for Lex. It's just a or comprehension. Do they? Well, this is the thing. Talk to fucking anyone who defends this movie. Like, no, everyone's paid off by Lex. <laughs> la, 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 la. Ha, ha, Man, it's you answered film. your own question. Which... No, no, that was just a failure of no, comprehension. There. two different mm. groups of people, CIA and the Lex people. You also misunderstood this scene. This wasn't to show of Superman course. to be more violent than he is. This scene was to frame Superman by showing that his actions of getting involved caused people in the village to get killed. And no, he... it's all it's both of those things. No. They say it's explicit. It's both of those things. Why? The, they they Why have all the burned bodies think... to show that Superman mm -hmm. did it, and then they also go on to say that the like American forces went on to shoot down a bunch of village people in and around the area. 
the implication being Superman getting involved somehow leads to America deciding to shoot a bunch of people. Uh, it's weird, but also that Superman did all these horrible things to these people. Both. It's a mess. It's a mess, yeah. It's like, why would they have burned them? <laughs> you, you, you're the trying to make like a... Yeah. He is framed by his goons by killing everyone and lighting them on fire. And then he has this woman lie to the Supreme Court and say that Superman's action is what Yeah, it's a really stupid plan, huh? Because it all falls apart as yeah, soon as someone really looks dumb. into this. Yeah. Was a as, yeah. Of a village. You'd think that the Central Wait. Intelligence AG Agency would maybe, you know, see mm. right through this stupid ruse. But, well, conveniently, I guess they just don't. We have Lex Luthor uh, trying to coerce a congresswoman into giving him access to more kryptonite, even though he already has kryptonite. That's not what he wants. Um, he wants her to he allow him to, to import it. it. She country. denies it, so he has to do it under the black market. That's fine with me. So that Cosmonaut it failed on that one, I guess. Like, you know, if you're Lex, you want to get it in legally, right? That's preferable. If yeah, you if, yeah mm -hmm. if you can do it legally, then just do that. Mm -hmm. Then you could have the act, then you could bring in people to help you with it if you need it, and it won't raise any eyebrows. It'll just, life will just be simpler in every way. She says no. I think that so, the... Yeah. Go ahead. That was it. She says no, and so he does it illegally. Okay. Um, I think the, the real criticism there is the fact that he's asking for unsupervised access to Zod's body when he can apparently already get access to Zod's body because we, we see like video of them using kryptonite on Zod's corpse showing the effects of kryptonite. Well, it goes from he can test on it to he gets full ownership of it to do whatever he wants, which is precisely insane. absolutely yeah, insane. That is insane. That ain't happening. That ain't uh, happening. But that's the thing. That's, that's not what Cosmonaut said. That's not even steel manable. He right. just he's criticizing someone yeah. I don't think is a problem. It's not what he wants. He has the kryptonite. What he wants is an import license to bring it in legally. He could smuggle it in, which is what he ends up doing. But what he's doing here is using the kryptonite as leverage to get what he wants. In a previous scene, he makes a deal with this military guy to get access to the ship and Zod's body in exchange to help weaponize the kryptonite. But she ends up putting a slight damper in his plans by not giving him the import license. And the current amount he has isn't big enough to weaponize. I know Marcus basically said. Um. I don't even know that's true. I don't know how much kryptonite you need to disable Superman. Um, I mean, theoretically, you can just tip some bullets in it. Well, I was going to say, if you tip a spear and then stab it through to his heart, would that kill him? So this I is assume the weird as thing. long as the tip of the spear is what's penetrating him. I, I depends. Is he soft and ooey gooey on the inside? Or? I presume so. I assume um, not. Well, no, well, because when... not because he has blunt a resistance to blunt trauma to extreme degrees. I presume. Uh, I presume. Tonight seems to destroy. I presume cells. so, so because he's there. stabbed by um, bone when he's uh, mm -hmm. he's stabbed by bone because of kryptonite. Kryptonite makes him able to be stabbed by other things, apparently. So this is. But that destroys his cells. Sure. So kryptonite, well, like that's what it does, right? It destroys the cells. So mm -hmm. it, even if it's on the surface, just no matter what it touches, it just destroys. yeah. That's what I'm saying. Like so, well, it, that would work then. Well, like okay, so yeah, getting so. getting stabbed by kryptonite would certainly fuck him up and kill him. Uh, being near kryptonite, like the the spear weakens Superman just holding it. So it's yeah, like, I would assume that if he can inhale gas, which is right, just particles in the air and it does that to him it essentially it essentially makes him mortal hercules style then and you would be able to stab a like put a I, tip of a spear inside of him and as long as that think, spear tips in him i think the film doesn't quite stay consistent on just how because the thing is thinking about it it's Ooh. like what <laughs> is i'm thinking like if you had the kryptonite next to him could you stab him with a normal knife and how sharp and how heavy and how what it would have to be made of to be able to go through him because bone can go through him but like at the same time, he's tossed what like thirty floors or something, and he goes, "Ow!" It's like I should probably kill you, mate. Like if you're if you're in you know well, human weaknesses, we can say more. So here's like the he wouldn't have said "ow" before, I guess, but now he is saying "ow," so that's progress of a kind. Um. Well, the only, the only other um, like his body's like, telling I him that something is wrong where it, <laughs> it wouldn't have normally done that. He just so, I think it's should go is, further than that. The interesting oh, thing here is that, that the movie. yeah, and this is how Superman reacts to this little tiny chip of kryptonite in a bag. Like well, just I mean, being around that much kryptonite. That that's the thing. Is my only uh, other familiarity with with the Superman media is this essentially, 
And so it's like, well, I don't know if that applies to this version, but yeah, I mean, there's the ultimate question is, I can do with that little bit of kryptonite that he chops the 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 uh, fingerprints of of Zod off with. If you put that next to Superman, does he fall over? Is he like ah, or do you need it to be a certain amount? I don't know. Yeah, I guess we'll never know, but but you'd think Lex would want to try it out, maybe. That is simple. That, but I want to explain it because in a bit he's gonna forget that this conversation between them even happened. See, the weird thing is, in this movie, both Batman and Lex Luthor want to defeat Superman. It would make sense to me if Zucker Lex or Bruce approached the other person and was like, hey, we don't like Superman. Let's fucking kill him. But. Um, I don't think Batman likes Lex Luthor, does he? Like, he thinks he's a. I don't know if they even. I mean, I'm not sure that they I, are aware of which, each does other, Lex? Really. Yeah, does Lex know that that would be the case? So why wouldn't Lex uh, go to Bruce Wayne? Especially if Lex well, knew that Bruce Wayne was Batman. Um. So I don't. They we, have like a like or dislike relationship at this point. Because so we can go earlier than this. Don't you but think certainly... you get past that if the stakes were this high? This is where I mean, I'm not sure. I, I'm of two minds about this because like we got. He's connected the white Russian shit to uh to to Lex, and he's willing to break into his house white and steal Portuguese. his shit. White Portuguese, right? White Russians a drink. Uh, the so so there's definitely like he doesn't think that Lex is up to all good. Like he's got issues. But prior to that, does he have any issue with Lex? Like I don't really know. I don't know what is Lex Corp's reputation in know, this world. Well, does he know that the white Italian is supposed to be because of Lex wanting the kryptonite for that purpose? Well, it wouldn't matter, because right? If because if he finds out... You can just go back further than that. You can re rewind, like, the timeline. You could argue, why didn't he go to him even earlier than that? Before finding that out. Um, we don't know what Batman thinks about Lex Corp or Lex Luthor in this universe prior to the white Portuguese stuff. Because we're never really shown. I guess we could infer that he must not like Lex. He must think Lex is a bad man and he would never team up with him. I got nothing. Maybe. Well, I'm but glad no, the film makes it clear. Happen. Yeah. Happen because X also wants Batman and Superman to fight each other. You may ask why. Well, I can't tell you because I don't know. Why would Bruce Wayne want to work with Lex Luthor? It's made very clear in the movie that he's untrusting due to losing it's... people close to him and seeing good people turn bad. Whoa. whoa. So That's... why does so why does he trust Alfred? I was about to say, what the fuck are you arguing that he would never trust anybody ever? What do you mean? Why does he Woman? trust the Justice League? Doesn't he? Well, that's after this movie, to be fair. Um, doesn't he still have a working relationship with Jim Gordon? Seemingly, but I don't believe for a second that Batman's this fucking insane now. That he's like, I can't trust anyone. It's like, what if it means stopping what you consider to be the greatest threat to humanity? Superman, yeah. I mean, you said if it's just a 1% chance, then we have to do everything to stop him. He's like, oh, Lex Luthor. No, I don't agree, so, but that's Yeah, not I don't enough. buy this. Don't buy 20 it. years in Gotham, Alfred. We've seen what promises are worth. I mean, good guy. Well, you're still here. Are you not you don't, fucking... Lex Luthor doesn't have to be good. You just have that's to work other... with him to yeah, kill Yeah, this doesn't... This isn't it. This is bad. It's it's not like you're starting a lifelong friendship where you're inviting him Bruce would rather game. steal it and keep it for himself instead of having it end up in the wrong hands. Also, well, no, Bruce why doesn't, doesn't Lex know. Just, well, why doesn't Lex just threaten to reveal his identity if he doesn't help him kill Superman? And also, uh, Cosmo's point was not that, like, the, the, the kryptonite even, as far as I interpreted what he was saying, it was just like you could team up in general, combine your forces, you're both very rich, you both have a concern about Superman. Could, like the access to I don't know like there's there is something there and I think the film probably should have addressed addressed it prior to the uh the white Portuguese stuff because at least then you can interpret oh he thinks that Lex is a bad man but he not really though because he's trying to get kryptonite you know that doesn't make him a bad person you'd have to because I mean Bruce wants kryptonite you know mm. This is what I mean. None of this is really explored and the only argument the people who defend this movie have is Batman doesn't trust anyone. Okay, that's a really uh, good argument. Nice cop out there, yeah. No, that Lex knows that he's Batman. Pretty certain he would want to keep that a secret. So asking Lex God, Luthor about Kryptonite wanted... You, you can be interested in stopping Superman without being Batman. 
You could, you could be Bruce yeah. and be like, this this super being that destroyed your city that yeah. is right next to my city, by the way. Two extremely influential, important billionaire types who have a vested interest in the same individual for the same reasons. You could go as far like, as saying, like, just, uh, yeah. the economy. They could, they could Batman, be interested for that alone. Well, yeah, if, like, if Metropolis gets destroyed, not that that would ever happen, no. but, like, that would... That would raise some serious issues for both companies, but if Batman was never a thing and Bruce Wayne was just a billionaire philanthropist, they would still have a reason to do this. Yep. You, the idea that he's like, this is a super being destroying our cities, we should do something about him, and then Lex goes, you Batman? You're like, what? <laughs> he's <laughs> Batman. I don't know why you'd assume Batman, but okay. When Man of Steel up, is the be best Superman way? movie? Oof. This is the same I would, guy I would that argue we're it is right now. not. Oh boy. Not. Good way to keep that secret. Especially since yeah. Bruce had to steal the information to find out what the white Portuguese is and what it's carrying. Not a great plan. Now doesn't Yeah, that's not that's not a good not, point. Yeah, yeah especially no. because if he discovered why he was keeping it a secret and how high the stakes were, he would understand why. Yeah, Lex is and specifically he would arguably help him. Lex is actually doing this because he's worried about Superman. Like that's precisely yeah, the that's same the motivation he's... for Batman. Where Lex starts is understandable. Where he fucking ends up is crazy uh, land. Yeah, and that hasn't happened yet, so you can't even appeal to that insanity, but yeah. I agreed, obviously. Now, Lex wants Batman to fight Superman because he wants to accomplish two things. Expose Superman as a fraud and kill Superman. That wouldn't do that. Expose him as a fraud and kill him? Well, he's going to do the it's stupid planned. shit. The twin. Remember, this, this video was made post Twin Perfect's insane rationalization for Lex's plan, which this guy is totally gonna crib off, if you will. So... I can believe it. Lex wants to either kill Superman or ruin Superman's reputation, and so he's just gonna argue that every single result gets you that. Which, by the way, people have made memes about that image, and I look forward to showing them on the next meme fab. They're funny. But, um... <laughs> no I matter... Some great memes that we haven't seen yet. Twin Perfect is the, the kind of person that says, like, no matter what, Lex wins, and we're the kind of people that's like, no matter what, Lex fucks up. Like, every single yeah. end to his plan is a fuck-up. The primary one being Superman can no longer defend Earth from the horrible <laughs> things that might come, including, and not limited to, Zod. Superman. All powerful, he cannot be all good. And if he is all good, then he cannot be all powerful. Yeah, but if he's pretty good, you know, it's alright. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I, no, they, they, they like to play this clip. This is like, it doesn't really rationalize why you would kill Superman at all. Sorry. Do you want to name a person who's all good? And neither can you be. They need to see the fraud you are. He spends time pushing Batman into wanting to kill Superman because he knows he has the best chance. Especially- No? So, what would be the best way to kill Superman? It's like, you just need a kryptonite knife and you need to draw him into a room. There's no reason yeah, why Batman would be any bullets. better for that than literally just you, Lex. I like the idea that Batman's armor suit makes it so that he's much better equipped when Superman can literally rip it in half if he wanted to. It, the kryptonite is what matters. Yeah, at this point, armor is just... Uh, mm -hmm. Especially you... Remember, if I wanted it, you'd be dead already. <laughs> it's like, oh, thank you, Superman. Wonderful line. Yeah. ...the kryptonite that he wants Bruce to steal, and it was shown in the email that Bruce sent to Diana that he was looking into other powerful beings. Could have been a possibility that yeah, he he's gonna have to kill all them too, I guess. Because Lex doesn't make any sense in this movie. Imagine being worried about the power of Superman, and you also found a guy who can run at the speed of light. Like, oh. And a woman who is fast as, faster than bullets. And like all the, uh, and what and whatever crazy shit Cyborg is capable of. That he was looking into one of them to kill Superman, but Batman is right across the harbor in Gotham City and has already been growing increasingly violent over the years, so it would be easy to sway him into wanting to kill Superman no. by framing him with the incident in the desert. Blow no, none of this, no. <laughs> We've been over all of this. This is so stupid. The Capitol building and sending him notes to further fuel his rage. Right. No, you just say, hey, Batman, you and I want to do the same thing. It's funny to me because people like this will name... You don't name... even have to go to Batman. You could just send an email to Bruce Wayne because you're Lex Luthor and you could do that kind of thing and say, hey, so Oh, the Superman guy, you want yeah. to like, uh, hmm. if you picture that payoff he's describing right now, and that those like four or five things he named are all the pillars that hold it up, and we went through all of them with him and explained how none of them make any fucking sense, and so the ultimate payoff is just built on absolutely shaky ground. 
I still think like, he'd probably resort to the whole. I think you're missing forest for the, the trees. Point. You're misunderstanding. You're missing the yeah. forest for the trees, yeah. Yeah. You guys are missing. But it did not take much to push him over, actually. Little red notes. Big bang, you let your family die! And at the same time, he is swaying Superman to not like Batman. Here's another example. Yeah. Which like is a genuine question of wait, is Batman okay with people getting killed from his brands? We never actually find that out. You just you just never has to address it. Uh but Clark, of course, uses it as a reason to be like, I should probably stop this bat guy. Um Again, this is, this is like pieces of a story are in here, but they never come through on any of it. Example of Marcus misrepresenting a scene. So he hires one of Bruce's old employees who lost his legs during the last movie's final battle so that he can sue yeah, Superman for being evil. Lex Luthor then gives that guy a cool robot wheelchair and then is he blows it up suing? in the courthouse, killing everybody it's except not a, it's Superman. Not suing. He's not suing him, he's just, he is said it? he wants to, yeah. I think he wants to testify. Yeah. Man. Also, I love Superman's reaction to witnessing the deaths of everybody in the courthouse. Doesn't even really seem to mind that much. Oh, <laughs> um, yeah. It's, it's he's weird. expressing an emotion. It's just not the one you'd be looking for as an audience member. I think. Yeah, like I see, like that. I. It's like what it's supposed to be. It should be like eight, nine, ten. What we see is like two or three. I'm trying to think of like it's what's the funny scale is, of that emotion. I think if you were like uh, doing the thousand yard stare, I think that would be better because this one he looks he's kind of like it, it, the immediate emotion I get is like, oh, shame that happened. Oh, he just looks someone's around. Someone's gonna have to clean up this mess. Yeah, it's just, it, it, but the, yeah, he's not like just staring in disbelief. Or, yeah, my my criticism isn't that there's no like, emotion there. It's that I'm not sure if it's quite the right one. <laughs> it's a bit of a weird one. Mm. Not great. I love Superman's reaction to witnessing the deaths of everybody in the courthouse. Doesn't even really seem to mind that much. Oh, and instead of staying to help the people who have just fucking been bombed, he flies away. You don't. Uh, he is. So if I remember, he set someone down, and then the paramedic is like, "I need to look after them. Can you back up, please?" And then Superman's like, "Oh," and then leaves. So I think if you want to be specific, the criticism would be that Superman just leaves after a guy tells him to, instead of, like, making sure there's nothing like else there he can do. Like, there was just a... Yeah, like, this is an active crime scene. There's plenty he could probably do. There's people he could talk to about what happened. Yeah, what did you see? Was there anything weird? You're the only link to, like, information in there, sort of. Yeah. I mean, yeah, it was televised, but you were physically there looking around. You, like, you are, you're our insight into clues. He's depressed, so he leaves. Like, oh man. You don't need to be a comic book expert to know that Superman would never do that. Not an appeal I would need to make. Just something he wouldn't do in this film. Yes, he did use this guy to blow up the Capitol building, which was to incite rage in Bruce Wayne and to show the public- That's retarded. It's just- <laughs> I'm angry because mm. someone else blew up a bunch of people because they don't like Superman. I'm angry well, at Superman Bruce was already now. on the pathway to trying to take down Superman. Yeah, this wasn't... Well, it, he was already ready Many people argue it, that this is what know. tips him over, because the next scene is him stealing the kryptonite. I don't understand no, I, why this tips him over. This is some crazy I person guess, blowing up yeah. people because they don't like Superman. What is that? How is that Superman's fault? What's he supposed to do? This yeah, is, I, this I don't... Yeah. Like, I guess. Batman doesn't Butter. rationalize anything. He's just kind of a crazy... This is what the, the psycho murder man is what a lot of people call him. And it's just like, kind of... Like, he just doesn't really think a lot through. Which is a little bit of a shame, because Batman is typically intelligent. But never mind, this situation yeah, is going to be a dumbass. Guy. Yeah, hey, listen, him having to... Him being supposed to be intelligent, that's an adaptation argument. Okay. This, this is a dumbo. That you have to, I, surely he'd have to be intelligent in here to do all this stuff and to pull it off. Yeah, like the well, I don't think the gadgets and the gizmos and the detective I work. I don't know that anyone would actually argue. Like, no, he's he's an imbecile in this universe. You understand? <laughs> You're like, okay. Nah, I don't, I don't think no anyone's way. arguing that. Way, you don't need to be a comic book expert to know that Superman would never do that. Yes, he did use this guy to blow up the Capitol building, which was to incite rage in Bruce Wayne and to show the public that wherever Superman goes, chaos follows. Even that doesn't that that's not his fault. That's someone else blowing things up. That's their fault. What's funny about this is that Winter Soldier was accused of blowing up the thing. It's like, oh, that's really bad. Then you find out someone else did it. 
to make Winter Soldier look bad, and that changes the entire story. But that is wouldn't... the story in this one. Hang on, wouldn't Batman already be able to grasp this 20 years into his crime-fighting career of think... fighting a bunch of supervillains? You think Thank someone you would have tried to... Argue... Obviously someone's trying to make him look bad. This is what I mean, it's so sad. Who are like, these... Batman should be the one that sees people? through Can this. Can I team up with him? And then he gets told, point blank, by Superman, Lex, he's trying to, and then he's like, I don't care, I will beat you up. Yeah, smirking while this guy's trying to explain, like, Lex, when the fact that he even said that name should be, oh shit, this might actually be really important. Do you remember how we were lost for so long, and probably still are, of, as to why Lex blew this place up? It's like, everyone else got the point, which was to make Batman mad at Superman. We didn't even think that would be a thing. Like, why yeah, would... why would you blame Superman for this? It just doesn't make any sense. Like, what if the scene ran out that, like, Alfred is like, Good lord, like, the, the things they'll do to stop him. And then Batman's like, this wasn't him. It's nothing to do with him. People are trying, like, like he sees right through, he's like, like people want to make Superman look bad. Like, he, like he, he pieces it all together, and then he's like, Lex is behind this. Maybe I've, I've jumped the gun on my hatred. And, and we, we just watch this and be like, ooh, Batman's, like, doing things. He's thinking about stuff. But then you just cut to him in his yeah, suit going, <laughs> That's asking a lot. That's asking a lot. Even though he's not directly responsible for it. Marcus claims that Superman doesn't look upset about it, and then he flies away. I don't know what you mean. He shakes his head and looks upset with himself <laughs> because he couldn't stop it. And then out No one sees that. He looks weird. <laughs> I don't know what <laughs> also, say. no one's no one can see that. Well, yeah. And then outside, he can be seen pulling people from the wreckage, but then is told that they got it from there. Clearly shown that- This motherfucker can't possibly know that Superman, Superman, being here is only going to be a bad thing at this point. Like, bullshit. It's going to make things worse, yeah, like, no way. I'm sorry, mm -hmm. I don't really care who you are, police, medic, fireman, whatever. If Superman's there, I might be like, oh, can you hang around, by the way? I know it's a bit selfish of me, but, because like, I might need you. Because you're fast and indestructible, you. could you, like, go and get survivors in there, search for people? Can you listen for cries of pain? Can you use your x-ray vision to look for people trapped in the rubble? Can, or just, can like, you hand keep me an that eye scalpel? out, maybe there might be some x Extra terrorists hanging out. Yeah, what if people are lifting things? Can you help things? us search for clues? What if someone needs help, like one person's got a gurney for one person to get them into a the hospital thing? It's like, oh, could you help so that person? Could you help, help that? There's always things that need to be done. And hey, really... could you fly these people to the Plus, hospital? Plus, just for sheer image purposes. Yeah, like, that too. Don't and you want to look good? And it would be like if you leave, nice for people us. be like, what the fuck? He just, just left? Be nice for us to see him helping, and you have all these people giving him looks, and we as the audience are like, well, fuck you, he's helping, he's doing everything he can. And then yeah. we can yeah, maybe like empathize with him people, a bit more. Yeah. Why? Why are people, people so People are bad? accepting his help, but they're giving them these weird looks. That they don't want his help. It's only then does he fly away, because clearly he isn't No, wanted. that one specific <laughs> guy told him to back up. <laughs> that one that dude one who specific can't, dude. <laughs> that dude you can't think possibly no one else there know. would have liked the help of Superman? Like, if you said, wait, you want me to leave and not help in any circumstance in any way in this whole area, I'm sure the guy would be like, huh? Should I be weird? <laughs> Should I talk to the police? No, fuck it's me. fine, the, just surely, fuck off. Surely the very least you could offer some bedside manner to the survivors that are being treated. Yeah, talk to Are you to okay? Him. Can I just get you anything? Superman yeah, like, was uh, seen sure. after the explosion comforting survivors and helping to locate new ones and assisting yeah. uh, emergency personnel and... You know, trying to contain the damage. He's currently cooperating with police to gather clues and investigate who's responsible. Instead, Superman fucks off after explosion. Yeah. Superman. Yeah, this version really of Superman sucks. He really does. He's really shit. Shit. And you've got people <laughs> yeah, defending really it as well. That guy said he doesn't need him to be this. <laughs> okay. All right, then. Oh, and since like, Superman has much shit in oh, the version of the movie possible. that that could be out there, where yeah, after this shot of him bringing someone to the medic, he like is checking in on the other survivors. Hey, buddy, how you doing? You know. Oh, you yeah, could have a good scene too, where like an injured Congress person is is like helped by Superman. Shitting on Superman mm -hmm. before, yeah, yeah, yeah and he's yeah. just like. You know, thank you for this. And Superman's like, yeah. of course. Like, why would yeah, you wouldn't have to thank me for this? God, can we just can we just start fresh? No JJ Abrams <laughs> reboot either. Just like now, I really like the idea of like an actual good Superman. 
God, the DCEU EFAP arc, man, just making me realize that you can really do Superman well if you just well, think about have, it for a second. Have, uh, have any of us here watched Superman and Lois? No. no. I've heard only good things about how that yeah, show depicts Superman. Things. I'm sure it it's is. fucking less miserable than this. Let's just say that. <laughs> yeah, by just default. When does he fly away? Because clearly he isn't wanted. Oh, and since uh, we have to cram as much shit into this movie as possible, Wonder Woman watches YouTube videos of all the other just- Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's pretty- wow. that's pretty awkward this in the movie. Member ...so that we can force some sequels and spin-offs. This yeah. is in the movie because this is the information that Bruce took from Lex Luthor at the same time he got the information about the kryptonite. Yeah. Which makes no sense for Lex Luthor to have, and to also make these logos for all these different heroes. And to have this no is a really concern. shitty defense. He's secretly a big fan. He also has no concern about uh, two different people getting access to all of his information on his hard drives. It's fucking bizarre. If you want him to get information so that he can steal the kryptonite, that's like one thing. Why would you allow him to get access to fucking everything, including your information on other metahumans? Why would you want him to know this? Like, Lex is just super incompetent. But then the reasoning, ah, oh, he has access to all these people to kill Superman if, if Batman or the Kryptonite or Doomsday fail. It's like, what do you mean? These are all super people. Does he want, does yeah. he want these people dead too? Like, again, it's kicking the can down the road. Kicking the yeah, can all over the place, man. Like, it's... it's wow, well, yeah, it's worse than... It's crazy nonsense, because Lex it, might be the most confusing villain, like, in anything ever. To, to uh, recap here, Cosmonaut raises a criticism of these uh, forced cameos to shove out more movies, uh, kind of cynically. And uh, this guy's defense was, well, the movie provides this bullshit justification so we can have these terrible cameos. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, but it's okay is, that it is what it is. Just, I'm... it's okay. like, you don't have to die on every hill. Yeah, like, like, why would you own this? You'd be like, yeah, these are blatant yeah, trailers. Yeah, just say, yeah, they want to set up their own universe, and this is how they're doing that, and... Mm -hmm. It's pretty ham-fisted and well, stupid. It's, it's, yeah, and it's explained fully. Like, if anyone was to watch this a hundred years from now, and they might be like, wait, why did they do it this way? It's like, oh, well, Marvel has already got a huge head start on them, and so they need to jumpstart all of their individual movies with a big event movie. Uh, that's why this is yeah. happening. If you yes, cut... it is. If you cut this scene out of the movie, we would lose nothing of value. Yep, yeah, whatsoever. Better off, honestly. Yeah, because this this part's cringe to everybody. They're just laughing at the the concept alone. It's so blatant. To yeah, introduce and set up future yeah. DC movies, but it also works into the plot because it shows that Lex was looking into other superpower beings. Nope. He seems a bit mm -hmm. confused by Lex Luthor's plan and thinks it's a bit convoluted. Mainly Doomsday and how a he knew Batman convoluted. wanted to kill Superman. <laughs> Lex Luthor's fucking 4D chess multi-layered plan also involves taking Zod's corpse, mixing it with his DNA, mm -hmm. and creating <laughs> a monster. Yeah, that's <laughs> stupid. It's really yeah, silly that's, that's how yeah, plays that's 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 yeah. point of the BVS. Fat movies. Is, he's phrased accurate it. Observation. He's phrased it in a way that there's an easy counter that doesn't address the problem at all. I guarantee you, this guy is going to say, "Uh, he knew that from the computer." He wanted to control the monster. He knew that from the computer, idiots. Like, no, it's mixing your DNA with a dead Kryptonian in the blue. The orange goo creates a giant monster. There's so much to this that's important. The fact that he found out from the computer is still actually in question. What is what is it that he asked the computer about? Like, can I resurrect this this dead Kryptonian? By the way, it's like yes, but he'll turn into a horrible monster. Okay, but what if I give it my blood? It'll be an even more horrible monster. Okay, I'm gonna do that. I don't know why. Hey, what if I add sugar? Uh, did you see uh, the top comment on the the BVS EFAP movies was? Oh no, sorry, it was the Twin Perfect one. Is Twin Perfect says. Uh, he will obey Lex because he has his blood. Uh, that it uh, that it's like the you know a lied down Lex, uh, beaten by his own father. <laughs> like, but also <laughs> as soon as he's born, he he tries to punch Lex. But also just because it's your blood, why would that mean he'd do what you say? Well, that was a huge stretch in Twin Perfect's video. Even Twin Perfect knew that when he said it. He was like, eh, "Blood of my blood, that's yeah. close enough, right?" <laughs> it's like no. Like, oh, right, is it no. close enough? Man, nah, that's, that's interesting. Like the the that film actively that. contradicts it. Makes no it. sense. And, uh, and yeah, uh, nobody has any clue why the fuck Lex did this. And if you argue, well, it was to kill Superman. It's like, that's not good enough. Like, not even close. If Doomsday has Superman. kryptonite blood, wouldn't it listen I, to Superman? I feel like that does not even answer my question. To kill Superman, it's like, okay, again, why would he do this? Well, it, I guess... 
in some ways, you could say, it's like, Fringy has a box of TNT in his house, and he's willing to blow it up and kill his whole area, or people in the house, and I'm like, I'm gonna nuke him to stop him. It's like, um, like, I feel like right. that doesn't, that's, hmm. <laughs> there's there's yeah, some repercussions to your decision kill. there. But, uh, yeah, if I was successful, and my bomb, I don't know, it's just so fucking dumb. What are you trying to accomplish? I've said this before, but I really don't like when a villain's plan is that he can just anticipate anything. Because it comes yeah, across as the annoying. plan just being fucking dumb. I don't even, I don't yep. even know that he can anticipate anything. Like, like, I don't even know that Lex is aware of what his plans are. He just seems to be doing things. It seems like he's just dumb. I just do things, you know? <laughs> yeah, the great villain. What happens if Elastigirl doesn't do any of the things that you told her to do? I like how everybody just is like, yeah, she's Elastigirl. Yeah. Um, but nobody... I'm not sure what he means by that. What, what if she doesn't do it? Because she opposes Lex in the whole movie, doesn't she? Yeah, constantly. But that's not... Ugh, cosmonaut. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Why can't you just... <sighs> You're on point this time. Just, uh, just come on. Do it. Keep He's it up. Not How does he know he has a vendetta summer. against Superman? How does he know that he even wants to kill him? Did you fucking ask him? Did you call him on the phone? Also, how- How does he know that Batman wants to kill Superman? That might be a good question. I've not thought about that. You know, this would play wow. into the whole, why wouldn't Lex Luthor- Because what would Lex Luthor have to- just to asking Bruce Wayne, you know, hey, um, what do you think about the Superman guy? Was there anything wow. in the film that implies Batman wants to kill Superman prior to their fight? To the world? No. I don't think there is. I don't Cause think that, that there actually oh is. Oh my god, you're right, yeah. This movie that we missed. I Why? don't remember there ever being anything yeah, that Lex said just... that Batman had explicitly wanted- So how could Le yeah, how could Lex have known? Lex just assumes that Batman wants Superman dead, he doesn't- yeah. For some reason, even and though remember, they have a lot more in common. As, as this video many others argue, Batman wasn't really on the trail of destroying Superman up until the Capitol building explosion. Fuck. Yeah, he was just like, you know, it's something we should consider, Alfred. And that you was know, majorly risky think about. in terms of that working that way. Like, how could Lex have possibly fucking known any of this? And it, you, you could probably be like, oh, the scene where he goes, it wasn't hard, I sent the messages that said, you let your family die? I guess that's how Lex knows that Batman hates Superman? Which is incredibly flimsy, because it doesn't, like... Yeah, because Batman should be going, this is a crazy person who's acting incredibly well, remember, irrationally. We had four, I think, different reasons that that falls apart. One being, you can't know how Bruce is going to react to that information, and he, he could just as likely reject all of it and be like, whoa, this is, uh, wasn't really Superman's fault, so I don't know why you're getting so much. Secondly, like, you have to rely on the, uh, the guy bouncing the checks back, not contacting or being contacted by Bruce at any point because he didn't write what's on those letters. They literally hand, well not literally, but they hand wave that away. Yeah. As just, um, no, just, 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 don't worry about it. Yeah, and then the fact that, yeah, for some, well, as you just said, that the team never bring it to Bruce for no reason. They, they, they highlight no that that'd be an issue, but then they say, yeah, I don't know why, I'll have to look into that. Bruce like, asks, oh. why didn't you bring these to me? And they're like, I'm sorry, sir. I was like, yeah, you're fired. I'm it was... sorry. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, because there's no. You can't even make the excuse of like, well, Bruce is a higher up. You know, he doesn't deal with. It's like, no, no, no. no. He specifically uh, provided like a trust to go to the fund. victims. Yeah. yeah, he was very yeah. invested in compensating the victims of the. Like, so there's no way he wouldn't. None of it works. I'm sorry. All your components, and that's aside from the fact that that's it. That's what Luke Lex used. It's like. Aha, now I will Has make you- Has Lex been sending those checks for three years? Well, that's the thing, they didn't even get to- They didn't even get to He's probably Bruce. wondering, why is this guy not fucking getting the point I've been sending these checks? Yeah, yeah. They, they only three came years. in. They only came in at the Capitol building explosion. So Lex was so fucking lucky, what if they got delayed for another two weeks? Yeah, what if- <laughs> I was about to say, like, what if it just didn't line up in terms of timing? What if, like, Batman killed Superman much, much earlier? <laughs> And like, I can't, because this film's getting worse, I can't, f like, fathom these, like, I'm gonna make Batman hate Superman by blowing up the Capitol, and you go, oh, what, what's, what's the through line? And he's like, well, you know, Batman will see that someone is so hateful towards Superman that they're willing to blow up the Capitol. Like, why would that make him hate Superman? If any, Batman should be, I can't let that hatred consume me. And, like, and what I, if that becomes me? That's yeah. why I don't kill people. Well, <laughs> but, well, you know. Uh, <laughs> what if someone blew up the Capitol uh, because they hated Batman? Batman. What would you do then? 
kill yourself. Kill yourself, <laughs> just commit seppuku. None of it he's works. Like, I don't uh, kill people, uh, yeah, including myself, yeah, yeah. And this is the thing, Lex doesn't have confirm. like, we as the audience know this is working. Lex's only confirmation is the Batman steals the kryptonite, and he's just hoping, I guess. What if it's to keep it out of Lex's well, hands so he doesn't kill That's what Alfred assumed. Superman. It was to destroy the kryptonite. So what if that was why? <laughs> Lex like, oh fuck. God, this movie, like, this is the, what Cosmodot's talking about. It's like, oh, he just gives accounts for his plans working no matter what everyone else decides to do. I don't know that Lex knew about any of this. He's just fucking walking through the whole movie and every one of the people who like it have to invent the reasons it makes sense. Fucking, why would combining your human blood have, why, why was that an, even in this? Was it, was it something to do with religious stuff? Is that, is that why? Uh, he uses religious talky-talky, but Because he I says blood of my blood at one my, point. Yeah, I don't know if he's just eccentric weirdo who knows quotes from things. Because mm. How do a, you know? Yeah. that mixing your blood with the corpse of an alien will resurrect it and turn it into a monster. Nobody told you that. The machine uh, fucking told him. Told yeah, fine. Uh, yeah. I still think it's absurd, but the, yeah, the issues absurd, are greater than that. The machine did tell him. Well, yeah, because this is the program to know what that would need to do. This is the thing. There is an issue in the through line, and he's just missed where it is. It's not that the machine gave him the information. It's that the machine had the capacity to give him full control over the ship and thus provide him the information. That's where the problem is. Why? Why is it that somebody who just stumbles into the embryo goo room can take full control of the ship? That's insane. That seems not... Yeah, intuitive. that's an absolutely broken premise that the plot's running on. And so that's what kind of what I mean about, like, it's like, no, he found out from the machine. It's like, how did he do that? And they're like, oh no. Is fingerprints. I don't know. Shut up. So a few things. The senator doesn't do the things he wants. He wants an import license from her and doesn't get it. Remember, you pointed out that he wanted more kryptonite, but she said yeah, no. That's fair. So she was pushing back against Lex Luthor. She's against bringing in the kryptonite to use as a weapon. He knows mixing his blood with Zod will create a monster because there's a scene where he's in the ship and starts learning as much as he can. You used a part of that. See, this is what I was talking about. Because of Cosmonaut's phrasing, he's lost the argument against this guy in terms of how he's responding to it, but he's not getting to the, the important bits, I would argue. Or at least those mm -hmm. two. Like, we'll see how the rest go. Seen in your video. The Kryptonian Archive contains knowledge from a hundred thousand different worlds. I just like that that's confirmation of how far the Kryptonians got before they apparently lost their entire civilization. <laughs> <laughs> Hundreds of thousands of systems is like, yep, okay. Good. Teach me. Acknowledging presence of foreign genetic material. Advising. I want to see the scene where she says this. Where she's like, if you add your blood, it'll make him what? Like, yeah. Why? I mean, yeah, it's like... I mean, just, fuck it, just say the computer's like, uh, that's inconclusive. We have no idea what will happen. And then uh, I can't anyway. guarantee what the results are. Could, then we need to, uh, I don't know. Create a reason for why he would do this. bond with it in a way that we can't anticipate. And then the last it's never been done just... before. Then he'll, then he'll just, just cut away and then come back to him and he's like, so what if I just prick my finger? Like, nope, it has to be from the palm of your hand. Mm. What if I want to use my hand later? That's <laughs> not reasonable. Forbidden. It has been decreed by the Council of Krypton that none will ever again. Yes, yes. I, uh... Yeah, that doesn't say it, it can't happen. They're saying that they don't want it to happen. I, but like, because obviously, like babies can be made. This isn't my interest, but though. They like, don't allow that. How did Lex discover this as a possibility? Just like, fine, fine, fine. But like, there's obvious bigger crying? implications of just how stupid all of this is. He is crying. Yeah. Is Lex crying here? Why? <laughs> yeah. The desecration. Did he cut his hand? Maybe the cut really hurt. Yeah, that's fair enough. I mean, if I would have cut myself there, yeah, I might shed a tear too. That looks like a really fucking painful yeah. place to cut yourself, you idiot. Stop cutting your hand. So that's where he learned to do it. Stop. He creates Doomsday as a sales so much. If you listen in the background, it doesn't get to the final stage until after the hour he gave Superman is up. Late, late, says the White Rabbit. That is not. Hmm, this comes back to the nuke thing. It's not a fail safe for Superman to release something that is arguably more powerful than him. A nuke, a regular nuke generator. And something that has no interest in mankind in any way, shape, or form. How is that a failsafe for Superman? That is a... Yeah. That is a... 
uh, that seems like a desperation panic move by a crazy person. Like, I can't even... If, um... You know, if Thanos had, like, wiped out the Avengers, and uh, he was about to destroy Earth, and we could release... We could create and release Doomsday, I'd be like, holy fuck. This might be something we have to do. I'm not sure. Yeah. And that's actually really interesting, by the way, as a storyline. <laughs> to have to release a horrifying monster that could turn you, on you. Yeah. How bad do things have to get? It's like in, um... Do you remember in 300, they have that weird giant chained up, and they release him to fight the, the Spartans? That's a... Yeah. A weird moment, but yeah, there you go. <laughs> release a monster to attack the people you don't like. Hey, another Zack Snyder movie. Right hey. One bat head short. 30 seconds to animation. So if Batman kills Superman, he can just end the process. If Superman kills... I don't even know that that's... He doesn't do anything. Uh, can he? I don't know. Uh, and how does he know I that he... I feel like... Uh, mm, you've already know, some flopsy stuff right there. But it doesn't take away from how fucking stupid it is to release Doomsday anyway. Batman, then he's got Doomsday to fall back on. And if Superman kills Lex, mm. then Doomsday is a ticking time bomb. Now, he doesn't know for certain... Wait, so... So he's saying that if Superman had said, fuck it, my mum's dead anyway, I'm gonna lazy you, that Doomsday will be cooking and will automatically release regardless. Like, as if Lex... Superman could've just lasered the embryo pod well, and it would've... Like, he yes, would've but also her. I'm just like, I'm blown away by the fact that Lex is like, it doesn't matter if I die, my crazy mutant monster thing will hopefully arrive and kill you anyway. It's like, what the fuck, Lex? What kind what of brilliant antagonist? Is what is with you? Big smarts. Just don't understand. Certain that Batman kills Superman, which is why he pushes him into wanting to do it. Like I said earlier, he knows Batman is getting more violent, so why not see how far you can push him? By sending him the checks... How do you know that that wouldn't make him more violent toward Lex rather than Superman? What if he was actually yeah. intelligent and he figured out what was happening? Yeah, being more violent doesn't mean you're getting stupider. None of this, in any way, has like a through line. It's all just random guesswork, and it's actually going for things that are less likely. That's the really weird thing. Is back with Messi that he was intercepting, manipulating the news to make Superman look bad, like in the beginning, and blowing up the Capitol building. But it did not take much to push him over, actually. Little red notes, big bang, you let your family. Yeah, we went over all this. It's fucking stupid. Yeah. I'm sorry. Doesn't. Yeah. Why would Lex be under the impression that Batman will now kill Superman because of those notes? Family die. And at the same time, he is swaying Superman to not like Batman by having the criminals killed that he sends to prison and sending the images of it to Clark. Yeah, but that doesn't mean Superman's going to kill him. Which means he'll yeah, take like issue with his... branding people who get killed in prison. Like, he also... <laughs> we don't even know... Like, this is the thing. That would be an interesting thing to ask Batman in the movie. You never get to have that. Nope. In fact, Can he's, also just he's offer... choosing to brand people by the fucking end credits. Yeah. Can I also just offer some minor criticism to this guy? Please enunciate when you're doing your video essay. No. Enunciate your words. started out with that, yeah. He was, yeah. um... He's... He, slur he talks too quickly. He doesn't plan ahead for what he's going to say, which is odd for a, maybe not scripted, but a, like, a released and produced video, you know? It's not yeah. all off the cuff, mm -hmm. but he's constantly slurring his words. He needs to calm down. He needs to relax. There is no hurry. Now let's go this over is... the fight. It doesn't matter. It's time to fight. Time to have the Here battle that the movie's named after. Pow! Pew! 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 Oh no, Batman's losing. Time to use a smoke bomb to trick the man who has x-ray vision. Yeah. Yep. If I pointed that out, that was a... That's a really dumb thing. That's weird. That's <laughs> so fucking stupid. Oh look, now <laughs> Batman's winning because he farted on Superman. And this scene really reads like it was made by someone who greatly prefers Batman over Superman. Pow I think that we've all pointed this out, right? I mean, this fight's dumb. It's a really dumb fight. Yeah, there's only very specific, <laughs> isolated, dare I say, instances, <laughs> moments, this thing. To be as kind as possible, there are tiny fragments of things I like in the fight. Um, but most I'm, of it is absolutely stupid. I'm honestly surprised by how similar his analysis of the fight is to ours, right down to referring to the kryptonite gas as fart gas. Yeah, like it's actually kind of endearing. I think a lot of people probably made that. Uh, it's a, it's but just a lot of people made that you know connection. It just looks like it. Green <laughs> gas coming out like that. It's just how cartoons do farts a lot of the time. So I think it's hard to separate it. But you know, good stuff. Fart gas. 
Pow, pow, bam, bonk, Batman wins the fight. It's dumb. I'm not going to waste any more time on it. Clearly, he wasn't amused. So, a few things here. First, mm -hmm. the All smoke the bomb. Learned. Earlier in the movie, you can see grenades that had the symbol for lead on them. So, it wouldn't be far-fetched that Bruce learned about Superman not being able to see through lead from the information he stole from Lex. Because earlier, right. we saw that Lex used lead to hide the bomb from Superman. So, he more than likely mixed it in with the smoke grenade. Second, what? the reason what? Batman... What? No. Think no. Shit no. Is the smoke no. grenade. No. Wait, you... Like lead with smoke. How does that? I, I like. I don't even know that that's a like, thing. Like lead you can, particles. Wouldn't that smoke? not? That wouldn't like, work though. That would only make it all fuzzy. Even if that was true, but I don't even think you can do that. Like I, I maybe if I don't he lined the grenade makes, with lead. I don't, I don't believe that. That would makes only the smoke impenetrable for X-ray vision. That would only like. Why would lining the grenade with lead change anything once it's out of the grenade? Maybe right. he's so that. Superman wouldn't see the Krypton gas no, no, that's, super compressed inside of the That's fine. The We're talking about the smoke one. He so just, he's saying that was the smoke like full of lead? Yeah, he's saying the, that he um, he managed I guess to is it oxidize? I don't even know, but like he, in the smoke there is lead in the smoke so he couldn't see through it. Also, um, dare I think I... that's viable. Just a second, let me see. Well, um, like I said it would just make him fuzzy if it were true. Well, dare I say it, this is one of those things that actually should be shown on screen. Like, he, he's got some sort of x-ray machine that he's got running on some uh, smoke bombs, and he's testing it out. And we see, oh, he finally has managed to make a smoke that can't be, uh, like, seen through by an x-ray. Something like that. Anything. So, yeah, so we, we've developed smoke grenades that um, obscure, like, infrared ranges and stuff like that, instead of just what we see mm -hmm. um so i i can totally believe that you you have a cloud and it's full of different particles and so it obscures different kinds of vision yeah i could i could believe, i'll I, I will believe the lead smoke but it would like I, I keep saying it, it would make him fuzzy he would have seen he was standing in one position smoke is released and then he would have seen that still the the, the, the entity would be there that... compared to everything else it would just be um, less clear well i I, I I think that just depends on how good it works. So we just have to assume that it does work really well then. I um, I would assume that if it was built by Batman for that purpose, it would work. Hang on. Uh, oh, you know what? Actually, I just Googled this. Lead poisoning occurs when lead is ingested. Breathing in dust that contains lead can also cause it. So this would be a really dumb idea for Batman to do. Oh, you mean like if he, he would actually to breathe it in? He, yeah, because if Batman were to breathe in uh, lead smoke, then, I mean, he would get lead poisoning. I, well, he gets out of the cloud, right? He, like, sets it off and moves away. But he's still going to be in the cloud for some time. I mean, I, I think that considering what he believes the stakes would be, a few seconds in lead gas would be all right. The weird one. And he... Um, yeah, I, I wouldn't. I think that'd be. I think that's totally fine. I wouldn't. You know, I wouldn't say he's an idiot for it. What I'd say he's an idiot for is not having his mouth covered. Well, so funnily enough, I'm kind of realizing like, why do I even care? Like the on the list of problems, the the X-ray yeah, through course. that's like number thirty-seven. Because we just kind of care, you know. We just, I just yeah, like it's I like to get things accurate, the idea I to me. Um, but yeah, like this fight has so many issues. That one is is in there for me, but mm -hmm. I don't know how high up. And to be honest with you, like yeah, I'm just <sighs> desperately latching onto things that I can find interesting about you know, just this. I'm thinking about it. Thing, even if it only made him fuzzy, that's still good enough, I suppose. Because Superman would be like, huh? And then mm -hmm. Batman yeah, does. Yeah, maybe the whole... he wouldn't be able to make out him like grabbing for a piece of gear or yeah, something. Yeah, because Batman's like goal is to make him confused for just even a second so that he can uh, shoot the, the fart gas at him. Yeah, which is weird because he opens the fight and gets two easy hits with the miniguns and with the sonic pulse yep. wave thingies, but what the fuck ever. I this... guess we didn't want to tip any of those bullets with kryptonite. I think a fair question mm -hmm. as well, I don't know if we've, we've talked about it, but like, why did Batman think that Superman was coming? Because I guess, um, oh, um, they had met uh, before, I, and Superman said, "Don't come." So if I you guess shine your light in your sky, yeah. He was just kind of hoping then. Yeah. yeah, which I think is not 
unreasonable. Superman clearly cared enough about Batman to show up the first time to tell him to stop. So I assume that it would be reasonable that Superman would show up a second time to make good on his promise to, you know, kill Batman if he had to. I guess because we did make the lawn chair joke. It's just awkward if Batman's just like... I, I if hope, he didn't. I hope he turns up to But I guess Batman again. has nothing to lose if he doesn't. So. Yeah, he could just come up next night and then the next night Try and again, just wait. Yeah, I suppose. Um... I just yeah. still find it funny, ultimately, like, if you just had that spear from the get-go, Super Superman arrives, and he's just like, whoa, what the fuck, falls over, and then Batman's like, well, you're fucked, I already win. But that wouldn't be a fun fight now, would it? No, we have to have a fun fight like what we got. It's because he not planned to fight Superman, but he also rendered him weak by using the kryptonite. Superman didn't plan the fight until he was forced to. He also didn't think that he was going to get hit by something that could weaken him. I'd also like to mention that so a popular discussion- he could have- No, so when- when Superman says, no way, Lex wants us to, and then gets hit, he could have kept saying, like, because remember, the Gatling guns, they don't really do anything, the miniguns don't do anything to him because he's Superman. Yeah. Uh, the Sonic thing only disables him for a little mo- a few moments. And it's at that point, Superman can continuously say, wait, I don't want to fight you, you know, explanation. But he doesn't, he doesn't ever do it. He tries feebly once and just never again. It's worth saying that this guy just said that Superman didn't think that there would be a weapon that Batman could use to weaken him. So at that point, Superman, knowing how invulnerable he is, he's got all the time in the world to just explain. Well, not all the time in the world because he's on a timer, but he uh, he can easily explain without any risk to his own safety. Hey, they have my mom. Yeah, you know, well, stop fucking around. I need to talk to you. When well, being when manipulated, he's getting punched over and over again. That should be the moment of like, okay, so I might be in serious danger, and my mom's about to die. I need to stop begging, Batman. Um, but instead, yeah, he gets uh, he gets annoyed. Yeah, Lex is behind it. Something. Batman's like, well, Superman's like, mm, I don't like the punching. I don't punch you back. Well, Which I think it, so. Given how um, Superman reacts to getting uh, shoved by that one dude in the bar and everything, it's like he could literally just stand there and let Batman try to punch him continuously as he just explains the situation. No, he has to punch back because he's annoyed. And it applies to the opening of the fight as well. He's just like, I want to throw to you. And... Like, and you're like, why, Superman? It's like, I want to fucking drive you through a whole building now. You're like, what, 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 why, why, why? Like, how, and then what I'm going to go to your Batmobile out in the parking lot and I'm going to put a bunch of logs through it. That's another like, example how... of Superman. Did Superman know nobody was in that building when he did that? What building? I don't know. The, what, the one he... Fucking... When he threw Batman into... Yeah, when he drove Batman through one of them all the way up to the top. I assume he has x-ray vision. Well, so, and then I was going to appeal to... Is Superman aware that if you destroy like an apartment building, or I guess it's an abandoned building, was it? Was that was the? It's abandoned. It's definitely abandoned. <sighs> it's one of those things where I'm just like, it's 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 it like that in in and of itself is much cleaner than anything else that we've been talking about with Superman. But at the same time, it's just like the writers just made it that way because they're so shit. Like, oh, this place is abandoned. There's no civilians here. Don't worry. There's not mass destruction because really it's just a building. Yeah, it's just, done that. it's annoying to me because this is such a disproportionate response to whatever Batman's been yeah. doing to Superman at this point has not been hurting him that much. No, of course, well, this is the thing, it's like a little kid, I don't know, fucking slapping your knees, you're just like, okay, stop, stop, you're like, right, that's it, I'm gonna fucking punch you in the face and then re-explain my position, it's like, whoa! Mm -hmm. But he, uh, he does it anyway, because he's really petty. Which, not um, even slapping. This is closer to like flicking your knees. Like it's just not yeah. doing anything. Well, yeah. Um, and it's it's arguably worse as well because if anybody wanted to try and argue this is in character because he is a petty Superman, I'd be like, his mother's in danger. You've already tried to use the argument that his mother being in danger is why he would drive Zod through a fucking IHOP. So of course he should be explaining mm -hmm. to Batman the situation, but he just fucking stops because he sucks. Discussion amongst and superhero fans is that Batman could potentially defeat anyone if given enough prep time. I mean, he's got plans for the whole Justice League and he's even killed Darkseid. This has nothing to do with... Also, I like that he shows yeah. the frame of Batman shooting Darkseid to death. I just find that amusing for... And it's, it's like the biggest trolley problem for Batman ever. It's like the, the whole universe or one life. And he takes it. Because mm -hmm. of course you would. So the fight beside it isn't surprising, considering the planning and the advantage he had with the kryptonite. And then we get to the most misunderstood scene in the whole movie. Oh, How misunderstood, that's the word of the day. 
I want to go ahead and guess that he says it. Take a drink. I'm going to I'm assume he doesn't understand it, you know. Ever. Oh. Right before Batman uses the magic alien spear to execute Superman, the dumbest shit in the movie happens. Superman. I don't know if this his, is the dumbest scene in the movie. Oh, yeah, I was thinking that too. I was like, um, mm, dumbest? Oh. I mean, okay, okay, okay. It's certainly like, up the there. Thing. No. Certainly up there. This is, it, this is dumb, but it sort of in a weird way makes some level of sense to some degree. It's well, just kind of nuts. I don't know. I so used to I don't feel want, that way. I don't think I do anymore. I don't want to be seen as contrarian to Cosmonaut because I think it's perfectly fair for him to say that this is the dumbest scene in the movie in his opinion. I'm just saying I'm not sure if this is the dumbest scene because there's a lot to unpack. However, this is the one that jettisoned many people out of the movie yes. in the theater when they first saw it. Like, this is obviously stupid. My yeah. uh, argument for why this might be the stupidest thing in the whole movie is... Uh, running with the consequence aspect, right? So this turns it from movie A to movie B, this whole well, sequence. I mean, this changes the whole thing, yeah. yeah. I don't believe it is in Batman's character as he's been presented in this movie to stop for this reason. I was especially, as soon as uh, I remembered seeing the line where he's like, your parents taught you, blah, blah, blah. The, the knowledge yeah. that Superman has a mother should change absolutely nothing. Yeah. Um, I think that was when we were re-watching the film, when he said your parents, I'm like, oh, wait, 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 hold, I thought... Yeah. So you know um, that he has parents. And then is the idea just, that the idea that Superman is in because another argument that gets made is like, well, no, it's Superman appealing to someone's life that's not his own. It's like Bruce already knows that Superman saves people's lives. Mm. He's seen it many, many times. So that wouldn't change anything either. Um, so Batman is, dare I say, I, I feel weird saying this. He is assassinated in this scene as a character. This is not something he would have done, and it changes everything dramatically, and it's incredibly significant. It Meanwhile. The whole of the DCEU. And yeah, you and have to understand of... the context. I'm saying he's assassinated as presented in this film, not, you know, anything other than that. And then... And because um... of these details that kind of, like, are collected, it's just, it really is, he's motivated by his, like, their mothers having the same name. Yes, it's incredibly <laughs> fucking ridiculous. stupid. But then, the flip side, because I think that this counts with this scene, as we turn everything over, Superman is convinced by Batman to go and inspect the the ship doing weird things while Batman saves his mother's life, I think that's incredibly stupid too. Fucking on yeah, the verge of assassination as well. So it's like this is this is an incredibly destructive scene as well as leading to the third act, which it wouldn't happen had Batman had uh, you know acted the way he should have. Um. So yeah, I I, I think it's, it's competition for the stupidest thing in the whole movie. I'm not sure if it is. I'd have to think about it. Because I think the creation of Doomsday might be the stupidest thing in the whole movie. <laughs> the question, the question is, will Cosmonaut point it out, like like point out those same reasons for why this is the stupidest scene in the whole movie? Yeah, I, you know, I guess we'll find out. Moments. First, his mother by her first name, which causes Batman to realize that's also strange. Oh my gosh, he's literally yeah. me. Who the fuck refers to their mother by their first name, especially as your final words before you are being killed. This is the one thing that stops Batman's murder quest, cold turkey. He switches to being Superman's fucking best friend. Yeah, and I think that's almost what makes it worse is how it's not a begrudging partnership. It's like, no, I really Blink. like you now. Button pressed, switches flicked. Martha Another won't die has tonight. Begun. Yeah, it's really odd. It's like, I would way prefer it if Batman was like, okay, me and you, we're not good, but, like, there's bigger things at hand right now. Yeah, just remember where we were. We'll get back to this. <laughs> um, you know, it's a bit hyperbolic to say he's his best friend. I just mean, like, the attitude and the atmosphere is really fucking odd. It, it's a complete yeah, switch. Yeah, they seem to be on totally positive well, like, joke with each other. now. Later, right? When he's like, did you get the spear? And he's like, been kind of busy. <laughs> so, that I thought I missed a scene of them. Yeah. Might I suggest a way to improve the scene by not having Martha's name stream. dropped at all? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, if Lois simply runs in there um, and tries to put herself between uh, Batman and Clark and there's like a more obvious emphasis on Batman realizing that he's become like Joe Chill 
I feel like that would like um, get yeah, the point no, across I, way better. Like she gets in the way, Batman grabs her and throws her like to the ground or away, and then she starts like fucking bowling her eyes out and begging him to stop. I think like, I think that could stop him. To the and man that killed his parents. That he's the robber. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I am the robber. That would. <laughs> That's already leagues better than what we got. So why didn't they just it, do it, that? As it may not to, even. Hey, look, they have the it, same name, isn't that it, interesting? It, it may not have even been good in execution if they did it. I just think the concept itself is better than how. Well, they... something we like to do is what's like the smallest of tweaks that can have the biggest of impacts. And it's just like that already is just makes the scene fucking way better actually reconciling i don't think it's weird that superman called his mother by her first name what did you want him to say save my mom yes <laughs> yes <laughs> yes you've got yeah, you did it you me. nailed it you did it you did it what a, yes. what a ridiculous fucking thing save my mom who would say that who would refer to their mother as my mom who would do that why would you do this in your own video? I don't. I cannot remember the last time I ever referred to my mom by her first I, name. I, I don't. It's... I don't think I. Yeah, I don't. <laughs> like only for maybe legal reasons would I do that, and I've <laughs> never been in like a situation where I've needed to. Yeah. Okay. I want to run a little scenario by you guys here. You're in a bar. Guy picks a fight with you in the bar. There's a big fight that you have with this guy, and. You're like, it, it, he, he's been trying to kill you, okay? And so you're about to kill him in self-defense, and suddenly he goes, wait, wait, my mom's in danger. Like, surely you'd stop and be like, wait, what? Like, you're, you're being what? forced to fight me because your mom's being held hostage? Well, What's the deal here? I, I assume your point is... A man is told me if you... I didn't start a fight with you, he'd kill my mom. Well, I was going to say, oh, it should give you more pause for bizarre. thought. Than the guy in the fight saying, save Martha. You'd be like, what? <laughs> what the <laughs> fuck are you talking about? <laughs> well, if he said, save my mum, you'd be like, wait, wait, what's going on here? Like, what, what is that? What are you referring to? Is she, like, on dialysis and you need me to go to <laughs> go help her out because you're not going to be able to if I kill you? But save Martha, yes. I need to win this fight for the prize money so I can buy her insulin. It's, uh, doesn't... Mm, eh. Sorry, folks. It's shite. This scene does not survive scrutiny at all. Our first name. What did you want him to say? Save my mom? He only has yes. a few moments left, so he pleads for the life of another and tries to get out as much as possible. You know possible my so mom that... and Martha have the same amount of syllables? <laughs> <laughs> I like how he said, like, it's such a ridiculous thing, but they didn't argue for why. He just moved on. Yeah. Maybe Batman I mean, it's just so obvious. He didn't go the to life Batman of another, with like his mom? Fucking it makes more sense to do it this another way. and tries to get out as much as possible so that maybe Batman could save her because he didn't go to Batman with the attention. Do you really think the information save Martha is going to allow There's Batman no to cool. save her versus save my mum? If Batman There's was like, alright, so Alfred, here's what I know someone in Gotham, presumably, possibly Metropolis, called Martha is in danger. Okay, it's like, oh, right, so they're <laughs> like oh shit, Batman, I'll fire them. up the Batmobile for yeah. you. Bruce, this is not very helpful. <laughs> Bruce, aren't you busy fighting Superman? Hmm. Mention of fighting. I have to go to Gotham to convince him to help me. Bruce, please. Don't try don't to argue dare. that Superman did everything he could to convince Bruce because he didn't. He did the bare minimum that allows the fight to continue. It's like a token attempt. Even I don't even think this it, this the fight should have continued. I think Bruce should have been fucking fascinated by the fact that he said I was wrong. Lex has been trying like Lex is fucking with us. It's like oh shit. This How are you not was interested? Not expected. Tell me more. I was wrong. You have to listen to me. And his reaction isn't someone who's just noticing a coincidence. He's basically having a PTSD flashback. He's panicking right now thinking about his parents' death. And I wouldn't say he became Ugh. Superman's best friend. If you look at him, he looks like he's begging for a chance to save her. Maybe in a way by saving her, he can find peace and not being able to and save her. he can save his own mom because he couldn't. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what everyone says about this because that's all you can draw yeah, out of it to justify it. I, get it. I get it, yeah. But the problem is we're not dealing with a Batman that's doing his first ever kill. This is a man who's killed many people. The idea yeah. that, oh, this was the one that made him feel like he could be the very person he was trying to stop or couldn't stop. It's like, fuck off. I feel like and he then... should have thought either he's a really strange person or he thought about this before and didn't care. 
And then he goes from this scene to shooting up a bunch of people with his Gatling gun on top yep. of his bat, bat wing, and then crushing people's skulls in with crates. I would just, I just want to oh, be God, on this fucking yeah. the call, the Skype call with him and Alfred, and he's like, "I've got to go save his mom." And you'd be like, "Wait, what? Isn't he like? There's a one percent chance he could destroy us all. You got to, you got to stop him. What, what happened? What, 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 what's going on?" Well, was, I'm bad at math. I feel bad. I don't want to no time to explain, more. Alfred. There's a woman named Martha in danger. Oh, if I save her, I save my mom in my mind. It's very important. Psychological. So, oh, have you oh, taken your okay, crazy Master pills Bruce. today? Have you taken your bat pills? So now that the fight between Batman and Superman happens, it's time for the final battle with Doomsday. Oh, that's that's all the defense you had for oh, that scene. Right. Okay, Jesus. then moving right along. I'm glad we added all of our criticisms. Yeah. <laughs> And this is officially where the movie enters the realm of being too stupid to be <sighs> forgiven. This movie... Yes. It was already there, but okay. <laughs> we were, yeah, we passed um, that point a long time ago. I hope he mentions the walking nuke thing, and the Batman protects himself under a brick thing. Like, I just, I, I want it. Come on, please throw it in. Has officially become a bad video game. There's not even anything I can say about this. They're just slamming into each other. And then Wonder Woman shows up and she slams into him. And then Batman watches because he's just a regular guy. <laughs> she with you? <laughs> I thought she was with you. What? You've met her, Batman. She's... <laughs> 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 I, I, I don't know, maybe you could argue that Batman thought, despite having met her, that she's in some way connected to Superman, I guess. She never explained to Batman who she is, right? No. So, nope. Yeah, you know, there's, there's room to... Yeah, whatever, I don't know. She's your friend. Who knows her? You know who she is. If you noticed in Man of Steel and here, he keeps describing the fights as just slamming into each other. That's because that's basically how a lot of these fights go. Oh, oh bad counter. So he so, was right? Mm. Yeah. Um, so he's right? One. Fucking, I don't care if that's how it goes in any other content. We actually know for a fact that Wonder Woman can do more than that. We see her do more than that. Uh, Superman can do more than that. He tries to and then gives up for no reason. Batman... Yeah, he's just a guy, so <laughs> he's just gonna be watching. So, not only does the film counter his point, because uh, there are instances where the heroes can do a lot more, but they just choose not to. Uh, I don't care if it happened in the in the animation. I, I, I... And also, there's something to be said about, like, maybe the reason it's in the animation is because they just didn't have the money to do better. Like, you know, you have lots of money. You have no limitations, really, on what you can do I visually. mean, fuck that. You have a vision, right? Yes, that's mm. right. So why are you... Why are you... That's right. Why are you leaning on the comics? And visionary the director. Stuff? Zach. You're a visionary. Zachariah Snyder. <laughs> to lead us to glory. Basically, forth until one of them gets the advantage. Especially with Doomsday, because he's getting stronger and stronger, and shows that he's stronger than all three of them. Also, this line right here... Well, I mean, she not the do. sword that cuts his arm off, but that's alright, whatever. Yeah. So, <laughs> that's in that clip, he had... They push each other, and then he lays him, and there's a bus that's put in the way, presumably he knew it was empty. And then he uses, like, um, a portion of the bridge that's been destroyed to hit Doomsday. It's like, that's already way more interesting than simply hitting each other. Like, back and forth using your environment is obviously one of the first things you might think of when trying to make the fight more interesting. I feel like this might just be uh, Zach is snuffer snuffering. <laughs> Suffering from a lack of imagination <laughs> here and creativity, God forbid. <laughs> because people are dying, so it's snuffering. Yeah. Yeah. I was referring to the fact that she just deflected Doomsday's heat vision, and he was guessing that she was another Kryptonian or alien until Superman asked if she was with him. Clearly he knows who she is, he sent her the email. I like how that's a reasonable thing Batman would think. Oh, do you mean like, compared to everything else he says, or...? Thinking, thinking that Wonder Woman might would be, is also a Kryptonian. Sure. Um, yeah, that was... I don't know, whatever, that criticism... Tiny, tiny really iotas, yeah. tiny little itty-bitty pieces that you're picking out of this. Then Marcus poops in this. Also, I love that on two separate occasions, we have to have characters say that the places they're fighting in are abandoned. Strikers Island, east of Metropolis. Yeah, that's a <laughs> funny thing. Why did you bring him back to the city? The port is abandoned. Because, ooh, we can't make fun of this movie. Please don't make... Yeah, I think that's definitive evidence that Zack found out about the criticism and became very self-conscious. He was like, oh, fuck. 
That's really Fuck, stupid yeah, of me. Right. Yeah, yeah millions up. are dead. I should not have that happen. Next yeah, film, I'm going to have As the director, announce. maybe I have the power to stop this. Yeah, as has been the case with like a lot of the things that I've heard Cosmot saying, is like, guys, you better not push it back against Cosmot for this, because I know for a fact that we've made these criticisms ourselves. <laughs> well, you're talking to this guy, right? Tex is going to push back on this, apparently, so... Good luck! We're gonna do it! Make fun of me, see? The final battle didn't kill any innocent people! Yes, it's strange that the military and Wonder Woman would be worried about civilians getting hurt. Come on, man. What? That's the... No, no, that's, no, that's, no, that's what that's he said. That's not why... Ugh. No. That is not why those lines are in this movie. That's, you completely missed the point. <laughs> <sighs> what a shame. Oh well. Oh boy. I'm gonna miss. You, you, yeah. What you should what he totally should say if you're defending this film is um is that this is a a fix. This is an improvement. See? Yeah. Zach can improve things. He he took the criticism from a previous movie and he is working towards maybe in a clumsy and unimaginative way but he is he's doing good he's doing better he's trying he does care and there's a what? part of him that cares and knows it let's try and bump up this well it's not even a steel man because it's not in any way his argument so what if i said well hey in this movie batman is deliberately taking him to a place he knows is uninhabited like that's different from it just happens to be a place that's uninhabited um the one we do is they falls on an island you could say it's very lucky that he fell on that island, but at least Insanely the island's lucky. small enough that it could reasonably be assumed that there's just nothing on there, and tourists aren't allowed to go on there, and it's just, it is an empty island. You'd be like, there's more reason for these places to be uninhabited than per usual, and of course the characters would be invested in finding out whether or not that is true, so it all lines up. However, I will concede, it's pretty overt, and the reasoning is because people had concerns from Man of Steel. There you go. Instead, he said, well, of course people care about whether or not it's uninhabited. It's like, okay. Billions <laughs> getting hurt. Come on, man. So yeah, Superman totally yeah. dies, like, for real. Not clickbait. And the civilians that hate him mourn his death, and the guy who only knew him for an hour mourns his death. I failed him. Life. Dude, you tried to stab him to death in a dirty warehouse. You weren't fucking friends. Yes, people mourn his death because he gave his life to stop Doomsday. People were so concerned about his intentions and questioned his existence. But after he sacrificed himself, they realized that they were wrong about him. Also, yeah, he had a lot. He had a lot of fans. He so, he was he was the probably the most popular single person on the planet. When your movies are this broken, it just it's always gonna fail. Um, and the instance here would be. Superman has done a lot to save people's lives throughout this already. So why is it that this one makes a huge difference in terms of like how people see him? It's like, well, he died for it. Like, well, I mean, at the same time, yeah, that helps. But he already had a lot going for him. Like this, yes. there, there wasn't a, a, there wasn't a mind to change. I mean, the general sentiment is the, confusing. Even after the way that he handled the Battle of Metropolis, he was still helping some people in his life. <laughs> I mean, the, 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 the attitudes are strange. We don't really understand the public perception. And, and of course, it super applies to Batman. He's like, I failed him. You're like, mate, your reasoning was he had the potential to destroy the Earth, and so we have to stop him. You decided against that when you found out his mum and your mum have the same name. Like, I... What, do you, what is it that you regret? That trying to kill him? Like, the reason to kill him hasn't changed, so it just must mean that you feel you were mistaken now. That's it. Which, by the way, like, yeah, of course. That's why it's. I was never invested in, like, the idea of you have to kill anything that has the potential to do anything bad to a wide scale. It's just it's fucking weird. But Batman is because he feels partly responsible for his death, since he was so blinded by rage and fear and planned to kill him. That has nothing to do with his death. Like, Superman's death and their combat in, in the... Uh, empty warehouse place has nothing to do with each other. Those two things are entirely separate. Yeah, it's weird. That's that's what's so weird is that their their relationship just sort of changes. If anything, uh, Bruce's desire to kill Superman is what gave them the chance to kill uh, Doomsday because of the spear. So uh, the idea that he somehow led to Superman's like the way you want to do that, I guess, is that during their fight he manages to cripple Superman in some way, and Superman can not win the fight easily against Doomsday. But that's not what happened. A different movie you describe in there. Also about.
failing him, he's referring to failing him as a hero. Batman has fallen so far from his morals that it's through Superman's death that he realized that he should have followed his example. Amazing to me that like Batman has this huge change of heart because Superman died trying to stop a bad guy. Sorry, How following is... so Batman should have been following Superman's example while Superman was living. Um, even after again the Metropolis incident. Didn't, didn't Superman like, kill the Kryptonians too? Yeah. So like, aren't they similar in that vein? Or am I am I lost here? I just, I just don't get mm. it. And why would this be new to Batman? He's been heroing for 20 years. He said that everybody has either like died or become evil. Like, How is he not way more seasoned than Clark? Isn't he suggesting that the moral of the story is that Batman should have just uh, basically shrugged off all the damage that the collateral damage in Metropolis then which yeah which again this is what I mean bothered by it there's so many references that are so contradictory to each other like you can't frame this in any way like that doesn't you would emotionally, a problem but not pragmatically yeah he should have uh, well that's the thing like if the movie wanted us to think Batman was wrong to take issue with Superman I'd be like no you've gone too far in the other direction now I think it's stupid he wanted to kill him, but I also think it's stupid that to think that Superman did nothing badly in Man of Steel. We don't get to have it. We don't get it all. We don't get to yeah, have these discussions and conversations that would be interesting. There's definitely like an area of nuance that the film just manages to completely miss. It always goes and like too far in one direction and too far in the other. Never meets in that nice little sweet spot in the middle where. There could mm -hmm. be an interesting discussion had about Superman and his place in the world. Part of what I remember getting so hyped for when I first started watching Civil War in, in the theater. Um, one of the things I didn't quite like about Winter Soldier, and this wasn't a flaw with the film, was uh, Cap's decision to down all of the, uh, the aircraft carriers. Because I remember thinking to myself, like, it's in character, it's just that, oh my god, the amount of resource he just destroyed and the amount of people that might be in trouble from where they've landed like mm -hmm. ooh, i don't know about this i don't know how i feel about this but then civil war is like you did that and it did stuff and i was like oh yeah oh <laughs> like the the world recognizes Cause that it would have results effect. that's so cool they're still cleaning off the debris and uh homecoming yeah and again i believe cap would make that decision but uh as it shocks Fury, when he first says he's going to do it, I imagine you could argue that Fury's only shocked because of a resource position, but like, I think fucking he buries Rumlow. Who knows how many people could have been killed in those buildings, because Cap doesn't know that everyone's out, you know? But it's it's a serious moment. There's lots to discuss about it, and it's one of the bigger things that leads to Civil War. And I was like, yay! Woohoo! We did it! Um, Hooray! They don't Basic do it in this, shit. though and Batman threatens to brand him like a cow and send him to Arkham Asylum. Oh yeah, so Batman's still okay with branding. That's kind of funny, right? Like, yeah. The end. <sighs> and he's, he's got friends who will fuck with people who've been branded, and he's okay with... Like, what exactly has Batman learned? Nothing. Nothing at all. Asylum <sighs> to be murdered. Just to remind you that Batman did not learn his lesson. Batman does learn yeah. his lesson if you listen to the speech at the end. Man is still good. We fight. Man is still good. <laughs> uh, said Batman. God. We kill. We betray one another. But we can rebuild. We can do better. We will. It's so fucking embarrassing that he had to. He got this from Superman dying. Yeah. Jesus. We have to. Mankind makes mistakes, but it can get better because there is still good left in mankind. And through Superman's example, he's. It's an alien I mean, taught me that. It's disappoint. It's disappointing to me that someone who's been superheroing for, like I said, twenty plus years, he's only now learning that men can be good. What the fuck? Like, what do you think he's trying to do? What's this whole point? Does Batman believe that he wasn't trying to do good? And then, or how do you reconcile that with the branding scene exactly? Yeah. He's going to be. That's why he says he won't fail him in death. I failed him in life. I won't fail him in death. He also doesn't brand Lex at the end. He more so just scares him instead and punches <laughs> the Wobbus. No, you know he was going to brand him, but then Lex says, brand "I'm insane," him. and he's just yeah. like, well, "I'm going to transfer you to Arkham." Also, how is this evidence the Batman has learned when he fucking violently punches the wall with his brand? <laughs> it's like, 
Man, you got I guess them. he's learned to take out his aggression on inanimate objects instead of people. God, lucky. You just need to spread the he's word. Sad. If he's about to brand you, say, no, 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 I'm insane, Batman. I'm insane. Please don't kill me. And then you're okay. Just tell him you're crazy. That makes it so much better. Batman won't kill them if they're insane. Side him, showing That's that he has changed. And now that Luther is considered criminally insane, he wants to send him to Arkham to keep an eye on him. Well, no, does, doesn't he say it in a really threatening way? Like, God said in a threatening way, yeah. He's hoping to transfer him there to get fucked up. Alright, I don't know what film you're watching. Uh, I'm insane. I'm not even fit to stand trial. That's right. We have to ask the truth in that. Wait, doesn't that mean that he already knew that he was insane? If he says that's right? Like, oh, no, yeah. no. Which means he was gonna brand him yeah, whether or not what, he was. That's how I, um, yeah, that's how I'd read it, honestly. Leo, with compassion. But that's not where you're going. Yeah, he said that we have places to treat people like that with compassion, but that's not where you're going. Yeah, you're not getting compassion. How does that come across to you as anything but a threat? <laughs> I arrange for you to get transferred to Arkham Asylum in Gotham. Not a threat. It blows a my promise. mind that there are people who watch this movie and like it. Um, I can uh, with most movies. I can. There's always... a lot of there's a lot of weird people who just like weird shit, I mean, and they try to justify it for whatever irrational reason. Like no there are people who love Mando. Yeah, well, Marcus likes Last of Us too. He thinks WandaVision <laughs> was pretty good, right? Uh, uh, yeah, people said he yeah, gave, he gave seven. it seven, yeah. seven out of ten. Isn't it, yeah, man, well, like, like, there's um, a lot of irrational people who are fucking crazy. Does he like TLJ? Um, I can't remember. Yeah, he does. Uh, so, what's interesting is, like, he, um... He doesn't believe in, like, objective quality, which is fine. I agree with him in that sense. Um, but it's interesting because he's what saying, mean, oh, there are people what that... Do you mean you don't, what do you mean he don't... What do you mean he, objective quality? Wait, what? What do you mean uh, he doesn't believe in objective quality? Um, well, I, I think that he believes that the way that we look at movies isn't objective. And you agree with him? Um, not for the reasons that he would provide. Um, the point is that I find it interesting that he's uh, talking about how there are people that watch this movie and like it, and yet he's a, like a very much a subjective person. But all of us agree it's fine to like pretty much any movie. Well, my position's changed on that. It's a very very specific. I understand that anyone can like anything at any point, but like, and I don't really consider this a change. It's more of a just being more specific. Like everyone believes that there's limits to what we we're okay with other people liking. Like, when it comes to lots of different pieces of media. And I don't need to make extreme examples, but you could probably imagine what I'm talking about. If you find out your friends thoroughly enjoy watching a particular type of, of thing happening in a movie over and over again, you'd probably be like, wow, I think it's fucking disgusting that you like this. I condemn the fact that you like this. Now, someone could be like, well, what the fuck's that got to do with, like, random superhero movies? It's just like, well, no, I'm just saying that we do actually hold that position, and there are certain things... For example, what Wonder Woman does in Wonder Woman 84, if someone said, like, oh, I really like that she did that, it's so cool, we'd be like, oh, yeah. hmm, that's, um, that's a little disturbing, actually, but okay. Uh, or defending what Wanda did in WandaVision. But, of course, in the context that, that Cosmo's doing here, like, I don't have much trouble understanding why people like a lot of really shit media, because oftentimes you can see, like, you know, like, Boba Fett beating people up, you're like, oh, I, I know why. I know why people like yeah, it. it's super cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I don't know. Maybe he's just saying it'd be hyperbolic, because I'm sure Cosmonaut actually does, in real terms, would be like, yeah, anyone can like anything. It doesn't surprise me. Unless he's going to argue that this film is, like, the most miserable film he's ever seen. You know? Could be that. That's hilarious, coming from the guy who likes Captain Marvel and The Last Jedi. People in glass houses, Marcus. What? Uh, uh, you okay. you like Batman vs Superman? Yeah, <laughs> people in glass houses. <laughs> you think that Man well, of Steel is the wait. best Superman movie? He didn't make the claim so, that he can't understand people liking. Oh uh, yeah, true. Anything yeah. he just yeah. said, it's interesting that you would say it when because that's what we just said. <laughs> we just yeah. said it's interesting that he would make the claim what he likes 
the last of us 2 etc um which by the way I, I think that was a particularly useful example because the last of us 2 is fucking miserable like as yeah. a game so Absolutely. or you know what how about you recommend me a game what were you thinking the last of us 2 joel wow okay there you go <laughs> <laughs> oh, he's gonna say the Joel thing. Joel is not a fucking beloved character. Get the fuck out of here. Okay, yeah, yeah listen. Yeah, so yeah. that was a retarded thing that he said in the past, but that's irrelevant to what he's saying now. Um, like, you can't... well, he's saying it in response to him saying that he can't understand anyone liking BVS, which, I mean, even I'm like, yeah, I can understand people liking BVS. I've yeah, I understand why people... Fucking hundreds do. of them. I know. There might actually just... be hundreds of them. <laughs> hmm. Now let's talk about this interpretation of Batman. Marcus clearly isn't a fan of it. And I fully believe that there are some things you should never change when it comes oh, to Batman. Go. Number one, mm -hmm. Batman doesn't use guns. Yeah, but there, why? There are many instances of him not only using them in the comics, but there are there are easily pos things you can write that he would need to use one. What do you think the a grappling hook is? The very first Batman comics would show him killing people and using guns. As far as I'm concerned, you can write him in a way that he fucking hates guns, or you can write him mm -hmm. that he thinks it's okay to use guns. I'd like, it's just, the, the idea that you cannot write a Batman that uses guns to me, I'm just like, oof. Like it's some sort of intrinsic property of what Batman is <coughs> as a concept or a thing. Well, people would say that that you is You have the to case. explain that shit. Also, this wouldn't be the first time that we see uh, Batman using guns on, like, the Batmobile or the Bat Pod in the Dark Knight. I mean, doesn't he use an actual like minigun thing in Batman eighty nine? Though what? I say that I think some people consider Batman eighty nine to be very unfaithful. So what do I know? <clears throat> yeah, this is the thing. We know this exists. We know loads of people think that Batman cannot use guns as a definitive. So we'll have to see where this goes. Number two, Batman doesn't kill people. Number three. Oh he, yeah, I don't know what to tell you, man. He has, he, he's, but like he can, some he of those, has, and he often does. Usually, some of those popular portrayals uh, in movies have him killing people. I don't know what to tell you. He does more than he doesn't. Like again, okay, literally every live action version of Batman outside of George Clooney has killed at least one person. Yeah, this is where, like, so uh, what, uh, my hands feel tied at this point. Like I can't even. I don't need to provide a defense because I know you people like it when he does this. He's done it in loads of his movies. Stop lying to me. It, unless also, you think there's just no good Batman except for George Clooney. <laughs> I don't think anyone has that position. What were you going to say? I was just going to say I think that it, it can be interesting to explore um, Batman feeling conflicted about yes. uh, like whether or not to kill certain characters. I just, I just don't want to close the door on it. That's all I'm saying. Like, let's let's make it interesting. Let's apply it to his character. Let's make it an important part. Whatever you want to do. But the idea you cannot have him. Like the second he kills Never. or takes a life in any way, shape, or form, he's no longer like a well-written Batman. I'm just like, uh, oh. But Mahler, we're supposed to be the ones that limit creativity and what writers are allowed to do. Oh my god. Mm -hmm. Three doesn't use fucking guns to kill people. So it's no surprise that his version of Batman gets rid of all nuance, distills him down to an angle. Whoa. Okay, just- Did I he don't, say the same thing I don't want to misrepresent him, we'll replay it, but just in case- I thought that there was an implication there that if Batman uses guns to kill people, you've lost all nuance. Uh, so like weird. there's not a nuanced way to even provide that context well, for the, what he does? This is a natural implication that like, Punisher is not nuanced, because- <laughs> He uses guns to kill people, so it just can't be. Mm. I don't know, let's play it again. People. Number three, Batman doesn't use fucking guns to kill people. So it's no surprise that his version of Batman gets rid of all nuance and just distills him down to an angry punching man. Now, if you're the kind of person who thinks Batman should kill people because it's more realistic, well, that's okay, but you and I can't be friends if you think that way. It's not about, I don't uh, know if, I'm uh, not like uh, appealing to realism, no. just mm. event, maybe I am, when I'm saying like events can take place that would lead to that choice being made. Yeah, if it, if there's literally never any scenario where he doesn't use a gun, like, where's the nuance in that, Mr. Nuance? That's the opposite of doing and that. What's funny is, like, mixed in is like, oh, he's like a psycho punchy angry man, and I'm just like, I mean, yeah, like, this portrayal is pretty bad, but like, not necessarily just because he's using guns like that's not 
he's like crazy and angry, sure. But they're, they're like internal reasons why this is all bullshit. Do we know if um the Batman Battinson Batman is? Do we have any word on him killing yet? I'm assuming uh, we don't. No, not, no, we don't know yet. All that we've seen is how he beats down that one thug, which it is rough. gonna just land him in the hospital for a long time, but doesn't look like a kill. That's the thing I find fascinating about everyone's love of Batman, but simultaneous, he never kills. Like the amount of people He's he must have killed. <laughs> I've. I have uh, I have frequently made the joke that Battinson isn't going to kill because a corpse can't feel pain. <laughs> like it's just, there you go. It, the way he the way he goes after criminals and and I don't have an issue with it per se. I'm I, I'm you know what if you want to have a, a very pissed off rookie Batman or a pissed off experienced Batman, totally fine. Um, but very funny to say. Well, he, you just can't have him kill people. It, it's okay for him to cripple people. But not kill. Wait, am I um, mm. am I off the mark with this, or is that kind of funny? Uh, that's pretty funny. With the red dots. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, that's kind of funny. Well, not the uh, you. You get what I mean? What I'm saying with these dots. Like, because his mask. See? Yeah, because his ma unless is his mask tilted because it's broken. Like, I mean, if if his mask was not broken, it will. It looks like the mask is only that is normal, except for the part that got broken off, and it didn't get broken off inwards, I guess. But okay, um, so I I guess. Um, yeah, it's, I don't think. Yeah, he's, we got a little bit of. Yeah, we got a little bit of Mandalorian helmet. I don't think he's seeing out of that right here. eye. He's gonna have a bit of trouble. Yeah. That's okay. But whatever. Value is that he values life above everything else. Because his world was shattered. Okay, so if valuing life above mm -hmm. everything else does not translate to I will never under any circumstance end a single life. Yeah. If Batman has to choose between a life and many lives, he will obviously choose the many lives if lives are if each individual one is sacred to him. Batman is not so stupid an idiot. It would be a character assassination of Batman in almost all of his iterations. If he did not kill the one to save the many, I generally hate the uh, the idea that if Batman kills, um, like the idea that killing people in self defense or in defense of others is immoral, which is like that's oh. what police do, it's what soldiers do, it's what yeah, sometimes I'm... regular civilians have to do. Like, I just that's why I don't have an opposition to Batman killing because there are situations where people have to kill to preserve life, to preserve innocent life. And that is what I would call the nuance, because simply saying, he doesn't kill people, so he won't. To me, I'm like, oh, that's a bit... I don't know, that feels a little limited, that's doesn't it? It's the opposite of nuanced, yeah, that's the opposite of nuanced. And the idea, and especially, by the way, I think it's much more interesting for Batman to compare himself to uh, the people who killed his parents when he's killing someone not because he's trying to save someone else's life, but because he wants that person dead. That's when he should be like, wait, what am I turning into? What have I done? Like, I think I'm going yeah. too far. Why people kill the people they kill is a very important aspect of their character. If they're in Batwoman's... Er, ugh. Well, I mean, that, though that is technically true. If they're in Batman's role, you know, they I, should be able to tell the difference between why am I what? killing this person? Do I want to? What do I derive from doing this? And we're, we're once again highlighting like, oh... Why did they do that in BVS? Like, my motive to kill Superman isn't to save people, it's just I want him dead. Because I just don't... You need him to, like, realize, like, my motive to kill him is so... lacking in any kind of, like, rationality or purity that it's 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 affecting me as a person. And it's turning me into the thing that I, I started all of this for, to avoid, you know? It's... There's so much about him that's so interesting to think about as a character, and just I just think that whenever someone locks off the potential for him to end a life, you, you've taken away some really powerful storytelling. Uh. And you know what? His, uh, his origin can change, right? Like, his origin reason, I mean. So, like, it could be he never wants mm -hmm. to become the person that he... that took away his parents. Yeah, Gotham High that, did it. And it could also be that he never wants to take a life because life is sacred. Like, those two things aren't the same. There's two different motives, but they're two that are often shared by people who love ba Batman in the comics. So, I think that you could come up with several 
uh, motivations at the core that are, that are spurred on by this event. And you know what? Ultimately, I thought that people who really respect and, and blah 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 the comics, they, they are okay with Elseworlds. So can't you just canonize anything you don't like about a Batman adaptation as Elseworld? Sure. And you could even change it after the fact. I don't know, the whole conversation is frustrating. <laughs> Indeed. By a act of violence and he wants to prevent anyone from feeling the pain that he felt that day and i'm really into gatekeep superheroes over here you can have you different interpretations are, of the yeah. character but i'm just saying there are a lot of things about these characters that people ignore because movies get them wrong as well we look at spider-man and we I, i'm i didn't follow that sentence saying that he, i'm not trying to gatekeep but batman cannot do these things because we have to keep him nuanced. Yeah, and he also referenced uh, the, the Nolan trilogy. Does he think the Nolan trilogy is bad because Batman kills? Like, genuine question. Well, you don't know with this guy. I don't know. I have no idea. And I assume he would say, well, no, I just don't think he should have. And then I'd be like, well, then how does it work? I mean, there are situations in the, in the Nolan trilogy where I feel like, especially when... Um, tackling Harvey Dent uh, to his death. It's like, well, it's between that and letting Commissioner Gordon's kid possibly die. Well, but that's like our whole point. <laughs> that's, that's like, times right. like that will happen. And I'm curious yeah, if Cosmodor yeah. is against them or not. ...act of violence, and he wants to prevent anyone from feeling the pain that he felt that day. And I'm really not trying to gatekeep superheroes over here. You can have different Except interpretations of the character, mm -hmm. but I'm just saying Unless there are a lot these. of things about these characters that people ignore because movies get them wrong as well. We look at Spider-Man and we accept the fact that he doesn't kill people because he's a cute, fun guy and he's nice. And if he killed people, it would make no, us sad. No, he could kill people. What's you happening? can make a version of Spider-Man that's a, a cruel and vindictive person who didn't um, take advice that was given to him. There's, there's like been storylines of him using a cloth version of the symbiote suit and going out for vengeance because people target his I'm loved sure. ones. I'm I'm it's, sure. I mean, but also, yeah. so I have a comic book version of everything. If we get the the dream, and that is to keep getting Spider Man movies with Tom Holland that are Save well the written, dream. that would that's the dream. Okay, I'm not saying it's a reality. Um, I would definitely want one of these stories to test whether or not he would kill somebody if it meant saving more people. I, I want that to happen. Totally. So I want to see like, what it, he does and how he deals with it. Yeah. It would help the character like as the character matures and grows up and you know has to sort of face the realities of being an adult this, i didn't even realize it's so controversial it's, it's like a lot of uh superhero content that i've consumed over the years it's just like yeah if you have a no kill rule superhero one of the obvious you things you do shit. is test it yeah i can help the uh <laughs> captain america civil war opens with the avengers having to kill a bunch of people Well, you know, terrorists, he's an old, not like grumpy innocent guy, people, but, So people yeah. just yeah. assume he's supposed to murder people. If you ask me, this mentality is pretty dumb, and Zack Snyder is one of the people who thinks this way. I think it's hilarious he uses a panel from a comic where he used a gun to say Batman shouldn't use guns. Now, I agree that there are different interpretations, and this is one of them, but his biggest issue is the killing. He mentions it in the beginning and then later on, and he uses this clip from an interview with Zack Snyder to help illustrate this. You know, I tried to do it in that sort of um, technical way. Uh, I tried to do it like by proxy, shoot the car that they're in, the car blow up. That counts as killing! I I, I'm a little bit Correct. confused. What, what is Zach trying to say? I tried to do it yeah, by proxy? I, like, that's still killing, though. Um, like, surely, yeah. does Zach think that if he's not, like, actually reaching into his chest and pulling out his beating heart <laughs> personally, it doesn't count? I'm, well, confused. It's not, I'm it's confused not me. as well. It's not me pushing this person off the skyscraper that killed them. It's the sudden stop at the ground. Yeah, at the end, yeah, it's this. It's really the laws of physics, and I didn't make those. I'm yeah, not yeah. responsible for um, them. Yeah, I agree with Cosmonaut. Yeah. That's a really weird thing to say. I I'd like to know what Zach was trying to say with that. I've covered yeah. a video from a while ago, but I'll go over it again here. When it comes to Batfleck, the goal was not to have a young Batman. It was to have a Batman who's been at it for two decades, who has lost those close to him. His parents, Robin, and seen others go bad. 20 years in Gotham, Alfred. I saw the clip the first Yeah, yeah, he's gonna keep playing mm -hmm. it, I guess. Um, so, he's like a, a grizzled Batman who thinks you can end lives now because he's seen things go bad. It's like, you're gonna have to do better than that. 
Yeah, I'm gonna have to. You're gonna have to convince me. You're gonna have to show me. My, because I could just as easily believe that he's set in his no kill unless absolutely necessary ways. Yeah, because we, we've been. We, I think it was near the beginning of this. Uh, we we were talking about how he has the thing that can disable weapons. You know, you have a building and there's like loads of men all around it, all with guns, and there's one person at the top who's a hostage you have to rescue. I feel like that's probably like a mission in like all Batman games. Like a stealth mission? Yeah, you have to try and figure out how can you get in and save them while either incapacitating all the men or avoiding as much of them as you can. Batman doesn't give a fuck. <laughs> He's just gonna shoot them all with his minigun. Like, what? And that's that's kind of the problem. Is is just like, oh, he doesn't really think anything through. He's just gonna, you know, the equivalent of when you give up and you just start shooting in your stealth game because you're like, ah, oh, fuck it. And it's addictive of his character, level. and that's, um, I guess it would be nice to know why beyond, well, he's been around for 20 years and he lost Robin. Like, okay. Yeah, I want to see how, uh, how does Batman handle the no country for old man, old men problem. You've seen what promises are worth. How many good guys are left? I still wonder how this doesn't apply to him. How does he, how does he, what does he think about this? Is, he, is the logic here that he's like, there are no such things as good guys, so I'm going to be a bad guy and kill people? Because that just raises so many more questions. Yeah, that's, yeah, in ways that's worse than him killing somebody. I would question why he wants to kill Superman at all at that point. Be like, what, 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 what's the difference? But more importantly, he's lost his way. After he brands the criminal, Alfred approaches... It's a bit more than losing one's way, wouldn't you say? Yeah, it's a, it's a bit of a leap, a little bit more of a... Like quite a departure. We didn't get to talk more about this moment where he. So we we highlighted how Alfred should probably have known about the um the bat uh, branding earlier. He just doesn't for some reason. Ignoring that, he's like um changing the rules, sir. Like like it's obviously uh referencing how it's like you're now branding the people that you've captured and they're getting. Well, I'm assuming he's referencing they're getting killed. And he's like, we've always been criminals, Alfred. Nothing's changed. It's like, that's not really a response. Yeah, that's not, yeah. Mm -mm. Like, do you think all crimes are equal? You think shoplifting and genocide are on the same level? And also, just, Alfred's the person you've known this whole time. Is like, wow, you, you're you burning your victims. What's that, dude? And you go, we've always been criminals. No, that, that's not, that's not at all what I... Answer the question, sir. New rules. We're criminals, Alfred. We've always been criminals. Yeah, thank- yeah. <laughs> I just- I just think it's really fucking any, weird. Any illegal thing I do is justified because we're vigilantes. Which, by the way, yeah, all the things- What a thing for- what a thing for Batman to say. But once again, it's an all idea. Things... Like, you could have a story where someone is already a vigilante and so they start to slip. And it's like, well, I- I'm already breaking the law. That's interesting. You can't have him brand yeah. people and go, well, we're criminals. It's like, no, that doesn't- <laughs> That's- Deep, deep, we're criminals. That's the thing is, like, you can develop this, you can start out showing his early days, and, yeah, over time he uh, he starts to slip, to, to waver in his morality, and it could be really interesting. It could be, maybe he uh, runs across someone who was really affected by the Joker after Batman refused to kill the Joker. He has to kind of come to terms with the fact that his no-killing rule is allowing psychopaths to you know run around and continue killing people yeah and that's going to have a, a you know these effects that he doesn't intend and maybe that kind of pushes him into being like yeah you know what maybe i should kill the criminals that i come across and then you have um you could have it be that he, he is absolutely okay with killing people to save other people's lives and then you could have it be it goes further and further and then you can have five goons doing goon things. He beats them all up, and one of them, in the report on the newspaper, died from their injuries. And Alfred's like, damn. And he's like, brought it on himself. And like, leaves the room. Like, doesn't acknowledge the fact that it's, someone's died as a result. He's just like, whatever, that's just how it works now. Like, these people got this themselves is... into the situation. This is something that needs to be developed over, like, a trilogy. Well, it would be nice if Batman got his own movies uh, in the DCU instead of being shoved into a half Superman movie that feels like the culmination of a lot of storylines, but whatever. Yeah. You have to infer all of the meaningful history. Nothing's it has, sir. That's how it starts, sir. 
the fever. Yeah, having another character say, you've gone bad, is really just <laughs> it's not much of anything. This this whole thing could be so much more meaningful if this was like ten years after, after the first DCU movie yeah. and there was maybe this is yeah. our point. <clears throat> no, I, I was I was like literally thinking like if this was ten years into developing this character. Oh, man. Yeah, we've had like five movies and three crossover mm -hmm. movies or something. Yeah. The feeling of powerlessness that turns good men. He's talking about Bruce here. He's telling him yeah, that he's turning. I, oh, you did. You think <laughs> maybe? Nah, he's talking about Brumbo. Nobody, I guess. Yeah. The local fisherman. It's just yeah. And hell, the intro of the movie is Bruce man. talking about his own fall from grace, referring to Batman as a. Yes. Why? Oh my God! This is once again the whole like ideas versus execution thing. Yes, I know I what Zach it. was going I for. I promise, I get it. I understand. I get it. I really do. Beautiful lie. I life. really do. In the dream, they took me to the light. Yes, yes. A beautiful yes. lie. He's a shell of his former self. This isn't the Batman we know anymore. And <laughs> you don't have to tell me that, mate. <laughs> I picked up on that little detail. <laughs> This has led to a more reckless and uncaring Batman. And that's the biggest thing people get wrong about this interview with Zack Snyder. You know, I tried to do it in that sort of um, technical way. Oh. Uh, I tried to do it like by proxy, shoot the car that they're in, the car blow up. Oh. The thing he's doing is describing Batman's killing. reasoning for doing what that's he's doing. That's not proxy. That's, that's his that's reasoning? Better. What do you mean that's, that's his reasoning? shooting the car that he's in. You, you, it's not the bullet, it's the hole it left behind. You're still choosing to end these people's lives. I don't know why this is hard for you to understand. Like, but this isn't my proxy. Like, he's shooting the he's cars. He's killing them. them up. Yeah. If he uses what a tool, his... it doesn't count. What does he expect to happen when he shoots at a car? Uh. You know what? I just realized as well. Like, this just doesn't it's work at all. Because he lands his ship there and then starts shooting at them. They shoot at him. When he could have landed a ship somewhere else, arrived in stealth, gotten straight to the room where Martha is. And like mm -hmm. killed the two people in there because fuck it, whatever. He's gonna kill everybody anyway, and then get her out. Instead, he's like, "I'm gonna perform a major assault from the ground level up." You're like, uh, have we got time yeah. for this? Let alone the fucking fact that he's gonna kill everybody. What about dropping flashbangs like everywhere? Yeah, you think he'd have a shit ton of those sorts of things? He he'd load himself up like a no kill playthrough of Deus Ex. Yeah, he'd have taser bangs, guns and smoke stun bombs, things and. Bombs. Oh, he'd, I'd have, he'd have the whole nine well, yards. You gotta watch out, though, Rags. The cool There's a man with an M60 attached to Martha. He's got, a, he's got an itchy trigger finger and a tired arm. Oh, my arm. goodness. Killing Very by proxy. Arm. Yes, which is still killing, but he's describing the way Batman sees it. If a guy has a grenade and Batman he's throw not, it at him... So you're saying shit? Batman's a fucking idiot? I feel, like, yeah, I feel like we just went over all this. Like you, you, you su You're suggesting that Batman doesn't have a choice. When you enter into that conversation, we can now look at all of the past fights, including this one, and explain to you all the different things that Batman can do. 20-year veteran superhero can't come up with some ideas compared to us. Really? Shit, should have stayed home. If a minigun is shooting at him and he takes what? out the car that's attached to and blows it up, too bad you shouldn't have been in the way. And <laughs> What? Oh, what? what? You Are you kidding wow. me? This is this is the point where I am just wow. This guy, holy! Yeah. This is this is one of those desperation defenses. Too bad he shouldn't have been in the way, dude. Do you remember who said that like, in a certain? Season? Just say they just shouldn't have been a criminal. Then they wouldn't have died from Batman. Do you, do you remember who said recently in a superhero property? Oh, I would feel bad, but that fucker was just in our way. Did you know? Oh, yep, 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 I remember. I like this logic, it's um, really, really fun. It's, uh, it's Starlight. Oh, yeah, I gotcha, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. He got in the way, so I For a second there, I was, I was thinking Batwoman for a second, and I was searching my memory. <laughs> when did she say that? No, even Batwoman. I don't know, I was like, like surely she guy. said that. That sounds like something that it would be perfectly in character Dude. for Batwoman. And so I was searching. Dude, Ray, uh, Captain Marvel, Starlight, Batwoman, and Wanda. Damn. We're running out of female yeah. heroes. <laughs> we're we're yeah, all horrible. We're in trouble. And the movie this as if it's the right thing to do. If you think this is wrong or questionable for Batman the to do... The movie presents it as if it doesn't give a shit.
That's the- yeah, that's precisely the issue. We never get to fucking talk to Batman about this. And he never goes over why he chooses to do this over the other options he has. Stop now this is it. technically only an issue if you want to do the whole Batman doesn't kill people. In this universe, if he just fucking lights people up with a minigun, then I guess that's what Batman does well, in this iteration of him. And, and so, However... And so you'd be like, so where does the problem lie then? And it's like, well, it's in his criticism of Superman at that point, right? Because he's doing... Yeah, that's the thing. It invents a new issue. It's not that he's... He's, he's inconsistent in a different way. And this way is more in-universe, which is the greater sin. It feels like, um, you know, like you have like a, I don't know, a system of diodes, like little lights, and they're all going to lead one way, you switch it, and then a bunch of others light up and lead to a different floor. Like, just tell me which, which one you want to go with interpretation-wise, and I can tell you how it ends up being shit. Because th there's so many references that fuck with each other in this movie. You like, you have to create that enormous network that Twin Perfect did to try and rationalize it, but even then, it still falls apart. They were in his way. But they do want to rationalize it. That's the thing. They well, do want to convince... They, they want to make it make sense. And why? They want to make... It needs to make sense. Because they really liked it. That's why. Yeah. Because so they really liked it. And, and what's good, cool... So now I need to find the reasons why it's good. I need to find a reason for it to make sense. My brain actually wants this to make sense. What's cool about old EFAP is you'd be like, well, you guys are clearly biased for the MCU. It's like, nope. Okay, you're clearly biased against the DCEU. It's like, no, why? Not it's like, really, well, no. You, I, don't know I mean, you guys are probably those kinds of people. Not from a top-down perspective, no. You guys are probably the kind of people that want, uh, you know, Batman to never kill anyone. It's like, oh, have I got some news for you. <laughs> like, you oh, boy. You're not dealing with that kind of We're that gonna kind drop of some Zod pills on you. So... Yeah, I just, it's amusing to me because we come onto the DCEU discussion scene, if you will, completely, like, we got no hang-ups about anything. We're just like, let's have a look. Oh, they're really shit. Oh, well. It's like, I just, I, the investment that the two sides have doesn't even just, it just makes for shit videos. That's kind of interesting, right? Because we often talk about, you should talk about the things you're passionate about, but in a lot of ways, what you're passionate about ends up blinding you from being able to make any good arguments. <laughs> I know that some people are going to be like, would this apply to you guys? It's like, well, yeah, but like, I'm just saying... It could, if it like, does point it out, until then... Yeah, like, mm. the, these videos that we cover are always from people who are like, these movies are amazing, masterworks. What was the last video saying? It was, it was, um... Masterpiece. It was a masterpiece, a modern masterpiece. It was a masterpiece in, a, in like, a true was, work of art. This is art. Uh, yeah, yes, this is right. art. This is art, not Civil War. This is art. Right. Not amusement. You're right. <laughs> After Superman's death, he says he failed him in life, but won't fail him in death. I failed him. You played this clip I so heard many him. times. I <laughs> promise, I promise we heard him. I won't fail him in death. Why would you explicitly say the whole clip and then play the whole clip as you said it? Isn't that... I'm not sure. Just play the redundant. clip. Yeah, we hear, uh, this is what Bruce Wayne says. Play clip. Yeah. Or just have, or, or do both, where you say it and he's mouthing the words in the back. So yeah, yeah, that's, that's a cool idea. Yeah, that's a good option. He failed him as a hero, and this will be the start of Batman going back to the hero with a code of morals like he used to be. <laughs> now I want to talk about the comments in the beginning of the video about Snyder not understanding these characters. So let's take the guy who doesn't understand Watchmen and give him the rights to make Batman and Superman movies. I'm sure he'll do a great job. The biggest problem with these movies is that he doesn't understand these characters. I'm gonna argue that he does understand these characters, but he wants to nah, explore them in a way. No, no, well, nah. no. My contention is he doesn't I mean, understand when characters. I, that's, yeah, they're just the, they're just the, uh, let's say the collateral damage, they're a shall, symptom. We say, shall we say. Yeah. Um, but like when, when I heard him talking about how he doesn't want like Batman and Superman talking because they're in costumes, mm. like what an incredibly damning thing to say. Big it's really guys. weird to maintain that he's a big fan of and wants to maintain the characters from the source, when he also says it looks dumb when they talk to each other in their suits. It's like, oh. Oh, yikes. Whoops. In a way that hasn't before in film. He wanted to reestablish Superman from the ground up and build him to be the Superman that we're all familiar right. with. Right. He originally had a- We need to rebuild Superman from the ground up now. Good job. <laughs> it's just- Yeah, it's unbelievable. now we got it all over again. unbe leaveable honestly. A five movie arc yeah. plan for Superman to get him to the yeah, optimistic and bright character that we all know. I don't give a fuck. Yeah. This isn't like Why a can't we use. just? How can Why we just can't... start there? 
you know? Yeah. It's not even- Yeah, why can't- <laughs> If you want to make but... Superman a person who doesn't care for human life, Okay. <laughs> like, I'd, I'll watch your version. Hopefully it, it's internally consistent. I'm assuming you're gonna make him either a villain or um, like a, like an apathetic Dr. Manhattan type. Um, but my issue isn't that he's not the character from the comics. It's your movie is balls. Like, the characterization is all over yeah. the place. I'm sorry. And it's like, oh, no, 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 no. He's gonna be the guy you know in five movies. I'm like, that, that's not addressing me at all. I, I... Call me in five movies. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> They will watch them all back to back, and we can get this over with. Especially if they're of this quality. To look at Batman and see what would it take for him to lose his way, and what would it take to get. We didn't see what it took you for him to lose his way. You have not earned that. We were told what yeah, it was. Not oh, even close. Like I said, this has not been developed in the slightest. This there is are Luke Skywalker all over again. He he there cited like all the little... scenes with people telling us why he's sad. Like oh, so many years of people not doing good. Oh, look, Robin died. Oh. We didn't see any of it. Fucking hell. There is more that we know of Peter B. Parker's uh, background that, yeah. that, that they show us in Into the Spider-Verse yes. than this movie gives us. Yeah. And we see... The... In like a minute, we learn heaps about him. It's really expeditious, it's... but it's all, it's all inconsistent with what the character, you know... It's it all... crazy how emotionally resonant... The, the last scene that we see of him is in that movie where he gets to be with Mary Jane again. Like, how much I give a shit about... Back with him again. Back yeah, with him. like, uh, they're, yeah. they're gonna try. He is, like, by God, he is going to try to mend his relationship. And that's all that I cared about seeing. Like... <laughs> and it's such a missed opportunity. Like, if, if he was telling me this is his plan, I was like, wait, why don't you want to make the Batman movies? Why wouldn't... Zach, people want to see yeah. this. Get him back half. And that's why we get a Superman who doesn't make all the right choices. Stop no. categorizing this as not making the I right like how choice. It's not the right choice to fly Zod into a petrol station that blows uh, up. I agree, it's not the right choice. Eddie can do something. It's an yeah. incident of damage. There's, there's so many themes with these fucking people like <laughs> defending BVS and Man of Steel. An incident of damage. Fuck He's you. still learning and growing. And that's why we get a gritty mm. Batman who strayed far from his path. But because of Superman, he learns just how lost he became. Fuck off. Marcus actually yeah. leaves in the perfect rebuttal to most you of his arguments. Because a lot of it comes shit. down to these characters being not comic accurate or mishandled or misrepresented. Now you might be saying, uh, Marky, you said it's okay for movies to- Oh, well, I mean, Marcus is a hypocrite. That's like his whole yeah, thing. He, <laughs> yeah, he uses whatever argument is relevant at the time. Example. This is the thing, as much as he can be right in certain circumstances, you can't understand him as a critic overall. You'll never know if he liked a thing or not. What a system is, it's just non-existent. Meanwhile with us, if you think you've found, let's say, like a hundred problems in a property and we all praise it, I could understand why you'd be confused. With with Marcus, you got nothing. It's like, no, nah, today he likes this. Today he, he might yeah, not. Yeah, see, in Iron Man, it's okay when the Mandarin is, is bullshit. And nothing like his comic <laughs> right. counterpart, because he enjoyed it. Yeah. Yeah, whereas us, you understand what our criteria is, and you know how to change our mind on a movie. Change the comics, but sometimes you get upset when they make a change. And I didn't think I'd have to explain this outright, but I don't think some people get it. I've always said that changes are good if they work in the context of that story. So you could let mean? Batman kill people. Yeah, so you're a hypocrite. What do you know? What do we just say? I don't think he realizes how much of a window he opens by saying, if you make it work in that context. Like, oh, so I can make anything work, right? Because con being able to change the context gives me a hell of a lot of things to change. I always I like how the Mandarin has changed in Iron Man 3, because I think for that story, it makes perfect sense. But then I also said that I don't like the movie version of Civil War because the comic book version, to me, has a lot more emotional significance. Why would you show this and say that? <laughs> it's... <sighs> Look, I, like I said, I've only briefly understood exactly what the comic counterpart is for Civil War. And from what I understand, the movie, a lot of people who like the comic think the movie was a better choice, storyline-wise. So, it's, it's interesting. And, and it sounds like the... It's not like an uh, an ended conversation there, because he's saying he found it more emotionally resonant, right? The uh, the comic version. So, 
Is that the qualifier for whether or not you can change something from the source? Is whether or not you like it more? You like the comic version and you don't want the comic version changed? Do if you, you didn't like the comic, it's okay to change it. If you did like the comic, it's not okay to change it. I'm starting it. to realize like every time we drill down on any creator ever, at the core of every single argument is, well, if I like it more, yeah. And at that point, it's like, what was the point of any of this? <laughs> like, why do, you, why do you dress up all of your arguments in clothes that aren't what they actually are underneath? Why do you pretend to care about mechanics and acting and themes and messages? It's just what you like. And then they will be, they would flip it around on you. They'd be like, of course it is. That's what it is for everybody. Oh. Hi, I'm me. <laughs> Let's have a chat. It's a storyline that was built up over a much longer period of time, and I think that they should have done that with the movie version. My general idea is that I'm open to change in a comic book movie, if the change works. Yeah, but that's a qualifier that's make really that flimsy. Batman using guns work? Apparently not. Surely if anything not. works, it's it's a meaningless qualifier. If it works, then there's no problem. So like, yeah, of course if something works, you're happy that it works. Well, but works. that's how he's escaping criticism, because if he says, if it works, I'm okay with it. Did Mandarin it's... work? Isn't it, isn't it called begging the question when you do that? Uh, I'm okay with it, it if is. it works. Yeah. Like, well, it's... but then it it, just, it works, so yes, of course you would be okay. That's yeah. you've just qualified like it, you it yourself without letting us know what it is. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not one of the people who's immediately gonna write off a comic book movie because it's not accurate. You I did literally just Civil said War. Batman can you never use guns. Civil War. You said it was worse than the comic. Why did you show Civil War footage? Well, he reckons it wasn't the good decision to go. A a different route than the comic because why the did he show more. it as footage for i won't write something off you wrote that off <laughs> i think uh what he thinks of when he says write it off meaning he wouldn't even get it a chance he thinks he gave civil war a chance oh you didn't but <laughs> civil war okay. had its chance oh yeah civil war did have its chance that's right yeah. movie is from the comic books but i think it is different in a way that works this Fuck wait, me. wait, 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 wait. Whatever sure happens to Aquaman? He thinks Aquaman sure works. I'm sure a lot of Aquaman fans who are not oh happy with God. their interpretation It's immediately going to write off a comic book movie because it's not accurate. The Aquaman movie is very different from the comic books, but I think it is different in a way that works. That's what amazing. What the fuck does that mean? That's amazing. Nothing He's about th Aquaman works. Okay, listen, we watched Aquaman. That's the most recent yep. had movies that we've recorded. That is bottom two in the DCEU for I just, us, I think, right? We have to lay this out quick, three, right? So we have two movies that are unlike the comics, Aquaman and Civil War. And he says Civil War doesn't work, but Aquaman does. Aquaman does. Imagine Aquaman was one of the most absurd movies I've ever seen in my life. I can't, like... Like... It's 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 ludicrous. The the film is just I no, it's sense. a movie. It's not a film. Fuck calling that a film. <laughs> that yeah. flick is ludicrous. It's entertainingly it's bad. Nuts. It is. But it it's... is like it it's entertaining because you're constantly going what the fuck and laughing. Yes. What a film. This what an adventure wrong on every level because it doesn't improve Superman with any of these changes. Oh, changes so Aquaman made. improves Aquaman. Oh my I'm god. Sure. Like, what, what are you saying? But what is it? Damning indictment. We've got another what problem. Yeah. What is he, he said it has to improve Superman? So if Define the comic, improve. How do you tell which one's better he, or not? Not better. just that, but if he felt that a comic shouldn't be altered because of how perfect it is, then no adaptation could ever improve on it. Like, so why yeah. even yeah, make that a perfect. qualifier? Like, I just... Oh, it's so stressful to figure out what the fuck he even thinks about anything. <laughs> it's like, what do you mean when you say all of this? I'm so, I don't even know how this guy's gonna respond, but, uh... Let's hope he doesn't bring out some cringy arguments, too. I don't know. I think I think we're at our limit for the day, you know? <laughs> we've, we've gone through a lot. We're, yeah, we're... Two we're minutes I actually agree with him here, but of course it's all subjective. Wait, did you just say I agree oh. with him? He okay. agrees with him! Well, Okay. I mean, oh. sure. I, I don't even Feels know what to say to this. Why weirdness. every level because uh, it doesn't improve Superman with, like, okay, so he's just presented a bunch of different references of him contradicting himself, and he's got like this really easy way of countering him, like it's right there, Tex. It's you. You were almost there. You can do it. You can do it, buddy. Well, maybe, maybe he, maybe it was just the start of the response. I don't know. Let's let's I see. So. I guess any of 
changes. The changes make him worse. I actually agree with him here, but of course it's all subjective and comes down to your own personal preference. Okay, I so you both agree. Now discuss both it. Agree both of you agree. Point. Uh -huh. Yeah, if, if you both agree, even if you're both wrong, you both agree on the point. So now, like, could you discuss why that's the case? I was, I was about to say, like, don't you, don't you, aren't you interested by this? Like, both of you have the same metric, and you've come out with opposing answers. Don't you think that's interesting? Don't you want to try mm. and figure it out? Superman and Steel and BVS because it works for the story they're telling. Clearly, he it doesn't. Doesn't. And someone can look at the Mandarin in Iron Man 3 and say, I don't like it because they changed the character so much to the point where he could be switched out for any other terror. It's not why I think it's shit, but we'll get to that some other day, I guess. <laughs> Iron Man 3 coverage, who knows? and it wouldn't make a difference. You could call him Osama and the story would remain the same. So that character was changed for the worst and it doesn't help the story at all. And that's basically how Marcus feels about these two movies. He so. believes that the changes were for the worst while I believe that they were for the better. And it helps the story that they were telling. And what was the point of the whole fucking video if you were just gonna say, well, it's really down to what you like? Yeah, you think that this makes it worse, I think it makes it better. You could've just said no, that. tomato, tomato, whatever the fuck. I didn't cover everything I wanted to talk about. I didn't go over every little thing he mentioned, and you probably noticed a lot of these critiques have been said over and over again and not really anything new. It's really a lot of the same regurgitated shit that people have said since these films released, and they've new. been a He says it's a lot of regurgitated shit, I am like, I challenge you text to go through all of our coverage and be like, you know what, just the same regurgitated shit. Anything new. It's really a lot of the same regurgitated shit that people have said since these films released, and they've been addressed time and time again. Say so. I just, oh, you know what? He, I'm gonna say it. I love that we had that debate with Twin Perfect because just too. this permanent reference, happened. like these smug Man of Steel fans, <laughs> been like, yeah, well, you guys are all stupid and wrong, and you've been proven wrong again and again. It's like the author yeah, of those videos. Which is why I'm not even gonna try and do it, even though you're right here in a conversation that are disagreeing me with me asking me specific questions because my work speaks for itself. However, heard or death of the author. The author of those of defense fun. videos had trouble admitting that they were shittily written films. Like, cause he, he didn't wouldn't, he want refused to, have to, to answer it. it. He did not answer it. It reminded he... me of when we talked to the janitor about Last of Us 2. It's like, okay, we've got this reference of, okay, we've got someone that thinks that Last of Us 2 is good. And we've got people that think that Last of Us 2 is not good. And they come together and they, they discuss, and it's very clear. From like I, I was receiving texts from my brother who never played The Last of Us Part Two. And he said it was obvious which side knew what the fuck they were talking about. Well, yeah, I mean, <laughs> it's all about references. It all comes down to references. You get them Do right, you, you know get them wrong, you collect info. them up. It, it's it's like the groundwork shit, man. And uh, like watching a film, liking it, and then going, uh, "This is great," and then going, "All the criticisms are wrong." By no one's gonna find that compelling. Yeah, you're. If anything, it's gonna make people suspicious. Like, why mm -hmm. aren't you bringing up some? Because we, we're at seven hours and eighteen minutes, and it's just like another fucking long, long stream going through loads of arguments that either attack or defend, and going through. All, it takes ages. All right. It takes There's ages. a lot wrong with these movies, guys. There's a lot wrong. <laughs> But I felt like making this video since a lot of his criticisms seem to be from misunderstandings that he has about these movies. I don't know if it's because he didn't pay I mean, it. some of them were. I'll agree with that. Yeah, some of them. Marcus isn't a bright boy, but, I mean, he even gets some things correct. Even he could see why these movies are bad. Attention? Or simply because he didn't care because he doesn't like these movies. So I would like to recommend you a few videos that you could watch to get a better grasp on it. Nearly all your criticisms for Man of Steel and BVS have been addressed and explained in these collection of videos by Twin Perfect. From the character's portrayals no. and motives. Well, no. I would just like to if he ever really things. recommends Twin Perfect. It's and, really funny. Oh, and I'm so and glad I, we got to talk about him and he just We've covered down. the first and last in that playlist. They're both fucking awful, Terrific. and we spoke to the author during the covering of the second one, and he put up a abysmal display. Like, how else could I yep. put it? Well, it, well, was, it was very eye-opening for a lot of people. Tex and everyone that watches Tex, I recommend you check out EFAP 124 and 127. We'll go over in detail why you've been lied to. <laughs> Maybe not that extreme, but he straight up said he does it for clickbait, so don't know what yeah. else to tell you. 
and Zod, the destruction, all of it. And if you want to dive deeper on that, there's these couple of videos that dive deep into the symbolism, as well as another really good analysis. Mm -hmm. I don't care. But in the end, it all comes down to your own preference, and I can't make you like these versions of the characters or the movies. But I feel like this video was just ramblings on why you don't like it without actually trying to understand it. What the fuck was your video? Yeah, your video was rambles as to that we just didn't get it, and then you didn't even really you just did a bad job. Zach wouldn't be proud. <laughs> either intentionally or unintentionally misrepresenting scenes and motives throughout these two movies. But anyway, guys, that's going to do it for the video. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, go and no, drop a like shit. on it. Now I'm going to go play some Didn't Cyberpunk. Oh, wait. Never mind. I can't even wash my face without this damn game crashing, man. We did it. Okay. BVS is dead. Fuck you. <laughs> uh, I don't want to talk about this movie again. Oh. BVS had a chance. I am so glad to talk about Aquaman. Yeah, yeah we're, we're moving well, right we along. No. Fuck, we, we gotta got do Justice League suicide and Suicide Squad, Squad first. God damn oh, it. Oh, no, just, I'm excited to talk about those. Those are great. I'd love fine. to talk we'll, we'll about survive. Suicide Squad. And, mm -hmm. uh, oh, man. Yeah, I, I mean, right. I'm not even sure what's what's happening in terms of that arc, but I will say, uh, to remind everybody, if you didn't catch the beginning, there is a straw poll. It will be in the description. It is specifically about what Aquaman video we're gonna cover whenever that comes around. Because that's going to be in this arc too. I'm so excited. And the way it'll work is right, like whatever the top results are, we'll go from the top down and we'll stop whenever we can't do it anymore. <laughs> yeah, right. But uh, that is it, okay? Hurting. Wonder Woman, Wonder Woman 84, we Man of gone. Steel, and BVS are all done. EFAP's and not dead. going near them again. They're dead, all right? They're dead. Awful <laughs> films, <laughs> awful defenses of them. Uh, who knows what's going to happen next? Because, yeah, I'm next up is Suicide Squad, and I don't think anybody defends think. that film. Fuck. <sighs> that's Fun it, times. Though. That's, that's, that's that. So, uh, I don't know if you guys want to say goodbye. Are we... <laughs> mm, <laughs> this will yeah. be a seven and a half hour premiere on Moolah. Christ. Have fun with that, everybody <laughs> in chat. <laughs> Alright, there's your content. Um, Are you happy making us dance for you? Yeah. This is what you want? I don't know how else yeah. to end it. That, that, that was epic. I, I don't BBS either. Really I mean, bad. what 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 can we say that has not yet been said? Um, I hope you enjoyed that stream we did on WandaVision, because that would have happened by now. Woo! Oh, 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 oh yeah, yeah, that was that, that was yeah, wasn't that uh, so bad? That was sure or that. or maybe our maybe our minds have changed. Maybe oh we've been God. convinced that WandaVision is actually a seven out of ten. Whoa! Imagine rating oh it goodness. that high. Wow, who would be fucking dumb enough and unable to analyze media so badly that they would give it a 7 out of 10? Wow, Damn. that's that's two points above average. Impressive. Wow, that is very impressive. So, um, I think that about does that. Thank you all so much for watching, and we will see you on whatever happens next in the EFAP world of Tismic fuckery. Yeah. <laughs> bye bye. Bye bye. Bye. Everybody.